His name is Su Ping. He is a guy who is fighting for his life against terrible monsters. Nearby is a strange beast, which is also ready for battle, despite being wounded. Demonic worms surrounded their friends, wanting blood and death. They are angry and big, and the heroes are like little insects nearby. The guy's hand reaches out to a bone-like object that can be used as a weapon. Taking up the weapon, he trembles, and his teeth are clenched. There is fear in his eyes, but the guy is ready to fight for his life. A couple of days ago, the guy woke up and looked at his reflection in fear. He became different, like all those who have been reborn. It was a different world and the main character in someone else's body. Now his task was to survive and unravel the mystery of the new universe. The technology of this world has gone too far. Su Ping's survival requires exploring new opportunities and interacting with locals. The new world is different from the usual one. The basis of existence is the celestial animals. Here they perform basic functions for the life of society. There are many kinds of celestial beasts, and they are closely related to human society. They are usually used for everyday work. Animals are also used for military purposes. Most of them are trained to fight and kill. Even the status of great countries is determined by the power of the heavenly beasts. That is, it is a world that relies on their strength. Accordingly, to survive on this planet, the guy needs to become stronger, since only the strong and brave are respected here. To begin with, the hero tries to understand where exactly he is. He understands that in order to become stronger, he needs to plan his actions. Now, he is Su Ping, and all Su Ping things belong to him. The hero leaves the room to inspect the house in which he is located. Opening the door, a surprised girl appears in front of him. She starts smiling because Su Ping is lazy and couldn't wake up so early. This is just crazy. The guy's first thought was that the girl in front of him was the younger sister of his avatar. The guy liked her, but he noticed a strange icon on her chest. The hero kept his gaze on the icon, trying to examine it. But suddenly, little sister attacked Su Ping because she thought that he was looking at her breasts. The hero didn't have time to say anything before the blow was aimed at the stomach. A girl named Su Ling Yue indignantly told Su Ping not to think bad thoughts especially since she was already a first-year student at Fengshan University. She is a martial beast master. He's trying to figure out if his avatar was such a terrible brother because they don't seem to get along very well. Su Ling Yue began to tell Su Ping's antics, how he put bugs in school bags, stole people's lunches, and glued toilet seats. But still, she came to her brother's room to kick him out of the house. A pet store customer asked to call Su Ping. He has to go to work today. The sister left the room loudly clicking the door. The last thing she cried out was that otherwise Su Ping would be very sorry. The main character thought that his avatar was a completely useless piece of garbage. Unexpectedly, he has his own pet store. But it's time to get to work. Welcome to Longjiang Town. Using the navigator, Su Ping reached a room that was covered in cobwebs and covered in dirt. I can't believe this useless piece of trash could work here. He walked to the door and opened the lock with his fingerprint. Nothing complicated. The guy calmed himself down. His first thought was that he needed to clean up a little, and then he could open the store. But when the door opened, surprise and the stench filled him. What happened there was terrible. Su Ping was simply outraged because he saw a real mess. Suddenly, a strong blow from the leg is felt in the hero's back. He is surprised and cannot understand what is happening and who did this. Su Ping looked back and saw a strange guy who also had a mark on his chest. He had been waiting for Su Ping all week because he left the monsoon here to be looked after. Instead, he was locked up with ten lionesses for three days. It was just terrible to leave him with cruel animals. The main character begins to apologize for the inconvenience caused because all responsibility rests with him. He is ready not to even take a penny from the client. All I can think about is how irresponsible his avatar turned out to be. But the strange guy was very indignant and ordered Black Monsoon to take Su Ping, teaching him a lesson. The beast's metal tail, similar to a fang, touches the hero's neck. It is strange that the people of this world solve all problems by force. But Su Ping tries to talk. He's willing to pay the evil guy three times as much for his loss. The aggressive man makes it clear that money won't change anything because it has spoiled his war beast. Suddenly, he asks his black monsoon to show his new attack on Su Ping. Monsoon begins to increase in size. His body becomes covered with veins. His gaze becomes voracious. He hears the owner's order to blow up this den. 
and the whole room is filled with light from the energy ball created in the mouth of the voracious animal. The light is very bright. It covered everything around. The frightened main character is trying to understand why he does not have his own beast protector. Su Ping has only recently been reborn. He must not die. He is angry that he was reborn into such a weak chicken. It's like a game panel appears before the guy's eyes, announcing the conclusion of an incomprehensible agreement. But is it really this garbage bin that is bound by the contract? Su Ping is happy that his system is finally turned on. It's looking more and more like rebirth. The system announced that the owner of the pet store is Su Ping. It will be protected from enemy attacks. The hero's body is filled with extraordinary energy. He felt his strength and invulnerability. Now he knew that in this place any attack on him would be useless. The outraged guy orders his beast to tear Su Ping into pieces. The light filling the room changes color. But this time Su Ping stops the black monsoon with his bare hands. The guy realized that now he has power. The beast becomes helpless next to Su Ping. Now the main character haughtily asks the guy why he still doesn't like this service. The green mohawk is shocked that the owner was able to stop the monsoon with his bare hands. No one had ever talked about such a strong guy before. The main character realized his strength and with a smile offered the services of his pet store. He was ready to look after the black monsoon for a couple more days. But after Su Ping defeated the Black Monsoon, the owner and his beast very quickly escaped from the pet store. The panel appears in the store again. The system notifies that the problem in the store has been resolved, and one chance is given to update the store status. Unexpectedly, the system turned out to be very well thought out. Su Ping accepted the upgrade offer, and in an instant a strange wind arose. All the garbage rose up. The premises were transformed from a dirty dump into cleanliness and order. Is this really the update the system notified about? Suddenly, the guy notices the door of a room he hasn't been to yet. He opened the door and saw animal cages, but for some reason those animals seemed too small compared to the others. The system installed in the store notified that these were tamed animals. All tamed animals will be adjusted to standard sizes. Their number is two out of nine. The first level effects are the ability to train and heal pets. Su Ping thought that they needed special care, but it turned out that the owner did not need to worry. The animals were in a state of cultivation and did not need food. The guy starts talking to the system. He asked whether the owners should take these two animals and what should be done to prevent people from causing trouble. Su Ping activated the main line. The main quest begins. He needs to choose an animal and develop it to level three or higher. The hero is faced with a choice between the Thunder Mouse and the Moon Dog. He chooses the Thunder Mouse. Thunder Mouse. A beast of the thunder element. The main skill of the beast is to be cute. An unremarkable animal. It is mainly considered as a pet. Su Ping took the beast into his hands. He only cares about what kind of skill it is to be cute. And where is the thunder and lightning of the animal? The system notifies that depending on the type of training of the owner, the animal will achieve different skills. The beast was chosen. Su Ping needs to enter the cultivation dimension. Under the protagonist's feet, the floor cracks and a huge abyss appears, which begins to pull them into the abyss. The main character and his beast are flying in the space of the abyss. They fall onto a hard surface and realize that they are in some strange place, perhaps to another universe. Is this really the dimension of cultivation? Incredibly large tree trunks appeared before them. They were thousands of times larger than the heroes. The world around us greatly affected the hero and his tame beast. The system called this place the Cloudy Thunder Kingdom, which has been inhabited by giant beasts since ancient times, and reported a high probability of encountering 100-meter or smaller beasts, and also that there is a very low probability of encountering a beast whose size exceeds 10,000 meters. But the hero was not safe for long. A dark, terrible shadow suddenly hung over him. The hero held his breath. It was the shadow of a huge, terrible beast. It had long tentacles. Its skin was covered with rust. Its eyes glowed with demonic fire. This is a hundred thousand meter tall king of beasts. Thunderpool. Instantly, the beast's gaze is directed at our hero. He begins to approach and deadly lightning bolts fly out of his mouth. The owner died. But he is on his knees, barely breathing from fear. Is he really still alive after being hit by the beast? The system voice notifies that the owner was killed a second earlier and is now in the rebirth space. To survive, he needs not to leave this place, and failure to complete this task will lead to lower scores for the owner. 
Su Ping is trying to find out his points because if the number of points he gets is less than 60, he will be destroyed. The system turned off. The hero can't understand why the hell they don't tell him how many points he has. He's trying to think how he can survive in this world, especially if the King of Beasts kills him again. The panel appeared in front of Su Ping's face again. Instructions. The number of free revivals is unlimited. The time to complete the task is three days. If the task is failed, the points will be reduced again. The system offers to conclude a contract with the beast. Su Ping is confused, but the system is in no hurry to help. The heroes find themselves in a space of rebirth. Every part of their body begins to appear again. Subsequently, the temporary contract process occurs, the mental state of the hero and the Thunder Mouse successfully combined. After some time, all the inconveniences will disappear. The system wished you successful searches. The guy begins to look around, studying the area. They are surrounded only by bare tree trunks and strange animals. Su Ping analyzes that a horse-like animal should not be very dangerous. After entering into a temporary contract, Su Ping began to experience the fear of the Thunder Mouse. He realized that there was danger ahead. The hero averts his gaze to an animal similar in appearance to a horse and sees a huge 10-meter creature attacking a strange beast. This is a giant sandworm. He attacks and tears the horse apart. Su Ping watches what is happening in fear. He tries to look at the worm. The giant sandworm has huge, segmented body parts that are covered with rough, armor-like skin. His mustache is large and barbed, like fangs. The guy realized that this was his opportunity to earn points, because compared to other creatures, the sandworm seems small because it is less than a hundred meters. Su Ping orders the Thunder Mouse to grab the worm. They begin to attack first, while the creature is enthusiastically devouring the horse. The Thunder Mouse uses all its strength to carry out its master's orders. But the small animal finds itself helpless next to the giant creature. He attacks the worm and after the first blow falls helplessly. The system reports that the Thunder Mouse died from head damage, but a new skill has been unlocked. The system asks if the owner wants to revive the beast. Su Ping begins to think that the combat power of the Thunder Mouse is not enough at all. But he rejoices that fortunately, there is an opportunity to endlessly revive it. The hero believes that no matter how large the volume of blood of this beast is, it can be sucked out bit by bit. The owner, after the beast is revived, again gives orders. He shouts for the Thunder Mouse to not stop and approach the enemy. To do this, he needs to use his small body size to dodge attacks. Su Ping is impatient. He is already full of rage and eager to win. Again, he orders the Thunder Mouse to spin around the creature, confusing it. At that moment, the small mouse increases in size, its eyes become brighter, and in its gaze there is only anger and the desire to kill. It seems she begins to attack the giant worm, strikes hard. Su Ping rejoices at what she sees, but the Thunder Mouse only angers the creature. The sandworm begins to parry the blows, intercepts the mouse and squeezes it with all its might with its teeth. The panel appears again and reports that the Thunder Mouse died from internal damage. Su Ping is incredibly angry, but not ready to lose. He presses revive and the Thunder Mouse comes to life again. A strong fight breaks out and tension is felt. After almost every strike, the Thunder Mouse dies from its wounds, and each time it is revived, it becomes bigger and stronger. The alert panel reports that due to the high concentration of thunder in the environment, the Thunder Mouse has taken over some of its power. Lightning bolts can now be attached to the dash skill. Su Ping rejoices due to the successful increase in his animal's skill. He believes that now the elemental attack should completely penetrate the beetle's defense. The master tells the Thunder Mouse to use a new skill to end this deadly fight. The devoted beast carries out the order of the owner, tired and powerless, but defeats the voracious creature. A public address system appears like a voice from under the heavens. She reports that the Thunder Mouse has finished the battle. Its strength has increased to the first stage but the task was only 2% completed. Su Ping rejoices at the victory and feels his power. The Thunder Mouse destroyed the sandworm. The owner concludes that the Thunder Mouse can only use its skill once a day. Therefore, you need to let her rest before looking for her other prey. Suddenly, an earthquake begins in the universe. Su Ping falls down, puzzled. A large number of stones begin to fly from the sky, showering everything around. The ground is cracking underfoot. Su Ping wonders if there could be an earthquake here, and a few seconds later, a huge number of giant sandworms appear in front of him. They are a hundred meters high, 
big and scary. It was from them that the earth shook and stones fell. Giant sandworms are much larger worms than the one they defeated. One of the worms, with its huge tail and hard shell, strikes our heroes. They attacked Su Ping and the Thunder Mouse. The worms don't stop. They make blow after blow, dust rises. The exhausted hero wonders whether there is any point in fighting them. Adults are much stronger. They broke Su Ping five or six ribs. After the blows, the Thunder Mouse does not even show signs of life. It has not yet recovered from the last battle. Su Ping, in despair, wounded and exhausted, decides not to resist. There are too many enemies. It will be difficult to defeat giants with chitinous shells with two fists. The smartest choice is to respawn and then level up. The hero is ready to accept death. The worm is about to bite him in half. But suddenly the powerless and barely alive Thunder Mouse opens its eyes. She uses Thunder Rush and uses her strength to rip off a huge worm click. Su Ping feels the fighting spirit of the Thunder Mouse. He believes that it is time to consolidate the success. Even the beast did not give up. The hero picks up from the ground the fang of a demonic beast, which was torn off by thunder. He will use it as a weapon for defense. Su Ping will not sit still. Despite their chances, they decided to fight to the last. A random respawn has been selected, the system notified. The hero died and was reborn again, but still feels tired, strange. The notification panel turns on. The system explains that revival has a certain psychological burden on the owner. The current owner's mental strength is too low. It is normal for him to feel tired after being revived frequently in a short period of time. The system asks you to improve your strength and also pay attention to training your mental strength. Su Ping concludes that no matter how good a car engine is, without gasoline, it is useless. It turns out that the hero will need to train this body well. He notices that his animal is feeling anxious again, that danger is probably nearby. The hero sees that the terrain where they were reborn is different from the one on which they fought before. The surface is hard to the touch. It turns out they appeared on the body of a huge beetle. He opens his wings and they fall to the ground. This is a ten-meter beast, stone cockroach. This beast is smaller compared to others. This is Su Ping's opportunity to defeat him, gain points and level up. But at that moment, green liquid flows out of his mouth. The hero's first thought was that it was acid. But this does not scare him, and he is ready for battle. Su Ping is determined to win and has faith in his beast. He tells the Thunder Mouse to show them his new power. The heroes fought for a long time. Battle after battle they died and were reborn. They are tired, but still on the defensive. The battle turned out to be terrible and difficult. On their way there was not only a stone cockroach, but also many other strange creatures. They won and completed the task. The system notifies information about the hero's path traveled. The master used revival a total of 68 times. The thunder mouse used revival a total of 847 times. There were also a total of 472 kills of the creatures that were out for the blood of Su Ping and the thunder mouse. Thunder mouse was able to upgrade his skills to thunderstorm charge. She also received the primary grade dragon beast identification award. Su Ping is surprised by his beasts level up. Thunder Mouse had actually learned the skills of the legendary secret techniques. Heavenly Beast skills are divided into six qualities, depending on their combat power. The higher the quality, the more powerful the skills. And among these great skills, some inherited from ancient times are called secret skills. The method of acquiring secret skills has long been lost and only gifted celestial beasts can comprehend it. The system reported that the duration of exposure to the thunder element allowed the Thunder Mouse to reach its full potential and learn secret skills. Su Ping, exhausted and desperate, wants to return home as soon as possible. The owner leaves the cloudy Thunder Kingdom. The temporary contract between the owner and the pet is terminated, preparing to return. And again the annual competition of Fengshan University in Longjiang. Today is the last qualifying day. They will find out which of the participants gets the victory this year and whose celestial beast will win. Among the crowd of people she can be seen, a girl with red hair. This is a third-year student at Fengshan University, a martial beast master. Her name is Su Yanying. She is upset because she thought that there would be no problems with regional selections. Why did Zhang Shuihan win those competitions? The girl came across promising people who had it written on their foreheads that they would win. In these competitions she will face Zhang Xiao. All she had left was a hundred-toothed tiger, which she barely healed. She realized that in order to win, 
it was time for her to take the Thunder Mouse, because according to the rules of the game, it is necessary to have two animals. Su Yan Ying went to the pet store. Yes, and Su Li Ying, and her main hope is the hundred-toothed tiger, which everyone should see. She reached the pet store, but the premises were empty. The girl arrived on time, so the first thing she thought was that the owner was going to move. The owner of the Thunder Mouse said that she had come to pick up her beast. The owner left the room, and he said that this is the Su Ping pet store. The girl started the conversation first. She said that she left the Thunder Mouse half a month ago, and now she wants to pick it up. Su Ping is surprised if this is the owner of the Thunder Mouse. Su Yan Ying asked the owner how the Thunder Mouse was feeling now. He coldly replied that she felt fine. It couldn't be better. The owner also added that the girl would not forget to make payment. The guy went to pick up the animal. The girl didn't understand why the store owner was a little strange. Was he really worried that she didn't pay right away? Strange. She sweetly replied that the owner should not worry, even though she had arrived earlier, she would still pay the full amount, no less. Su Ping looked very upset and rude, and the girl could not understand what she had done wrong and why he was behaving this way. Su Ping picks up the sleepy thunder mouse, and she says it's time for her to return home. The owner asks the beast not to forget him when he returns home. He was very used to the thunder mouse. This is a difficult goodbye for him. Su Ping received a notification that money has been credited to the store's account. Money was automatically converted into energy points. The notification board appeared again indicating that a new task had been received. To complete this task, Su Ping must obtain a personal celestial beast. The completion time for this task is seven days. The reward for completing the task is one random War Beast Master skill book. The penalty for failing to complete a task is that the number of points will decrease. If there are not enough points, the owner will be destroyed. The owner can buy an awakening potion from the store to become a master of war beasts. Su Ping doesn't believe that he can become a martial beast master. The system provides indications that the store is in the owner's mind, and if he wants to buy something in the future, he can simply call up the store window. The hero wanted to purchase a potion, but he did not have enough energy points. It turns out that money is also converted into energy points at a ratio of 100 to 1. The energy balance is one point. Su Ping can't believe why there are so few. But after a moment, the account is replenished plus 108 points. The owner is filled with energy. Thanks to him, the beast has mastered several secret skills. Once again, the show appears before our eyes. This is simply amazing. The dragon dog Zhang Xiao seriously injures the enemy with its first attack. He severely injured the hundred-toothed tiger Su Ying. She is very scared and desperate. A third-year student at Fengshan University, martial beast master Zhang Xiao, the owner of the demonic dragon dog, he believes that, as always, his strength is at its best. Comments are heard that this was expected from Zhang Xiao, known as the Chosen Terminator. The man watching the fight in a nice suit and combed hair sympathizes with Su Yunying because she was once a strong athlete, but she was unlucky that she competed against such masters for two years in a row. Her celestial beast is seriously injured and she has virtually no chance of winning. People actively leave comments on the battle and argue among themselves. One of the unusual viewers of the show says that the beast is powerless. They, in the face of absolute loss, either give up or fight recklessly, leaving no other choice. Two guys join in with the girl's words and start arguing. They say that the result of this fight is directly related to the opportunity to join the main competition in the future. Even if the chances are small, Su Yan Ying will want to do everything possible to fight to the end. The host of the show adds fire. He says it's time to see how Su Yan Ying copes with this task. The girl faces a difficult choice. The beast is powerless. But what to do to admit loss or compete to the death? Su Yan Ying doesn't believe she lost so quickly, but she knows that the hundred-toothed tiger lost last time too. Despite the fact that he was treated, he is still not completely healthy. The presenter continues to comment on the fight. The tiger was injured again, and now there is practically no hope of victory left. The only thing on the girl's mind is that it's really time to put an end to her three-year university career. The almost victorious Zhang Xiao's evil laugh and his desire for blood and victory is hard to miss. He tells his demonic dragon dog to let his opponent die with dignity. Zhang Xiao has made his move. He plans to end this before the tiger returns to the fight.
The girl cannot look at how they want to mercilessly kill her wounded beast. With a fiery bullet heading towards her, she decides to give up. She wants to at least leave the beast alive. The light that came from the demonic dragon dog filled the entire stadium. Some spectators were very scared. At the last moment, the judge of the fight managed to put a shield in front of the beast. Few students are capable of destroying a star shield. Su Yan Ying gave up. They congratulate Zhang Xiao for winning the first round. The guy who wanted blood next time promised her not to hope for success. The girl, in despair, doesn't know what to do. She only has the Thunder Mouse left. But since she took it from the store, the mouse eats only garbage. Perhaps this dark store has spoiled her. She is behaving strangely. We need to think about whether the mouse will be capable of fighting. The owner understands that the animal must not be exposed to pointless danger. After all, even a hundred-toothed tiger lost from one attack. The host announces that according to the rules for the next round, Su Yan Ying only has the Thunder Mouse left. The girl is wondering whether she should release the Thunder Mouse. Even if she has a secret skill, this will only increase the Thunder Mouse from the first stage of combat power to the second stage. And the demonic dragon dog has the third degree of strength. She faces a difficult choice, and the audience only mocks her. She can either win or lose everything. Su Yan Ying understands that the difference in strength is too great. She can't let the Thunder Mouse die in vain. It looks like it's worth stopping at this point. As soon as she wanted to announce that she was giving up, Thunder Mouse suddenly explodes and enters the battle. The host announces the start of the round. It seems that Su Yan Ying is already ready for this battle without any expectations. Zhang Xiao longs for death and is glad that this small animal came out on its own. Otherwise, it would not be interesting. The battle has begun. The owner tells his dragon dog to burn this piece of trash to the ground. With hope in her eyes, Su Yan Ying told the Thunder Mouse to use lightning speed to dodge. Thunder Mouse was knocked down by a strong attack from the demonic dragon dog. The demonic dragon dog is ready for close combat. It looks like Zhang Xiao has no plans to close the round. He wants to slowly teach this little mouse a lesson it will never forget. But this little beast was too fast. The only thing heard from the audience is surprise and interest in watching the show. He's not that weak. Thunder Mouse starts attacking. It begins to emit electric current, and at that moment she strikes with a strong lightning strike. Is this really the seventh stage of the thunder system? The light illuminated everything around, and a stream of lightning went beyond the dome that covers the arena. I can't believe that a first-degree thunder mouse was able to use a seventh-degree skill. The demonic dragon dog was defeated and killed. It lay there and showed no signs of life, and Zhang Xiao, scared, doesn't believe how this is even possible. This is a thunderous victory. Thunder Mouse had truly mastered the seventh degree skill. This is simply amazing. They congratulate the winner. Su Yan Ying is simply surprised and does not believe how this could even happen. She couldn't even think that this was possible. The girl wonders when exactly the mouse managed to become so strong and where the seventh degree thunderclap came from. A few days ago, she just took her to the pet store. Is it really all about that strange dark store in which she left it? Su Yan Ying rejoices. Perhaps the owner of the store is some kind of legendary master, although he does not look like him at all. The host of the show announces that this fight was destined to go down in university history. But there's still one more round left. The loser, Zhang Xiao, suspects that no one would send some helpless little trash to such a serious competition. But he doesn't give up. If they defeated the demonic dog, then let them try to defeat his stone rhinoceros. Zhang Xiao believes that the thunder strike will be useless now. It is an earth-type sky beast. Su Yan Ying has never seen him use this beast before. It is his secret trump card. He summoned a level four stone rhinoceros with incredible abilities. The upcoming round is foreshadowed by something bad for the thunder mouse. The round has begun. The thunder mouse is ready for battle and it is not afraid of its enemy. The beefy man reasons that Zhang Xiao is probably going to give it his all. But this little creature is still not afraid. They think this round will not be interesting. The red-haired girl says that the Thunder Mouse has a strong fighting spirit. If she only had the strength of the first level, then she would not be able to stand on her paws after using the skills of the seventh level. Perhaps she hasn't shown her full strength yet. The round has begun. Zhang Xiao applied several enhancement skills to the Stone Rhinoceros. At the moment, the stone rhinoceros's combat power has reached at least grade 5, 
Su Yan Ying notices the intense tension. She realizes that she must give the Thunder Mouse a boost, but damn, the distance is too far to use. Tensions rise as member Su Yan Ying makes a mistake. The Thunder Mouse actually comes face to face with the Rock Rhino without the enhancement skill. All Zhang Xiao wants is victory. He wants the mouse to die and wants the stone rhinoceros to crush the mouse with all his strength. The capabilities of the mouse are very great. It split in two and jumped out from under the paws of the stone rhinoceros. This is simply impossible. The show's host notes that this is another seventh degree skill. But the Thunder Mouse was no longer fighting the stone rhinoceros. It instead headed straight towards Zhang Xiao. Maybe she wants to kill him. The animal caught the enemy unexpectedly. It took advantage of its opponent's weakness. Thunderclap. Zhang Xiao tries to use the shield at the last moment. Thunder Mouse and her clone used Thunder Punch at the same time. Zhang Xiao's star shield is almost completely destroyed. Can Zhang Xiao survive this attack? The host is actively commenting on the show. But subsequently, only a crater appears on the field, which is the result of a terrible battle. Member Zhang Xiao seems to have just fainted. He was saved by the Divine Phoenix of Judges. In the third round, Zhang Xiao lost and Su Yan Ying won. The judge congratulates Su Yan Ying for successfully passing the selection. Su Yan Ying still can't believe his victory. In addition to the thunderous jump, the mouse also mastered residual cloning. She is sure that the owner of the pet store did it. Looking at his inconspicuous appearance, one would not think that he is a great hero. The girl concludes that the owner of the pet store is really difficult to defeat. Su Ping earned more than 10,000 yuan in a week, but he still believes that you can't just rely on a pet store. The system notifies that currently the Su Ping store only offers services for shelter, rental, and sale of feed. Due to the fact that the owner did not purchase spaces for the animals, two spaces in the store are currently unusable, which the system gives away free of charge. Using one seat costs 10 yuan per hour. The Celestial Beast Rental Service is a comprehensive assessment based on the combat power rank and classification of the Celestial Beasts being rented. Currently, the owner has not bred any Celestial Beasts, so the assessment is not possible for the sale of feed. The owner must personally collect the ingredients for the food. Prices are set depending on the quality of the feed. Su Ping asks the system about the ingredients, whether they can be collected anywhere, or only needed in special cultivation areas. The system's voice makes it clear that the ingredients are available in all cultivation areas. The Cloud Thunder Realm is just one of countless high-ranking cultivation places. In addition, the higher the level of the cultivation zone, the higher the opportunity to obtain the best feed. What the hell, Su Ping is angry that he was with the Thunder Mouse in the high-ranking zone for three whole days and missed the opportunity to collect good food. There is anger on his face. Within three days, he would have already become a martial beastmaster. But instead, I missed this opportunity. This cannot continue. The owner is back in the store. He asks the system to show him a list of cultivation zones. Due to the low number of points, he can only afford the areas with the lowest points. A notification from the system that Su Ping, as a professional store owner, must consciously collect all things related to celestial beasts. The system selected the appropriate cultivation zone for the owner. To pass through a low-rank cultivation zone, one energy point is required. The name of the universe is an extraterrestrial meteorite. Su Ping understands that you should not miss any opportunities to upgrade your beast. The hero entered a new dimension. It was incredible and captivating with its amazing beauty. To complete the task, the owner was temporarily given items for beginners. This is the assessment of ancient flowers and herbs. Each item can only be used three times. The hero needs to think about items to activate them. The system notifies that the time to complete the task is one day. The number of free revivals is 30 times. She also wished the hero a successful search. Behind him, the hero notices a large, transparent, square-shaped sphere. It contains three scrolls on old paper. He understands that he needs the information that is on the sheets. The main character gives all his strength and subsequently manages to pick up one of those objects. Information appears in front of him that he can now receive by looking at different types of plants. It describes three types of plants, about the fiery tree, stone flowers, and prickly grass. But the rarity of these plants is normal. Therefore, we need to continue searching. Su Ping understands that food that can be collected without any danger has a very low price. A stone snake appears on the hero's path. 
This is a celestial beast whose strength is level 8. The creature was eating a very strange plant. The guy sees that this plant is called Rock Rose. You can't find it often. It is used for long-term use and can increase the level of impact for fire-type animals. Su Ping understands that this is his chance. Expensive pet food is always found in dangerous places, but it has limited storage space. Therefore, Su Ping must immediately choose the most expensive one. He runs up to the beast and tries to snatch the plant from it. The animal attacks the guy. It tries to bite off his hand. The hero dies, but at the last moment he manages to put the plant in storage. Su Ping uses the revival and understands that the price of the plant justifies any means. The hero still has 29 revivals left. And so, step by step, our hero obtains the rarest plants while falling under the jaws of terrible creatures. He has to go to different places and go through paths of high difficulty levels. Su Ping met new creatures each time who tested his courage and determination. And thanks to his intelligence, he found the right plants. Over time, the number of free revives has been used up. The hero made his way out of the cultivation zone. After 30 revivals in one day, Su Ping still feels very tired. But now, after completing an important task, problems should not appear. The hero has collected a lot of plants. Now he needs to put everything on the shelves. This is a red bird. It is called Xiao Huo. Her head is covered with a large beak, which is bright in color and has pointed teeth. But her condition is weak. She looks barely alive. His owners are very worried. This animal has not eaten even a grain of rice in a week. This guy named Fang Yu Jing is a member of the Black Wolf team. He invites his grandfather to give the bird food to try, which is the most expensive skybird food in the Shanchen area. Food that seems strange at first glance guarantees restoration of the animal's appetite. When the bird saw the food, it was happy. His eyes began to glow red and instantly she rose from her seat. The owners rejoice at the animal's appetite. They want him to taste the food as quickly as possible. But taking only one worm makes her feel bad. A cough begins and black blood comes out of the mouth. Fang Yujing's sister, whose name is Xiao Yu, is very scared. Xiao Huo looks like he would never eat even the world's rarest dark worms. We need to help the beast as quickly as possible before it's too late. Everyone is very scared. Judging by the symptoms, the bird has a parasitic heart infection. The guy shouts that he needs to quickly contact the hospital for celestial beasts. The grandfather lifts the powerless and sick bird in his arms. Desperate but hopeful, he will take her to the doctor as soon as possible. But suddenly the grandmother comes into the room. In her hands she holds stone rose hips, which should help the beast. Xiao Huo must be saved. After an unsuccessful attempt to feed the beast, the girl tells her grandmother that the bird is very sick, so they go to the Shanshan area. And the bird comes to life and snatches the stone rose hip from the woman's hands. Everyone is in shock. But they are happy that the beast has started eating again. The beast stood before the heroes, and they were relieved when they saw that it was healthy again. But it turns out that the strange fruit seller said that the animal will only be healthy if it regularly eats rock hips. The girl is scared. Did they really feed their bird incorrectly? But the brother does not believe the words of any merchants. This is the first time he hears that animal food is also divided into types. The indignant guy asks his grandmother how much she bought this strange food for. It turns out that the cost of one berry is 130 yuan. In total, they spent more than 1,000 yuan. The extremely dissatisfied young man says that animal feed in Shanshan cannot cost that much. It occurs to him that the merchant is working illegally. Xiao Yu says she has heard about illegal stores mixing various chemicals into the feed, and the animals like this food so much that they don't stop eating it. And if this food is taken away, the animals go crazy. But if the heavenly beast continues to eat it, it will die. Grandfather simply watches, frightened, as the bird eats these berries one after another. Fang Yujing tries to find out from his grandmother where this store is located and what it is called. He promises to find this merchant and tear off his head. A puzzled grandmother tries to remember the name of the store. She thinks it's a pet store called Xiao Tao Qi. Brother and sister find a store. They call to the owner. They have a serious conversation. This is the Su Ping store. The owners of the beast are trying to find out what exactly the guy added to the food for the celestial beasts. Shocked, Su Ping remembers that he only sold one item the entire time. Are these two really talking about rock hips? The guy is trying to figure out if their animal really has problems with cultivation. And the hero tells customers that his food for celestial animals is completely natural without any impurities. 
He asks if the red bird had any side effects after eating the berries. Outraged, Fang Yu Jing does not believe that the food is without additives. He yells at the store owner. The guy wants Su Ping to tell him the truth because the bird was eating food nonstop. A crowd gathers near the store and begins talking to each other. They say this store has had problems before. Animal feces were scattered throughout the store, and now they sell expensive food here. An angry Su Ping hears them say that this store is illegal and it was exposed on the internet that they use celestial beast food with low-quality nutritional supplements. The girl tells her brother not to talk nonsense. She wants Fang Yu Jing to ask his friends from the Heavenly Beast Food Manufacturers Association to check this illegal store. Su Ping is already torn from the inside. He is furious and offended that no one believes him because he sells quality food. The guy takes off like an animal and demands evidence for this unsubstantiated accusation. Out of surprise, the girl falls to the floor. She doesn't understand how this man's aura suddenly became so scary. From what he saw, the brother tries to hit Su Ping. Did someone really dare to insult his sister? With his huge, strong hand, Fang Yu Jing grabs the store owner by the neck. Su Ping's face was calm and did not express any emotion. The protection system turns on, after which Fang Yu Jing's hand and each finger are broken by an unknown force. The guy who a few seconds ago was ready to kill the owner is now scared. He doesn't understand why Su Ping was so strong. The store owner receives an alert from the system. She says a limited assignment has been received. The store was slandered without reason. If you do not prove your innocence and the usefulness of your food, the store will suffer losses. The reward for successful completion is one chance to enter any cultivation zone for an unlimited number of Sundays. Su Ping will have a stay time of five days, and the penalty for losing will be deducted ten points. The crowd that saw the fight was afraid. They said the store owner just started a fight. Visitors are outraged and don't want to come back here anymore. Su Ping understands that if you don't explain to them, then not only will his points be confiscated, but he will also have no clients. He takes action and says that since everyone has doubts about his store, he will explain everything. First, he asks for silence. The owner guarantees that there are absolutely no problems with animal food in this store. Evil people simply demand that the store be closed. They don't need proof. They believe that the guy has already proven himself. Su Ping is already losing patience. He's just furious. Nobody wants to listen to him. For the last time and loudly, he asks for silence. People did not expect such rage. They are scared. Then, in a calm voice, he asks if anyone has a low-level water-type celestial beast with them. The sister who came with Fang Yu Jing says that she has a water-type beast called Sprinkler. The brother indignantly asks what the owner is going to do with the animal. Su Ping at this time is already holding a blue berry in his hands. The shopkeeper gives the blue Joanna fruit to the celestial beast, after which everyone should make sure that his food is not harmful at all. The crowd still watching in the store begins to discuss again. This fruit is only available in special heavenly beast stores, but it is used to treat constipation and diarrhea. People laugh. But after the animal ate an unknown berry, Something strange begins to happen to it. He grows in size, begins to glow, and water shoots out with all his might from every part of his body. The brother and sister cannot understand why their animal is glowing so much and what is happening to it. They are scared. It turns out that after the animal ate the blue Joanna fruit, its power level increased. The water sprinkler became stronger. Su Ping explains that blue Joanna fruits can raise the level of weak beasts from level 1 to level 2. This proves that the food from the cultivation area is not some kind of fake. However, this Springler's level only increases by one rank. When the rank of celestial beasts increases, the strength increases slightly. The less combat power obtained with the enhancement, the worse the skills and vice versa. At the same time, the bloodline of the heavenly beasts is also divided into ranks. The people who were shouting to close this pet store a few minutes ago are surprised that the beast has actually risen. They begin to believe that the food is not fake. Fang Yu Jing had only heard of the treasures used by the celestial beasts in the Federation. Looking at the beast's appearance, there is no doubt that it has successfully leveled up. Fang Yu Jing's sister doesn't believe that this is her beast. Maybe Su Ping replaced it. The personality of the owner of this store is too scary. The frightened guy takes his sister and asks for forgiveness for the fact that they really went too far. 
he understood the strength and power of Su Ping. Now the owner demands 8,700 yuan for one blueberry fruit. Su Ping does not deceive customers. He is an honest businessman. Fang Yujing agrees to pay, because for 8,700 yuan, it is very profitable to increase the level of a weak baby. It's simply priceless. Xiao Yu takes out money from his wallet. Su Ping understands that the price is as low as before. The animal food he was dying for is very cheap. The owner calls the system. He demands that it increase the price because these amazing foods are too cheap. But the prices have already been set and cannot be changed. Su Ping says the Springler properties are too low. Therefore, he advises using colorful leaves beast underscore. And besides, for the red bird to fully recover, you need to take the rock hips for a long time. Fang Yu Jing agrees. He said that his sister will pay for everything. But he asks the owner if it's really that effective, even though it's cheap. He wants to know if this is definitely not a lie. People want to buy Su Ping fruits. After all, the effect is visible for such a cheap price. The guy is happy that there are buyers for his product because he was worried that he wouldn't be able to sell anything at all. The store system notifies that 31,560 yuan has been credited to the store account. And at the moment, the owner has 315 energy points. For completing the task, the owner has the opportunity to enter any cultivation zone for five days. Su Ping is happy that he has finally collected the required amount. Now he can buy an awakening potion. The guy asks the system to open a store. He buys the potion and will now become a martial beast master just by drinking this small bottle of potion. The hero thought that if he bought it, then he bought it. There's nothing to do. He needs to drink this bottle. Su Ping begins to feel something strange. It's as if he's being torn apart from the inside and his whole body is on fire. He feels strong. This is what he was waiting for and did everything to receive this award. Now the hero has become a master of war beasts. His speed became incredible. With one hand, he was able to catch even a fly that was flying nearby. The system says that the owner has 215 energy points left. It asks if he would like to increase his level of the pool of chaos spirits. Using a new level requires 10 energy points at a time. But to raise the pool of chaos spirits to the second level, you need 100 energy points. Su Ping has many chances to get a mid-rank animal without leveling up. But if you use enhancement, a high-level animal may appear. The hero thinks it's worth a try. Now he is determined the guy needs this chance. He believes that here and now it's either success or failure. Something strange begins to happen around. The hero is almost knocked off his feet by a huge beam of light that descends from the sky to the floor. Smoke rises. Su Ping is only interested in one thing. He wants to know which celestial beast he will now receive. The confused and frightened hero does not understand that what is standing in front of him is just a small skeleton. This is the lowest-ranked demon-type beast. Most likely only the most hopeless people should care for it. The owner is outraged. Can this really cost a hundred energy points? The skeleton chuckles, which angers Su Ping even more. A system appears again, which says that the owner has successfully completed the task, for which he receives one random book of skills of the Master of War Beasts. Su Ping reasons that there are many powerful creatures in high-ranking cultivation zones, so no matter how much the basic properties increase, the skeleton will not escape the fate of being killed in seconds. But now, with killing skills, the hero gets benefits with minimal investment. It has been discovered that the host has met the necessary conditions to start a new main questline. Now he needs to raise the animal to an average and above level, seven days to complete the task. The guy is outraged for such demands. Even the Thunder Mouse had properties slightly below average. And a small skeleton, even for its type, is a complete bottom. But the hero is not sad because there is always a way out. Although the difference in levels is too big, you still can't do anything. Suddenly a voice is heard in the store. The guy's first thought was that this could be a client. But for Su Ping, this voice seemed very familiar. This is Su Yan Ying with Thunder Mouse and Girlfriend. The dissatisfied owner leaves the room where he had just been with his beast. He realized that it was this girl again. The guy called her 108 yuan and asked what the purpose of her visit to the store was. The girl remarked that he should not call her that anymore because her name is Su Yan Ying, and in general, she is outraged by what the owner did to the Thunder Mouse because it wasn't like that before. Su Ping smiles. He doesn't understand that they are all unhappy. After all, he didn't do anything.
The owner said it was just regular walks and games. He also added whether she had any other questions. The girl is indignant, because how can you call ordinary walks the cultivation of a thunder mouse? The mouse was not even afraid of the fourth-level dragon dog. But now, for some reason, it is shaking in front of its owner. Su Ping mockingly suggests that the Thunder Mouse somehow repeat their walks. Su Yan Ying is puzzled because this pressure is above the sixth level. But her friend turns to her. She said that the owner looks like an ordinary person, and the store itself is small and ordinary. Maybe Su Yan Ying was just mistaken. The girl asks her friend to be quieter. Now she can't explain it. But this guy is most likely a seventh level master. If you make him angry, your life will be in danger. Su Ping watches the girl's conversation. In fact, he is only a first-degree master. Judging by the fact that the system did not give a limited task, the problem here is not with the animal. But later, the owner asks whether the girls think his prices for services in the pet store are high. Su Yan Ying's eyes become surprised. She thinks that the owner is testing her for truthfulness. How high prices can be here? For just 108 yuan, the Thunder Mouse became so strong. For this, the girl transfers funds to the store's account in the amount of 1,000 yuan. She wants the owner to accept a little gratitude from her. But a second later, Su Yan Ying receives a notification that the funds transfer failed because the other party rejected it. The girl is shocked. There is no emotion on Su Ping's face. He is angry, but tells the girl that this is just funny. Tension appears. The girl thinks if this is not enough for the owner, then what about this? She makes a transfer of funds to the pet store in the amount of 5,000 yuan. Su Ping rejects the funds transfer again. The girl doesn't understand if this is still not enough. Su Yan Ying asks her friend Lela for help because this is very important to her. The friend understands that she still has no choice. The girl again makes a transfer of 10,000 yuan because the corresponding price for the work needs to be paid. She believes that this is a rare opportunity to meet a great authority. But the owner is already seething with anger. He is already blazing with fire. Veins are visible on his face. Each time his expression becomes more and more dissatisfied. But he again rejects the transfer. Su Yan Ying doesn't give up. She can't believe it and transfers funds again. The matter needs to be completed and he transfers 100,000 yuan. Su Ping rejoices in his luck and now tries to accept the transfer of funds as quickly as possible. The system reports that the price of this store cannot be changed so the owner is prohibited from accepting additional funds for the store's services. The fourth transfer was rejected. The girl is simply in panic and despair. Is this still not enough? She has eyes but no longer pupils because she begs to be told the price. Now the upset owner says that he doesn't need the money. He wants to know why the girl came. Su Ping understands that if he is going to rise higher, he should get used to the rules. Su Yan Ying is simply shocked. Surely the owner won't ask for even a penny. She doesn't believe that in this world there really are young and strong people who are indifferent to fame and wealth, and even next to her. The girl begins to tell the owner that in a few days they have a competition, but the other celestial beasts are very injured and she only hopes for the Thunder Mouse. Su Yan Ying asks to strengthen the beast in three days. Su Ping is happy that the Thunder Mouse is back again, and pumping up the little skeleton will now be much more convenient. The system reports that a client has been detected who has a need to cultivate an animal, so the owner can use the educational level option, and he can also accept an order according to the cost of the service. The hero discovers that this function is quite profitable, but currently only orders below the third degree are accepted. Su Ping lists the cost of the Celestial Beast Enhancement Service for three days as being worth 10,000 yuan. Su Yan Ying thought about it. 10,000 is not cheap. But if it results in the same improvement as the Thunder Mouse's past cultivation, then it is worth the cost. She understands that this level of cultivation brings with it great benefits. The girl didn't know about this place before. Losing so many cultivation opportunities is truly a big loss. After Su Yan Ying agrees to Su Ping's services, he asks to bring the animal to the pet store, which needs to be looked after. But three huge animals enter the store. The system says that a client's request for temporary taming of the beast has been detected. In order not to affect the reputation of the store, the owner is advised to increase the level of the sections as quickly as possible. The owner is shocked. He cannot understand how this will affect his reputation. The initially provided free sections are made from waste spiritual stones, 
so there is a high probability of causing a mutation in the beast. Su Ping orders the system to increase the level and at the same time buy three new cells. The owner is shocked. The system informs that the cost of the section is 100 yuan per hour, and if there are no points, the taming sections will disappear. He tells the girl that three animals for three days costs a total of 21,600 yuan. The guy also reminds Su Yan Ying not to forget to transfer the funds before transferring. Lila seems that the owner is a strange person and his expression is too scary. Funds have been credited to the pet store account. The owner received a side task, which was to complete the first order for animal cultivation. Job requirements. This shop's production and service must be of the highest quality. The owner must cultivate and more than double the initial combat strength and power of the client's celestial beasts. Su Ping analyzes that it is necessary to raise the properties of a small core to an above average level. Now it is on the first level. The hero thinks about how exactly to cultivate the beast compared to cultivating the thunder mouse. Then it's like water and wine. The owner is ready to perform an additional task. He decides to take on two tasks at once. The hero has a chance to enter any cultivation zone. Naturally, he will choose the elite one. In his opinion, among all the worlds, the most suitable place to increase the level of a small skeleton is the kingdom of the deceased Hundunya. The owner, along with the skeleton and the thunder mouse, enter a new dimension. They fall into red water, where they are engulfed by tentacles, and the strong smell of blood is everywhere. The heavy smell of corpses is everywhere. Breathe heavily. Everything here is filled with bones and skeletons, and the entire dimension is bloody. Suddenly, someone attacks the heroes. This is a huge skeleton that has come back from the dead. The owner tells the Thunder Mouse that the enemy is here. This creature's weapon is a huge rotten bone. This strange monster is trying to destroy Su Ping and the heavenly beasts. But at the last moment the Thunder Mouse strikes. She's trying to destroy a huge skeleton. The guy scoffs that it turns out that not everyone in the elite zones has reached the kingdom of animals. This creature was underestimated. After defeat it is filled with anger and destroys the little skeleton. The small skeleton dies due to crushing. The owner revives the beast and orders the thunder mouse to use thunderclap. The mouse is no longer as weak as last time. Her powers are incredible. She uses the thunder sword to cut the monster's arms, but the huge creature turns out to be not so weak. It strikes and fights back. Thunder mouse dies from ruptured internal organs. But the next prey of the huge monster is a small skeleton. The creature with all its strength lifts a huge number of bones from the ground and destroys it with a blow from the beast. But the owner is not going to give up. He again revives the thunder mouse and the little skeleton. But this time, despite trying, the heavenly beasts are too scared. This giant skeleton seems invincible. Su Ping has no choice but to use the book. This is a combat skill called Killing Intent. Wanting victory, he imparts combat skill to his celestial beasts. The hero thinks that victory is now definitely his. With renewed vigor, the heavenly beasts go into battle. But the power of the huge monster is so strong that it only delivers one blow. But for all the heroes, it turns out to be fatal. From such a blow, the thunder mouse, the small skeleton, and the owner die. Su Ping chooses to revive. Each part of the hero's body begins to appear in the very place where they were killed. The hero is not going to lose. He wants to win. After being hit by a huge monster, he realizes that the enemy's weak point is opening up in front of him. The monster has an asymmetrical center of gravity of the body, and this makes it difficult to maintain balance. At first glance, it is not vulnerable, but in fact it is very brittle. Thunder Mouse uses separation. Now she is twice as strong. The animals attack the huge creature and hit it in the most vulnerable places, the connection of bones. The owner watches as one cuts off a leg and another pierces the cervical spine. He realizes that he really needs the gem built into the monster's body. Therefore, he will do everything to win. The Thunder Beast begins to attack. With his skills and his strength, he breaks the bones of a huge monster, separating his body parts from each other. Subsequently, the enemy's skull, on which the red diamond was placed, flies off. The huge skull diamond flies off and hits the small skeleton in the head. The system reports that the Thunder Mouse finishes the kill and increases its level. Now, by using the power of thunder and lightning to create two temporary clones, there is a slight possibility of creating a third clone. The owner is pleased with the result, because the beast can now create more clones. Meanwhile, a small skeleton is watching the magic stone, which has not only incredible shine, but also the smell of death. 
Instantly, the stone disappears from the hands of the beast. It turns out that this is an amazing skill of demonic-type celestial beasts, which can be enhanced by absorbing the beast of the same type. type. A small skeleton begins to absorb the power of a huge monster. This makes him stronger, and he gains a new skill called Basic Sword Art. The owner is happy that now his beast will be able to crush other skeletons. He analyzes that the enormous work has finally paid off. But suddenly, an unknown object appears behind them, resembling a huge bat of the demonic universe. An unknown creature appears in front of them, resembling a girl with red eyes and a red crystal in its skull. But half of her body is just bones. Su Ping cannot determine her rank, species, strength, and skills. The system simply doesn't work. The hero thinks that this is a high-ranking creature. Now the only thing on his mind is whether he can use her to get another jewel. The creature reaches out its hand and instantly begins to absorb the entire essence of the hero and his unprecedented animals. Everyone dies, Su Ping begins to think. The creature turns out to be very strong because it killed them at first sight. The hero is reborn and asks the monster if she is by chance the owner of this kingdom. He continues the dialogue and receives no response. Already with a mockery, Su Ping asks if the monster with a half-human body has intelligence. Without answering, she simply begins to absorb the hero again. But he made an attempt to find conversational contact with her. The owner died. This time he has an infinite number of revivals, but he is in no hurry to be reborn. Maybe she just doesn't understand Su Ping. The hero concludes that he is wasting his time because free cheese can only be found in a mousetrap. He decides not to waste his time and goes to another place. The hero finds himself in a new dimension. He tries to look at everything. This place seems quite calm to him. He rises from his feet and notices a huge crowd of people standing like an army. But there he notices her, the demonic girl who killed him with one look. She looks up and is surprised to see Su Ping standing over them. The guy meets her gaze and realizes that he needs to run. But he doesn't have time to escape before someone catches him with a huge hand, which is the size of the owner's body. A terrible monster appears in front of him, sitting on a throne. It is a mighty skeleton. He is wearing the armor of a knight, and on his skull he has a crown of bones. It turns out that from the very beginning, Su Ping was reborn on the skull of this large creature. And now this creature is interrogating the owner. He is only interested in who this person is and what he is doing here. The hand squeezes the hero with all his might. Su Ping is already trembling and barely breathing. He said that he was just passing by, but he was not afraid to ask who was in charge here. The hero doesn't understand why they didn't just kill him. They probably want to learn something from him. He understands that at this moment, the system cannot help him. It would be good if they simply killed him, but he is simply held tightly. He can neither die nor escape. And time passes, but he still has not completed the task. The monster understands that this guy is an unusual person if he could quietly sneak up on him. He insists that they answer him. He is not going to ask a third time. Su Ping now understands that most likely the monsters have never seen a person, and most likely they do not know about the existence of the system. Now the hero has a chance to use this to his advantage. Now he starts his game. The hero tells everyone that he is a clone of the most powerful man in the world, who came here to test their threat level. But if they turn out to be dangerous, they will need to be destroyed. One of the powerful creatures gives the order to the assembled army to protect their king. The army launched an offensive in defense of the king, but he did not like their actions and destroyed everyone with one look. Su Ping watches this and realizes his power over them. He turns to the king and calls him an ordinary weakling who is served only by the weak. But this angers the giant monster so much that in an instant he kills Su Ping. The owner dies. There is nothing in this world that can threaten the king. Attempts to protect him are tantamount to neglecting him. Su Ping is happy that he was killed, and now he can be reborn again in another place. He laughs that it was too easy to anger the king. Now he is not in the hands of a monster. He is trying to destroy the giant skeleton king, but he kills him over and over again. The hero understands that the more painful death is, the less pain he feels each time. The monster does not understand how this creature can continuously change the time and space of his kingdom. But Su Ping only needs the stone that is on the ring of this king. With each rebirth, he gets closer and closer to the creature. He will take this stone. He has no other choice. He manages to touch the ring and orders the system to collect the required stone. The king realizes that his stone on the ring is disappearing. 
He's furious at how the guy can teleport beyond his line of sight. Su Ping dies and chooses to respawn in a random location. The guy smiles. Did those creatures really think that he was just dying senselessly? Now he brings his beast another stone. This should increase the strength of the little skeleton. The Su Ping beast will never eat bones. The hero smiles and tells the skeleton to absorb the stone, and in general now it's the beast's turn to fight. The power of the heavenly beast is growing. Now he can go into battle. The heroes only had one day left to complete the task, but they only completed half of it. A huge monster with a large pile of weak skeletons appears in front of them again. This is an opportunity to level up the little celestial beast. Su Ping rejoices. It's time for the little beast to show his strength. Now the skeleton and the thunder mouse are killing enemies step by step, raising their levels. The task is now 94% complete. But that's not all, and there are only 14 minutes left. They are tired. There is no end to these small monsters. There are too many of them, but eventually victory is theirs. But the heroes hear the earth shaking. Su Ping thinks it could be. Is there really someone still alive? The owner is happy because this is a chance to complete the task. They will also make progress if they kill the creature. The heavenly beasts are ready to defend themselves and fight to increase their strength. The small skeleton uses basic sword art. But oh no, the monster standing in front of them has a huge number of arms that attack the heroes. They squeeze them with all their might. But the system notifies that the task time is coming to an end. Only seven minutes remain. Once again, Su Ping falls into the hands where he cannot even move. The owner's only hope is in the Thunder Mouse. The beast tries to attack the creature with a thunderclap. The mouse emits lightning one after another. The mouse manages to carry out the blow. With its strength, it scorches all the fingers on each hand of the monster. But the giant doesn't care about the blows. He restores every part of his arms, and he enters the battle again. Su Ping tries to analyze, but the system has no instructions regarding this creature. But he already understood two things. This is that these hands don't care about any blow and that the core is really the monster's weakness. That is, to kill a monster, you need to destroy its heart. The hero orders the Gram Mouse to cover its body with the collected electricity energy. The beast gathers all its strength and creates an electrical layer around itself that repels the monster's hands. Thanks to this, he increases his level. Now the Thunder Mouse can get closer to the enemy. She destroys all his arms, and now the owner and the small skeleton are free. Now the little beast also joins the fight. They destroy the monster and again the skeleton takes his stone. Now the beast can increase its level. It only absorbs a smaller portion of the bloodstone's power and its combat power increases instantly. The task was completed. Su Ping returns to his pet store. The system reveals the characteristics of a small skeleton. The owner reads the characteristics and cannot understand why the beast's powers have not risen to a very high level. The professional assessment is based on a comparison of all the data of the small skeleton starting from the initial endless chaos to the present, and the owner should not doubt the assessment. Now a notification of the characteristics of the Thunder Mouse opens. Once he was an ordinary beast, and now he is capable of posing a threat. He didn't know that a Thunder-type beast could have such a high level. Now the hero is interested in how the arena spectators will react to the beast's new skills. The owner receives a scroll from the system. He cannot understand whether this card is really the Star Hundunya. The system says that this is a lost ancient cultivation method that can enhance the host's cultivation level. The map of the star Hundunya will allow the host's body to become part of the vast universe, and for cultivation you need to match the muscles and bones with the stars. It turns out that Su Ping can now also be cultivated. Moreover, this is completely different from the widespread use of cultivation methods. The hero finds himself in the universe of star power Hundunya. Now it is going through the cultivation process. It allows star power to gather in the core and increase its mass. And when using star techniques, the energy must be rotated to form a vortex. In this way, one can release the star power in the body, thereby influencing the outside world. It turns out that Su Ping must now absorb the energy of the stars. But with his rank as a martial beast master, these stars are not easy to catch. The hero can't do anything. Probably this energy should just penetrate through the body. Su Ping wonders what will happen if he tries to concentrate his core to direct the energy. Now he has succeeded, of course. In order to absorb star power, the hero will have to use star power on his own. Su Ping remembered that he has three large peas of panacea, but he doesn't even know what effect they will have. But he decides to try anyway. After absorbing these three strange red panaceas, the star cluster in the host's body became large. 
The system congratulates the owner on his successful entry into the realm of the Star Vortex, and the character panel is now unlocked. But Su Ping's strength only rose three steps. Also, the system does not display the number of ratings. Su Ping is of course grateful for the beautiful photo, but why is there no rating? The system responds that the owner does not have permission to view the current strength. For this, it is necessary to increase combat power. The hero realizes that after he took three panaceas, his strength increased to an average degree. Now he is happy because normal cultivation would have taken at least four to five years. The notification panel reports that the big panacea is only valid for the first and second stages. The owner has successfully moved to the third stage, but the system requires independent improvement. While the host is absorbing star powers and cultivating, one must pay attention to other stars that are much larger than it to prevent inhalation. The hero does not understand what kind of inhalation this is. Is it really an interruption of training or something like that? The system warns that the owner should remember that in the universe of the stellar Hundunya, time passes the same way as in the ordinary universe. Su Ping can't figure out if this is a food chain, but it's more like there is opportunity and risk. Now he will simply avoid huge stars and absorb smaller ones. Now he is getting bored, but he begins to remember his sister. She is also a third-degree martial beast master. He wonders whether he can now withstand her blow. After all, then she knocked him down with just one blow. Su Ping returns home. After dinner, he thanks his mother and says that he will return to the room. At that moment, the mother does not understand since when her boy became so polite. She asks her son not to disturb his sister because she is training, because she has a competition in a few days. Before her son leaves completely, she reminds him not to forget to eat his favorite corn pie before leaving the house tomorrow. Although this woman is the mother of the previous owner of the body, she treats him well. At least Su Ping can feel the kindness and warmth at home. The hero wonders if his sister could be together with Su Yan Ying from the same university. It occurred to him to talk to his sister, but he decided to continue training. But when he passed by his sister's room, he saw a bright light from the door, similar to star power. The elder brother is observing the cultivation of the younger sister. This should not be considered as voyeurism. The girl was just lying on the bed, reading a book, and at that time she was absorbing star power. Su Ping wonders if it's really possible to do this while lying on the sofa, and also her core is so big. Star power itself reaches out to her body. The hero concludes that perhaps this method of cultivation is taught at the university. But star power in the real world is weaker than in Hundunya, and it is evenly distributed. In this universe, force is divided into a dense and a rarefied region. If Su Ping can learn the university's training methods, then in the Hundunya star universe, the cultivation strength and speed should also increase. Now he is trying to do what his sister did. It seems to him that she is, as it were, spinning her stellar energy. Su Ping just sits in shock and can't understand why he didn't think of it himself. When the force of the mass is completely sufficient, the attractive force of the created rotations can itself attract the force of the nearest star to absorb it. You need to try again to see what the difference is between forward and reverse swirl, and instantly the sister begins to feel the absorption becoming heavier and heavier. She thinks maybe it's because of the dream. Su Ping succeeded once again. He does another forward and reverse vortex. It's like he's absorbing his sister's energy. She feels very unpleasant. The girl is scared and cannot understand how this is even possible. Surprisingly, the star power suddenly seemed to freeze. It was impossible to absorb it. The girl is shocked why star power has suddenly become so naughty. She begins to understand that perhaps there is a strong master somewhere nearby. Her strength begins to be absorbed more and more, and she feels pain. From such force, the sister begins to scream in pain. On the lower floor of the house, mom hears strange screams. She begins to worry that something might have happened to her daughter. But the girl tells her mother that everything is fine with her because she is just training. Su Ling Yue understands that this star power is truly abnormal. But was she really leaving the loser's brother's room? Su Ping, full of stellar energy, rejoices in his room that he has almost mastered the unearthly power. Again, the owner spends time in his pet store. There are no visitors. But instantly, the guy finds himself in the Hundunya star power universe. Now the satisfied Su Ping automatically receives star power. The main thing is to keep your distance and not get too close. Surprised, Su Ping discovers that it is also possible to cultivate in a dream. He did not even know that this was possible.
Someone comes into the store from afar. You can hear that someone has come to pick up their animal. Su Ping says in his sleep that he sees big and small, and before he could finish speaking, he woke up. The outraged girls do not understand what he is talking about. The guy in front of him sees two girls. This is Su Yan Ying and her friend. The owner realizes that he said something wrong and begins to make excuses that he was talking about star powers. He clarifies that the girl's star power is too small and the two of them need to train a lot. Otherwise, they would not be able to control the stronger celestial beasts. The girl is shocked. Has the Thunder Mouse really become stronger in three days? She says that the most common celestial beasts in their university are third and fourth degrees, and her beast has seventh degree combat power. The owner brings a Thunder Mouse. He reminds that the payment was made last time. Su Yan Ying thanks for the beast, but has the heavenly beast really changed the color of its fur? Looking at her other animals, she doesn't understand why they seem so indifferent. Are they really not happy to see their owner after several days? The girl is shocked. Are they really attached to this place? Su Ping tells them to quickly get out of here. But even during the conclusion of a temporary contract, the beast does not feel any loyalty to its owner. Su Yan Ying is in despair and cannot understand how the animals have become interested in Su Ping in just a few days. Le Le notices that the animal's wounds have healed and the color of the fur has become brighter and fresher. The owner of the animals is happy. She notices what a good store it is. She thanks Su Ping for taking care of the animals. The girl also asked what food Su Ping could recommend. Su Ping wonders if this girl is trying to appease him, and he decides to recommend quality food to her. He suggests just buying firegrass. It costs 1,200 yuan apiece, but it turns out to be expensive for her. It's time for Su Yan Ying to warm up before the competition. There is very little time left before the competition, and now she is endlessly interested in finding out how strong the Thunder Mouse has become. She decides to test the Thunder Mouse on her friend's strongest celestial beast. Li Le summons a huge, high-ranking, rock-type humanoid beast named Kshinti, but she warns that if it hurts, it's better to do without tears. Su Yan Ying understands that this is Le Le's favorite beast, because even when she came of age, he already had the power of the fifth degree. The girl hopes that the Thunder Mouse will endure, because for now they have a thunderclap and a residual separation. All hopes are on the beast. He must show his best side. He enters the fight and his eyes are already burning. A fight begins to decide who is stronger. The huge stone beast uses earth splitting, but the Thunder Mouse manages to deflect the blow and uses splitting. This mouse creates as many as three clones. Su Yan Ying is delighted because it is multiple division. The mouse makes attack after attack, now its strength is three times greater than before. But at the last moment, the mouse changes direction and begins to attack Le Le. The girl asks her friend to order the beast to fight Kshinti because her shield is too weak. Su Yan Ying reorders Le Le because she only ordered to get close, but not to attack. Kshinti is a high-ranking celestial beast with good origins and his insight is incredible. This is a great opportunity to use all the skills of the Thunder Mouse. But when the Thunder Mouse approached Lele's shield, the mouse was intercepted by the opponent. He catches her with huge stone hands. The girls can't believe he really grabbed the Thunder Mouse. He wrapped his three arms around the mice. But the Thunder Mouse deceived Kshinti. And the next second, she deals an incredibly strong blow to her opponent. The huge stone beast begins to evade the mouse, as if afraid of it. But it turns out that Kshinti did not catch the mouse, but its clones. The frightened celestial animal is simply trying to hide. He covers the mistress with himself and makes a large shield out of stone. Lili assures the beast that she is safe and asks him to let her go, and Su Yan Ying cannot understand what is happening. The surprised girl simply watches what is happening. After all, Kshinti is a high-ranking stone-type beast. He has good origin and good abilities, but he was so afraid of the low-ranking thunder mouse Su Yan Ying rejoices that the power of the Thunder Mouse has crossed all boundaries. This is an annual competition again. The presenter announces the beginning of the next stage. On the left side of the arena stands the unexpectedly strong second year candidate Su Yan Ying. And on the right side of the arena stands a professional participant who entered the top 10 last year. This is a guy named Li Ji. And the presenter at this time reminds that the rules remain the same. Each side takes turns bringing three animals into battle. The winner is the side that is the first to overcome all the opponent's animals. Li Ji summons his beast. It is a concealer, a water-type beast. His level is weak. 
The indignant crowd does not understand why a strong opponent chose such a weak beast. Could last year's top ten really make such a mistake? Su Yanying analyzes that the concealer is a water-type celestial beast of mid-rank origin, but it is good at surprise attacks. She summons her beast. She wants to send the phoenix first into battle. He is the complete opposite of the water beast. The girl wants to see who will be stronger. But the opponent only laughs at the girl for bringing a fallen high-ranking phoenix. But they still think that it is really a terrible enemy for the water concealer. But unexpectedly for everyone, Li Ji raises his hand and announces that he is giving up. The round hasn't started yet, but he's already admitted his loss. The judge has no idea what's going on, but the contestant decides to give up first. The host announces that Su Yan Ying wins the first round. But the girl notices that the guy is just laughing at her. She doesn't understand what he's up to. But the guy has an evil plan. He believes that sometimes bait is needed to get the prey. Suddenly a huge beast appears on the stage. Su Yan Ying doesn't understand what's going on. This is a ground catcher. The guy turns to his rival. He says that the pathetic phoenix is not the strongest beast in her hands, but it is the most difficult to deal with. The thunder mouse, weasel, and hundred-toothed tiger are terrestrial celestial animals, concludes Li Ji. Now he needs to send into battle the most powerful beast that can easily destroy all rivals. Only a fallen phoenix who is good at air attacks will find it difficult to defeat even a fifth-degree celestial beast. The poor chick will be eaten alive, but before that we need to explain something. Li Ji turns to a classmate. He says that he managed to study all the information regarding her. He knows that she lost. The fallen phoenix strikes Li Ji. But in response, the guy puts up a shield and laughs at the helplessness of the beast. But suddenly the blow breaks through the shield and Li Ji finds himself on fire. He just burns, and his skin is burned by fire. Su Yan Ying feels her strength. This was revenge for the words that Li Ji uttered towards her. It's incredible to anger your opponent. There is hatred in his eyes. His teeth are clenched so tightly that he is ready to tear the enemy apart with them. This will be a bloody fight. Li Ji summons ground spikes. But the fallen phoenix manages to dodge the blows. Su Yan Ying orders the bird to be faster. It increases its speed. We need to get rid of our opponent here and now. The scarlet flame bird fights the enemy. It uses a fire slash. The intrigue is growing. None of the players plans to lose. Li Ji calls the ground catcher and orders to set up a protective wall of Chiti Garba. The girl is shocked by what is happening. It can't be. Even though Earth-type celestial beasts have little resistance to fire, how could he withstand such a strong blow? The wall of the stone beast is unrealistically hard. Li Ji mockingly asks if she can see the difference now. Does such an insignificant phoenix really dare to resist an adult ground hunter? The land catcher releases the net. This is the same skill of conclusion. They say that he can grab absolutely any low-ranking creature. His cruelty inspires horror, even in high-ranking pets. Su Yan Ying and the phoenix get caught in the net. The girl says that we need to find a way to get out of here. The network begins to narrow. The mistress uses third-degree power enhancement. Phoenix strikes, but the net continues to narrow, completely ignoring the beast's desperate attacks. Everything is hopeless, and a drop of water will not leak through this network. Even the participant herself is on the verge of death. Is this really the end? The rational thing to do would be to just give up. But member Su Yan Ying is still holding on. Su Yan Ying orders the fallen phoenix not to resist so as to harm himself less. This was all part of Li Ji's plan. He says that if the enemies surrender, then the pain will go away immediately. Frightened girl with despair in her eyes. She understands that there is no choice. Her whole body is covered in wounds. She decides to give up. But at the last moment, the bird gathers all its strength and breaks the net in an instant. She breaks through the wall of the earthen beast with her power. These were ultra-flaming rays. Li Ji is simply shocked and furious at this bird's abilities. It's incredible that member Su Yan Ying's pet has an eighth-degree advanced skill. With just one attack, the ground hunter was immobilized. One of the spectators says that although the fallen phoenix has high-ranking origins, in reality, it has the lowest properties. Moreover. Fallen phoenixes by nature do not have ultra-flaming rays, to which the girl replies that be that as it may, the fallen phoenix Su Yan Ying really did it. But the most important thing is that he has not yet reached maturity. A promising future for the beast. The third participant in the dialogue is the vice-rector of the university named Dunn. He says that we should not forget about the thunder mouse with its thunderclap. 
The vice rector did not think that such a genius would appear this year. If this girl can make it to the main team, achieve decent achievements, and get more fame, then it will become an opportunity for the entire university to rise up. Now the audience will recognize Su Yan Ying, who is the owner of the Mouse King with high-ranking skills. Meanwhile, the Phoenix increases in level. In addition to the ultra-flaming rays in the eighth degree, the strength also rose to the lowest fourth degree. Su Yan Ying is surprised that with such great talent, this is still her bird. She doesn't believe whether that pet store, in addition to providing medical services, increased intelligence and improved properties. But she thinks Su Ping went too far. The host of the show announces that Su Yan Ying won the second round. He also asks both sides to prepare for the final round. Li Ji is furious. He is ready to tear them apart with his bare hands. He does not understand why this Su Yan Ying is so lucky, because he almost won. The guy is hungry for victory. Now he's a real terror for Su Yan Ying. This is the wind demon. This is a four winged adult wind demon with strength above the fifth degree. Students are not allowed to carry ferocious animals with them because something could go wrong, says a girl named Huoji. The guy replies that Huoji thinks too conservatively because every year so many newcomers die in empty areas and this beast may be the beginning of new competitions. The vice rector says that their university is rich in powerful teachers and among the judges there are high-ranking masters. There should be no problems. And the wind demon was somehow rented. This definitely needs to be sorted out after the match. Because the difference in ranks was too great, Li Ji had difficulty summoning the beast. Su Yanying uses all possible buffs, increased strength, increased impulse, increased perception, increased strength. She orders the falling phoenix to attack the master directly. Only then will the fight end. The bird begins to attack the enemy, but in one second, member Su Yanying's pet was knocked down. The demonic beast attacks the beast's master next. Su Yanying's life is in danger. The girl doesn't understand what's happening. The speed of the beast is so strong that at one moment, all parts of her body were covered in wounds and cuts. Huoji says that Su Yun Ying has already lost this round, but the wind demon still hasn't stopped. The wind demon is out of control. It is taking all of Li Ji's powers, and now he is losing consciousness. Su Yun Ying defends himself with a shield. The projector orders the judges to stop this fight immediately. The judges send a divine phoenix to help. It must protect the participants from death. But the demonic beast turns out to be faster even than the divine phoenix. This speed simply astonishes Su Yan Ying. The judge comments that the girl suddenly summons a thunder mouse to block all attacks, at which point the girl could die. Huo Ji sees that Su Yan Ying did not take any action to summon, and the thunder mouse was in the arena all this time. Now the thunder mouse is able to hide its aura. The third round begins. Now the thunder mouse fights against the demonic big beast. Thunder Mouse uses the move and summons a skeleton swordsman. Su Yan Ying doesn't understand how the mouse is able to use demon-type skills. The demonic-type beast begins to attack. The skeleton manages to use a shield to protect its owner. The show host comments that just now the Thunder Mouse used a demon-type skill. As expected, the mouse successfully unblocked all attacks. The Thunder Mouse quickly collides with the Wind Demon. Member Su Yan Ying simply trembles with excitement. Suddenly, the Wind Demon receives a deep cut. How could a Thunder Mouse injure such a high-ranking opponent? The Thunder Mouse is so strong that its strength is simply terrifying. From a small pet, in a short time, she turned into an incredibly strong warrior. The judge sees a strong killing intent. Does the Thunder Mouse really want to kill the Wind Demon? Su Yan Ying is too surprised to win. Perhaps the Thunder Mouse is also out of control. The judge sees that these newcomers are too loose. He sends a Divine Phoenix. He also reminds that for deliberately killing celestial beasts in competitions, the participant will at least be disqualified. The future of such a promising new star cannot be allowed to be cut off. The judge sends the divine phoenix to stop the thunder mouse, but the beast uses ten thunderbends. At the last moment, the divine phoenix is ordered to go back, but the thunder mouse was able to injure the bird. The judge doesn't understand how this is possible because only some seventh-stage celestial beasts are able to keep up with the speed of a bird, let alone a thunder mouse. The audience was simply shocked. It was ten thunderous bends. They know that if one is under the influence of this skill, ten thousand lightning bolts will wear down in an instant, and even stone-type celestial beasts cannot bear it. The vice-rector notices that the little mouse was able to master the seventh-degree thunderclap and now produces ten thunderous bends. 
Su Yan Ying has specially learned such excellent celestial skills that the beast can now be sold at an exorbitant price compared to other mid rank pets. Huo Ji begins to like Su Yan Ying more and more, and the Thunder Mouse is not afraid even of the Divine Phoenix. This is incredible courage. The Thunder Mouse and the Divine Phoenix begin the competition. The judge understands that the Phoenix cannot be allowed to fight the out of control Thunder Mouse. The owner is happy that her Thunder Beast has mastered a high ranking skill again. Such an evil and powerful beast is the cutest pet in the hands of its owner. The judge is shocked. It turns out that the Thunder Mouse did not lose control, but at the same time she fought with incredible strength. The host announces that Su Yan Ying and her pet Thunder Mouse are winning again at this competition. Meanwhile, Su Ping is in his pet shop learning how to strengthen the beast's front legs. The video explains that the difficulty of cultivation lies in the need to know well the body structure of the celestial beast. Otherwise, the introduced star power will not be able to strengthen and will cause harm to the body. You can immediately see the changes. The front legs have grown by as much as two centimeters. Su Ping wonders if it's really so difficult to upgrade a pet in this world. That's why Su Yan Ying was so surprised. Suddenly, a car drives up to the store. The same brother and sister emerge from her. Su Ping is interested in the guy like his hand, to which he responds by asking if the owner was once treated at Shanshan Hospital. And at that moment, he tries to strike Su Ping. But the protection system works. Fang Yu Jing says that he had to spend a little money, but his crushed bone is now as good as new. The owner begins to offer the guy food of the demonic type, and may even sell it at a discount. Clients are shocked this is a hundred times more expensive than last time. The sister tells her brother that the food alone will cost more than the operation. Su Ping calmly and quietly replies that if they don't want to, they can leave, because training is waiting for him. Fang Yu Jing was just charged, but the owner is cruel as always, to be honest. He came here for a different reason. He invites the owner to the outpost. In the past, the Blue Star was a poor planet with few resources. Until one day, an unknown force tore the space apart, forming star rifts. These unstable cracks became passages to other unexplored planets. Some planets were rich in resources. Some were home to ferocious monsters. Some of them are as hot as the sun. Thanks to stellar rifts, people could continuously receive resources from other planets. They could build a strong country, but the prosperity lasted only a few hundred years until people began wars for possession of high-quality rifts. The number of people has more than halved. Approximately 70% of the Blue Star's entire territory became barren and uninhabitable. The remaining humans finally reached reconciliation and formed the Human Federation. Those who left migrated to safer lands in which there were no star rifts. For the sake of survival, the Human Federation is actively returning masters of war beasts, and the strongest of them are selected as explorers who go to other planets in search of valuable resources. Fang Yujing says that last night, a new star rift appeared in the desert area outside the Longjiang base city. Their group wanted to go on reconnaissance, but were attacked. They also lost the fire-tailed blood fox. The system gives the owner new tasks to find a lost pet. The reward for successful completion is one secret mystical skill. The owner is thinking about mystical skills. Last time the reward was the star card Hundunya, which brought a lot of benefits. And this reward seems to be not so bad. Moreover, he wanted to test himself in a real battle. Now he has the opportunity to do this. Su Ping agrees, and they go to the outpost by car. This is a go-getter's car. They go to Explorer Base Number 38. Upon arrival, the heroes get out of the car. They are met by the captain of the Black Wolf Group named Fan Ganli and Deputy Captain Li Ying. The captain is surprised if this is the same genius from the whole world that they were talking about. The hero introduces himself. He says that his name is Su Ping and he is a super unremarkable person. The deputy captain addresses the guy. At first glance, it is clear how young the hero is. He also says that they heard about him from Fang Yu Jing. He asks if the guy is already 20 years old, but Su Ping replies that he is only 18. This means that the martial beast master has not yet graduated from the university, suggests Li Ying. Su Ping says he is self-taught, to which Fang Yu Jing was very surprised by what he heard. The captain says they need to register Su Ping before entering. In addition, to facilitate mutual cooperation in battle, he hopes that Su Ping will allow them to become familiar with his pets. The guy doesn't see any problems, but he has no intention of joining their group. He also just needs to find his lost pet. This angered the assistant captain. Su Ping is very young and doesn't follow his words. Does he really think that you can join them just by wanting to? The captain reassures his assistant. 
This is Fang Yujing's guest, so you need to be polite with him. Su Ping summons his celestial beast, and in an instant a small skeleton emerged from a gap in space. Everyone was very surprised. Was it really a small skeleton? After all, he is a low-ranking animal. Over the past seven, eight days of diligently absorbing the bloodstone, he had actually become stronger. Frightened, Fang Yujing asks if Su Ping really just took this beast, to which the owner nods his head positively. The guy is afraid that Su Ping does not know the character of the captain and his loan. But if Fang Yujing lets them down, he will not live. The owner says that there is no reason to worry. You can trust him and he will not disappoint. The owner gives the order to the small skeleton to draw his sword. To show your strength, the beast has average sword skill. But the team is simply surprised. This is amazing speed. Has he already put in the sword? Su Ping is registering to enter the explorer's base. His face was scanned. The next step is to enter your identification information. Identification was successful. He was registered as a temporary passer. On the panel, it was written about all of Su Ping's education, which kindergarten he was in, which elementary or middle school he attended, and even written about high school. Fang Yujing is surprised that the owner only graduated from high school because he thought that he was officially a martial beast master. The assistant captain says that temporary employees can also receive the merits of full-fledged explorers, but there is no need to rush to rejoice because they still won't have all the privileges if they commit any crime. Su Ping will still be punished like an ordinary citizen. Feng Yujing sees the owner off and tells him not to worry, because if he has problems with the police, he will always come to the rescue and should not be thanked. Su Ping is already tired of listening to the guy talk nonstop about his privileges all day. He is truly hopeless. They came to the Federal Tunnel Storage Facility. It's an incredibly large room. The captain tells Su Ping that desert areas are unusually dangerous so the guy can take himself something for self-defense. Su Ping is simply incredibly shocked. You won't find this even in the market. Some things are not inferior even to special artifacts for cultivation. There is little time left, the captain asks if Su Ping noticed anything. The owner, pointing his finger, asks for basic skills from the first to sixth stages of a martial beast master. In response to Su Ping's wishes, the captain and his assistant simply laughed, and Fang Yujing brought him to this weakling's base. Fang Yujing tries to explain to the owner that right now they are going to very dangerous desert areas, so the captain says that the guy should take good self-defense equipment and not some kind of training skills. Su Ping responds that he simply does not want to be indebted to others until he completes the task, especially since he has everything under control. The captain thinks that skills require a lot of time, but this man either has no brains or he knows his strength very well. Well, soon the guy will show his strength. The captain handed over the reservation to Su Ping. With this armor, he will be able to withstand attacks from fifth-degree beasts. If the Black Wolves fail again, the team will be disgraced. Su Ping asks if anything is known about this stellar collapse. Fang Yujing knows that the danger level of this area is rated high. Demonic-type beasts have been spotted, and no rare ores have been discovered. Su Ping asks if it's really a demonic type. It turns out he's still in the right place. The deputy called the second assistant. He heard that the assistant had a bad character, so it was better not to anger him. Suddenly, the severed paw of a huge bird falls right in front of their feet. A rogue of silver rank appears in front of them, whose name is Lin Mikun. It turns out he almost fell asleep while he was waiting for them. At that time, his beast is tearing apart a huge bird whose paw flew in. Out of surprise, Su Ping falls off his feet and falls to the ground. He is assisted by Fang Yujing. He says that anyone below the sixth degree of strength pales in comparison. Lin Mikun meets with the captain. He says that he heard about how his beloved fire-tailed fox disappeared. After all, Lin Mikun warned him that he should take only professionals with him into the desert. The captain was careless and he wasn't happy at all without the beast. He really didn't want to go out. Lin Mikun notices Su Ping. He doesn't understand who it is. There's nothing in the database about this guy. The captain introduces Su Ping and says that he is an acquaintance of Fang Yu Jing. Lin Mikun says the guy is too young. This angers the owner. He asks to explain what just happened. But this angers Lin Mikun. He says that this guy is in trouble if they are not able to handle this than what they forgot in the desert areas. The captain defends Su Ping, saying that although the guy is not experienced enough, he has good abilities as a master of war beasts, and his strength is at the proper level. But strength alone is not enough. If strength decided something, then anyone could become a breakthrough, says Lin Mikun. 
Also, after entering, everyone follows his commands. Otherwise, do not blame him for being ruthless. The captain told his partner not to worry because he brought the people and he would naturally take care of them. Suddenly, a monster appears on their way, a chilling gaze, as if Su Ping is looking at a corpse. Lin Makun says that this is really the guy's first time in the desert areas. The heroes move on and pass through the gap, ending up in the next universe. Fang Yu Jing appeals to the owner so that he does not pay attention because they are rogues, always straightforward. Su Ping is not upset because he thinks just like him. They notice that on this planet it is very dark and no creatures have been found. But you still need to be careful. They walk through the forest. The commander orders Lin Makun to look for the road. There is a very strange forest and wild animals here. There is fog all around. There is a small, unknown beast ahead of the lake. The fog is too thick. Lin Mikun can't see. The captain asks if this area can be bypassed somehow. The assistant replies that there is no way, because there are several dangerous animals on other routes. Lin Mikun says that he should check. If suddenly there is something dangerous, then he will immediately report. He starts checking. An animal catches his eye. This is an adult tiger tapir. Its strength is about five stages. Lin Mikun decides that he will get rid of it. The commander says to only avoid noise and dust because they cannot linger. Lin Mikun will do this without any problems because he is a pro in such things. Su Ping asks Lin Mikun to stay, and they ask if he really saw everything. To be sure, he asks to lend him night vision goggles. Lin Mikun starts to get angry. Does Su Ping doubt his decision? The hero claims that tiger tapirs rarely drink water, which Lin Mikun looks at Su Ping skeptically. The owner says that they get water by eating small insects. He asks if they feel the surrounding temperature. But tiger tappers are not found in such an environment at all. Tiger tapirs live in tropical zones, but it's cold here. But the assistant commander is sure that this is a tiger tapir. Lin Makun starts to get angry. He says, open your eyes. This is an ordinary tiger tapir. It's all a waste of time. He sends his beast, the Kodotan python, to kill the tapir. But the beast looks very scary. There are worms around him and his eyes are red and empty. He has been dead for a long time. How can this be? What kind of creature is this? It turns out to be a spirit beast that disguised itself as a tiger tapper. Su Ping tells Lin Mikun to immediately order the animal to spit out the spirit beast now, because he might die. Lin Mikun begins to get even angrier at Su Ping. He says that the guy is extremely impudent, and why is he ordering him? But suddenly the Kodatan python falls exhausted, its eyes fill with a black glare. The captain asks Su Ping if this is really a spirit beast. After all, he had few encounters with demonic-type beasts. Su Ping says that an adult spiritual beast has a strength equal to the seventh degree, and once it enters the victim's body, they quickly absorb it from the inside. They often disguise themselves as weak bait to lure in prey. The captain understands that if the beast is of the seventh stage, then they can defeat it together. Su Ping replies that the greatest danger is not the spirit itself, but the creature with which it is in symbiosis. Fang Yu Jing is simply scared. Is it really a bloody spirit beast? He can't believe what Su Ping is even talking about right now. Where spirit beasts live, bloody spirit beasts hide. Su Ping says that if he is not mistaken, then there is no water in this lake at all. And the blood. From there emerges a huge snake that has two mouths. Su Ping explains that the bloody spiritual door resides here. Lin Makun panics and realizes that he has lost contact with the Kodatan Python. Su Ping says they need to leave immediately. After all, seventh degree spirit beasts are feeding him. This means he has at least ninth degree strength. Perhaps he is the king of beasts. But suddenly a huge monster starts chasing them. The bloodthirsty demonic wolf and the serpentine winged dragon help. The captain orders Lin Mikun to find an escape route. The assistant finds out that they have two paths. Several unknown animals live in the east but it is safe in the West. Lin Mikun has lost his beast. He says to run to the West if they don't want to die. The captain says that there is no other choice. If things continue like this, no one knows where they will end up. The captain asks what Su Ping thinks about this. The guy advises going straight East, which just infuriates Lin Mikun. They begin their journey on their animals. Lin Mikun is angry because they already have one bloody beast spirit. The roles assistant also thinks it's better to make a retreat. At the last moment, the captain asks Su Ping if he is sure of his answer. After all, if the guy makes a mistake, he will have problems. To which the hero replied that he was not joking, 
and if the captain wants to find the fire-tailed bloody fox, then he will have to trust him. Everything needs to be done faster because time is running out. Fan Ganley hopes that this will not be his last decision, but he decided to trust the new guy. He orders his assistant Li Ying to move east towards the canyon. He obeys without objection. The surprised assistant notices with the help of his night vision goggles that all the monsters in the canyon have suddenly fled. Captain Fan Ganley says that the beasts sensed a bloody spirit beast behind them, so they ran away. It turns out that the speed of the bloody spiritual beast that was chasing them is gradually decreasing. The team does not understand how this happened. Su Ping says that the beast's strength is very great, but it cannot actively pursue its prey. Therefore, he uses spirit beasts as bait. Not to mention, this canyon is too narrow for him. Su Ping says that they are not such a delicacy for him. Only a stupid person would wait for takeout without even ordering if he was fishing with an empty hook. Lin Mikun says that in fact he would hardly have retreated from them. The captain begins to look at his assistant with contempt, to which Lin Mikun gets angry and says that he did not know about the characteristics of the blood spiritual beast. Li Ying tells the captain that they will soon reach the place where they went missing, but he reminds him that there is a celestial beast at the exit of the canyon. Su Ping asks Lin Mikun to borrow glasses. The captain's assistant, gritting his teeth in anger, gives glasses to the guy. Su Ping thanks Lin Mikun. He installs the optical module. Now he sees what is happening around him. He sees an adult dead spirit of fifth degree strength. The captain asks again if it's the demonic type again. He asks if this is a problem. Su Ping says not to worry and he will deal with it. He calls a small skeleton. He is confident that they will get through this without any problems. The little celestial beast uses an average sword art. It attacks the spirit monster and kills it. Fang Yujing was simply delighted. He did not know that Su Ping could kill a spiritual beast so easily. He did it in a second. If Fang Yujing had known about this earlier, then he would have obeyed Master Su Ping in everything. Lin Mikun is sure that it is just luck, and in fact he can do it too. The heroes continue to walk and a high mountain is visible in front of them. Captain Fan Ganli says that this is a very dangerous mountain. After all, in the past, they encountered a high-ranking beast here and lost the bloody fox. Su Ping says we need to hurry up. He says that everyone needs to get down from their animals and look for traces. They saw footprints going straight to the mountain, and the many-eared monkey discovered something. This is someone's hand. Lin Makun notices the Black Mist Group's golden bracers. He says that at least captain-level explorers have the means to afford such good bracers. If the captain of the group died, then how strong and unusual the beast lives here. Su Ping turns to his team, he says. If they didn't notice anything, then let them let him have a look. Lin Mikun doesn't want to give Su Ping the hand he found. He asks in an angry voice what the guy might even know about special equipment. But Su Ping does not back down and stands his ground. He asks to look. The assistant captain begins to get angry. He says that the guy already considers himself cool after listening to him twice. Lin Mikun says that he is a rogue of the silver rank, and if he kills an unknown martial beast master, he will not get anything for it. Assistant Lin Mikun throws the found hand to the floor. He says that he dropped it by accident and let Su Ping raise this hand himself. The team looking at this from the outside is very surprised, but Su Ping raises his hand and begins to analyze. The guy notices that the blood has recently dried up, which means he died a few days ago, but a strong dark aura was still emanating from the wound. Somewhere nearby there is a high-ranking demon-type beast. The captain notices Su Ping's strange expression. Is this related to the bloody fox? If the hand has been here for several days, then the fox has left. Su Ping says no. Lin Mikun starts laughing at the guy and asks why the guy made a face then. He thought that he had at least some sensible idea. Su Ping can no longer contain all his anger. Due to Lin Mikun's taunts, he does not hold back and strikes. Lin Mikun is very angry because the young boy hit him. He suddenly takes out his sword and puts it on Su Ping's face. Lin Makun says that the guy seems to be tired of living, but at that moment, a sword also leans against Lin Makun's face. This was done by a small skeleton. Assistant Li Ying also immediately takes out his sword and says, Su Ping order his pet to let go of the weapon. But the guy asks why doesn't the assistant order his friend to do this? Fang Yu Jing tries to improve the situation. He asks the owner to discuss everything and does not understand why the owner hit the man. The angry Su Ping says that Lin Makun asked for it himself. It is his fault that he did this. 
for thwarting him time and time again. Lin McCoon says that now there is no need to blame him without mercy, but suddenly a huge black monster appears above them, coming from a small skeleton. Li Ying notices some very dark aura of the killer. Is the beast really confident that it can kill them all at once? The captain tries to rectify the situation, and he asks Lin Mikun for forgiveness instead of Su Ping. He says that he will then compensate him for the loss of the Kodatan Python. Fan Ganli asks to do him a favor before they finish the task. Feng Yujing turns to the owner. He reminds him that in desert areas, in no case should you kill your own. In the end, then no one will survive. Su Ping stands his ground. It seems to him that Lin Mikun is still of no use as a disservice. The angry Su Ping says that one more and one less will not change anything, and the skeleton scratches Lin Mikun's neck a little. Lin Mikun suddenly changes his mind and agrees to be under Su Ping's command for now. Now Su Ping says he will lead the next steps. Now the guy asks the deputy how he feels about this. Assistant Li Ying says that if they leave the situation to chance, then they will never get out. He obeys only the captain. Now he asks Su Ping not to ask such questions. Captain Fan Ganli turns to Su Ping. He says that the initiative is a good thing, but if next time the guy thinks of something like that, then let him not expect mercy. The captain comes close to Su Ping and quietly says that he saw the guy in action, but he doesn't think that Lin Mikun will just give up. Now Su Ping must be more careful on the road, but in reality the captain doesn't care. A red glow appears above them. The captain notices this and calls everyone to have a look. It's something like a light for help. This is a girl and a wounded guy, and they are being chased by a terrible spiritual monster that uses a psychic attack. The animals also release metal fangs at them, but they are so powerless that their bodies don't even have time to react. But suddenly they are protected by a giant beast. This is a group of black wolves. They say they heard their distress call and came to help. The wounded guy warns the team to be careful because they were attacked by a bone crusher. This is a giant beast with horns and fangs. He is incredibly large. He is very angry and dangerous. He thirsts for blood. The team rescues the guy and girl. They help them climb onto the beast and run away from the monster together. Lin Makun looks angrily at Su Ping and warns that the heroes will be shaken. But sharply the beast on which they moved. He throws off the girl and Su Ping, what Lin Makun is openly happy about. A giant monster hand reaches out to kill them. But at the last moment, Li Ying and Fang Yujing fly up on their beast. They take the girl and Su Ping. At this moment, Fang Yujing asks the owner to hurry up. Su Ping asks the deputy to find a normal path. This monster doesn't care about obstacles, but the team is slowing down. Li Ying's only thought is that this guy was almost killed, but he had already come to his senses. The captain says that Bone Crusher and several other dangerous creatures are chasing them and he also asks the rescued guy if anyone from their team is left. The guy answers with difficulty that his last Earth-type animal remains and it is lost. The girl who was with the guy notices that her sacred flame bird can still fight. Even among the eighth stage beasts, the sacred flame bird is still strong. The captain asks if the girl is injured. The huge beast is still chasing them. It turns out that the strength of the Bonebreaker Heavenly Beast is as much as the ninth degree. The vital parts of the bone breaker are entwined with strong bones. The small skeleton is absolutely useless in this case. Su Ping understands that he needs Lin Mikun's help. The wounded guy says that at this rate they won't be able to escape. He got an idea. He tells everyone to call their sky beasts. They must delay Bone Crusher and buy time for them. Lin Mikun angrily says that he just lost one. Does the guy really want him to become completely poor? The guy says that after this, he promises to reimburse the entire amount of lost pets in Chenshan. He also promises that they will receive a reward. The surprised captain hears about Chenshan. Is this guy really the same gold rank rogue? But Lin Makun doesn't care who this guy is. He already lost too much energy to return his pet. He doesn't want damages. He wants three times as much. The commander punishes Li Ying to tell everyone nearby to call their beasts. Otherwise, they will all die. Li Ying addresses those who move with him. He tells them that if their lives are valuable, then let them call the animals. But suddenly Su Ping makes a decision and jumps off the flying beast. A small skeleton lands with him. They land right in front of the monster. Lin Makun rejoices. He is sure that no one will stop to help Su Ping. So he wishes the young guy who decided to play the hero to burn in hell. But after a few minutes, a huge flock of skeletons begins to revive from the ground. The team is surrounded. 
but these monsters have no reaction to the command. Commander Fan Ganli realizes that the monsters are not targeting them. The little skeleton raised his sword. Su Ping cannot leave his skeleton. He will be nearby. The small skeleton summons a murderous flock. All those skeletons that surrounded the team are all the army belonging to Su Ping. Su Ping instructs the small skeleton to enter the battlefield from the flank and strike the monster with a surprise attack. The Su Ping Heavenly Beast begins to attack the Bonebreaker. The team does not understand how the 8th degree Bone Crusher was attacked so quickly by some small skeleton. The captain jumps off his beast and goes to help Su Ping. Now Fang Yu and Jing also want to help. Li Ying notes that if the captain has already gone down, then maybe they need help too. He addresses Lin Makun. Lin Makun is not going to help. But Li Ying tells him that they can just sit out, but then funny rumors will spread about them. And on the other hand, will Lin Makun really allow the little skeleton to take credit for their achievements? Lin Makun gets incredibly angry again because he has to obey Su Ping. The team members summon all of their celestial beasts to fight. After all, it will be easier for everyone together to defeat the demonic beast. Each beast, blow after blow, injures the bloodthirsty monster. With every step they are getting closer to victory, Fang Yu Jing says that now the monster will spit its teeth. The captain punishes the bloodthirsty demonic wolf not to let the monster relax. He causes a bloody hunt. Su Ping notices how the monster's thick ribs have opened up. The girl tells everyone to hide because this is a psycho attack. The team creates a huge shield to protect themselves from the attack, but after using a psychic attack, the heroes cannot find contact with their celestial beasts. The entire attack was in vain. It is obvious that the sixth and seventh stages are not capable of defeating the eighth stage beast. This is simply fantastic. The demonic huge beast attacks with metal fangs. The captain says that the distance is too great. It will not be possible to recall them. Lin Makun is angry because he should have just run away, like he said. Su Ping orders the small skeleton to use medium sword art. The small skeleton is still on his feet. He fights with all his might against the huge monster. The captain does not understand how it is possible that the beast withstood the psychotic attack of the eighth stage, to which the owner replies that the beast would not have survived if at the same moment he had not used a difficult roar. The captain remembers how, during the roar, the skeleton was able to repel the psychotic attack. Fan Ganli had never heard of such a tactic. A normal person would not think of using it. Without countless trainings, it is impossible to use a corpse roar simultaneously with a psychic attack. The captain doesn't understand what Su Ping could have survived if his beast had such skills. At that time, the guy's celestial beast fought to the last. Bone Crusher was already using ninth stage attacks. The monster uses death annihilation. Everything within a radius of a thousand meters will evaporate. The team looks on in horror as Lin Mikanun runs away, cowardly shouting that his life is more important. At this time, Su Ping orders his little skeleton to immediately use the new skill. The animal uses its most powerful skill. The blow struck Bone Crusher with incredible force, causing an explosion as if the monster had been stuffed with TNT. It is impossible to believe, but the small beast defeated the giant demonic monster. He killed the eighth stage Bonebreaker so easily. The captain says that even he would not have thought of such a thing. An attack at the center of the monster while it is concentrating energy to strike. Fang Yu Jing runs up to Su Ping. He says that he was very scared. But how did his guy realize that the monster was vulnerable from the inside? To which Su Ping says that he just guessed by chance. But in fact, he knew that only some dynamic type beasts were capable of using the recombination of severed limbs. Because the body of a huge beast is just a shell. And the spiritual core is the root of this heavenly beast. Thanks to the core, he survived. Thanks to this, he constantly restored his body. As long as he used it properly, any demon-type celestial beast would not be difficult. Now Su Ping is confident that this fight has dispelled all doubts. The small skeleton was able to disintegrate Bone Crusher piece by piece. Each bone his body was made from creating a new creature. The team notices that it turns out that this monster is still not dead because the movement that the Bone Breaker makes is unusual, as if it was specially controlled. Every bone that falls to the ground is reassembled into the same beast and it turns into a puppeteer. Fang Yu Jing asks the owner if this is really his doing. Your partner's opinion is confirmed. The small skeleton summoned an army of other skeletons, just defeated a high-ranking beast, and turned it into a puppet. Li Ying asks how a small skeleton can even summon an attack in melee at the same time. But the team is in a hurry, so the captain orders to omit the details and continue the search for the bloody fox.
Su Ping says not to rush because he has unfinished business, and the guy also hopes that the team will pretend that they didn't see it. Su Ping approaches Lin Mikun, who fearfully uses his shield and asks the guy what he is going to do now. To which Su Ping calmly replies that he won't do anything. He just wanted to remind Lin Mikun to be careful. Suddenly, the small skeleton uses his sword, while Su Ping tells Lin Mikun that the desert area is full of danger and the rogue must be vigilant. At this time, the small beast cuts off Lin Mikun's hand. He uses his sword for this. Lin Mikun is in incredible pain. He is shocked that Su Ping could do this to him. The guy tells him that Lin Mikun will live only because of the captain. But if Su Ping sees him again, it will be very bad. And first of all, for Lin Mikun himself. The owner promises Lin Mikun that he will personally finish him off, unless he wants to disappear himself. The frightened guy grabs his severed hand and runs away without looking back. The surprise team does not understand why Su Ping did this. The captain says it was too much. The girl says that this man has an unclean heart. If you stay with him, sooner or later he will kill everyone. It would be right to deprive him of it. Now, in a calm environment, the team can talk to the guy and girl they found. Assistant Li Ying says the team is looking for a fire-tailed blood fox. He asks if they know something about him. The guy and girl begin to remember. It seems they saw his traces somewhere. But Su Ping also saw something similar to footprints. He shows the direction in which they just passed. Suddenly, the small skeleton begins to show interest in the large pit that is located next to them. Su Ping notices that in this pit, something has attracted a small skeleton. He asks to borrow a gun from the girl. The guy shoots a light pistol, which is intended for a distress signal. He took it to brighten what is there. When the entire pit lights up, they see a wounded firefox below. The commander rejoices. Has he really been found? The team descends to help the celestial beast. The captain is happy. He talks about how much the fox made them worry. The captain announces that the task is completed. He orders everyone to prepare to return, and a dimension opens. But Su Ping says that he needs to wait. He notices that there is something inside the stones. Fang Yu Jing uses his equipment to test these amazing stones. He shines them through, tries to analyze them. Fang Yu Jing finds out that no match was found for known elements. It turns out this is an unknown ore. The team decides that they need to return home immediately. But Su Ping does not understand why they are leaving. Fang Yu Jing says that if they can find natural deposits of rare ores to use, then they will definitely benefit. Stellar rifts open the way for them to all the stars and planets, but the likelihood of finding valuable ores is very small. It's like searching for gold in the sand. Fang Yu Jing continues to say that time is very valuable, so what kind of rogue would want to waste time? In general, Su Ping just needs to report when they find it, and the federal government itself will send people to take samples. Su Ping notices that the little skeleton likes this ore so much that it shouldn't be an ordinary thing, so he decides to take a sample himself. Still, the team returns to base. The system notifies the owner that the task has been successfully completed. Now you can receive your reward, one demonic body of a golden raven. After arriving, the girl invites Mr. Sir Su Ping on his card. It turns out that she is a senior lecturer at Fengshan University, and her name is Luo Gushui. She says that she really wants to introduce the guy to their rector, she hopes that Su Ping will somehow come to their university. Su Ping is a little confused. He thanks for the invitation, but in his thoughts, only that he did not go to universities in his previous life. But compared to this, he is more interested in the details that the system gives. He tells the girl that he still has work. He will talk to her about it next time. The girl is shocked. The guy just left. He didn't seem to like the offer, even though it was the best university. She thinks that she should have told him directly that she wanted to immediately invite him as a teacher. The next morning, Su Ping wakes up and leaves the room. He meets his sister again. The girl is again surprised that her brother got up too early. He probably didn't sleep. And he probably just walked somewhere all night again. To which Su Ping replies that she probably also walked somewhere all night. Which makes my sister very angry. Su Ling Yue says that she is not like her loser big brother because she gets up early every morning to train. The guy simply turns around and goes up to his room. The brother says that his sister is great and he is proud of her. At this moment, Su Ling Yue screams at her brother. She is incredibly angry because she does not need his pride. Meanwhile, Su Ping is in her room trying to find out everything from the system about the new reward. It turns out that this crow body is the secret combat technique of the Golden Crow clone. Born from a fiery star like the sun, 
He was born with the ability to penetrate mountains and rivers. After cultivation, he became an invincible creature that was capable of crushing stars. In ancient times, he conquered most of the primordial universe. Wherever the golden raven went, everything turned to dust. The next generation called him a demon. The owner is surprised that this golden raven is really so strong. Now, Su Ping wants to cultivate the demonic body. The system warns that the golden raven's body will continuously change the shape of the host's body. The process is extremely long and painful and requires extremely highly developed star power and a lot of material support. And in the end, he will cease to be a person altogether. And in the end, the owner will rule under heaven as a demon. Su Ping realizes that if his body turns into a monster, then it is too much like a villain. The system says that the owner does not need to worry about this, because after completing cultivation, the golden crow's body will be composed of pure energy. Su Ping can keep the original appearance fused with his preferences, and it will not affect his normal life. But people can live like human beings if they stop being human. The owner agrees to the terms of the system. He is ready to play by its rules. Su Ping learns the hard way that the weak in this world live without respect. Su Ping is back in his pet store. A delivery has arrived. They are unloading boxes. How convenient it is that the Federal Miners Repository has home delivery. Su Ping does the identification and it is successful. On the way to the quarry, he killed several animals and received merit. Now he can afford lighter armor. The water armor is activated, adapting to the wearer's star power stage, currently provides protection from attacks from the first to the seventh degree. The materials for the first level of the Golden Crow demonic body had also been collected. This is much more efficient than personally collecting everything in the cultivation areas. To create the demonic body of the Golden Raven, a large amount of materials and star energy is required, which can be obtained from the Pathfinder Vault and the Hundunya Star Power Card. After obtaining the demonic body of the Golden Crow, Su Ping will be able to explore more dangerous places in the desert regions and Hundunya star power maps. It's just perfect. But the guy has one question about ore. He asks the system if it can put this loot into the slot. The system says that changing and maintaining a slot to create an acceptable container requires the owner to pay in the form of energy points. In this case, Su Ping is thinking about converting these ores into a new section for animals. He will provide the materials himself. He asks the system for a discount, but of course all this is only for the sake of cultivating celestial beasts. New permissions are unlocked in the section. Once the owner has collected all the necessary materials, he can update the sections for taming by paying only 20%. Su Ping is happy because he can upgrade. Now he has a lot of freedom, although the side effects are quite serious. But such a powerful effect is definitely worth it. The necessary materials are there. You can get them from the storage without any problems. Su Ping remembers the energy points. He will have to temporarily close the store while he cultivates. Su Ping calls Su Yan Ying. The girl is shocked. Is this really from the Xiao Tao Chi store? The owner himself. He asks the girl if she is happy with the current strength of the Thunder Mouse. She says that she is very pleased and doesn't even know how to thank Su Ping. He says that he just needs her help. Su Yan Ying is shocked. The owner actually asked her for something. This is a great opportunity to get closer to him. She tells the owner that as long as it is in her power, she will always help. But then suddenly the owner says that he would like to record a short video with Su Yan Ying. The girl can't believe her ears. Does Su Ping really want to make a short video with her? But Su Yan Ying doesn't understand why he needs this. She has strange thoughts in her head. The girl is scared, but the guy asks if the girl is free now because she will become famous. But if Su Yan Ying doesn't want it, the guy will find someone else. The girl said that she understood the owner, and after a while she came to his pet store. The surprised guy looks at the girl. This is something he really didn't expect to see. Today she dressed beautifully. Su Yan Ying became embarrassed. After all, the owner said that they would record a short video. The owner says that as long as it does not interfere with the performance, he asks the girl to summon the Thunder Mouse. Does he really want to take off the Thunder Mouse with her? He definitely won't get away with this. The owner doesn't understand what exactly won't work for him. He will simply film the girl calling the Thunder Mouse, and then she has to make a thunderclap and a thunderstorm, that's all. The surprised girl asks if this is all. The owner says that he wants to film the fruits of his labors. The guy asks Su Yan Ying if she took the mouse with her. Su Yan Ying says that of course she took the beast with her, but despite the fact that the annual competition has already been completed, the final awaits her. 
She says that the champion Ye Hao will finally fight her, and if the owner comes on stage with her, he will get great publicity. He agrees, but Su Ping does not understand what kind of champion, and on top of that, Su Yan Ying is not the winner yet. The girl says that this is a champion who has a strong beast of the ninth stage, however. She expected to get at least into the top 20, and not into second place. This far exceeded her expectations. A guy and a girl go to Fengshan University. Along the way, the guy notices how popular thunder mice are here. Su Yan Ying says that in the annual competition, everyone personally saw her potential, and the thunder mouse is now a real star. The final hasn't started yet, so she asks the owner if they will be handing out flyers. Su Ping says they won't, because most of these students are simply following trends, hoping to grow an apple from a seed. In any case, they are scared off by the owner's prices. But the offended girl says that the guy did not accept the money she borrowed from Lali. Approaching the university, the heroes passed by Ye Hao, around which there was a crowd of fans. The girls say that with the power of a god, Ye Hao probably won't even need half a year to make it to the first team. But a popular guy noticed Su Yan Ying passing by. He asks the girl to wait, because he was the one looking for her. The girl doesn't understand what the guy wants from her, but he decided to just thank her in advance for the match because his silver snake-tailed dragon has finally broken through to the seventh degree. Su Ping analyzes that this is the guy who is able to defeat the Thunder Mouse. At this time, the confident guy tells the girl, in their round, he suggests that she not use the Thunder Mouse, because his celestial beast accidentally stepped into the seventh stage, and he had not fully mastered all the powers. The guy says it wouldn't be nice if the Thunder Mouse choked on its own blood. But the defeat of the fallen phoenix will at least be interesting to watch. Ye Hao says goodbye to Su Yan Ying and says that he will try to be merciful. The owner says that even if the King of Beasts comes out, the Thunder Mouse will not be afraid, let alone the non-adult Silver Dragon. Ye Hao notices Su Ping standing nearby. He asks Su Yan Ying to introduce them. She says that this is Su Ping's master. He is helping her train the Thunder Mouse. You can say that he is half the owner of the Thunder Mouse. The girl points to the guy. She says that this is Ye Hao, the annual champion of their university. He is the person who spends the most time on his pets. Ye Hao asks the owner if the power of that very thunder mouse was really raised by the owner. Ye Hao's thoughts are that a new master has appeared behind the scenes. He asks Su Ping if he is interested in the job. Su Ping responds that Ye Hao speaks beautifully, but business in his store is so good that he is too busy. But if only Ye Hao is so sincere, then he will make an exception for him. The owner names the cost of his services at 500,000 yuan. Ye Hao doesn't understand how anyone can charge 500,000 yuan for such services. Is this guy really serious? Su Ping mockingly says that as someone who loves his heavenly beasts, Mr. Ye Hao can't even spare 500,000 yuan. Is he really tired of it? Ye Hao starts to get angry. Money is not a problem for him. He will pay as much as he needs, unless of course the owner has the strength to take it on. Wealthy people from prestigious universities spend money without blinking an eye. Su Ping knows that he has come to the right place. Arriving at the university, they witnessed a battle between heavenly beasts. This is a freshman exhibition match. The girl directs her beast and uses a second-degree speed boost. The girl's non-local beast strikes and burns her opponent. The host says that it was a very good match and participant Su Ling Yue wins. Su Yan Ying comments that Su Ling Yue so calmly killed an opponent who was stronger than her. Su Ping notices that the girl's skills are good, but unfortunately there are some disadvantages. Huoji says that last year Su Ling Yue could have made the team, but this year there are too many strong participants, so it cannot be said that her phantom fire beast has no strengths. But we can say for sure that he is ordinary. This year's champion will definitely be a rare beast, a dragon with a ninth degree pedigree, or an ordinary beast from the ancestral first degree. It will be a divine battle. This young girl could become a future star if she had a strong mentor, but whether she will meet such a master depends only on luck. The host of the show comments that the final match is starting right now in front of the audience. The first player is Su Yan Ying, who finished second in the last game. But opposite her is the annual champion Ye Hao. Suddenly, Su Ling Yue notices that her loser older brother is here. Meanwhile, Su Ping is standing near the Thunder Mouse. He says that it has been so long since he and the Beast fought side by side. But suddenly the Thunder Mouse got scared and ran behind its owner wanting to find protection. The audience does not understand why the Thunder Mouse suddenly backed away. Was it really afraid of the silver snake-tailed dragon?
And what is this guy doing there anyway? He's not even a master of fighting beasts. He's just getting in the way. Yeah, Howe warns them to do as he said so that they don't expose themselves to ridicule. Suddenly, Su Yan Ying summons the fallen phoenix. She orders him to use ultra flaming rays. The hosts comment that member Su Yan Ying suddenly attacked. The girl decided to show everyone her skills. At that time, Ye Hao orders his silver snake tailed dragon to have fun with the phoenix. Unexpectedly, the dragon used an eighth stage dragon skill. As expected from a ninth stage dragon beast, it is too powerful. Su Yan Ying orders the fallen phoenix to strike again. Ye Hao sees that phoenix is still alive. He says that he will now show his rival the difference between them. The silver dragon is really only trying to hold back the rays, but all the power of the phoenix still could not inflict fictitious damage on the king. Ye Hao mockingly says that the harder you work, the more disappointed you become. This is the oppressive power of the ninth degree bloodline. Spectators are not surprised at how powerful it is. The power of the ultra flaming rays belongs to the eighth stage, but for the dragon, it is like a tickle. Even though it is an eighth stage skill, the fallen phoenix itself is a fifth stage compared to the silver snake tail dragon. It is still far behind. Ye Hao orders his silver snake tail dragon to show the phoenix what he can do. The silver snake tail dragon used wind fire and ice forever at the same time. This is incredible skill. Although the beast did not aim, the range is really too large. Su Yan Ying uses a speed boost on the fallen phoenix. The host comments that under the onslaught of attacks, member Su Yan Ying is forced to only defend herself. Fallen Phoenix makes a mistake and gets hit. Phoenix was actually knocked down by a random pet skill. This is the power of the Mighty King's annual champion. The girl's heavenly beast is completely crushed. She understands that the silver snake-tailed dragon has become much stronger than last time. Is it really all over? She is afraid for the Thunder Mouse. Ye Hao says that how can raising celestial beasts of this level charge such a high price? Su Ping takes matters into his own hands and summons Thunder Mouse's killing intent. The mistress notices that her Thunder Mouse's aura has changed. At this time, Su Ping orders the mouse to tear apart the opponent. Thunder Mouse begins the attack. She was actually able to break through the dragon's chest. Mouse aura also suppresses the strong resilience inherent in the dragon bloodline. Ye Hao says that a worthy opponent has appeared. Now he is strengthening the dragon's powers of the fourth stage. He orders the silver snake-tailed dragon to trample the mouse. The host comments that member Ye Hao is going to freeze the entire earth. This is fatal to a celestial beast that cannot fly. But the Thunder Mouse isn't running anywhere. Su Ling Yue and Su Ping's body begins to freeze, but the owner manages to order Thunder Mouse to use the triple combo that he taught him. Ye Hao can't believe that the Thunder Mouse wasn't frozen. The beast used ten thunder bends, and with this, she cleared the way for herself. Although it was obvious, the Thunder Mouse is protected by Thunder Armor. Ye Hao says that the mouse cannot hide from his eyes. He orders his dragon to attack immediately. Thunder Mouse uses separation. Now Ye Hao can't figure out where the real mouse is. Su Ping says that all three clones distracted Ye Hao, but there was a fourth mouse all this time. The host comments that the only part of the silver snake tail dragon that isn't covered in scales, now that the Thunder Mouse has gotten to it, is its mouth. Viewers comment that the Thunder Mouse has become even stronger. It is somehow strange that the Ye Hao beast has risen to the seventh stage, but is still inferior to the Thunder Mouse. Ye Hao doesn't understand how this Thunder Mouse's fighting style has changed a lot. Is it really about this guy? He starts to get angry if he loses now. Wouldn't it mean that Su Ping won the champion title due to luck? The Silver Snake Tailed Dragon directly begins to attack the participant. But member Su Yan Ying's lower body was frozen, and she couldn't dodge. This angers Su Ping and he directs the Thunder Mouse to use Thunderclap. In a desperate attempt to steal the chicken in front of the owner, who is eating rice, the dragon is injured again. The silver snake-tailed dragon fell to the ground, incredibly, but the Thunder Mouse was victorious. Su Ling Yue is horrified and doesn't understand how this could happen. Has the silver snake-tailed dragon lost? Besides, it was such a humiliating loss. Ye Hao is surprised and cannot understand how the mouse won so easily. Was she deliberately hiding her power, or was it the work of that guy? The host announces that, unsurprisingly, the Mouse King Su Yan Ying has pulverized the annual champion. Su Ping turns to Ye Hao. He asks if the guy is now happy with his strength. He also asks Ye Hao if he will pay him 500,000 yuan in cash or by transfer. The guy says that he will transfer the money later, 
But first he wants to hear the answer to the question. Can his silver snake-tailed dragon become as strong as the thunder mouse? The owner replies that of course he can, but only he will decide when it is the dragon's turn. Huoji noticed that all this time the thunder mouse was controlled by Su Ping. Even the frosty step did not stop him. The girl says it's a pity, her team is already full. The girl asks the vice rector what class this guy was in, but the vice rector replies that this student is quite modest, so it is better to ask him himself after the match. He himself doesn't know who this gifted student is, not even inferior to Ye Hao, but his mentor was actually no different. What kind of negligence in his duties? Su Ping was brought to the vice rector's office. This is a special reception. Su Yan Ying said that her teacher is a big person who will see them, and they are about to come. Su Yan Ying tells Su Ping to get up, but he is in no hurry to do so. Ignoring the girl, he replies that he would like to talk to their vice rector about some important matters. The secretary meets the vice rector and his holiness. The projector said that he had no idea that at his university, there was a person worthy of the personal presence of his holiness. Su Yan Ying tries to calm Su Ping, but they do not notice the teachers entering the office. It turns out that two captains and a commander came in. The commander says that after watching this match, even he felt his blood boil. The vice rector turns to Su Ping. He says that judging by his age, the guy is probably a second year student. The vice rector is interested in who the teacher of such a talented student is. Teacher Luo, who came with the vice rector, clarifies that this is not their student. The vice rector says that it doesn't matter. Even if so, then maybe the guy wants to study with them. The training is free, and upon graduation, the university will give him a high ranking celestial beast. Su Yan Ying is shocked. Is there really free training here? And they will also give a high ranking beast. She has never heard of such conditions. The captain standing nearby realizes that this old fox is pretending as if he really knows the guy. Su Ping replies that this does not interest him, but the vice rector does not understand how this is possible, because such good conditions do not suit him. The rector begins to promise a monthly stipend, if only the guy agrees to study at their university. Teacher Luo tells the vice rector that she recently told him about the dangerous mission of the tunnelers, and so this is the same young man who killed the bone breaker and saved her and Chen Shan. The vice rector is surprised whether this is the same young man who is right in front of his eyes. They don't believe what they see. He killed an eighth grade bone breaker and even saved gold rank walkers. Su Ping doesn't understand why they look at him like that. The captains and commander wonder if the prodigal son really decided to go for a walk, but what family he comes from is interesting. They had never seen anything like this in four families. The commander suggests that this may be the same son of the family. Su Ping is at a loss. They mixed up his last name. Su Yan Ying says that the guy's tone is too rude, and if they anger the commanders, they will see no mercy. The commander says that this is an ordinary person. Then the guy does not need to study. It is better to immediately join their squad. He will be the first in the squad and will receive a double advantage. Su Yan Ying is shocked how Su Ping can be in the first lineup and also get a double advantage. Even she is only subscribed to the fourth team, and even then without any privileges. Su Ping says that this does not interest him at all. He is better off studying than joining them. The captain tells Su Ping to join them immediately, because he will receive 100,000 explorer points, and the old man is ready to give him sets of exclusive armor and special martial arts. Su Yan Ying happily says that she agrees, but Su Ping says that she has gone crazy. Everyone has forgotten her existence. Besides, who will look after the store and sell goods if the guy becomes a go-getter? Teacher Luo invites Mr. Su Ping to become a distinguished teacher at their university. The guy and girl are shocked. Is it really possible to become a teacher right away? Because to do this, you need to have at least a seventh level qualification. And you need to go through the assessment stages to be able to get this place. A teacher can directly influence the destinies of hundreds of students. Many people stand in line and wait to be called to a position. Luo's teacher says that it will only be one lesson a week, and the rest of the time, Su Ping can do whatever he wants. The guy will have all the privileges. He will have access to all campus resources. Su Ping is surprised. Really all the resources, because cultivating the Golden Crow's demonic body requires a lot of rare materials, and if he can get everything from there, it will save a lot of effort. Moreover, with a teacher's license, he will no longer have to worry about goods of extraterrestrial origin. 
It's just like killing two birds with one stone. The guy agrees to this. Now, in order to become a Su Ping teacher, you need to pass a series of tests, assessing his physical fitness, combat skills, level of knowledge, and so on. You need to get an average score of 60 in the written exam, then it won't be difficult. Su Ping hopes that it is not too late to refuse. The vice chancellor tells Su Ping that this is the standard for strangers. And Mr. Su Ping was able to kill the demonic beasts in the barren area, and his fighting skills were beyond doubt as far as teaching was concerned. Then he is sure that the guy will be able to master it after working in several classes as a teaching assistant. But Su Ping doesn't understand what the director means. Therefore, the vice principal tells the guy to just take a physical fitness test because their educational system should record information about the strength of each teacher. This will make everything easier, starting with selecting the right students for classes. Su Ping realizes that the old fox is clearly trying to test his skills. It turns out that if the guy is not good enough, his allowance will be deducted. But he agrees to the test. The guy is brought into a large room. This is a high-level testing room. This is where Su Ping will need to fight, with Baiji alone. If the guy holds out for a minute, then he passes the test. The vice rector tries to show Su Ping his power. He says that this is a high-level military weapon, and even it only lasted for 30 seconds. The guy enters the fight. He is ready to test the fruits of his training, and he advances. The guy is ready to fight. This huge beast releases electric current, but Su Ping goes on the attack and uses a star shield. The blows turn out to be very strong. At any second, his shield could fall apart. The vice rector concludes that the guy lasted the first 10 seconds and had a good reaction, but the shield was too weak. The guy uses his skills. He flies up to attack, but the beast releases crystal swords at him. It was all over in less than 20 seconds. After all, this was the first time Su Ping had taken on a Baiji. But the guy is still holding on. He is not going to give up. This beast wrapped the hero in a green, thorny vine. Teacher Luo says to stop the test immediately. But the vice rector says that there is no need to rush, because the guy did not call for help, which means he did not give up. The Beiji's attack will gradually increase from low to high, and from the first stage to the sixth stage, it only takes about five seconds. They will immediately stop him when he reaches the fatal point. The beast burns Su Ping with fire. The guy uses water armor, but it no longer holds, and these vines are entwined too tightly. Teacher Luo doesn't understand why the beast hasn't been stopped yet, since a lot of time has passed. He asks the vice rector why they haven't stopped the test yet, because ten seconds have already passed. And this firestorm should be at the eighth stage. And why Su Ping doesn't react at all. Has the guy lost consciousness? But in an instant, the guy gains incredible strength and tears these vines towards himself. He attacks the Baiji and destroys him with his blow. He has become so powerful that it feels like he has been possessed by demons. The vice rector and teacher cannot believe his eyes. The guy not only survived the attack but also fought back. And in the face of Baiji, everyone was defeated before. But now this machine is broken. Su Ping feels very strange sensations. The system says that this first stage Golden Crow demonic body battle mode is still unstable. Therefore, it will only slightly improve the combat characteristics of the owner. Only in special cases will it be fully activated. The unfinished form of a golden raven using power. Su Ping is surprised, was it really only part of the power? The test is completed. Peak star power. Average third stage. Attack strength average third stage. Defense capability lowest eighth stage. And the final assessment of the owner's combat power is the highest seventh level. Now Su Ping asks if this is enough for the vice rector. The vice chancellor says that Mr. Su Ping is more than capable of being a senior mentor. His electronic ID will be ready tomorrow. The power of Bai Ji is something that ordinary people cannot bear. If it weren't for the demonic body, the guy would have been fed to the fish long ago. The vice rector asks teacher Su Ping if he is dissatisfied with something. The guy still sees that the teacher is pretending and being cunning. But in any case, the owner sees that his results are not bad. He has nothing to worry about. The guy says goodbye to the teachers and leaves, to which the vice rector offers to give him a ride in a car. But Su Ping refuses. Afterwards, Vice Rector Dunn tells the guy not to forget to conduct classes once a week. Teacher Luo says that the final grade is the highest of the seventh stage. Is it possible that his star power is only at the third stage? The Vice Rector says that there is only one option. 
This guy has a secret teaching, but he started training recently. There is a real master behind this man. When the opportunity arises to find out who is behind him, there must be some clues in his store. He says that he should first find out the location of Su Ping Pet's store. At this time, the guy overheard that the teachers wanted to know the location of his store. After all, you could just ask. Now in return, he asks to find him a couple of rich students. Su Ping came home and was met by his mother. She cannot understand why her son is without clothes and where he even hurt himself. He says that mom should not worry, but the mother is surprised by her son's physique. She asks how long ago her little boy began to lift. Su Ping told his mother that he would tell everything after he changed his clothes. But the mother cannot understand why her son is not shy. Did he really forget who changed his diapers? In the room, the guy remembers that his water armor is broken. He now needs to fix it. Suddenly, Su Ling Yue's sister bursts into the room. She asks her brother if he really has star power now. The sister entered the room and saw her brother. At that moment, he was changing clothes. She called her brother a pervert and became shy. The brother asks why he is a pervert, since the sister herself broke into the room without permission. She invaded her older brother's room and called him by name. It's worth teaching her a lesson so that in the future she knows how to treat her. Su Ping asks her sister, did she really not like it? Then he would let her see enough more. The sister got angry. She immediately said that she had recently been promoted to the fourth degree, so Su Ping was better off not approaching her. Now Su Ping is not afraid of his sister. He is ready to repel any blow, because now he is not so weak at all. Like before, and completely confident in myself. But this blow was too cruel. This was impossible to expect. Su Ping's defense is at the eighth stage. How could this even happen? The system says that this data is related to the imperfect appearance of the Golden Raven. As for the owner's normal state, this is physical strength above the third degree. Su Ping went out to talk to his mother. She asks him when his bloodline power awakened and what kind of celestial beast he has now. The guy replies that the power appeared recently, and the beast at the moment is a small skeleton. Mom will buy him a normal animal after all. Why is he bothering with this low-ranking little skeleton? The sister says that he only recently awakened, so he will not be able to use the heavenly beast he was given. In addition, the more expensive the pets, the more expensive food they eat. And with his small income, he will not be able to feed him. Mom asks if her son still has money to pay for utilities at the store. If he doesn't have enough, then Mom will help and let him stop taking small loans. Su Ping says that recently he has earned too little in his account, only 500,000 yuan. Mom doesn't understand where her son got such big money. He didn't accidentally steal it. She asks where her son got such a sum. Su Ping replies that in Feng Shan, the Thunder Mouse is gaining popularity and has been advertised. Of course he can tell them that all the money he earns in the store was converted into energy, and that in front of them is a real millionaire. Now Mom can confidently say that Su Ping has finally risen, and his sister should now learn from her older brother. My sister says that no one will study with him. After all, her brother has always been and will be behind her. Su Ping says that he will definitely take care of his little sister. The next day, a girl came to the owner's store and was told that Su Ping was the same person who raised the Thunder Mouse. Su Ping understands that as soon as it became popular, the first clients came immediately. The guy replies that it was he who trained the mouse. He asks the girl about what issue. She needs food or strengthening her pet. The girl brought four animals with her. She wants them to become stronger than the Thunder Mouse. Su Ping tells the client that the fact is that Thunder Mouse cultivation was a limited service, and only regular cultivation is available at the moment. It turns out that the Thunder Mouse is truly unique. The girl asks the owner what the effect of ordinary cultivation is. Su Ping says that the effect of them is much weaker. It will slightly improve the characteristics of pets. The cost of upgrading low-ranking animals is 10,000 yuan, and mid-ranking one is 100,000 yuan. The girl is at a loss. The wording would improve a little. It sounds unprofessional. Well, of course, Su Yan Ying has already taken all the advantages for herself a long time ago. Or this store is using the name of Thunder Mouse to attract people and make money. In any case, there is no point in saying anything. The girl turns around and leaves. She said she would look elsewhere. The owner tries to stop her. The system contacts the owner, which sees the buyer's doubts and the cancellation of the initial order. What caused the store significant losses? The owner must carry out professional cultivation. The fee for professional cultivation is a hundred times higher than the cost of regular cultivation. This property of the animals being raised, 
must reach a level above average. The great panacea and the secret mystic skill are not a bad reward, but the price is a hundred times higher than the cost of ordinary cultivation. The owner is not sure that people can afford it. The owner tells the client that he understood her desire to improve the celestial beast. However, the cultivation effect of Thunder Mouse is quite expensive, and ordinary people may not be able to afford it. The client asks how much it might cost. After all, she has some money. The owner replies that the price is one million. The girl thinks that this person will not be able to take a large sum of money and run away. She asks the owner if he rents the store. The owner replies that of course not for rent. The client can be sure about the reputation of his store. And if the client does not believe, he can check the owner on the Fengshan University website. The girl replies that judging by the age of the owner, he is studying either in the first or second year. But if this turns out to be untrue, then don't blame the senior student when the guy disappears in Feng Shan. The girl confirms the owner's identity, but he turns out to be a high-ranking university combat instructor. She is shocked why he didn't initially say that he works in the most authoritative department and that he is also a high-ranking teacher. Now the owner slyly asks the senior student whose trail will be cleared because he is a teacher. The girl begins to ask teacher Su Ping for forgiveness, only that she offended him, but asks him to forgive her ignorance. Su Ping understands that having a teacher's license is really convenient. Now he tells the girl that in the store she calls him owner or boss. Also, let him return later and give money for cultivation. The owner of Su Ping is right, but the girl doesn't have much money now. A senior student brings her animal. It's a pet Tianxiang pig. The store account received an amount of one million heavenly currency. The owner is simply shocked. The girl transferred a million as if nothing had happened, and Ye Hao owes him 500,000 yuan. Perhaps Su Ping asked too little from him. The senior student notices that the owner's face is somehow dissatisfied. Isn't he happy? The girl turns to Su Ping. She asks not to take this to heart, and after the cultivation is completed, she will present a grateful gift. The owner tells the girl not to worry, because he is Su Ping. He always provides the same services to all clients. He said that he was going to start now if she was done, then let her come and pick up the animal in a month. The girl is at a loss. Not only did the owner not care about her previous insults, so he also wants to complete the seventh degree high cultivation in just one month. The girl thanks the owner for the cultivation. Now Su Ping has 10,000 energy points. He is wondering where to spend them to improve the store or the pool of chaos spirits. The cultivation area is as strong as the Cloud Thunder Realm. It requires 1,000 energy to enter and to gain progress, just like the Thunder Mouse. It can be used for temporary rest, for celestial beasts that are not taken away after cultivation is completed, and there is no need to occupy the beast sections. You can also use initial shadow cloning. Then the clone will imitate the behavior of the owner and transfer the celestial beast to the cultivation area for normal cultivation. When the main shadow clone is used, 50% of the cultivation income must be paid. While Su Ping was busy with his own affairs, suddenly a crowd of people approached his pet store. The owner notices that it is somewhat noisy outside. He pays attention for a huge number of people. Su Ping begins to rejoice. Are these really all his clients? From the crowd, voice after voice is heard asking for the strengthening of their celestial beast. At this time, Su Ping, together with the celestial beasts, enter into the cultivation space called Star Debris. To activate the shadow cloning function for the first time, the owner must carry out full rearing of pets. 200 energy points are now deducted for creating a clone. Su Ping looks at his clone, but the owner thinks that something is wrong. The key to cultivating celestial beasts lies in an environment in which all attributes coalesce. The stronger the fire attribute, the more favorable it is to practice fire beast skills. Underground lava appears in front of them, which has a temperature of 2,000 degrees. But the owner does not feel the heat. The heat falls on his body, but he is not hot at all, just like he was during the battle with the Baiji. Then there was a deadly high temperature. Not only did the owner not get burned, but he also activated the Golden Raven. Su Ping suggests that the appearance of the Golden Raven has a connection with the fire attribute. There is a resurrection anyway, so it would be useless for him not to try a possible skill. And this turns out to be true. The element of fire is obedient, as if it had been tamed. This is the personal talent of the Golden Raven. The clone also tried to touch the lava, 
but his hand was burned and he had to grow a new one. Su Ping has mastered the element of fire. Now he can even take a spa in deadly lava. The pets saw how their temporary owner was in the water. They decided to jump there too, but they all died because they burned alive, because it turned out that it was not water. The owner chose to resurrect the animals, but every time the pets were resurrected, they fell back into the hot lava and burned alive. Each time their strength increased, so the owner each time let them die and resurrected them again. When Su Ping and the animals returned to their dimension, their owners came for the heavenly pets. They were very happy that the strength of their beasts had increased. The clients did not expect the owner to do everything so efficiently. Now everyone likes Su Ping Pet Store. Su Ping received an amount of 25,800 heavenly currency, which was converted into energy points. Su Ping thought that it would take 20 whole days to recapture the spent energy points, but now a couple of days is enough for him. Even all the animal sections are fully occupied, therefore the owner decided to buy new ones. But it turns out that at the first level the number of sections for pets is limited, and now purchasing is impossible. Now the owner's main goal is the Tianjiang pig, and entering a high-ranking cultivation area is very expensive. It would be a shame to go there with only one pet. Su Ping tells the system that he wants to improve Ye Hao's spirit pool. The owner has successfully leveled up, but using Ye Hao's spirit pool will require a thousand energy points. At once, now there is a low probability of the appearance of the King of Beasts. For one use, the system requires 100,000 money. This is robbery, and last time a small skeleton of the first degree suddenly appeared. Su Ping says that he is not asking the King of Beasts, but at least it gives him an average pet of the eighth degree. Suddenly, clouds appear in the city, and terrible red lightning begins. Local residents do not understand what is happening. At this time, Su Ping goes outside to see what is happening. A high-ranking luminous serpent, Purgatory, appears in front of him. The guy begins to rejoice that his investment actually paid off. This is the ninth stage, and almost the king of beasts. The beast begins to get angry because Su Ping touched it, because the greatness of the dragon does not allow any weakling to touch their body and especially their head. The owner sees that the animal is small in height, but has the right character. Su Ping grabs the beast's face. He tells him that, unfortunately for the beast, the owner is invulnerable in the store. He invites the beast to enter into a contract. The frightened beast agrees, and now a contract has been concluded between them. Su Ping receives an urgent notification on her phone. This is a reminder that teacher Su Ping has a planned lecture tomorrow for the first and third groups of the third year. The lecture will begin at exactly two o'clock in the afternoon. Before entering the university, the director of the combat operations department is already waiting for the guy. There are two minutes left before the lecture, but Su Ping still no. He thinks how unreasonable it is on the first day and such irresponsibility. Teacher Luo tells the director, the teacher Su Ping is simply not familiar with this place, so most likely he was just lost. Also, the director should just wait in the lecture hall. The director says that he was away on business for only a few days, but there is already such disorganization here. The man had already heard that it was the Luo teacher who recommended this guy as a teacher. But since when did she imagine herself as a director? The teacher asks for an apology from the director, and if Su Ping does not come, she is ready to be punished for this. But she still hopes that Su Ping will come soon, because the teacher knows not to anger the director. Suddenly a guy appears in front of them. The director is a little surprised. Is this really the same newcomer? But the guy now has only one thing on his mind. He had fun flying on a dragon. He barely managed to arrive on time, but he managed to test his new beast. Xiao Yu and her classmates are waiting for a new teacher. The guys think that the new teacher is some kind of relative of the director. After all, the official profile of the new teacher on the website is almost empty, as if it were a fake. Xiao Yu thinks that this is some son of the director, and it seems to her that the teacher got here simply through connections. A girl hears her classmates gossiping. She tells them that there is nothing wrong with the teacher being young, but on the contrary, it shows his strength. One of her classmates asks the girl if she really dreams of becoming a high-ranking teacher. After all, you don't become a teacher just by training. Teacher Luo enters the classroom. She asks for silence in the lecture hall because the lesson will begin right now. She says that at this lecture, she and the director will talk about the main resource found in desert areas and a little about the fighting there. And next to her is a new teacher. His name is Su Ping. He will help. 
The students are surprised because this is their peer. How can he teach? God Yahow can be seen in the crowd. And a friend sits next to him. He mockingly says that Yahow is also strong. And why shouldn't he become a teacher? Xiao Yu just can't believe his eyes. Is it really Su Ping? The guy doesn't understand what that same Su Ping is doing here. The girl who is sitting next to Xiao Yu starts laughing at her because recently the girl taught everyone with her appearance of righteousness and said that instead of gossiping, they should better practice. One of the students raises his hand. He wants to ask the teacher if it is true that the teacher killed the bone breaker. If so, then he wants to hear the details of this battle. The students start gossiping. They heard that this is a very dangerous high-ranking beast, but it is extremely rare and no one has seen it. This is because everyone who sees it has died. Su Ping says that this is true, but now this is not the main topic of this lecture. He will tell you details about the battle later, when the opportunity arises. The director laughs at the guy, because not even a day has passed since he became a teacher, and he is already making such an important appearance. The students ask to show the skills of the young teacher, because there is no other way for him to prove his skills. Yeah, Hao thinks that last time he couldn't see Su Ping's strength, so he is also curious to know, and besides, he is waiting for the turn of his pet to return. Sister Su Ping does not understand what connection this loser could have with the bone crusher. The girl feels incredible shame for what is happening now. Teacher Luo says that the students are in lecture, so they don't need to interrupt. The principal says the teacher's words are not convincing. Moreover, now there is no point in talking about their achievement in the recent expedition. The teacher apologizes to the director for her rudeness. The principal asks teacher Su Ping to demonstrate the skill. Otherwise, it will be bad if there are rumors that his relatives work at the university. Su Ping thinks upset that even at the university there is no peace for people. He says that the price he paid in that fight was very high. He calls his celestial beast, a small skeleton, into the audience. The students really liked the cute little animal. The principal tells teacher Su Ping that he shouldn't worry. The main thing is not to harm the students. And the director assumes all other responsibility. The owner tells his beast to be calm and not to offend anyone. Xiao Yu is simply desperate because this is the weakest demon-type beast. She does not understand what exactly she is going to show them. The little skeleton begins to show all his skills. He takes out a demonic sword. The master commands the beast to use the supreme art of the sword. And with one blow, the beast burns all the steps of the audience. The people around are simply shocked. Can there really be so much power in such a small beast of a weak type? The students who watched everything that was happening cannot come to their senses. They do not understand what had just happened. Ye Hao is now afraid that his silver snake-tailed dragon against the small skeleton will not last even a minute. Xiao Yu is surprised. How can a small skeleton of the first stage be so strong? Moreover, my brother only recently awakened his power. Su Ping asks how they feel about the power of his beast. If necessary, he can show it again. The surprised director says that how dare the guy still joke. After all, this class is made of special materials that cost 10 million and is strong enough to withstand even an eighth stage attack. The young teacher asks those who are not convinced of his strength to raise their hands. Those who are not afraid and not embarrassed can try the power of the beast for themselves. Now everyone in the audience is silent. Su Ping asks why everyone lowered their heads. If they have no words, then the lesson can begin. The teacher begins the lecture. He asks to open page 45. Now he talks about the material that was discovered in the first rank stellar collapse. After the lecture, some students said that it was the quietest lesson of their lives, and even the sound of a strand of hair falling to the ground could be heard. But no one thought or took notes during the lecture because everyone's attention was focused on this deep crack. Su Ping gets into the car. He laughs that the respected projector gave a lift to some simple teacher in the car. What an honor for him. The vice rector says that he heard how Su Ping tamed the third year students to obedience. The students did not even whisper during lessons. Now, teacher Su Ping is one of the top talents of the university. Su Ping does not understand what this old, cunning fox wants to achieve. At this time, the hero enters fingerprints into the system. Suddenly, Chen Shan, whom Su Ping had not seen for a long time, approached them. They came to Su Ping's pet store. The owner notices that today is a very quiet day and there were not a single customer. Chen Shan says that he needs to discuss secret matters with Su Ping, so he asked people to leave the street. The guy also compensates the owner for all the loss of clients. The vice rector says in confusion that he also has business with Su Ping. 
but the owner tells him that the vice rector has already heard everything perfectly well. The vice rector says that a global elite tournament will take place soon. This league tournament is held every three years, and only martial beastmasters of the seventh level and below can take part in it. In addition to generous prizes, the champion of the elite league can also receive the guidance of a legendary war beastmaster. Almost all past champions have successfully reached the highest title, and some of them became legendary martial beastmasters, admired by thousands of people even now. They protect the entire continent from evil and threats, and if Teacher Su Ping wishes to participate, then the vice rector can approve a year round vacation with pay and benefits, and all awards after the tournament will belong to Su Ping. But the owner refuses because his store is overbooked. Vice Rector Dunn does not understand why the guy, as a master of war beasts, is not interested in the elite tournament. But Su Ping understands that winning the championship means becoming famous throughout the world, and his current fame is enough to earn money. But if he becomes world famous, then perhaps he will also become a target. Chen Shan originally wanted to invite Brother Su Ping to explore the secret realm together, but alas, now his offer is nothing compared to the elite league. The guy doesn't understand what Chen Shan is talking about, what kind of secret kingdom this is. The vice rector asks if the guy is really talking about one of the three secret kingdoms, unique to all of Asia. Chen Shan replies that only those who are at least silver rank know about the secret kingdom. How can the vice chancellor know about this? But it turns out the old man was half a gold rank miner. Su Ping doesn't understand what they are talking about. Ordinary stellar fishers lead to ordinary stars from valuable things, except for ores and primitive creatures. But the mountain, the ledge, the whalebrush river, and these three faults lead to the star field, which once reproduced a civilization comparable or even superior to the blue star. Although these civilizations have long disappeared, the artifacts that are said to be there are priceless. If this is true, then this can change the existing picture of the world and even help to understand the highest law of the universe. Su Ping can't understand if it's really that important. Just the presentation itself is already of great scope. However, that place was inhabited by a very large number of unknown celestial beasts. Countless strong people tried to enter the secret realm, but none of them survived. And so the secret realm was blocked by the federal government. Only before the elite league is held, the safer outer zone is opened for the best pioneers. Therefore, right now, Chun Shan is looking for teammates, despite the fact that Su Ping is not interested in the Elite League. But the area of power of the system is all-encompassing, and this Dragon Ledge Mountain secret realm may be among them. And will these unknown beasts be able to withstand the endless objections of the system? Therefore, the owner should think about the Secret Kingdom. It's already night outside, and it's time to close the pet store, but a crowd of people are still asking the owner to take their animals to raise. Su Ping apologizes, but the store closes at the end of the business day, and those who didn't have time can come early tomorrow. Visitors are willing to wait until dawn for the store to open for the owner to take their pet. The guy understands that he is not used to the sudden growth of business, and now there is absolutely no time for training during the day. It asks the system to open the cultivation list. Su Ping needs to find the dragon ledge, but according to the queries, nothing was found. The owner asks the system to search for everything related to the word dragon. The system finds the illusion of legacy. This is the land of the Dragon King's legacy. Passage into this dimension costs 2,000 energy points. These bones look like they should be what we need. The owner asks the system to tell him the features of this cultivation zone. The heritage illusion, as the name suggests, is an illusion that is immaterial in nature. And the owner cannot take anything away other than combat practice. But Su Ping doesn't understand why, then, the illusion of heritage is twice as expensive as entering the Cloud Realm. The system answers that in each place of inheritance, there is the soul of the king, waiting for the fallen god. It will be inherited by the strong one who has come through all the trials. Such a priceless gift cannot be copied. It would be blasphemy. The owner is happy that at least other things can be copied. Su Ping believes that it would be a shame if all the laurels went to only a small skeleton. Su Ping see that the date of holding this dog has long expired and its owner has not yet taken it. Perhaps he has amnesia. Well, without thinking twice, the guy enters into a temporary contract with the animal. This moon dog is a fighting type beast. Thanks to its iron health and loyalty, it is an excellent choice for the aspiring martial artist. Su Ping suggests that it is even possible that the dog's owner has already died. 
and that is why he is not taking it. Because this dog took up space for so long for free. The guy says that from now on she will work well with him. The master entered the land of the Dragon King's legacy. The illusion of a legacy. A huge skeleton of a dragon appears in front of them. Dragon Soul asks Su Ping if he accepts the test of his heritage. The guy replies that he accepts this test. Nine floors in the dragon column and nine poles. Climbing to the ninth floor is considered only a preliminary test for obtaining the inheritance. Su Ping asks the giant spirit how he can pass this test. The dragon replies that when he fell, the flying flesh and blood turned to the sky, and the scattered dragon scales turned into these nine parts of the continent turning into earth. But when the land of dragon scales was polluted by turbid air, then countless monsters were born. But in order to restore the king's soul, the guy needs to clear these places of monsters. At this time, those who got to the ninth floor will take the final tests. The very existence of such conditions means the fact that no one can accidentally get an inheritance, and the difficulty of the test is well justified. Su Ping understands that 109 dragon scales is too much. He understands how long he will have to suffer. The owner and his celestial beasts enter a huge column. There is no light there. It is dark and damp. The owner hears a voice. He tells the applicant to learn to revere the greatness of the dragon. The hero feels a lot of pressure. He doesn't understand what's happening. He hears the roar of the moon dog. Su Ping doesn't understand why the sound is coming from far away. Wasn't the beast standing behind him? He hears the sounds of his animals from everywhere. Are they really not heavenly animals, but they're ghosts? Su Ping decides that he needs to turn on the light on his watch. He sees a huge statue standing in front of him. The owner does not understand why the animals behave so strangely. They probably just hit the wall while wandering around in the dark. The guy investigates that the special structure of this statue is probably the reason for the disturbance in the direction of the sound. But can the first floor really be that simple? At one point, unexpectedly, the statue guarding the gate turned out to be alive. Now she is trying to strike the owner. But the little skeleton manages to repel the attack of an evil monster who wants his owner to die. Su Ping concludes that if one statue is alive, then perhaps the other is too. But before he can understand anything, the sword of another statue pierces his body. The owner died. He realizes that his speed is too slow. If Su Ping had concentrated all the star power on one point, then he would have survived this lightning strike. It's just a pity that it was too fast. He chooses the place of rebirth, in the place where he died. Luckily, he has a small skeleton that can handle the statues. After Su Ping is reborn, the statues attack the owner again. A small skeleton tries to protect him, but the owner does not allow him to do this. Now he understood everything, because learning to be in awe means that he is not allowed to look directly at the dragon. With the help of the owner's sharp mind, the heroes passed the first floor. It turns out that the five senses of a martial beast master are much more developed than those of ordinary people, especially the ability to perceive the flow of nearby star power. Even without seeing anything, Su Ping is not disoriented, but his perception is under pressure from this creature, and he also needs to be aware of the dangers around them. Moreover, it requires a lot of mental energy, which the simplest martial beast masters cannot bear. It's good that the owner understood the rules of the first floor, and now he can focus all his attention on the direction of perception. The resistance to pressure had already been tested in other cultivation zones, so he was already used to it. Therefore, the first floor was an easy task for him. Su Ping begins to sense a deadly aura, but there is a small flaw in this deadly aura. It is not emitted by a living being. This is an illusion of deception. They solved the task and completed it. The owner is congratulated for passing the first floor test. Su Ping and his animals returned to the pet store. Each of the animals increased their strength by completing the task. The owner sees that the results are very good. In one breath, they reached the eighth floor, and two or three passages are enough for the pig to fully increase his strength. However, the strength of the ninth floor guard is equal to the ninth stage, even though the little skeleton has mastered the dragon skill. He is still not a ninth stage opponent, because the gap is too big. We'll have to wait until it completely absorbs the skeleton king's bloodstone. It's six o'clock in the morning. Xiao Yu is watching his brother's pet store from the side. The case is very murky, but the girl is obliged to expose it. If this loser is not able to withstand the blow of a fourth stage master, then how can he become a senior teacher? A crowd of visitors is already gathering in front of the pet store. They are all waiting for their owner. 
Brother Loser has been detected on Xiao Yu's radar, but she doesn't understand why he comes so early. He used to come after lunch at about two or three o'clock in the afternoon. A crowd of people rejoices. After all, Su Ping is finally here. They hope that today he will improve their pet. After all, they have been waiting for this for so long. The girl observes that these people really look like they are hoping for her brother, as if they saw a savior. My sister thinks it's network marketing. The owner, passing by, tells everyone that the rules have not been changed and everyone must approach him in turn. Ye yeah, Hao comes up from behind the crowd. He asks people to let him pass. People are unhappy. But when they see that it is Ye Hao himself, they let him through. The sister notices that Ye Hao is also here she doesn't remember. Isn't he the former third-year number one champion? Then why did he come to her brother? Xiao Yu assumes that this loser angered the guy. Su Ping asks what is the purpose of Ye Hao's visit to his pet store today. He says that dear people are really forgetful. Has the owner forgotten about his silver snake-tailed dragon? Ye Hao summons his beast. He tells everyone to move aside, otherwise the beast will crush them. The sister doesn't understand why Ye Hao brought his pet. Is the guy really going to arrange a show execution of her brother? Su Ping was about to refuse Ye Hao, but he remembers that this beast has a ninth stage bloodline. The owner asks the system when the return service will be unblocked. High level celestial beasts. The system responds that the owner needs to complete professional cultivation at least once, and then the store will be upgraded to the third level. People are happy that Ye Hao also came to raise his pet. This is the first time they see the beast so close to the third stage. Ye Hao can afford a high pedigree celestial beast. He is definitely a high-end buyer, and his friends probably have good fortune. Su Ping understands that if he merges right now, then perhaps in the future you will lose more potential and quality customers. Ye Hao asks Su Ping if he has never bred dragon-type beasts. The owner replies that he does not have much time to deal with them. He didn't want to have to wait for the beast to grow up, but now he will have to present to their judgment the modest fruit of the guy's efforts. The sister, standing on the other side of the road, smells a strong smell. She does not understand who her slacker brother could have tamed. A huge luminous serpent of purgatory appears in front of them. This is the greatness of the dragon. People are under very strong pressure. Ye Hao, surprised, does not understand whether the greatness of the dragon is really enough for the silver snake-tailed dragon to surrender. But this cannot be, because his dragon is even larger than the snake of purgatory. Su Ping says that Ye Hao is wrong because the main reason for submission is not the greatness of the dragon, but the bloodline of the dragon. Ye Hao doesn't understand what the owner is talking about now. Therefore, Su Ping begins to explain that the ninth stage is a level with a huge margin of safety, and the difference is so great that it can even exceed the strength from the first to the eighth stage combined. But there is bloodline suppression between high and low level celestial beasts, and dragons are races with a huge, strict hierarchy. Additional proof is even that the greatness of the dragon, which the silver snake tail dragon learned through hard work, and the light bringing land of purgatory possessed it from birth. Ye Hao did not expect that Su Ping was so professional in terms of cultivation. The owner explained to him in such detail about the characteristics of high ranking beasts. The guy is really dizzy because he raised such a question. How does he want to bury himself? Su Ping says that the guy should relax because he understands that Ye Hao wants to improve his strength. And when his turn comes, the master will certainly not forget this. Su Ping understands that Ye Hao is just a naive guy, and at this time, he is already preparing for death. Xiao Yu is simply shocked by what she heard. She doesn't understand what's going on, and is it really her older brother? She doesn't believe that this is all true, and that her older brother is really that cool. The owners who came for their animals, with those that Su Ping was recently in another world and increased their strength, ask for help again. But the guy reminds them that customers do not forget to pay. And he again takes these four animals for cultivation. In the evening, the money was automatically converted into energy points. Su Ping understands that in order to increase the store, he needs 10,000. At the same time, it is necessary to complete professional cultivation and expand the store to 3,000 square meters. But if you buy a house in reality, even if it's for a store, and in a residential urban area, it will cost at least 40,000 or even 50,000 per square meter. Then the guy needs at least 150 million. The guy is thinking about becoming a miner, but it is too dangerous. If it were not for the exchange of merit for materials for cultivating the body of the golden crow, it would be useless. 
The only thing left for the guy to use is his status as a high-ranking teacher. This is the God of War Academy in the base city of Longjiang, Shanchen District. This guy's name is Xu Kuang. This is a third-year war beast master. He doesn't understand why there is no one based on the demonic type on the official website, and small sites are again filled with advertising and scammers. He does not understand why it is so difficult to find a master for an unpopular type of animal. Su Ping arrives at the base city of Longjiang. To make it in time, he calls a taxi. The cost of the taxi was 1,800 star currency. He ends up in the upper part of the city. The guy understands that there is a lot of money circulating here. That's why the prices are so high. Su Ping wants to enter the building, but the guards standing at the door do not let him through. They say that judging by the appearance of the young man, he is not local, and outsiders are prohibited from entering. The guy doesn't understand how he, the most devoted and good teacher who came in the middle of the night, is not allowed into the university. He tells the guards that he has come to see Xu Kuang, so he asks them to let him through. When the guards heard that the guy was Xu Kuang's guest, they let him through. Xu Kuang stands with his celestial beast, whose defense level has been raised to the highest third stage, but this is not enough for the owner of the beast. To increase the level of his pet, he sends him into battle. The beast uses the martial arts mod activation, and over time, the defense level increases to the highest fourth stage but the opponent's blow comes so hard that more than 80% of the beast's functions have been lost, and it stops working. Then Su Ping comes along with a guard. The guard calls out to Xu Kuang, saying that a guest has arrived. The guy is happy that the elder is finally here. Su Ping notices that this training ground for the rich is almost as big as the one at the university. At this time, the guard leaves so as not to interfere. Xu Kuang is surprised. He cannot understand why this new teacher is so young. He thinks that this guy is just an assistant to the first handsome Long Jiang. But Su Ping replies that he is the one he is waiting for. Xu Kuang is very surprised. Is this really the one he was waiting for? Su Ping says that the information says that Xu Kuang owns a demon-type pet. The owner knows something about this type of beast, so he can give some advice. Xu Kuang is furious. How can this young guy advise him anything? He also notices that this teacher has an ordinary aura, although he feels the star power in him but it is not higher than his power. Xu Kuang doesn't understand how he managed to call such a young man elder. After all, he even sent him cute emoticons and behaved so condescendingly towards such a person. Now the guy is ashamed, but Su Ping notices that Xu Kuang was just testing his star power. Xu Kuang does not understand how the teacher was able to understand what he analyzed. To this, the owner replies that he understood this from the expression on the guy's face. If Su Ping couldn't feel even this, then he had trained in the stellar Hundunya in vain. The young teacher turns to Xu Kuang, saying that if the guy is not sure about him, then let him pour star power into his right hand and try to hit him. Now Xu Kuang wants to hit the guy so hard that he can't even call the police. To strike, Xu Kuang gathers star power, but he doesn't understand why it's so difficult for him to do this. Maybe he's just overtrained. At this time, Su Ping blocked Xu Kuang's star power. He took all the power for himself, and directed it against his opponent. Xu Kuang doesn't understand what's happening. It is only obvious that only those who have power can influence the flow of nearby star power. Those who have reached the ninth rank are able to control star power to the limit. They are also able to move objects at a distance and fly. The strange phenomenon of star power flowing in his body right now was undoubtedly caused by the person standing in front of him. Maybe Su Ping is deliberately hiding his star power, but Xu Kuang doesn't understand whether there really is such a young high-ranking master in this world. Only the Federation can bestow such a high title, and each title represents the absolute strength of a specific area. Xu Kuang dares to ask what the senior's rank is now. Su Ping understands that the guy is quite smart if he knows about ranks. But he decided to change the subject so as not to go too far. To which the guy simply replies that Xu Kuang is not worthy to know about his rank. And if he's still not sure then, can try two more attacks. Xu Kuang summons the god of his beasts, Swamp Crawler and Soul Eater. Their sixth stage bloodlines, one of the beasts releases a miasma that interferes with Su Ping's vision. The Swamp Crawler begins to attack. His name speaks for itself. If he initially mastered the power of the sixth stage, then after slowing down, due to the dry and hard sand on the ground, the combat power may not be higher than the fifth stage. Thanks to the appearance of the Golden Crow, which was upgraded by Su Ping on Earth, the legacy of the Dragon King, 
it can use 70% of the incomplete cloud. At the moment, the owner's power is at the middle sixth stage, but the swamp crawler was knocked over. Xu Kuang wanted to use the soft paws of the swamp crawler to muffle the sound of footsteps. Su Ping says it's not a bad idea if you can really avoid side effects, otherwise it's just paper talk. Now, it's the Soul Eater's turn. Now Su Ping will drive him out. He had heard the roar of this creature hundreds of times. The guy tries to harden his throat and use the dragon roar, defeating the Shu Kuang celestial beast. Su Ping is afraid that these two celestial beasts usually fight opponents who are lower than themselves. They are so accustomed to going with a tailwind that even their master neglects tactical command. Although the dragon roar he uttered with all his might was not even 20% of the second dragon king's total strength. But this is more than enough to scare this beast. Shu Kuang doesn't understand how the martial beast master could master the dragon's roar, and he is surprised how the human body can produce such a powerful sound. But Su Ping just slightly strengthened his body. Nothing unusual. Although Shu Kuang beasts are not good in combat skills, but in terms of cultivation, they are incredible. The toughness and madness of the demonic type beasts are tearing the heavens apart. Plus, ordinary martial beast masters have little experience in fighting. With an unpopular type of animal, it's double pleasure to watch their faces taken by surprise. But raising such animals is simply a nightmare. Shu Kuang can accept being rejected and despised by his classmates. But even the teachers look at him strangely. Su Ping realized that in addition to relying on crushing level for his past victories, Shu Kuang also relied too much on the unpopular type's advantage. But once he meets an expert, his tactical weakness comes to light. With this technique, Shu Kuang will defeat people of low or equal level. Shu Kuang asks what he should do. In response, the teacher presents the guy with a bone lotus. Master says that this thing will greatly improve the intelligence of demon-type beasts, and they will have enough skills to support a wide range of tactics. In the market, someone once offered 5 million yuan for precious demonic beast food. Shu Kuang does not believe that Su Ping wants to give it to him, to which the owner replies that he doesn't need thanks, because the guy has to pay 1 million for the manual and that thing costs one and a half million. So he must pay first before receiving the goods. Shu Kuang understands that even if he adds up all his expenses, it is still much lower than the market price. And if the owner wants long-term supply of feed, then this is a huge benefit for Shu Kuang. Before leaving, Su Ping reminds him that the next time the guy encounters a flying beast with his bone beast, he should simply create several floors of a bone prison. And while resisting attacks, the bone prison can also be used for counterattacks. And finally, it can be used as a cloudy mist to increase the hunting range of the bloody spirit attack. Now Su Ping can leave. Xu Kuang asks to stop the car in which the elder is leaving. But then the guy decides that he doesn't need the elder's contacts just yet. Finally, Su Ping returns home. In the living room, his mother and younger sister were sitting on the sofa. Mom asks why her son came so late today. She also tells him that she has prepared food for her son. The son tells his mother that he was a little busy today, but his mother set the table as if today was some kind of holiday. After all, usually by the time he arrives, there are only scraps left on the table. And today there is so much food. Su Ping tells mom that she cooked very tasty food. The guy eats such a delicious dish for the first time after rebirth. He suggests that perhaps his avatar's mother is a high-ranking chef. After all, it's all incredibly tasty. Su Ping is in his room. Today, with the golden raven demonic body enhanced, he was able to use the power of the sixth stage. But if the owner of those two beasts were an experienced tactician, then he would have to use a small skeleton, since his own strength would not be enough. But at the moment, Su Ping is stuck in the narrow period of the highest third stage. It might take Su Ping several days for him to break through just by practicing in the universe. But if he buys a panacea in a store, then everything will go differently. The owner asks the system to open a store, but he sees that she is not here. It requires 100 energy icons to refresh once. He makes an update. There, the owner finds the middle ring trap. With this ring, there is a 25% chance of catching ninth stage wild beasts. This suits the guy because the little skeleton cannot break through to the ninth stage. In addition, this is a one-time artifact of the system, so he makes a purchase just in case. Su Ping is updating the system again. He sees the skill book of the martial beast masters. This thing is not only expensive, but also ordinary. 
But Su Ping thinks that suddenly this is simply an unnecessary skill that will be useless after the first use. This may not be a necessary ability, but there is a chance that after the update, the owner will receive a panacea. He decides whether he should buy this thing. This is a tough choice for a guy, but in the end he still buys. And in an instant, Su Ping begins to gain incredible power. He feels it flowing through his body. The guy tried to lift the glass with his mind. He did it. Who would have thought that a normal level skill could have such an effect? Spirit Control is a War Beast Master skill that allows the Master to use star power to control objects from a distance. In general, if he wants to use star power to cultivate external objects, then a large amount of stellar energy must be compressed and decompressed. Then it must be compressed again and decompressed again. And this must be repeated until the stellar body takes a solid form. Once the star power is fully solidified, Su Ping will be able to easily destroy and even create objects. This is the power of rank. Nine ranks. Martial beasts below the ninth stage do not have such powerful star power, nor do they have the control power to condense the star power to solidify it. At best, he can only release weak star power to enhance the physical body or equipment, and these forces quickly dissipate. Su Ping did not expect that the spirit control skill would directly provide the opportunity to strengthen his star power. As expected from a system product, he wants to know the limits of the system. Now he wants to lift the table on which he is sitting. Only with his current strength, he can only lift two and a half kilograms and no more. But for a real fight, this is not enough. For some reason, the guy feels like he lacks star power, but he wanted to use a panacea to increase his strength. A few days later, the guy goes to the university to work. He receives a notification that he has a lecture soon. The young teacher is asked to arrive early. Su Ping is riding a bicycle, but his speed is so strong that he can go faster than a car. The guy has this skill after mastering the skill of using force. He now had quite a lot of opportunities to use spirit control. An unknown crowd approaches university students. They say that there is only an upstart studying at this university, whose name is Ye Hao. The students say that they know this guy, but they don't want to talk because they don't know why these people are looking for him. Unknown says that if the students know him, they should tell Ye Hao to quickly come out and greet them. At this time, one guy hits a university student. The student strikes back and asks why they pestered them. He says that if the guys are so strong, then let them look for Ye Hao themselves, and the students will watch him beat the stupidity out of them. One of the crowd of guys rings the hand of a student. He says the guy needs to be taught a lesson. The Faishan students agree to bring Ye Hao, but one of the guys from this gang stops them. The tall and strong guy says that the students really think they can leave so easily after pushing their uncle. The angry guy says he didn't think university freshmen would be such trash. They decide to teach the students a lesson. Fishan students say that they can be beaten, but they should not dare to insult the university. After all, they are not trash. One of the guys raised his fist to hit the students. He says that this is an interesting requirement, and he now undertakes to abide by it. But suddenly his hand is stopped. It was Su Ping. He orders this bunch of thugs to let the students go. But they get angry and ask who this guy is. Su Ping repeats that he told the boys to let the freshmen go. The guys are dumbfounded how this man dared to touch John Lan. But unexpectedly, two young students recognize the guy as teacher Su Ping. The teacher says it's none of their business anymore. And Su Ping tells them to disappear immediately. The freshmen are leaving. One of the evil guys asks Su Ping if he is a student at this university. A crowd of guys start making fun of him because the guy is still riding an antique bicycle from the last century. They tell him to go home and cry in mom's apron. They also say not to see him on a bike again. After all, walking suits him better. But Su Ping replies that he thinks crawling is more suitable for the guy. He strikes sharply, so the opponent is knocked off his feet and falls to the ground. It fell to a guy named Dan Yang. His friends start laughing at him. They say that the guy tripped out of the blue. Something is definitely wrong here because the guys didn't even notice his movement. Is this Su Ping really that strong? They start shouting at the owner and asking what he did just now. But he replies that Dan Yang just touched him, and he touched him back, that's all. One of the guys says that Su Ping has a lot of courage. Now he wants to deal with it. But the wounded guy tells everyone to leave, and Su Ping is now his prey. Dan Yang says that he will break Su Ping's legs with his own hands. He calls upon his celestial beast. This is the golden manned bear. Su Ping forces the guy to reveal his trump card. Dan Yang says this is commendable, but Su Ping will still die because of him. For the owner, this is unnecessary trouble. 
but if it weren't for the university's salary, he would have been too lazy to intervene in the fight. In any case, he has a lecture starting soon. He asks the others to quickly reveal their trump cards. In the vice rector's office, they are talking about what they heard that a genius named Ye Hao is studying at the university. In his third year, he had already reached the fifth stage, and his beast became even more invincible. In front of the vice rector sit a high-ranking university teacher named Fei Yanbo and the vice rector of the same university named Zhou Yunchang. The vice chancellor of Faishan University says the guests are well informed. If they already know everything, then he won't pretend. In previous exchange competitions, they were consistently victorious. Now it's Faishan's turn to show off. Zhou Yunchang mockingly says that they did not win every time because the teams tied one game. Vice Rector Dunn says that there is no use in saying anything. Now they will see each other at the match. Teacher Luo wants to ask if the students came from Jianlan University. After all, the teacher still needs to register them. High-ranking teacher Fei Yanbo replies that the students were going to look around. Now he will call them. A beaten guy with bumps on his face comes into the office. He greets the vice rector and the teacher. In the office of the university vice rector, there is a crowd of beaten and wounded guys. These are the same guys who bullied the freshmen. The teacher gets angry. He asks what his students have gotten themselves into. He asks, don't they know they are having a competition? Fei Yanbo asks the students who did this to them. Vice Rector Dunn and Teacher Luo laugh at the beaten guys. But the guys don't answer the teacher's question. He gets angry if guys, if they don't tell him what happened now, they will be punished. Dan Yang reports that they were attacked by a guy. Who is a student from Faishan? Teacher Luo and Vice Principal Dunn can't believe their ears. Dunn asks if it was their student who attacked, but the Vice Rector's thoughts are only about when exactly they got another genius. The Vice Chancellor of Jianlan University demands that the students finally say what happened to them. After all, you shouldn't just tarnish Faishan's reputation. Dan Yang continues to tell how they were just walking around, but suddenly one guy, as soon as he found out that they had arrived, attacked them. The guys were simply taken by surprise. The Vice Rector says that if the guy dares to lie, he should not expect mercy. But Dan Yang's beaten classmates confirm the guy's words. They say everything is exactly as he said. Now the vice rector of Jianlan University begins to get angry. He asks if this is Faishan hospitality. Vice rector Dunn asks if the guys know the name of their offender. If not, then at least let them describe what it looks like. They say it was a short-haired student about their age. And his name is like Su Ping. The director asks the guy's name in surprise. He can't believe what he hears. Su Ping is now at his pet store. Suddenly the vice rector calls him. He picks up the phone and asks what Vice Rector Dunn wanted from him. After all, the owner is training now. The Vice Rector asks Su Ping, Didn't he accidentally beat up several Jianlan University students recently? The guy replies that he did it, but he doesn't understand if there are any problems. The Vice Rector replies that the problems are big. Those who were beaten by Su Ping are the top students sent for the exchange competition, and now the Jianlan people are looking for him. But the owner replies that he simply taught them a lesson, especially since he only broke one leg and one arm each. Su Ping begins to explain that it was these students who first began to bully the two students from Faishan. The vice chancellor says that he has already found these two students, but they do not have the opportunity to testify. Because someone is trying to hide something. This man was the first to shut them up. Su Ping asks the vice rector if he really wants him to take the blame. But Dun replies that he believes Su Ping would not attack without reason but not the people from Jianlan. The vice rector promises to find a way to deal with them. He asks the young teacher not to come to the university for a while, because if they do something, he won't be able to protect him. Su Ping opens the internet page of the teachers of the base city of Longjiang, but a message comes from Xu Kuang. Su Ping replies that he needs the guy's help. The annual exchange competition begins right now. Over the past nine years, Jianlan has achieved an excellent record of eight wins and one draw. Now everyone will see whether Faishan will be able to destroy the myth of John Lan's invincibility this year. The host announces that five third-year martial beastmasters are coming out from the Faishan side. Each is a heavyweight in the annual competition. But Jian Lan only sent one participant named Fentian from the third year to the annual competition. The spectators from Jian Lan University are perplexed. Wasn't it supposed to be a five-on-five -five match, but only one came out? Xiao Yu overhears someone talking about how the participants were attacked by someone from Faishan before the match. They are starting to say that Faishan is playing dirty, and now viewers are demanding a strict investigation and an apology. 
Xiao Yu starts demanding proof. One of the guys says that he saw Dan Yang's injuries with his own eyes, and it's disgusting. Faishan does things on the sly when he can't win honestly. The guy says that it's not surprising because everyone in Faishan is as unprincipled as that guy named Su Ping. The girl hears a familiar name in bewilderment. She thinks that this is her older brother. A student from Jianlan University demands a loud apology because Faishan students are scoundrels. Ye Hao invites the guy to forget about the match today and just enjoy another battle. Su Yan Ying says that they don't want to put pressure on the guy with numbers. There is no honor in that. Therefore, Ye Hao strongly advises the enemy to retreat. But the guy replies that it seems to him that the opponents do not understand the whole situation at all. After all, from the moment this guy named Su Ping raised his hand against Jian Lan, the meaning of this game changed from victory to punishment. Unexpectedly, he summons his celestial beast. Faishan team players feel a very powerful aura. Vice Rector Dunn is surprised. After all, this is a beast of the ninth stage. But Vice Rector Zhou Yunchang says that if they cover up the culprit, then let them not accuse them of rudeness. Ye Hao tells the team not to take the enemy lightly. He tells everyone to call their main beasts. The enemy does not understand whether the Faishan University team really thinks that they can defeat the dark black dragon. In an instant, the dragon destroyed all his enemies. Faishan lost in an instant, because the difference in strength between them is earth and space. The audience says that the difference is so great that even Ye Hao couldn't. The students from Jianlan are simply bullying with their strength. The beaten team is happy for their classmate. They are asking for more pain to be caused to them. Let them understand how much it costs to contact them. Xiao Yu says that this is no longer a battle, but a bloody massacre. Vice Rector Faishan orders the game to be stopped immediately. But Vice Rector John Lan says that it's no use because this year they're judges. Now he wants to see how long they can last. Nadun has already said that the witnesses are still unconscious. When they wake up, the truth will be revealed. A high-ranking teacher says that these words make no sense. He is asking, how long does it take for them to wake up? Provost Dunn replies that they suffered greatly in the attack. And in the best case, they will wake up within six months. Vice Rector of Jianlan says that their opinion may change in six months, and Faishan University is simply playing for time. The teacher orders his student to teach them a lesson. After all, the watcher named Su Ping will not want to go outside. Ye Hao tells him not to dare to pour dirty water on them. Xiao Yu sees that the team still refuses to give up, so she starts calling her brother and asking where he is. Su Ping replies that his sister should not worry, because more or less he guessed that everything would turn out this way. That's why the guy is already there. He just didn't expect the situation to be so dire. Vice Rector Dunn notices Su Ping. He says that he told him everything. Now the John Lan teacher saw that same guy. Vice Chancellor of Fentian says that self-delivery saved him from many problems. Su Ping says he was just passing by and decided to stop by. The guy asks why they were looking for him. Vice Rector Dunn is angry with the guy because he told him not to come. Su Ping says that he had no choice. After all, his sweet little sister begged him to come. A high-ranking teacher asks how dare a guy be so arrogant and hurt their students. He tells the guy to give in without resistance. The teacher wants to hit the guy, but the vice rector does not allow him to do this because they are on his territory. He forbids touching Su Ping until the evidence becomes convincing. Fei Yanbo advises to voluntarily hand over to Su Ping, otherwise the vice rector of Dun will not be able to get away with it in the future. Su Ping agrees that it was he who beat the students of Junlan University, because their students are complete zero. Vice Rector Dunn tells the guy that this is an eighth stage martial beast master, and he shouldn't joke with him like that. Dunn will try to resolve everything peacefully. The vice chancellor of Junlan University says that Gai Yang and others are among the strongest students at their university. Even for a sneak attack, you need at least some strength that you have. He asks what course the guy is in. The vice rector replies that this is not a student, but a high-ranking teacher. Fei Yanbo begins to laugh, because is such a young man worthy of holding a high position. Fentian asks if having the star power of the fourth stage can one become a senior teacher. It turns out that in this rotten university, a unique power has appeared. Su Ping can see from the vice rector's face that he has already scanned him. The guy says he doesn't need the vice chancellor to know who he is. He's just here to give them an explanation. The teacher says he doesn't need an explanation from a second-rate teacher who beats kids with braces. Su Ping offers the teacher a bet. He says that not only should he make amends, 
but he can also make them bow their heads to him and ask him to forgive them. The teacher is furious. How dare a guy even say something like that? Fei Yambo tells Su Ping to go down to the arena with him and fight. Vice Rector Dun asks not to do this. He says they don't even know what it means to have a duel between teachers from different universities. Su Ping says that losing to Jianlan would mean that Fei Shan openly admits that he is inferior to them in strength. And the teacher who loses the battle will also take the blame and resign. Provost Dun is furious. After all, now only Su Ping is responsible for the honor of their university. If he loses, it will be in front of so many students. Su Ping says that there is no honor here, because John Lan has brought them down so many times. Teacher Fei Yanbo says he is giving them one last chance, and they can fight in another place. Then they won't be so ashamed. He says that in reality, the guy has no intelligence. But Su Ping says that there is no need to go elsewhere, and he accepts the challenge here. The host of the show announces an urgent update of the competition. Now it is an exchange match between teachers. Fentian says that some kamikaze wanted to die in front of all the students. Dan Yang says that anyone who dares to challenge Demon Fei will die. The team asks the teacher to teach a lesson on Su Ping. Students from Jianlan University laugh because how old this guy is. It seems to them that he is the same age as them. You don't have to watch this fight. After all, there is no way that Teacher Fei will lose to such a young man with his many years of combat experience. Xiao Yu is shocked. She doesn't understand. How the older brother managed to challenge the teacher. The host asks to remove participants from the previous battle. The host also announces that the high-ranking teachers of Jianlan University and Faishan University are coming out next. He asks both sides to go down to the arena. Teacher Fei Yanbo enters the arena first, as expected from a martial beast master. Eighth stage, just one jump can have such a powerful force. Now the presenters ask to go to the Su Ping arena, but suddenly he disappeared and no one sees him. But suddenly he is noticed in the sky. Teacher Su Ping floats in the air. This is incredible. Teacher Su Ping really walks on air. No one can figure out if he has already reached the ninth rank title. The guy lands on the ground. Teacher Fei Yanbo cannot understand why this young man has a title rank, because the guy only has the star power of the fourth stage. Now it's clear why Dai Yang fell out of the blue back then, because he didn't need to use any moves to control star power. Xiao Yu can't believe that her brother has a title rank. She thinks she is in a dream, so she pinches her cheek, but realizes that this is not a dream. The beaten Jianlan University team. He says it's impossible and they don't understand then. Where does such a creature come from in Faishan? Su Ping, standing in front of the martial beast master at the eighth stage, says that he is ready to begin. Now the show's host asks both teachers to summon their pets. Fei Yanbo understands that in any case, a 20-year-old boy could cultivate a celestial beast for a maximum of 10 years and no more. Maybe he spent all his energy on nurturing. Star power so he can soar with the wind. But it is impossible for weakness to compare with Fei Yanbo's combat experience. John Lan University teacher summons his purple shadow fox. He orders the beast to go straight to Su Ping and destroy him. The spectators of Faishan University are surprised at the strength of the beast. After all, his combat power had reached above the eighth stage. Although the difference between the seventh and eighth is one step, the strength is like a cloud and mud. Moreover, the purple shadow fox, the most ferocious beast of the thunder element. John Lan University students say that they are incredibly dangerous because they are not vegetarians and love blood and meat. Su Ping says that this is an incredible coincidence because his pet is also of the eighth stage. This is the luminous serpent of purgatory. His majesty is a dragon. This is an incredibly powerful eighth stage beast. Now John Lan students are not happy because they see what a powerful greatness even through the protection of the barrier, you can feel it. The Dun Projector sees that Su Ping's main beast is the Luminous Serpent Purgatory. Now he understands that his fears were truly unnecessary. He orders the Energy Barrier Protection Level to be set to maximum and the Second Level Energy Protection to be activated. Su Ping understands that now he does not need to be polite because protection has been installed. Fei Yanbo says that although the Su Ping beast is quite rare, he noticed that now its combat power is only below the eighth stage, and the inferior versus the superior, it is not yet clear who will win and who will die in this duel. The teacher uses the strengthening of the powers of the eighth stage, and the purple shadow leaf resists the restraining effect of the dragon's greatness. With increased strength, the purple leaf, this moment has probably already entered the field of the ninth stage, 
The host asks why teacher Su Ping doesn't also strengthen his pet. This is equivalent to letting him fight one against two. But Su Ping replies that this does not reach one against two. In an instant, Fei Yanbo commands the purple shadow beast to use eight thunderclaps. Ye Hao recalls that the thunder mouse, with the help of one such peel, could cause serious injuries. And then there are eight thunderclaps. The presenter comments that eight thunderclaps canceled out all the attacks of teacher Su Ping. Su Ping responds by ordering his beast to use a dragon roar to strike back. Fei Yanbo says that Su Ping still has the guts to pester him. He orders the fox to use multiple division. He cast the thunderbite skill on each clone. Now it is impossible to distinguish where the original is, and the target is the purple shadow fox. The owner of the enemy pet still remains. The teacher really does not allow him to retreat. The presenter comments that Su Ping was hit, but whether he managed to dodge... But when three clones attack him at once, it is very doubtful that even a dragon's body can withstand. And Su Ping endures everything and says that this residual division is very familiar to him. But unfortunately, clones have weak illusions. After all, he caught the original the first time. The Jianlan University teacher does not understand how this is even possible. Now the beast is in the teeth of the luminous serpent of purgatory. He commands his beast to free himself from the snake using thunderbolt. Suddenly, Everything is over. After all, at such a distance, the head was continuously bombarded with thunderbolts, and the consequences could be irreversible for the animal. The crowd of spectators from Jianlan University said that compared to teacher Fei Yanbo, Su Ping is still too gentle. The provost understands that the experience gap, too big, but he shouldn't have let Su Ping fight. After all, the thunderbolts fired at once and you don't have to look any further because the outcome has already been decided. Incredibly, although the luminous serpent of purgatory received so many charges, but on its paste. There are only a few cracks, but on the contrary, this purple shadow leaf is on the verge of death. Stone and plant type skills, stone armor and so-called armor. The luminous serpent purgatory was not harmed. The host announces that the snake received so many charges, but thanks to the stone and vine armor, it did not receive a single scratch. Teacher Fei Yanbo says that Su Ping is shameless because he forces a high-ranking dragon beast to learn only defensive skills. Su Ping asks if this man really just said something about being proud of dragons. Again and again being defeated by fellow tribesmen whose fighting power far exceeds. Own, even the highest dragon beasts must be able to let their proud dragons head up and master defensive skills. After all, in the end, no one wants to die. And in the first round, Su Ping won. The fans are happy for their teacher. Provost Dun breathes a sigh of relief. After all, now the fears were really unnecessary. Fei Yanbo says that it is too early to rejoice because this, only his secondary pet. Since Su Ping's main pet is a ninth stage dragon type beast, then it no longer needs mercy. Fei Yanbo summons his new beast, and it is the demonic abyss serpent. He tells his beast to shake this world. Fei Shan University students can't believe that this is a ninth stage beast. And the spectators of Jianlan University rejoice because this luminous serpent, now it is no match for a strong beast. After all, after the last battle, the flower-bearing snake purgatory had probably used up a lot of energy. So he will definitely lose. They ask the teacher to destroy Su Ping, to show him that Jianlan is not to be trifled with. But Su Ping did not say that the luminous serpent purgatory is his main pet. The host comments that a small gap appears and he suggests that it may be a beast. But to what creature do these eyes belong? Incredibly, it turns out to be a small skeleton. But the presenter does not understand why Su Ping would take such a weak beast. The spectators are simply amazed. Maybe Su Ping was just mistaken. But Xiao Yu notices that the appearance of this skeleton, strangely changed, this is the first time she has seen this type of skeleton. But Fei Yanbo saw many mutated celestial beasts emanating from the barren areas. He asks the guy if this is really his main pet. He is ready to give him a minute so that he can summon another beast. For decades, the only emotion the demonic serpent felt was, this is the desire to kill and destroy. But for some reason, right now, Fei Yanbo feels the fear of his beast. He doesn't understand if this is fear from the little skeleton. But before the teacher had time to look back, the small skeleton struck his beast. Now he understands how fast the skeleton is. The host comments that the demonic abyssal serpent was injured in an instant. Su Ping tells the teacher to quickly pick up his pet and quickly take him to the doctors. But Fei Yanbo raised it like a pet with difficulty, was able to defeat a low-ranking little skeleton so easily. 
teacher Fei Yanbo. He demands that Su Ping answer his question, but Su Ping says that he doesn't have to tell him everything. Fei Shan University students rejoice that teacher Su Ping has won. This is their first victory in 10 years. Dan Yang says that Su Ping raised his hand against the team members, and he also dared to harm their teacher's pet. Without explanation, he must not leave the arena. All the students at Jianlan University begin to get angry. They demand an explanation and want Su Ping to apologize for his actions. The guy replies that if they want an explanation, then now they will have an explanation. Su Ping starts a video call. He asks the host to display the call on the big screen. Su Ping wants everyone to see this. A guy no one knows appears on the screen, but everyone is very curious. He calls Su Ping a master, to which Su Ping replies that he is not a master yet. He also asks this guy to leave the screen and let those two get on camera. The guy is punished by Su Ping, Jianlan University students beaten. They recognize these two guys as the very students they attacked. But Dan Yang says he expected this. They want these two guys to testify, but with such severe injuries. But Dan Yang is sure that these two people have already turned into vegetables and they do not pose a threat. But medicine in Chen Shan turns out to be very well developed and the guys have already recovered. Su Ping asks the students if they can speak. The boys greet teacher Su Ping. Da Yang can't believe how this is even possible. The vice rector of Jianlan University cannot understand who these people are now on the screen. At this moment, the same Jianlan team is trying to escape. But Feishan University students do not miss them. Su Ping asks these two beaten guys to explain what happened that day. The guys begin to say that that day they were surrounded by several students from Jian Lan. They wanted to know about young master Ye Hao, but the guys refused to talk, and students from another university began to beat them for this. But then teacher Su Ping saved them. But that day after the classes, students from Jian Lan attacked them again, and when they woke up, they were already in the hospital. Xiao Yu says that it turned out that it was the Jianlan disciples who were the first to attack and also accused Fei Shan of dishonesty. Dan Yang says that they are liars and just conspired. But the vice rector of their university is already incredibly furious. He told them once again that if Dai Yang dared to lie to him, he would be in trouble. Now Dan Yang is waiting for his expulsion and deprivation of the bloodline of the master of the martial beasts. And now he will never have heavenly beasts again. Now Zhou Yunchang realizes that he is to blame for his indiscipline. And now, it is he who will be responsible for the medical expenses of two students, and all future expenses too. He really hopes that Vice Rector Dun will let go of the past, and Zhan Lan and Fai Shan will always be friends. Su Ping asks Vice Chancellor Zhou Yunchang, Did he forget anything? But the Vice Rector does not understand what the guy wants from him. But the Vice Chancellor will be able to satisfy Su Ping, if it is in his power. He can give him rare value or high-ranking celestial beasts. But the guy replies that he doesn't want much. He just wants the vice rector to kneel down and apologize. High-ranking teacher Fei Yanbo tells Su Ping not to dare bully people. But the guy tells him that he lost to him, which means that now Fei Yanbo is no longer a teacher and his words have no weight. The vice principal tells teacher Su Ping that this is not necessary. Su Ping replies that there is a need. He just wants to tell everyone present that if anyone dares to provoke Feng Shan again, then let him be willing to pay for it. And one more thing, he says that there will be no friendship between their universities, and now they are subordinate to Fai Shan. And their high-quality resources will always be freely available to all students at Fai Shan. Now all the Jianlan disciples bow down to the rival disciples. The vice rector is angry because this is not called a peaceful path. There is a huge queue at the Su Ping store again. Everyone is asking the owner to sell them food. This store is so old, but they won't break in here. A girl passing by doesn't understand what's going on here, but the guy standing next to him explains that the owner of the store has a title rank. It only takes half a day to raise celestial beasts. It's a little expensive, but it works surprisingly well. But the guy replies that this needs to be kept secret, because if more people find out about it, then they will not be able to rise in the rankings. In the exchange competitions, Su Ping only wanted to settle the conflict, but unexpectedly because of this, it became popular and the store's reputation was strengthened. Xiao Yu suddenly breaks through the crowd of students. She asks to be let through. Her brother asks why his sister came here. She says that she also wants to raise her beast. She asks if she really can't because she's his little sister. Su Ping says that this is a serious matter and her sister forgot to say hello, so why would Her Majesty stand in line? 
Xiao Yu says he doesn't want special care. Only because she is his sister, she just wants to use this ability to become stronger. The brother agrees. He asks what level the beast is. She replies that the snowball recently reached. Fourth stage, lower stage, just reaches the range of the average celestial beast. So her fee is 100,000 at a time. The sister can't believe what she's hearing because she only earned 30,000 for the whole year. The brother takes the heavenly beast from Xiao Yu and says that what kind of beast is Snowball? Because this is a real coal. But the sister says that the guy should wait because she did not bring money with her. She says that she will pay later. And Su Ping replies that it's no problem. The system includes a warning that the store price cannot be changed and it is prohibited to make discounts without permission. The owner says that he will pay for everything to the last penny from his own pocket. And of course, all this is still aimed at nurturing. Strong celestial beasts, just like the system wanted. The guy hopes that now she will turn a blind eye to this. The system agrees to this. Su Ping says that he recently learned his sister's cultivation technique. So they are already even and don't need to pay her anything. But Xiao Yu has been practicing all day in his room. How could Su Ping learn anything? And besides, it wasn't that long ago. The challenger must learn to escape his difficult task and survive for ten minutes, under the attack of the evil scales of an often bearded dragon. This dragon's rank is middle ninth stage. Strength is the highest ninth stage. The skill is unknown. The strength of the ninth stage of Su Ping has been achieved. Finally, he can get some information about the high-ranking celestial beasts. The owner calls a small skeleton into battle. He orders him to advance. He also calls upon the animals that he must raise. He orders them to fight too and help the little skeleton. He tells the beast to attack the enemy's blind spots. The owner tells the small skeleton to use the attack now, but the dragon uses three dragons. The heroes defeat the beast, and another huge beast with the rank of king of beasts appears in front of them. He has two heads, and he looks like a dragon. Su Ping says that the king of beasts comes along just in time to test the little skeleton after absorbing the skeleton king's bloodline together. The little skeleton enters the fight. The time for passing the test was up, and the test of the dragon king was over. The system says that there has been a successful killing and the improvement of the skills of the celestial beasts, too. Su Ping can't believe that the dog's pedigree has also been upgraded. The heroes are attacked by a pack of monsters again, Su Ping orders the Tanxiang pig to use paralyzing poisonous powder and the dark dragon dog to block all the monsters in the the phantom fire beast and the light bringing serpent purgatory are responsible for the remaining enemies and since the small skeleton absorbed the bloody stone in the normal battles of these lands it is almost impossible to level it up but the dragon dog with the light bringing serpent can be easily cultivated and tanxiang pig and phantom fire beast is what makes them capable of killing even a dragon the owner tells the luminous serpent Purgatory and the dark dragon dog to finish off the enemy together. The system notifies that the strength of the dark dragon dog has increased, to which the owner says that this is very useful because he does not have any reconnaissance skills. Now in the future it will be enough to simply let the animal smell the food to determine its quality. Increasing the power of the Purgatory light bringing serpent gives another skill related to survival. Did he really die so often? because he had not yet mastered the advantage of the dragon species. Also, an increase in strength occurred in the phantom fire beast and Tanxiang pig. The owner notices that one beast has the strongest long-range fire-type attack of the eighth stage, and the other beast has the most disgusting mental attack designed for one creature. The system says that the time of exploration of the lands of the legacy of the dragon king has come to an end. Preparations are underway for the return. The next morning, there was another line at the pet store. Raising the pig and the sister's beast was successful, but the owner said that it would take a month. It's not surprising that he paid 2,000 energy points to enter the land of the Dragon King's legacy, especially since the secret realm is about to open and Su Ping must improve his strength as soon as possible. The animals have muscles, the owner says that if they don't believe him, that these are their animals they can personally experience and verify. The visitors are angry with the girls. They say that there is no need to test anyone because the owner is already done with them, so let them not hold up the line. After all, this is in the style of the owner. He has always been so fast, so they have no reason to doubt him. Now the guy doesn't need to prove anything to people. At home, Su Ping is engaged in training. He has performed professional cultivation. This Su Ping is rewarded with a mystical skill, which he opens to look at. Su Ping doesn't believe what he sees. Is it really the demon god suppressing pendant? 
The owner again goes to another dimension. He cannot understand where he ends up. He sees giant animals. But in appearance, the strength of each of these beasts is not inferior to the king of beasts, even though they look very scary and strong. But suddenly a huge, fiery fist bursts from the sky and hits the ground. The blow was so strong that everything that was around flies in different directions, and the ground underfoot cracks. There are five styles of suppressive fist. After learning the first style, Su Ping will be able to master the power of the fourth stage. The consequences of the first style are very serious and dangerous. The principle of controlling this force is incomparable. Ordinary practitioners can at best only complete the first style, but when it comes to the second, their bodies are not able to withstand. At best, a colossal weight will fall on the hand, and it will collapse to smithereens. Only the pure golden crow bloodline, with its demonic vitality, is able to withstand the backlash of the five golden styles of the demon god's suppressing fist. For the golden crow's demonic body, there is no more suitable combat skill than the battle demon's suppressive fist. Su Ping chooses to study. It's been a long time since the fire demon met such a cheerful person. Having studied only the first style, Su Ping will be able to proceed to the next ones. The secret realm is different from the heavenly barren regions, because there must be many masters within. But the guy is afraid that one small skeleton will not be enough, because his strength should also be improved to a higher level, and Su Ping should not pull the small skeleton down. Well, now the store will be closed for a few days. He will put all his strength into the overwhelming fist of the Dragon King's legacy lands. Two days later is equivalent to one and a half months of cultivation earth legacy. The Dragon King. The first style of the demon god suppressing fist is almost complete. Notification from the system, it turns out that the owner's remaining energy points are not enough and preparations are underway for the return. Master doesn't bring up why it's so fast, because he seemed so close to completion. But his golden crow demonic body has also improved greatly, and he will soon break through to the second level. Explorer Base Number 7 the captain's group is so strong, but why does he need help from the supreme eight-stage martial beast master Mo Lao and the martial beast master above the eighth stage Chen Long? The guys ask if the group is afraid that they might reveal their secrets. The captain of the Polar Star group, Ni Chung Kong, replies that, to be honest, this time he had his eye on one value. He also conducted an investigation, and this value is preserved. A very powerful beast. The walkers have the right to enter the secret realm but they shouldn't look at their status. He, Chen Shan, and Xiao Shui are strong enough for this task. But based on experience, Ni Cheng Kong knows that in order to safely obtain this value, at least six strong masters are needed. Chen Long says that means the team has their eye on a big fish that they are not able to catch themselves. Then the price will rise accordingly. The captain chose them for a reason, so they will do everything in their power. But in the secret kingdom, they must also be on guard against other people who are ready to do it for the sake of easy money. The men are ready to go, but they are not going to row for themselves. If the team wants to get this thing, then they must choose for themselves what they want to take. Ni Chung Kong says that there is no problem, and then he chooses second, and Chen Long third. The treasures of the secret kingdom belong to the one who finds it first. But Ni Chung Kong, after all, is the group captain, and it would be reasonable if the first choice was his. But the captain denies this, because he is not the first to choose. They don't understand whether, besides Chen Long and Mo Lao, anyone else can choose first if not the captain himself. An assistant comes into the room, turns to the captain, and says that Su Ping has arrived. The man asks who this young man is, and they answer him that with such a weak reaction of star power, the guy has not even reached the sixth stage. But they are here thanks to connections. The captain says that he has long wanted to meet Su Ping, and he will now introduce the guy to the rest of the team. They don't understand because the captain says that he won't choose first. Did he really mean this young guy? The captain says that what they say is true, and this is Su Ping. He saved the lives of Chen Shan and Xiao Shui, and he also killed the eight-step demonic type beast. Mo Lao says that with such achievements at this age, the guy really has the right to fight on par with them. Entering the secret realm of Dragon Ledge Mountain is the gate to Dragon Ledge. The captain tells Su Ping that since the Dragon Ledge is at the top of the mountain, the air is very allowed, and if the guy is not used to it yet, they can go slower. Su Ping answer that he's not tired. It's just that it's taken a long time. He asks if it's possible to just use flying pets to go up. 
But the captain replies that the local area is so dangerous that calling a flying beast could easily lead to an accident. So, among the passers-by, there is an unspoken rule. At the gate of the Dragon Ledge, you cannot fight or summon celestial beasts. Violators will be punished and expelled or even imprisoned. Officials specifically send their specialists here. So the captain advises Su Ping to stay quiet. Captain Fei Yanbo notices that there is some kind of fight up on the mountain and begins to get angry. The captain says that the rules are made for ordinary people like them, and even more so for large families who can cover the sky with one hand. Even the government turns a blind eye to this. Based on the Qin family's momentum, they are going to reach the gate before the Tang family. The fight between the young people caused a rockfall that began to fall on top of the team. The captain warns his group to be careful. Chen Long says that there is no need to remind them of this, because this rockfall is too slow, and it does not threaten them in any way. But Su Ping rushes forward and tells the others to break the falling stones with their hands, because they will not be able to dodge on such narrow steps. The guy repeats once again that it is impossible to dodge on these stairs. The captain says that he understood Su Ping's point. The whole team begins to fight off flying stones. Mo Lao notes that prudence and leadership skills, this young guy is highly developed, and at the same time, the unity and enthusiasm of the entire team immediately increased after his words. A huge crowd of people had already gathered on the mountain. Everyone approaches the gate to the dragon ledge. Milady wants to challenge the dragon to his ledge for the sixth time. She asks people to give way to her. People are surprised because this is the Tang family itself and their magnificent skill duo. These are the two wins of the Tang family. Zhou Fangkun with its highest eighth stage and the title rank Feng Mo with the middle ninth stage. The girl standing in the middle is the young mistress of the Tang family. She is about to cross the dragon ledge for the sixth time. This secret realm has only been discovered a few times. The girl says that the first place in the Dragon Ledge ranking belongs only to her Tang family. Qin Shaotian says that he has also completed this five times already, and now wants to try the challenge for the sixth time. They laugh at the guy and say that this will be an interesting spectacle, because only the Tang family with its resources can compete with the Qin family. The hostess says that before this she was just playing with the guy, without any intention of winning. But the guy said that in fact he just felt sorry for the girl. The hostess says that it is in vain for the guy to talk with his tongue, and it is better to solve everything with the help of his fists. The guy replies that he also has the same opinion. Tao Zong announces that the secret realm of Dragon Ledge Mountain has been revealed, and he advises people to hurry up. A crowd of people notices that this is legend number one, and if he gave the go-ahead, then they can go and hurry up so as not to provoke Tao Zong. But the Tang family prohibits people from going. Zhou Feng Kun prohibits anyone from taking a single step. But Su Ping, not listening to anyone, walks forward, which infuriates the Tang family. People are starting to say that this guy is clearly not afraid to be reborn if he dares to disobey the Tang family. Feng Mo was too angry, and now he wishes Su Ping death because the guy dared to disobey their greatest family. He wants the guy to taste the power of his fist, but suddenly a sword appears, which deflects his blow, and this sword leaves a huge gap and crack in the ground. Tao Zong says that if they have any grievances, they should resolve it privately, but here they shouldn't be impudent. Su Ping is very grateful to Tao Zong because the guy knows that this is such a powerful sword technique that does not depend on celestial beasts. Tao Zong says how many ants there will be. This is not his business. He only trims the overgrown branches. Tao Zong also understands that this blow would still not be able to harm Su Ping. Viewers say that this impulsive guy doesn't care about Tang family at all. Now Zhou Feng Kun is angry with the guy because he neglects the Tang family. But people think that if it weren't for Tao Zong, then Su Ping would only be bones. Everyone is wondering what group this unknown guy is from. The audience also wonders if they catch Su Ping. Will they be given a reward for it? Chen Long is angry that this guy is trying to kill them. The team captain says that Su Ping did something that he doesn't even dare to think about. The Dragon Gate column invites Su Ping to test his legacy. The owner understands that while there is no one here, this is the time to test the difference between this place and the cultivation area, so he accepts the test. Tang family asks the hostess why she didn't answer for so long, because many people had already come in before them. Zhou Feng Kun asks for forgiveness from the lady. After all, they could not catch up with that guy, but they have already sent people to find out the guy's identity. The hostess says that the other runner-up families also passed the third floor last year, 
Now it can be said that the heavenly ranking is a symbol of the Tang family's power. And Su Ping is just a small person for whom even the second floor is incredibly difficult. And the goal of this walk is to make sure that they get through the sixth floor first and will take first place in the ranking. Feng Mo says that they will do their best to help the lady pass the sixth floor. The audience notices that the lights on the sixth floor come on, indicating that someone has just passed the sixth floor test. The light came on again. The seventh floor had also already been conquered, and there were only two floors left before complete completion. Tang family can't believe their eyes, because the eighth floor has already been lit, and they are only interested in who actually passed the eighth floor. Zhou Feng Kun says that not only was this weakling the first to enter the secret realm, but he also stole the first place in the heavenly ranking from the Tang family. Tao Zong says that the first one to conquer the nine floors has shown his worthiness to inherit the legacy. Now the remaining contenders can take on the challenge. Captain Ni Chung Kong notice that even the hull of the tower was smashed with a fist, but Tang family and Tang family are clearly the most promising. To climb to the top, we had not even entered the tower yet. Now everyone is wondering whose family has such power. Everyone runs to the tower to see who has completed all the floors in one blow. Boss, who had humiliated Su Ping thousands of times in the past, was destroyed. And even the second stage, he was forced to skip. Su Ping is happy because he checked everything he needed to check. The cultivation area of the system is no different from these places. The guy believes that now is the time to return to the group and reach out to the treasures, even though the team came here for treasure. They had no intention of going through the dragon ledge pillar, but he felt a sense of disappointment seeing someone go through nine floors so easily. Upon Su Ping's return, the team asks where the guy was. They say that they were just waiting for him to take the treasure. Su Ping says that he warmed up a little and now gets to work. The team is surprised. Is the guy who passed the column really Su Ping? Chen Long says that this guy has the captain's trust to act on his own. Mo Lao says there is nothing to worry about. And if possible, they will teach the guy a lesson and show him who is the core of the team. The team at this time comes to Dragon Scale Continent Number 2. The commander says that he is performing reconnaissance on foot, and Xiao Shui is in charge of airspace reconnaissance. The team begins to summon their celestial beasts. Su Ping summons the Dark Dragon Dog. He wants to test the beast's skills. Mo Lao is angry. Why did Junior bring the seventh stage celestial beast because he is doing reconnaissance on foot? Su Ping orders the dark dragon dog. Smell the surrounding area for strangers. Chen Long tells the guy to bring the beast back because the dark dog is too big and too noticeable. And besides, this is the heavenly kingdom and not an ordinary barren area. At this time, Su Ping tells the captain that there is an enemy nearby. Mo Lao doesn't believe the guy and orders his beast to use earthly listening. The beast does not see any hostility. Xiao Shui also tells the captain that her flame bird has not detected anything. Chen Long asks Su Ping why he is trying to attract attention to himself. But suddenly the fiery bird and the earthly cradle began to behave alarmingly. Wind pythons fly at them from the edge. And they are already very close. The team does not understand where these pythons came from. The captain notices that these wind-riding pythons have a threat level no lower than the ninth stage, and it's too late to run, he orders everyone to prepare for battle. Chen Long uses the giant stone dragon bloodline of the fourth stage to protect the team, while the celestial beasts of the rest of the team will attack the enemies. The team's celestial beasts are the giant earthen dragon-scythed guardian flamebird and the lizard. The team also summons the four-faced guardian Xiti Garp. Xiao Shui asks Chen Long why teacher Su Ping's dark dragon dog is not protected. Chen Long replies that if the beast is not as reckless as its owner, then everything will be fine. But the girl says that the group of wind pythons outside is too dense and there is nowhere to hide. She immediately orders Chen Long to apply protection to the beast. But Chen Long asks what if electric winged pythons get close to their guardian? Is it worth it then to take such a big risk for a simple seventh stage beast? The guy replies that the dark-skinned dragon dog was the first to notice the danger. Moreover, the owner of Su Ping is their benefactor. And they can't throw his celestial beast, so there will be a gray-scaled lizard behind his cover, so Chen Long is asked to open the defense. But Su Ping replies that there is no need to do this. He appreciates the team's kindness, but there is no need to worry. After all, his heavenly beast is good not only in reconnaissance, it is also more or less combative, and if you kill the leader of the wind pythons, 
Then they will no longer be bothered by the usual extras, and no more Mo Lao tells Chen Long that Su Ping is just trying to make an excuse. After all, his dark dragon dog only has a seventh stage bloodline. Even if the dog has strength above the seventh stage, he would still be torn to pieces in front of the ninth stage of eating the wind python. Mo Lao orders his beast to use autopsy. This pet skill that grants invisibility will now allow the team to observe the battlefield. Now they are safe, seeing how their animals fearlessly fight their enemies. But the enemy's blow falls directly on the dark dragon dog. The team doesn't understand. Are there really no bones left of him because it looked very scary? But they notice some kind of pile that looks like a strange line of light. The team notices that there is a dark dragon dog there. Xiao Shui suggests that this light may be the result of multiple accounts superimposed on each other. The team doesn't believe. Is it possible that the seventh stage heavenly beast is running around in a bunch of ninth stage wind pythons? The king of the upper eighth stage wind pythons appears in front of them. While the dragon is not a dog fighting enemies, the king of the wind pythons inflicts on him. A strong blow from the tail, the team simply watches in horror. They are only interested in whether the animal survived. But the dark dragon dog manages to use the shield and thereby escapes from the blow of the windrunner python. Mo Lao can't believe his eyes because the beast's defense is also at its best. Now Chen Long seems that his earth dragon is uneven. The dragon dog strikes the rotary python but the blow only slightly scratches the beast's skin. It turns out that all the forces of the dark dragon dog were aimed only at protection. Chen Long is not surprised that this was the case, but his giant earth dragon has several skills. The python wants to strike back at the dog, but suddenly he falls to the ground. There is foam and his skin is covered with spots. It turns out that the python was poisoned. Chen Long does not understand how this could happen, because this animal has very thick skin. He does not understand how the dog could let poison into the python. In the lands of the Dragon King, Su Ping and his dog suffered various battles. This mongrel was driven so often. They put him in a corner and gnawed him to death. The guy says that they will stop playing and it's time to end this fight. Now the dragon dog uses his roar and finally kills his opponent. The heavenly beasts watch their enemies fly away from the battlefield. They are happy about their victory. The team is happy that the victory was without any injuries. Now they understand that the dark dragon dog is incredibly strong. Chen Long turns to Su Ping. He says that now he really understands that the guy's pet has high qualities. But Su Ping denies this and mockingly says that his beast has only an average property and nothing more. Mo Lao says that the guy is too modest. And if his dark dragon has an average property, then their pets are inferior. Su Ping uses the system to identify the earth's cradle. The guy learns that her appearance is earthen and fiery, and her bloodlines are of the ninth level. Now he thinks that Mo Lao thinks a lot about himself, and in general they are all no different from each other. At this time, the dragon dog releases wind python eggs from its mouth. The captain says that the young individuals in this egg sac are not yet formed, which means that the nutritional essence provided by the mother of the beasts has not yet been absorbed. If you give these bags to a celestial beast to eat, it will become an excellent tonic. Mo Lao says that Su Ping was the first to discover the enemies and single-handedly killed the leader of the pack. Therefore, he has the exclusive right to use it. Su Ping analyzes python skin and says their scales are often used to make invisible paint, and they are not cheap on the market. The guy offers the team to take it. Mo Lao says that Su Ping's strength is unfathomable. Therefore, it is better for him not to make an enemy out of the guy. Now Chen Long and Mo Lao, they thank the guy, saying that if he likes something, he can just let them know about it. The team opens the map. They see that in the northeast, somewhere there is a cave. This is the purpose of their trip. Chen Long says that they will only reach this place tomorrow morning. But Su Ping thinks that he was already there when he passed the tests of the legacy of the Dragon King, and there really is a hidden treasure there. The guy remembers that there are still several hidden treasures on that continent but he does not understand why the team chose this particular place. Su Ping asks the captain who drew this map. The captain replies that a friend sold it to him at a very good price. He also asks Su Ping if he has questions, but the guy replies that he was just curious that in such a large area there is only one hidden treasure. The captain replies that with such competition in the secret kingdom they don't waste time. Chen Long says that when was this map made? Other treasures could be confused. 
and the next day they set off. Approaching the large cave, Su Ping stops everyone and says that there is no need to enter yet. After all, a ninth stage beast has settled inside there, but Chen Long says that they haven't even entered there yet. Su Ping knows this because he has already been there. The guy, of course, does not remember everything in detail like in the Tower of the Dragon Ledge, but at least he has a good idea. What is there? The commander says that Su Ping's pet really figured out a flock of wind pythons and he helped them a lot. Xiao Shui says that that wind rider squad, the pythons, had the combined combat power of the ninth stage, and each of them had the power of the seventh, eighth stage, and the environment of the cave is unknown. The team understands that the difficult tasks have increased by several steps, and even if they have such a strong dragon as Su Ping, it will still be difficult to suppress the local boss. The team decides to prepare an ambush for the cave's exit, and as soon as the beast inside reveals itself, they will take it by surprise. The team causes an earthquake and prepares for an ambush. The earth-type beast lifts up huge balls of earth to throw them down when the monster leaves the cave. Xiao Shui orders the flame bird to use the flame cloak to make these stones become fiery. Mo Lao uses dissection so they won't be seen when the beast comes out so they can attack it. The captain's assistant says the ambush is already ready. Well, the captain replies that he will not wait and will try to lure the beast out. But the guy replies that the captain has gone crazy because luring the beast out is too risky. But the captain says that he has a beast of the ninth stage. So there is no need to worry about him, because it is unknown when the beast will come out. But if you wait, then the situation may change for the worse. Su Ping says that he is going with the captain. The captain replies that if Su Ping is with him, he will be calm. After all, almost all the other travelers came out of the Dragon Ledge Tower. The captain and Su Ping depart to the cave. The captain tells the guy that the poisonous air in the cave is becoming thicker and thicker, because Su Ping's star power is not yet strong enough to endure the poison. But the guy uses water armor, and no one below the eighth stage will be able to harm him. Su Ping says that he heard that in this expedition, the captain has the right. Only on the third choice, and now the captain has led the most dangerous business of the explorers, whom he knew were not so selfless. Su Ping says that there is nothing here yet. The captain says that there really is nothing to hide from Su Ping. He says that in this cave, there is a spiritual tree of the star cloud. The fruit of this tree can stimulate the full potential of a martial beastmaster below the eighth stage, causing him to be reborn, and the captain will receive it before others. Su Ping says that in other words, the captain refused the opportunity to choose treasures, but risked being the first to enter the cave. Although this rare treasure can help you break through to the next level. Su Ping asks the captain, is this all for the sake of the fruit? The captain replies that there are some things a guy shouldn't ask, but in any case, the captain is determined to get the tree. The captain says that even if Su Ping is the benefactor of Chen Shan and Xiao Shui, then he still shouldn't accuse him of being rude. Su Ping understands that it is easy for the captain. The fruit of the spiritual tree is needed. The guy understands that it is similar to the great panacea issued by the system, a completely ordinary treasure. But it seems to be important to the captain. Su Ping replies that he is not interested in the fruits, but he would like to remind the captain that the beast guarding this place belongs to dragons above the ninth stage. And this blood dragon is very cunning. He specializes in psychic attacks, and the captain can sign his own death warrant if he goes after the fruit. The captain says that the only problem is that the beast has psychic attacks. Ni Cheng Kong asks Su Ping how he can know about this, to which the guy replies that there are some things that the captain should not ask about in any case. If Ni Cheng Kong wants to get this tree, let him just follow him. The guys come to the spiritual lamp. It is fueled by a certain power and can withstand most psychic attacks. Su Ping says he was here before. He that such a powerful treasure can only be used in the inheritance of the Dragon King and cannot be taken away. And in general, this is also a secret treasure. Su Ping takes the lamp in his hands and now they can safely go behind the tree. But suddenly they find themselves under attack. But Su Ping suspects that it is not behind them. Suddenly the monster they ambushed breaks out. And now their team is in trouble. Chen Long orders his giant earth dragon to use Rockfall now and finish off this huge beast. The team summons their celestial beasts and they go into battle to destroy this big monster. The sickle guardian that belongs to Molao inflicts a wound on the monster's eyes. Next, he chops his body parts into pieces, making stakes out of him. And in the end, the heavenly beast sickle-bearing guardian cuts off the monster's head. 
Captain Ni Cheng Kong and Su Ping run out of the cave. They use a shield to protect themselves from a sudden attack. But the crew tells the captain that they have done well. They ask the captain to quickly see how they defeated the beast. When the captain and Su Ping saw this, they realized that they were late because the team had done something terrible. The team does not understand what the captain is talking about. After all, they defeated the monster, but in reality. It turns out that the sickle-bearing guardian killed not the monster, but the team's celestial beasts. In fact, the ninth stage beast surrounded the team and led them into an illusion. The captain realizes that his subordinates are about to kill each other. Su Ping tells Ni Chung Kong to call the demonic stingray. The guy also tells the captain not to go beyond the protective zone of the spiritual lamp. Otherwise, they will become the same as the team. Su Ping tells Ni Chung Kong to take advantage of the moment and infuse star power into the lamp. Now the team falls into the zone of influence of the lamp and they come to their senses. They have a very bad headache and they don't understand what just happened. This damn beast almost killed them. Su Ping asks if the team is okay and orders them not to leave the spiritual lamp's protective zone. Now together they will be able to destroy the illusory field if they pour star power into the spiritual lamp. Chen Long notices that there is some movement, but suddenly murderous fangs begin to fly at them from a height. Chen Long tells Su Ping to be careful, and at one moment Chen Long covers the guy with his chest, and the fang flies right into his back. The captain orders everyone to hide behind the spiritual lamp and use a shield. Chen Long falls on Su Ping. In rage, the guy starts shouting that those in the shadows should stop hiding, let them come out. A group of poisonous fangs emerge from the top. They are happy that the penetrating effect of long-range star games is really at its best. The deputy from the Poison Fang group says that he couldn't let Ni Chung Kong deal with the bloody flame dragon so quickly. The wounded captain Ni Chung Kong does not understand why this group is attacking them because there are no hard feelings between them. When the deputy of the group asks how there is no offense, he says that Ni Chung Kong should think carefully about how the card could fall into his hands. The captain now understands that from the very beginning, this group was using them as bait to lure the bloody flame to the dragon. After all, they themselves gave the card into the hands of Ni Cheng Kong. The deputy asks if the captain thought he could buy something as valuable as a map of hidden treasures. He also says that the team was just bait, at which time Su Ping summons a stone skeleton. The deputy says that if the guy dares to attack them, then the bloody flame dragon will instantly gather all his friends. Su Ping uses the middle ring of trap to grab the dragon. Now the huge beast is tied up. The deputy doesn't understand what kind of thing this is and how the blood flame dragon of the supreme ninth stage is tied up right now. The bloody fiery dragon turns out to be completely wrapped in flails, but in an instant, it burns to the ground. Leaving a large hole in the ground below where he lay, Captain Ni Chung Kong's team rejoices that they have won. Su Ping rises in the air with a small skeleton and is behind a group of poisonous fangs. He asks the group, didn't you want to kill them? Now the group can start doing this. Well, now the Poison Fang group is in a misunderstanding. How this guy floats in the air and where the group got the master of the titular ninth rank, they understand that they provoked someone they shouldn't have. The deputy orders the group to stop panicking. He doesn't see anything wrong with the fact that this guy has a title rank because he summoned a small skeleton. He also orders all the long-range scorpions to aim at the guy floating in the air. The deputy of the group was just about to ask what this one small skeleton could do, when the beast in an instant cut it into three parts. The next moment, the small skeleton in one second cut all the scorpions and members of the group with a poisonous fang. Captain Ni Chung Kong ends up very badly injured. Xiao Shui will ask the captain to hold on and not leave them. The captain asks what happened to the rest of the team, but his assistant says that Chen Long and Mo Lao failed. With the last of his strength, Captain Ni Chung Kong calls his brother Su Ping to him. He asks the guy for help. Su Ping suddenly descends to the ground and runs up to the captain. He asks what he can do for the captain. Ni Chung Kong says that he honestly has a bad feeling about it. But if something happens to him, the captain asks the guy to help him get the Star Cloud spiritual tree. But Su Ping doesn't understand. After all, if something happens to Ni Chung Kong, then why does he need the fruit to enhance cultivation? The captain asks to transfer this fruit. His daughter because the fruit of this tree can stimulate the full potential of a martial beast master below the eighth stage, causing him to be reborn. After all, perhaps this will help her immune system defeat the disease. This is a cure for an incurable disease. The captain says that he spent half his life in the desert areas, unable to take care of his daughter, and now the only thing he can do for her is to ask Su Ping. In a cave, 
a team of people who are collecting treasures, one of the guys shouts to the captain, that this tree is too big and it won't be possible to take it. The captain calls this guy an idiot. This is Team Captain Poison Fang. He says there is no problem. They just need to collect the fruit and destroy the tree. What they cannot take, others will not take. The subordinate accepts the captain's order and begins to cut down the tree, but unexpectedly. An unknown object flies into his neck and he falls to the ground and dies. The group is wary. They cannot understand who it was. Have the people from the North Star already entered the cave? The captain says that this is impossible because the combat power of the Blood Flame Dragon is at least at the ninth middle stage. Besides, his deputy is there. Unless there are gods in the North Star, but the wound is so clean that the person who did this is a master of the ninth stage, the captain does not understand which master attracted these secret treasures. Therefore, the captain says that the one who carried out the attack can come out and talk to them. The group is ready to give half. But suddenly, the neck of two subordinates again. Someone shoots. The team says that he doesn't know how to do anything other than shoot people in the dark. They call on this unknown man to come out. This is Su Ping, the spirit king, using the star power needle to pierce the group's necks. And with the next shot, the guy kills five group members in a row, shooting the guys with one needle. Now the captain says that the guy got caught. If he doesn't mean it in an amicable way, then he will die. The captain of the group, Poison Fang, calls on his celestial beasts. But before he can do this, a small skeleton cuts their heads with a knife. The captain is desperate. How did his two celestial beasts with the combat power of the lowest ninth stage suddenly die? Now the captain asks to be released. He tells the master to take all these treasures just so that he spares him. The captain asks, did the guy really come here not for treasures, but specifically to kill? The captain asks the guy to tell him his name. At least he wants to know at whose hands he will die. But without answering, Su Ping fires a fiery needle at the captain's forehead, which completely pierces his head. The captain's blood flies onto Su Ping's face. He says that those whom he decided to kill, he does not give a single chance to resist, and the captain will die with fear and doubt. Now the guy, one by one, the dead members of the poisonous fang group, is stacking on a pile. And order your fire dragon to burn completely and leave no traces of these inhumans. Now Su Ping is harvesting the fruits of the tree. To pick them up, he remembers how a group suddenly showed up and was targeting them, fortunately thanks to Chen Long's insurance. And the rest they survived, since in reality it is impossible to protect yourself in desert areas. So Su Ping must adapt as quickly as possible. The team returned to Explorer Base Number 7. Su Ping asks what their plans are. Xiao Shui replies that they should bury the captain and deal with the consequences Chen Long and Mo Lao the assistant captain says that. Master Su Ping saved them again. He didn't expect that this time the loss would be so big. The guy is afraid that they won't be able to continue exploring the secret kingdom. Su Ping says that it's time for him to go, but before leaving he reminds the crew to keep the tree for themselves and give the fruit to the captain's daughter. But the team doesn't understand why he doesn't need this legendary star cloud spiritual tree. Xiao Shui asks how Su Ping knows about the captain's daughter. The owner says that they will miss these details. But in any case, the captains wish and they must fulfill it. Su Ping trusts the team. He further says that these hidden treasures were in the cave and are worth a lot of money. He wants them to be given to the families of the deceased. Xiao Shui can't believe what he hears. Is it possible that the owner is giving up all the treasures? But in the owner's thoughts, only that he has already taken the most valuable things. Su Ping says that the captain, Chen Long, and others sacrificed their lives for their chance to survive, and the guy is very grateful to them. Suddenly, a voice message arrives at the base, where travelers who want to leave the base must bring treasures that they found in the secret kingdom. At the checkpoint, and those who do not pass the check will be seriously punished, the team goes to check Su Ping says that he will go with them. They enter a Federal Security Service checkpoint. Video of unknown people, Su Ping asks what they are doing here. The assistant captain says that they are security inspectors sent by the government to monitor the checkpoint. So here they can be considered local leaders. The fact that in the middle is a ninth stage master and the two next to him are eighth stage masters. The inspectors listen to what the explorers have found and rejoice, but the chief says not to make a lot of noise. One of the inspectors asks the price and how much the team sells the fruit, but the guy replies that this is not for sale. If they are interested in other treasures, then they can discuss the price. One of the inspectors hits the guy. He tells him to get out of here because one fruit costs five million. 
If you eat just one fruit, the inspectors will be directly promoted to title rank. One of the inspectors is already reaching out to pick up the fruit, but suddenly his hand is intercepted by Su Ping. The inspector doesn't understand who else this is. Does this guy really think he can stop the eighth stage? But Su Ping answered that it's okay, they decided to leave. The inspection is over. But in his mind, the guy doesn't understand what kind of nonsense this is, because the federal inspectorate is clearly resorting to the exploitation of scammers. The guy didn't expect that, apart from other groups even. Officials are engaged in unclean affairs. And if he had known about this earlier, he would have been better off putting everything he owned in storage and calmly taking it out. The inspector asks who this guy thinks he is, and unexpectedly for everyone. They say that the inspection will end only when they say so, and they hit the guy with all their might. Su Ping flies to the side from such force and demolishes a piece of the wall that stood behind his back. People don't understand what happened and why the guy was hit, but Su Ping gets up and says that everything is fine with him. Inspectors say that through Article 42 of the federal law, those obstructing inspections can be suppressed by force, and in a serious case, killed on the spot. A crowd of people begins to mock us at Su Ping. They say that this is another person who dared to speak out against the authorities, and last time a person was crippled. A voice is heard upstairs saying that endlessly hiding your sides can only continue to attract irritated mediocrity. He also addresses the guy and says that if he wants to go out into the wide world, then it's easy. He must be bolder and show his claws. The road itself opens up strong. This is Tao Zong. Su Ping listens to the words, go out into the wide world. He thanks for the advice. The inspectors pounce on the guy again. They ask who. He opened his mouth. They want to hit Su Ping again, but the guy was already ready for this blow. He used an accumulation of star power. This time he struck back at the offender. The force of the guy's blow turned out to be so strong that he crushed these two inspectors into the floor, making two deep holes. The inspectors do not believe what just happened because a master of title rank appears in front of them. They don't understand how the guy reached the ninth level of strength at such a young age. Now the inspectors are interested in where this person is from. Using her new skills, Su Ping uses the power of her thoughts to attract the fruits of the tree. People see this, and they are simply shocked, because this is spirit control. And in an instant, the tree disappeared. The inspectors were simply dumbfounded. After all, the guy has a spatial-type artifact. They don't understand where this person comes from because spatial artifacts are a priceless treasure. They wanted to attack a simple guy, but they met a warrior. Now the inspectors are simply asking for an apology from Su Ping because they did not immediately understand who they were dealing with, and Su Ping's blow was incredible. They deserved it. But the guy says that he will not forgive them because that blow was for his friend, and now it's his turn. The inspectors offer Su Ping to pay 20 million as compensation. But the chief of the security service comes out from the hole in the wall they made. He says that everyone now has to pay 30 million and if about. If this becomes known, the security officers will not be able to get out. The boss reminds that he asked not to make any noise. And then they demolish the wall. In Su Ping's thoughts, he thinks that he will not tolerate solving the situation with money. But he needs to improve the pet store. And he requires a lot of money. Su Ping tells his team, it's better that while he looks after the tree, the captain's mate says that it's his fault because he's not strong enough to let these people shit on his head. Su Ping says that he decided to plant it after he returns. This is a great way to satisfy the needs of the captain's daughter and diversify the range. Pet food in the store. He tells the team that after they reach the eighth stage peak, he will give them the star cloud spiritual fruit for free. To help them reach the ninth stage. Together with his demon dog, he goes to the dragon scale continent number 48. He orders the dark dragon dog to take cover nearby while Su Ping goes down into the water if something happens, so that the dog mentally calls the owner. Su Ping dives into the water. He swims into the depths. He remembers that there is a great secret treasure here, which has the power to move mountains and fill seas, but it is so well hidden that if the dragon king had not been accidentally revived in the legacy of the dragons, Su Ping would not have found this place. The guy sees a sitting skeleton, and in his hands there is a chest, there is a scroll in it, which can be used to create a small world using the user's star power. From the current Su Ping fifth stage, it can create a space four times larger than a basketball court. And in the future, the address may plant a spiritual tree inside, the owner notices that something is happening above. The skill shares an introduction with a martial beast master. It turns out that others are passing somewhere nearby. Su Ping remembers that this continent, also has a top-grade secret treasure. 
the undead demonic fruit. It gives undead and pets demonic. Type immunity to mortal wounds at one time. This fruit is ideal for a small skeleton with full introductory potential. Su Ping orders the dragon dog to track down the location of the bird's owner because he wants to find out if they took the undead demonic fruit. Another group of explorers is in a forest of dead trees. They do not understand why the bird is chasing them. There is a chest in the hands of the master. While they were running, someone managed to strike in their direction and break the branch on which they were standing. The guys fall to the ground and the Tang family stands in front of them. This is Zhou Fengkun and his bird. He says that the guys are in such a hurry. What? Did they really find something valuable? But the guys don't understand what the Tang family doesn't want. Behind Zhou Fengkun and says that since now everyone knows who is in front of them, they should hurry up and give them this thing. She tells me to let greed harm them. Tang family says that they already know that they have the undead demonic fruit. And if it weren't for the delay in the raiding of the dragon ledge, the guys are unlikely to have taken it for themselves. The explorers begin to run away and say that in any case, they were the first to take this fruit. But suddenly the explorers grab a huge fiery hand. This is an accumulation of star power that pulls the guys back. Feng Mo says that the guys really thought that they could escape. It turns out that they did not appreciate the old man of the title rank enough. With a huge hand of star power cluster, Feng Mo presses the guys to the ground, trying to crush them. The master of the tunnelers asks if the Tang family is really not afraid of ruining its reputation. Zhou Fenkun replies that if these two remain silent forever, then there will be no problems in the family. With enormous force, Zhou Fenkun cuts off the master's hand in which the chest was. Now, he can take the treasure for himself. He says that if the guy didn't want it in a nice way, it turned out so badly. But as soon as Zhou Fengkun opened the chest at that very moment, it disappeared from his hands. Tang family cannot understand where the box disappeared in an instant. Is it really a cluster of star power that the lady summons her beast? But Zhou Fengkun says to be careful after all. This is a title rank master. Tang family does not understand who dared to take this treasure from the hands of their family. The owner orders her shadow Asura to bring the head of the one who did this. Su Ping is happy that they have finally arrived. He orders the dragon armor of the guardian of the wind and the guardian of the earth to be used. To the eastern serpent of purgatory, the flower-bearing serpent of purgatory let him use stone armor vine hardening ice spray and fire cloak. Su Ping orders to finally use the dragon patron which doubles the defense and increases the damage according to the defense level. He orders his beast to zip up the family there by surprise. Zhou Fenkun can't believe his eyes. Is the dark Asura killed? Feng Mo say that this person subdued the ninth stage shadow Asura in a few blows, and his strength was conceivable. He asks if Zhou Fenkun himself fell into his corner and allowed the enemy to surround him. The old man, with the accumulation of all his star power, will now oust his opponent. But Su Ping uses a small skeleton that cuts all the star power in an instant. Su Ping didn't expect to be discovered so quickly. The bait didn't work. But the guy stands with that same chest in his hands. Tang family remembers that this is the same guy who reached the title rank at such a young age, and he will become a serious problem in the future. They decide not to let him leave. Joe Fenkin is preparing to strike. He says that this is the guy for killing his pet Joe Fenkin did not keep up with. Su Ping is at the dragon gate, but now the guy is in his hands, a small skeleton to use the flash of the undead. The next moment, the little skeleton takes out his sword. This is the highest sword art, and in an instant, he swipes his sword and everything that falls under him falls to the ground. So from the large, dry stove burrs of trees, only stumps remained. It was a very strong, exaggerated, destructive force. The owner is stunned. She doesn't believe that this all comes from one little skeleton. Joe Fenkin is too angry because the guy dared to attack his mistress. He says that death to the pathetic thief. Zhou Fenkun sends thousands of glass balls towards Su Ping and his animals. He wants the guy to feel the full power of their clan. But Su Ping says that he did not have the opportunity to try his fist in the dragon colony. But now he will be able to enjoy it. And at one moment, a mysterious martial art appears in front of the Tang family. Zhou Fenkun sees what is in it. There is something divine. Su Ping uses the first style demon god suppressing fist. But in response, Zhou Fenkin uses nine star counts to protect himself from the attack. But unexpectedly for him, the attack came from the back. The attack was so strong that Zhou Fenkuna began to bleed from his mouth. The owner says that the strength of this little thief is extraordinary, 
because he is very strong. Zhou Fenkun, the king of the dragons of the earth, takes the mistress and runs to protect her mistress, moves into the dragon's pasture. Su Ping sees that they want to escape, so he orders his mysterious dragon dog and purgatory light snake to stop them from leaving. But Zhou Fenkun tells the guy that the outcome has not yet been decided. Does this petty thief really think that the old man will not be able to detain him? So Zhou Fenkun uses the secret arts of the Tang family. He uses bewitchment. And this is the secret art of forcibly capturing other people's bodies at the cost of sacrificing his own body. This is a last resort that can only be used as a last resort. The housewife does not understand. How could this person push old Zhou Fenkun to such an extent? Now the old man wants to take Su Ping's life. But the guy's animals fly into battle. They try to inflict a physical attack on the enemy in order to kill the spiritual monster that is attacking their owner. But he won't be stopped by a physical attack. Zhou Fenkun says that the petty thief will regret making enemies with the Tang family. Even if the old man is torn into pieces, he will turn into worms and eat Su Ping, and the guy's body will belong to him. But in an instant, Su Ping uses secret spiritual protection treasures, thereby avoiding the attack. Zhou Fenkun doesn't understand why he can't take the guy. He says that Su Ping is a dirty thief and he will kill him. The hostess decides to come out of hiding. She doesn't understand what happened. Is it really the dragon king of the earth? She wants to eat her. She orders the fallen-winged king to pull her out. Su Ping notices that the young lady has finally come out. She summons the fallen-winged king. His combat power is equal to the power of the middle fourth stage. The mistress orders the guy. Don't call her young mistress because the guy doesn't deserve it. But when she comes out of hiding, the girl doesn't feel the aura. The owner doesn't understand the old Zhou Fenkun. Has Zhou Fenkun really died with the power of the middle Q of the ninth stage? The girl asks the guy who he is and why he is killing their family there, and how he even has the right to do this. But Su Ping asks in response why they killed those two rogues, and what right did they have to do this? But the hostess replies that this is just the law of the jungle, that's all. And there's nothing wrong with that. She asks the guy if he really wants to say that in his eyes the Tang family is the same as the eighth masters, the steps of which can be crushed in one fell swoop. Su Ping replies that the lady guessed right. After all, the Tang family is just. The next piece of meat is on the cutting board, but seeing a small skeleton. The fallen winged king of the ninth stage bloodline is shocked. The girl asks what this guy wants. Now the owner says that if Su Ping lets her go, then the Tang family will be able to satisfy all his demands. To which Su Ping replies that if the lady wants to ask for mercy, first let her show all her sincerity. The girl doesn't understand what he wants. Su Ping tells her not to pretend to be stupid because the guy wants the mistress to free the fallen winged king. But the master of the heavenly beast will be weakened in a few days if his beast is released from the contract. The lady realizes that this guy is too cunning. She jumps off her beast and comes very close to Su Ping. Standing face to face, the girl says that then she will break the contract, but at this time from the back, so that Su Ping does not see. She summons the fallen winged king. She instantly orders her warring wolf to kill the guy. Well, when the beast has already taken aim, at Su Ping, the small skeleton intercepts his blow and cuts off his hand, which falls next to the owner. The angry guy now says that since the mistress doesn't want to break, the contract is for him to separate them physically, so he orders his small skeleton to destroy the beast, while the guy uses his staff pointing it at the mistress, and he orders the girl to be laid down, she is drawn into the unknown, and finds herself in some new space. She doesn't understand if this is a spatial hidden treasure in the sky. At this moment, the girl notices Su Ping's huge face looking at her. Now she realizes that this is exactly what the inside of the scroll looks like. The girl turns to Su Ping. Why? He didn't kill her. To which the guy replies that if she wants to die, then please. But it's only after Su Ping has pumped out all her value that she notices a mark on the guy's forehead. The heir now she understands that the one who went through nine floors turns out to be Su Ping. The girl starts laughing hard and the guy doesn't understand. What's going on? He says it doesn't look good when the girl stops laughing. She says Su Ping is on death's door. And he still doesn't know about it. Because soon he will die at the hands of a unique, legendary master throughout the Asian region. Su Ping answers to the girl. She didn't speak in riddles, just let him tell him what she knows. The mistress says that she will soon die... Then why should she tell him all this? Su Ping asks her, How can a man who has so many tricks up his sleeve not threaten people if the lady doesn't tell him? Then he will not only let her die in a very inventive way, in a way, but after some time, 
her photo will spread all over the world. She replies that Su Ping is being very mean. The guy says that she forced him herself, and he also asks, will she be able to tell him now? The girl says that the person who will kill Su Ping is the legendary master of martial beasts. He has already appointed his granddaughter the place of heir to the dragon column. The ledge, therefore, anyone who can take away the inheritance will be eliminated by him. Now Five asks if they are really four big families who are fighting for the column. They are not afraid that this master will deal with them. But the lady replies that in addition, they all promised the master that even if they were lucky enough to pass the ninth floor, either they will voluntarily abandon their heritage or they will have to face the risk of extinction. Su Ping says that now it turns out that the whole secret kingdom, it is firmly in the hands of the legendary master. He remembers what the rector said about the federal government, which blocked the internal zone for reasons. Security and improved the outer zone for a limited time, but this is just an excuse for the master to monopolize the secret kingdom. Now Su Ping commands the luminous serpent. Purgatory burned dead bodies to ashes. The guy understands that although he defeated opponents at the level of the King of Beasts, this was achieved only through countless resurrections, trial and error, and this time he will have to face a legendary opponent whom he has never met before, and whom no one should devalue. I didn't witness how the guy broke through the column of the Dragon Ledge. It's only a matter of time before the Master really wants to carry out. The most urgent task of the investigation is to find a way to improve the pet store and transfer my mother and sister there so that they do not become a lever of pressure. The guy returns to his store. There is again a long queue to sit there, or they notice him and begin to rejoice because they have been waiting for Su Ping for so long. They ask to upgrade their animals, to which the owner replies, that he will do everything, you just need to follow the queue. The system says that the store's income has been converted in energy points, and at the moment the owner has 1,035 energy points. Presently, it is the same day. The store's income is about 10,000 energy points. It takes 10 days to accumulate enough to upgrade. During this period, you need to find an intermediary to purchase land. The essence of the pioneers is the organization that represents customized services for walkers with money. You need to satisfy most of the walkers' needs with one click. Calls private customer service and says that she wants to expand her store and buy land nearby. The girl confirms the address of the Su Ping store. She asks what area of real estate the guy wants to buy. Su Ping answers that he needs 3,000 square meters. The girl says that this will require about 200,000 million star yuan as collateral, and the remaining 100 million must be paid after the transfer of property. Su Ping does not understand. When the price managed to rise, the girl from the support service said that in connection with the start of the Global Elite League, the cost of services from stores for breeding animals, she grew up and, accordingly, it became more difficult to purchase real estate than usual. Su Ping remembers that he still has a bloody fiery dragon, he asks. How much can you sell it for? The girl replies that the market price of a celestial beast above the ninth stage is about 400 million star yuan. So there is also a wild beast, Su Ping, the only one in the whole city. They offer 250 million yuan for the beast. Su Ping says that he will now sell the beast and pay the deposit from the proceeds from raising the beasts. Now the guy understands that 250 million plus 60 million in his hand is just enough. Now for the next few days he will try. Maximize your strength. The owner asks the system if there is a more complex cultivation zone than the Dragon King's legacy land. Su Ping has passed the beginner's protection period and now pays 10% of the entry price for each resurrection. Now he cannot die on posts. To upgrade the demonic body of the Golden Raven to the second level, the guy needs the heart of a fiery Shia. It is a celestial beast with the dual attribute of God and fire. Su Ping understands that if his Golden Crow demonic body is successfully cultivated to the second level, by the same time his physical defense will reach the ninth stage, and his survivability will increase significantly. The guy ends up in the cultivation zone. He notices that the style of this area, much different from the past, it is like a comparison between the wild world and civilized society. The system asks the owner if he would like to purchase the function of translating into the divine language. Now for the first time, he will use the services of a translator. The Cloud Thunder Realm is the realm of the deceased master, compared to this place on a completely different level. 
If Su Ping can communicate with them, then he will be able to avoid many pointless deaths. The Divine Language Translation function is installed, and now, the owner will be able to communicate normally with the Divine Race. Su Ping notices a beautiful girl. He asks the system if he needs to meet her, but the girl notices some energy fluctuations. She can't figure out if it's an insect, but abruptly she notices Su Ping and begins an attack on him, wishing him death. The guy summons a small skeleton and a light bringing snake to purgatory. He orders them to use the supreme arts of the sword and the flames of the dragon of purgatory. This is the power of the divine girl. The luminous serpent of purgatory dies from defeat. Su Ping is surprised by such great strength, but his small skeleton is not weak either. After all, the effect of the undead fruit, immunity to one mortal wound, had worked. Now the skeleton begins to attack. Su Ping revives the snake purgatory in the same place of energy, but Su Ping doesn't have much resurrection left, so it's not worth fighting for the beast. Also, the guy is trying to establish contact with the girl. After all, he has no bad intentions. The translator works, but the girl speaks. That she doesn't need him because she understands that the guy is not from this world. The guy asks how this girl knows that he came from another world. She says that Su Ping's small stature and his resemblance to them is nothing more. What an insignificant human being is this possession of the gods, a place of enormous power. She asks how the guy could get there if he was not transported by an outsider. Su Ping asks, isn't she surprised that he's a human? The girl replies that often gods and people unite and give birth to offspring. Su Ping says that he didn't suspect that humanity had gotten so far into the universe and even established contact with the gods. He asks why they have never heard of this on the Blue Star. Although this hillbilly has power at the student level he uses, the heavenly beast realm of the unusual sea has not yet been able to revive. The strangest thing is that there is still an indistinguishable but frightening aura from its blood. The goddess does not understand. Perhaps this is not a person, or there is some higher being behind him. She says that's where the pleasantries end. She asks what brought the guy to the central lands of the gods and who is behind him. They order the guy to tell him everything down to the smallest detail. But the guy is perplexed. He asks why she is talking about the lands of the gods. Is this really not a semi-divine kingdom? Well, the girl didn't answer anything. Attacks Su Ping, kills the little skeleton and hits the guy. The owner died right in his heart. He doesn't understand if the name of the semi-divine kingdom hit her where it hurts, because her facial expression was strange. The guy tells himself not to take it into his head, and at the moment his goal is, increase the strength and don't worry about it yet. He needs to take his time exploring other places. Finding himself on a new land, he realizes that there is something wrong with the earth. He sees giant fangs that are right in front of him. At the same moment, he realizes that he finds himself in the pasture of a giant beast who wants to eat him. But at the last moment, the guy manages to take off and hover in the air. In his next movement, he directs the divine fist right into the beast, knocking out several dozen of its teeth when the beast crawls away from the guy. He identifies it as a scout beast. Su Ping summons his celestial beasts because the scout's combat power is the highest ninth stage and this really deserves to be called the land of the divine race, the guy directs. His celestial beasts into battle using murderous intent. He orders the flower-bearing serpent purgatory to take the little one, skeleton into the mouth, and entangle his sword in the flames of the dragon purgatory. Led by the luminous serpent, purgatory turns out to be the patron of the dragon, and immediately uses the fiery blow of purgatory. Su Ping says that this is not enough, the next attack of the beasts he directs at the eye, but it is huge. The monster uses a petrifying gaze to transform the celestial beasts into Su Ping. He bites them into stones and the dark dragon and the dog dies. But the effect of the fruit of the undead has worked for the little skeleton, immunity to one. The mortal wound gets close to the enemy's eye and pierces right through it. In cultivation zones, after the small skeleton is revived, it will reset the undead demon fruit to an unused state. While the huge monster is wounded, Su Ping orders his beast to kill it. He also asks the luminous serpent to entangle him in the flames of the dragon purgatory. Su Ping attacks the beast and smashes its face with his fist. The monster's head flies apart. There is blood in three parts around. At this time, an unknown stone falls from the monster to the ground and is caught by the dragon dog. This is a divine crystal, an energy crystal produced after devouring the gods by a strong divine nature. They can be used by celestial beasts to transform into divine beasts. After the celestial beast transforms into a divine beast, its duration 
Life, physical strength, and understanding will be directly improved and he will gain the ability to resist demonic-type beasts and undead and also have the chance to master divine skills. And the power of divine skills is five or ten times more powerful than ordinary skills. Su Ping is happy because this is another way to improve his strength, since the dog found a divine crystal. Then let it be his. But the little skeleton gets upset. Su Ping tells his beast that he has the noble bloodline of the skeleton king, and the beast should pay attention to his image. Su Ping tells the skeleton that he better get closer to the luminous snake purgatory, and some divine crystal is nothing. After the dragon dog ate the divine crystal of his village, his skills increased, but his identification panel did not change. Su Ping seems to need to completely fill it in order to be able to fully transform. Suddenly they hear the sound of someone screaming for help. Animals like the one they just fought with. Two unknown people are attacked. Su Ping can't figure out if this is a divine race. A trainee from the fifth small detachment of the Shen Fen group, with a novice level, asks for help. He uses protection and asks the huge beasts not to eat him, but suddenly all of these beasts. Sweeping out of the way a huge fist gathered by star power, it was Su Ping. They can't believe that this is a human-type warrior. They don't understand what he's doing here. Su Ping dissolves his dragon and tells the gods to grab the paws of the beast, which saves them. Thanks, Su Ping, for help. To which the guy replies so that they don't misunderstand him, but they are just lucky that he was nearby. He asks them what they were doing here and how did they get stuck in such a dangerous place. A member of a small detachment says that Star Zerg are constantly invading their lands through the space of time rifts, and they are the ones who answer for cleaning their nest. He says that their group was just scattered by a high-ranking mirror, and they both ended up here in a death trap. Su Ping asks if they are the nests they cleaned. The team member replies that it is true that they are, but he asks what the man is doing here. Su Ping says that for no particular reason he just happened to pass by. But the guy thinks that not only the blue star has stellar rifts, but the divine race is even more unlucky, because extremely aggressive potions arrived. The guy asks. Don't gods have wings? Then why, if they can't defeat these insects with their level, they could just fly away? But the team member is angry with Su Ping because how dare he? With such words, one insults the divine wings. He says that dying in the battle to drive out the Zerg is the greatest honor for their divine gods. But the intern says that alas in everything. In the divine realm, there are only a few dozen pure-blooded gods who have divine wings. Moreover, the skills that they practice are completely demigoddess-like. They are different from others, and they cannot fly whenever they want. But it turns out that the girl that Su Ping met was a rare pure-blood goddess, because she had wings, no wonder. Why is there such a big gap in strength between them? If you compare her abilities with celestial beasts, she is probably much stronger than a small skeleton. It would be cool to have such an awesome celestial beast Su Ping asks the group if they know anything about the semi-divine border, to which the intern replies that they grew up on the outskirts, divine lands, but have never heard of the semi-divine border. He says that however they have a legend about a higher divine kingdom, the intern asks if Su Ping wants to listen, the other team member gets angry, because only stupid people believe. The existence of the highest divine realm and the birthplace of pure-blooded gods where one day of cultivation is equivalent to a year in the outside world. He says that these are just the fantasies of weaklings, and the intern says that for many years now, there have been pure-blooded gods. They are trying to destroy the star Zerg race of the valuable divine lands. He says that he wants to train there at least for a short time. Another team member says that so many years have passed that there is not even a semblance of a trace. Instead of pinning hopes on such illusory things, it is better for them to seriously hone their combat skills. But unexpectedly, during the flight, someone attacks them and the guys fall to the ground. One of the team members. He says that they are pursuing them again. These are the same Zergs. The intern is confused. He doesn't know how they will kill these Zerg. But another team member tells the guys to leave because his hour of glory has come. But Su Ping thinks that this divine warrior is very selfless. But Su Ping has already set his sights on their divine crystals. Su Ping uses an explosive pulse. He says that it would not be satisfactory for him to die in this way. The Divine Warrior does not understand how such an explosive impulse can come from a human disciple-level warrior. Su Ping tells the Divine Warriors to leave, before the warrior did not know what they were. 
There are heroes in the human race, then he leaves the battle to Su Ping. The warriors wish Su Ping good luck and run away. Su Ping says it's incredibly nostalgic to see a swarm of insects again. This gushing blood, and the feeling when the potential of the whole body is stimulated by death, is exactly what Su Ping wanted. He orders his celestial beasts to give it their all and defeat this pack. Su Ping understands that there is enough energy for the last resurrection. He did not expect that the monsters, they will turn out to be so strong that even nine resurrections will not be enough to kill them. The higher the level, the more difficult it is to kill them. It's good that Su Ping took several divine crystals, and the time for reconnaissance is almost up, which means that there is not enough time to continue to fight the beasts. Therefore, he chooses a random place to be reborn. When he is reborn, he finds himself in some room where there is a girl with her beast. At this time, she is playing with her cute kitten. This girl turns out to be the same goddess who killed Su Ping before. Seeing her, the guy gets up and is simply dumbfounded. The girl starts to get angry and says that Su Ping is a vile human race and that he's stalking her again. She asks what his intentions are. In a panic, he does not understand why this particular random place does not even have time to send a small skeleton. He says that there was a misunderstanding and he is not an enemy. He has no evil intentions. The girl asks if he is not an enemy, then why? When she pierced him with this divine spear, which, capable of wounding even a soul, he was able to appear before the goddess in complete gear and safety. If Su Ping dares to kick, he will be thrown into the prison of all sins and will suffer the torment of kneeling and begging for mercy. Su Ping understands that resurrection is out of the question, then he needs to come up with a plan. He tells the girl that he knows how to get to the highest divine realm. The girl understands that many gods dream of returning there if they had a higher divine kingdom. Then they would have destroyed the Zerg race long ago. But even with the efforts of the entire country, they have not advanced one step. She doesn't understand how this person can know about this. Su Ping says that the girl should know two things that he will be able to enter and leave the central divine lands at will, and she will not be able to kill him with her power. And Su Ping decides to tell the girl that if he's not interested, then he's leaving here, and they'll have to look for it on their own. The girl doesn't believe what she hears. She asks the guy whether the power is gold or earth. She will give him what he wants. Su Ping chooses strength without strength. How much he had, he had no money and lands. He would only be prey. The goddess gives Su Ping the secret manual for human cultivation based on the supreme divine art of the divine origin after studying it. Su Ping permanently increases the learning speed of all skills and spells. In other words, this thing can speed up the upgrade speed. Opens the book, Su Ping hits the barrier. The girl says that as soon as... She will enter the supreme divine realm only then will she open the guy. Su Ping agrees, but he says that before they go there so that the goddess does not get lost, in the space of time and chaos, he needs to draw a talisman on her forehead in order to determine the coordinates. The girl agrees. But since she is very tall, Su Ping asks her for a ladder or for her to squat down a little. The goddess crouches near Su Ping. He marks her forehead. This sign is a contract with a celestial beast. Now Su Ping will be able to control her because in front of the system everyone is a celestial beast and the goddess is no exception. The goddess understands that this is a human contract to absorb a pet. But Su Ping does not yet understand that he underestimated the goddess. The goddess tells the guy to look at the reverse divine sign. Now the girl is going to answer the guy in the same way. Su Ping uses the conclusion of the contract, but the girl rejects it and proclaims the termination of the contract. Shocked. He didn't know that he could terminate the contract, the girl said when. Su Ping will become the goddess's pet and will tell all his secrets with remorse. While she wants to catch the guy on a chain, time is frozen. She doesn't understand what's happening and how this is even possible. Su Ping opens a portal, and the girl falls powerless to the floor. She was suppressed by just one look. This power is hidden in the blood of this man. The girl is afraid that this is a creature from a higher dimension. Time resumed its course. Su Ping doesn't understand what happened because the goddess just terminated the contract. Why is she depressed then? Su Ping asks the system what happened. She replies that she did nothing, but the power of the goddess violated the protective barrier established by the system received. Response. Su Ping tells the system that the animal contract doesn't seem to have worked for her. He asks if there is another way to subdue this divine being. The system says that for highly intelligent creatures, it is possible to conclude an employment contract. To accept them as store employees, Su Ping says that he was just trying to subdue her, but suddenly the guy had a chance to take her on as an employee. 
Su Ping tells the goddess that this was a test, and now he provides her with an official contract and offers her an employment contract for the Su Ping store. The first rule of employees is to ensure the safety of the store manager and obey the order of the store manager. The goddess understands that this item has an aura of heavenly law. After signing, both parties will be bound by the law and the possibility of disobedience is excluded. The girl is angry that she will really be commanded by such a stupid guy for a whole year. The girl says that for the sake of all the gods she is ready to try, but if Su Ping refuses, she will pay a thousand times more. Therefore, the girl signs the contract. The system says that on the blue star there are three realms, the realm of the vast sea, the realm of the empty cave, and the realm of fate. They are usually united into a legendary realm. Su Ping realizes that the gap in their strength is so great that it is no wonder why he could not conclude a contract, but a system that can easily suppress a god. About the divine kingdom is simply a response. The system announces that the time of connection to the semi-divine border is coming to an end. You need to prepare to return. Su Ping and the goddess ends up in the guy's pet store. When they get there, the girl's height decreases significantly. After all, the true form of the goddess is inconvenient for activities in their world. But the girl turns out to be too short. Su Ping tells the girl to get ready because the doors are about to open to receive customers. The girl asks, really? Su Ping talks about those insects that spy on him. The guy assumes that these are the master's people. Did they really find him so quickly? Su Ping thought he could. Holding out until the store update is completed is in vain. He underestimated the power of the legendary master. Until now, Su Ping was looking for options where to hide his mother and sister. It was a little difficult for him to enter the cultivation area when they were close, but he didn't really care. Someone wants to start a video call. Su Ping doesn't understand who the man is. The screen asks if he is talking to a high-ranking lecturer at Fengshan University. The owner of Xiao Tao Qi notices what is in the background. His house, the guy doesn't understand what happened to his family then. He demands that they answer quickly because they are unusual kidnappers. The man on the screen says that he is smart. The gentleman wants to see Su Ping. For this, he needs to be obedient, and then he will have no reason to complicate their life. Su Ping realizes that he is their target. The guy says he's at the pet store right now, and if they want to see him, let them come. But they must let his family go. And first, Su Ping must see them, the man agrees. But he asks, what's the point because the guy won't be able to escape from the hands of the legendary master? Now this man contacts the gentleman. He says that he sent him Su Ping instead of finding it. The master says that it's time to find out who dared to take over the legacy of the Dragon Ledge. Students notice that the titular masters are floating in the air above. They land near the Su Ping pet store. People don't understand that how strong the masters are doing in the lower part of the city. One of them asks, are they really not mistaken? How can a man live in such a trash heap? But it doesn't matter because anyone who dares to wish for the master's things will die. Yuan Tianchen is the legendary martial power master of the vast sea realm, and Tao Zong has the title rank. Tao Zong says that time is running out and we need to get this over with quickly. The students don't believe it's really Tao Zong, and the old man next to him has a legendary rank. Just looking at it makes them feel like they're dying. The greatest masters order the students to get out because this does not concern their generation. One of the masters says that the master has arrived, so Su Ping needs to come out into the light. He wants Su Ping to watch as he destroys his store. One of the masters says that the gentleman has arrived, so Su Ping needs to come out into the light. He wants Su Ping to watch how he will destroy his store. The elderly servant of the Mu family uses all his strength to open the Su Ping store, but this door does not have any reaction. Perhaps it has. Some kind of high-ranking defensive formation. But suddenly the doors open on their own, and Su Ping comes out. He says that there is no need to drag the family into this. He asks who was looking for him and what they need. Tao Zong notices the guy. This is the same young man. A gifted youth. No less gifted than any young master from a famous family. He is truly well trained, but today he is a legend, an elderly servant of the family there. He says that Su Ping's death is inevitable, and he is in no position to make conditions. He uses star power to grab Su Ping and force him to leave the store. But at one point, Su Ping easily breaks the hand created by star power. The masters don't believe that the guy escaped from the ninth stage star palm so easily. Master Yuan Tianchen says that this petty thief not only refuses to give up, 
but even if he dares to resist, he orders everyone to grab him together. One of the masters tells the master to leave it to them because they can still fight. Master Yuan Tianchen says that the strength that this young man showed is not at all on the same level as them. After all, soon the masters will bring his mother and sister. When Su Ping sees them, he tells the guards to remove their vile hands and with the help of star power, he takes his mother and sister, but they are unconscious and do not understand what they did to them. Master Yuan Tianchen replies that it's just anesthesia. They will come to their senses. After half a day, he asks the guy what it feels like to be robbed by a stranger. Su Ping says that this concept is because the legacy of the Dragon Ledge is not written down. In his name, the servant of the Mu family attacks the guy because how dare he talk to the master in such a tone. The gentleman asks Su Ping what if he has the power then? He has the right to inheritance. The elderly servant of the Mu family tells the master that their minds cannot penetrate the store. They cannot determine their strength. This is strange. He tells Mr. Yuan Tianchen to beware of the hidden master in the store. But Mr. Yuan Tianchen says that he is a legendary martial beast master. Legendary in everything. Asian region master. Now Master Yuan Tianchen finds himself very close to Su Ping. He asks the guy how there can be two legends in this small room at the same time. Yuan Tianchen says that if Su Ping obeys him like the four major families did, then he will not make his life difficult, but will also train him. Elderly servant Liu family says that after all, there are very few people on the blue star who can reach title rank at this age, which really makes people jealous. Yuan Tianchen thinks that the guy looks friendly at first glance, but the star power he radiates is enough to strangle the people around him, even the four major families. Yuan Tianchen does not dare to refuse him and says that the resources of the secret kingdom that fall into his hands are a waste, only by concentrating these resources on the best of the best they can cultivate true talents. Su Ping says he used to hate people who claimed that the rarest things in the world appeared on a certain map, and if someone dares to take them, they will hunt him down and kill him. Yuan Tianchen replies that the guy is a joker because he has the power to track down and kill everyone. He says that he is asking for the last time whether Su Ping surrenders or dies. Su Ping asks Yuan Tianchen to ask again what incredibly elite masters are, and he points a huge sword at the guy. But the divine girl, with her power, stops the sword and breaks it into pieces. But Mr. Yuan Tianchen's blow requires at least the ninth stage of combat power to barely be accepted. And this young girl blocked the blow with one hand. Has another legendary master appeared in the base city of Longjiang? Yuan Tianchen says that the girl looks young, but the star power is well hidden, and he was almost fooled. The girl replies that the employee's first rule is to protect the store, and if the goddess understood correctly, then by observing the employee agreement. She will receive points to then become an excellent employee, and if she breaks the rules, points will be deducted accordingly, including punishment. Yuan Tianchen is angry. He asks how they even dare to ignore him. He gathers all his power to strike. But this again turns out to be useless, and the master. Yuan Tianchen flies back into the wall. Su Ping tells goddess Joanna that these are not desert areas. And here you can't kill anyone. He also tells the girl that the one with the sword on his belt is his friend and can't be touched. And the rest must be taken alive if it will be very difficult to control your strength, not to crush these ants to death. The masters say that this is a demonic store because the village of just one employee is already comparable to the legendary rank. Master Yuan Tianchen calls upon his strongest servant and asks him to become a heavy axe to crush his enemies. He orders his celestial beast to use combination, and now Master Yuan Tianchen combines with his celestial beast. Su Ping doesn't understand. Is it really possible to merge with a celestial beast? It even looks beautiful. Yuan Tianchen says that now the legendary martial beast master of the entire Blue Star will teach a lesson. The masters say that this is the hidden skill of Mr. Yuan Tianchen, and this is the first time they see him using it. The elderly servant of the Liu family says that they need to leave, otherwise they will be swallowed up. It looks scary after the combination. The combat power suddenly broke through. Through the realm, it is no longer a battle in which masters can also participate. Tao Zong tells Mr. Yuan Tianchen to calm down because the battle of two legendary masters will lead to the destruction of everything. But Yuan Tianchen says that he is not stupid enough to burn down the kitchen because of two rats who steal food. Therefore, one blow is enough for him to finish her off. But she stops Master Yuan Tianchen's blow with one hand and smashes his demonic stick into pieces as well. 
She uses the divine spear. She wants this spear to enjoy the sacrifice. Su Ping says that this is almost enough and it is not worth killing him, the divine girl says, so that the guy does not worry because his original spirit was scorched by the divine flame, and to restore the current cultivation base it will be necessary. At least three or five years. The masters don't understand how the girl could stop Yuan Tianchen with one hand. Su Ping speaks to the masters. If they have been with him since childhood, they can fight. Su Ping sees that his sister has already opened her eyes. He asks if she woke up. And how does she feel now? He also asks if she is injured. The girl says that her head is a little pounding. She asks how mom is feeling. Su Ping replies that mom is a little tired and let her sleep a little more because it was a difficult test. The girl sees the masters in front of her. She doesn't understand who it is. A servant of the Mu family who greets her. The masters take turns introducing themselves and saying their names. Xiao Yu asks his brother who these people are and what they are doing here in their house. The guy starts joking that he caught them, but then he says that these are private tutors whom he hired to give lessons to his sister. But she begins to get angry. What kind of tutors are there if her grades are in the top ten? Does her brother really think that she is stupid? He also says that the Elite League tournament, it's about to begin. And during this time, they can teach their sister some knowledge that is not available at the university. The girl then asks permission to ask what they will teach her. Xiao Liu is not a genius, but is known as the titular poison king. He can teach her some ninth stage poisoning and detoxification skills. Xiao Qin is the titular restoration master. He can teach her some ninth stage healing skills and physical strengthening skills. Xiao Tang has the title of snake heart. He can teach her the technique of hidden weapons with the ninth stage mechanism. Xiao Mu. Titles Emperor of Beasts. He can teach her the skill of controlling some ninth stage celestial beasts prepared for her a lunar cub. Dragon Silver Frost Star. The girl can't believe her ears. Is it really the ninth stage skills that they give her for free? Silver Frost Dragon, which ranks eighth in the rank of dragons. The girl doesn't believe they are telling the truth. The brother replies that of course they are reliable and you can trust. Su Ping remembers how three hours ago the masters asked him for forgiveness. The masters said that they had eyes, but they did not notice the mountain. They ask Su Ping to show them mercy. Su Ping asks the goddess if she can curse or do magic or something like that. But Joanna replies that she is a noble and graceful goddess. How can she use such a disgusting method, plus two points to her employee rating? The girl asks, is the guy really worried that they might betray him? But maybe Su Ping wants to keep them on a leash. The girl agrees to this just for the sake of the glasses. The goddess will deign. After all, it's a miracle that masters of the title rank control this group of ants like children. They say that they have received their sight and are amazed at the heroic face of the goddess. Tao Zong sees for the first time how someone on the Blue Star uses such a terrifying technique he does not understand. Is this girl really from another star system, and if so, and the master hidden in this demonic store might just be of legendary rank to me? Su Ping asks what she did with them. The girl replies that this seal is a blessing and a miracle, which can be used only for those who have lost their faith in life and are shaken. Those blessed will have a certain faith in their hearts by the master, and if the blessed one performs the act, disobedience, then he will be shrouded in divine flame and will burn for ten days and ten nights until he is destroyed. Su Ping says that the girl is cruel, but now from now on the masters are faithful to Su Ping in the sanctity and integrity of the Su family. Su Ping turns to Tao Zong since he is already here. Su Ping asks if he would like to teach him sword skills. Tao Zong replies that the owner is too polite, and Tao Zong doesn't mind. But with the power of Su Ping, he doesn't know if there is a need to learn from him. Su Ping says that of course it makes sense. He asks Tao Zong to teach him. The master replies that since the guy insists, he will not shy away, but he has two questions. Tao Zong says that firstly, his sword technique is extremely destructive, and he needs to find a suitable place. And secondly, he asks if Su Ping really wants to use a sword, because according to his observations, the fighting method that the guy practices is more like a fist style. The owner says not to worry about it. He asks Tao Zong to leave contact information, and in a few days prepare a special training field, and then he will contact him. Su Ping tells his sister that in any case, she can learn from the masters and benefit from it, and now it's time for him to go to the store. I put it five times that the property that he ordered earlier, as well as the bloody fiery dragon that he wants to sell, is ready. As expected from a professional team, Su Ping's fast service says there is no problem, 
and let them come to his store for transfer. Ten days later, Su Ping opens its store. The system says the money has been automatically converted. In energy points, the balance is currently 125,000 points. The owner asks the system to open the update panel. The third level store will open the possibility of raising celestial beasts of the seventh or even ninth stage. You can accept orders worth a million at a time from majors like Ye Hao. It turns out that earnings can be increased. In addition, he will be able to sell animals from him. More space will appear. It's finally looking more and more like a full-fledged store. That's why it increases. Now 100,000 energy points have been deducted from Su Ping's account, and now he has 25,000 points left. The owner's designated property was converted into a store with a total area of 3,000 square meters. Also, the streets between shops will be protected. Su Ping is wondering if it is possible to automatically generate furniture and the like. Wouldn't it save the effort of decorating? First of all, Su Ping needs to ensure the life of his mother and sister. He allocates 300 square meters as living space. All amenities for a normal life are being built, Xiao Tang asks. Is it really a mysterious power that creates things out of thin air? Indeed, unlike ordinary creations, which require energy to maintain, this is a real object that can exist forever. The girl is afraid that even their supreme god could not do this. The owner allocates the remaining area for reception and office space. Another fifth part will be allocated to the feed area. After all, this is one of the necessary things in a pet store. And in the end, all that is left will be allocated under the section for nurturing and testing areas. The system notifies that the separation is complete. Also, the number of sections for cultivation was increased from 25 to 50. Su Ping buys another 25 sections of the second level. Subtract 25,000 energy points from the owner's account. Su Ping asks the system what rights employees have. The system says to use the four section points to cultivate space for cultivating the function of cultivating a shadow clone and go outside with the owner or enter into the cultivation area for one hour every week. The owner thinks that these few permits are enough to keep the store running. The younger sister and mother come to the new Su Ping store. My sister's first thought was that they had the wrong address. After all, this cannot be a coincidence because it has the same name. Su Ping meets his relatives. He asks if they have already arrived and if they have taken everything. The masters say that according to Su Ping's instructions, all luggage is packed and loaded into the car. And if that's all, the masters will go first. He lets them go and orders them to pull out their things with a forklift. Xiao Yu indignantly tells his brother that early in the morning the teachers took the movers and vacated their house. She doesn't understand what's happening and it's actually time for her to go to school. Mom doesn't understand why their store has become so big. Su Ping says it's a long story. And in general, he asked his sister to leave the university. But in any case, first you need to walk with him and along the way you can talk. University students want to upgrade their animals, but when they see the goddess, they ask for her phone number. After all, they really liked her. But the goddess tells the guys not to jump in line and she calls them ants. The owner is indignant that the girl should not call clients ants. The girl asks where the owner is going to go, to which he replies that he is busy and let her look after the store herself. Looking around the house, my sister does not believe that this is their own pool. The guy tells his sister not to be shy about being happy. Su Ping shows his sister's new room. Mom says that this house is much more comfortable than their old one. And my sister says that her old bed was hard and uncomfortable. Mom asks her son how much this house costs. Su Ping tells mom not to worry because the money was paid by several clients and from the upper part of the city. And the last time he returned their celestial beasts. And they said that they were very pleased with the result. And with a wave of their hand, they paid for his house because money is nothing to them. The guy says that from now on, his family can live here peacefully. Also, if they feel that the house is too big, they can find several servants to clean and cook. But my mother replies that she is retired and expects that these responsibilities will occupy her. Otherwise, she will have nothing to do. Sister asks brother for someone, gentle and sweet beauty, in the shop. Mentally, Su Ping is surprised that this goddess can be called sweet and gentle, but he replies that this is his new employee. Mom replies that she understands everything. She offers to invite the girl to have a snack with them at noon. Mom asks what the name of such a young lady is, to which the goddess replies that her name is Joanna. The sister says that this girl's blonde hair looks very soft. She asks if she can touch it, but the brother tells the sister not to touch. 
to Joanna, otherwise. And the guy didn't have time to finish speaking as he was surprised at how calmly the goddess reacted to her sister's touches. Mom asks where the girl is from. And how old is she if she has a boyfriend? Joanna replies that she is from the Outer Lands, and she is 18 years old. She also says that she has not yet thought about finding a boyfriend, to which my mother responds, What a shame. Su Ping asks why the goddess behaves so normally in front of the family, to which she asks if he will add points to her. If not, then she might act a little strange again, to which the owner replies that he will rub and let him continue in the same spirit. Now he sees her as a ruthless points-earning machine. Mom asks, Is it really just the two of them working in the store, and how do they manage to do it all? Joanna replies that the current traffic is more than enough for the two of them, and if there is one less person, it will be more difficult. Xiao Yu says Joanna is very strong. My sister thought that there were almost a hundred people in the store alone, but Su Ping is already thinking about what will happen to Joanna's abilities. If someone else appears who will help her, he may not work at all. He also remembers that the young mistress of the Tang family is still locked inside, but without her, it will be inconvenient to plant the Star Cloud spiritual tree. The system will promise that the owner's need for additional staff has been fulfilled. Therefore, a contract for temporary staff has been concluded. Excellent employees with 200 points will be converted into full-fledged employees, and if they have less than 60 points, they will be deprived of everything. And at the same time, pets, Su Ping opens his staff to free you from there, the owner of the Tang family. The girl finds herself in his room. She asks what the guy is up to, but to which he replies that the hostess should take off her shoes first, otherwise she will clean up here herself. The girl notices that this place looks like an ordinary bedroom. She notices what must be in the man's house. Also now he is alone and there is no celestial beast nearby. The lady does not feel the master's aura around him, which means he is not prepared for her. All that remains is to take a risk and break out the window to escape. She decides to do so. In her thoughts, as soon as she returns, she will gather the Tang family elite and make Su Ping pay for putting her in jail and provoking her family there. But when she tries to break out the window, she just hits him with her whole body. The girl doesn't understand what these strong windows are and how this is even possible. She says she was locked in for several days without food and couldn't do anything. Su Ping says that of course he thought about how to extract value from it. The girl says that Su Ping is up to something perverted. Su Ping reaches out with his hand to the lady, but she says that she should never let a guy do what he wants. But he just hands her a bag of food. He wants the girl to just eat, to which she begins to get angry and asks if the guy really wants to humiliate her with something like that. After all, everyone is in the Tang family and specially trained. The girl says that she would rather die of hunger. But when Su Ping shows her the food, she can't help herself. The lady says that the guy is dead and he pays for it. But the guy says that he won't pay for anything. And on the contrary, the girl will pay. He hands her a temporary work contract. The next day, a crowd of guys who came to the store notice that there are a lot of pretty employees, as if it were a fashion show. Joanna asks all clients to line up in two queues, one for cultivation and the other for renting sections. The goddess does not understand why she must now endure the looks of these stinking men. The lady does not understand the so-called value of serving these commoners. There is a door right in front of her eyes. This time it is definitely impossible to stop it. Su Ping reminds her not to forget about the contract. Now the girl will not be able to leave the door for a year. She says that while she was in danger, Su Ping forced her to sign it. She tells the guy not to think that this piece of paper can hold her. Well when she leans against the wall. Then she freezes in space because the wall doesn't let her through. And a moment later, with all her strength, she flies away from the doors to the other side of the room. The girl doesn't understand what kind of magical store this is because the windows can't be broken and you can't get out through the door. Su Ping says that, since Joanna arrived earlier, he will give her a couple of points so that she can teach the girl. At this time, behind the doors, two guys with a microphone and cameras are looking for the owner. Su Ping comes out and says it's him. He is asked if he ordered services for filming and posting short video advertisements on the website of the scammers. Su Ping understands that now most of the store's clientele is still made up of old customers who have cultivated celestial beasts of combat power below the sixth stage. And he should let everyone understand that he is now raising beasts of the seventh stage and higher. Su Ping summons his celestial beast, 
and asks reporters to film it. Buyers do not understand what is happening here. They smell the heavy smell of blood. Also feel that the aura of this dragon beast is too terrible. The journalist asks the owner what his slogan is, to which Su Ping replies that he does not have any slogans. The main thing is that they remove the dragon and the name of the store. Su Ping understands that the light-bringing serpent purgatory, which took third place in the dragon rank, is the best sign. High-ranking people who know their business recognize it at first sight. Suddenly, a sister appears here. A guy in the form of a sister asks why she is not in classes. She begins to complain that the technicians are following her, even waiting outside while she is in the restroom. And they have such a strong aura that all her classmates were intimidated and ran away. But in response, Su Ping simply laughs at her. He tells her not to worry, and they won't harm her. Suddenly, Madame Tang family notices that the Snake Heart Elder is here. She is happy because she didn't expect to meet him here. And even though Su Ping defeated Mo Lao, who is ranked eighth in the Tang family, Snake Heart is ranked third. And the weapon hidden in his hand is excellent. And he is capable of killing people hundreds of miles away unseen. The girl turns to the elder and asks if it is him. She also reminds her that her name is Tang Ruin. He recognizes the lady's voice and asks why she is here. After all, the family there has been looking for her for a long time in the secret kingdom. The girl replies that it's a long story. And this villain grabbed her and put her here. She asks to save her as soon as possible. But the elder can't believe her ears. Is she also caught by the owner? The girl notices Su Ping's sly look on herself and is shocked if Elder Snake Heart is also caught. Lady Tang Ruin notices that Su Ping almost discovered her but she doesn't understand what that means. What the snake heart said that the girl is also a hostage about orders the masters from now on to guard only the school outside and try not to disturb the sister. After all, the Su Ping family now has a special training field for the master who can take turns training Xiao Yu there every night. The girl notices that in addition to Elder Snake Heart, there are other elders in the Tang family. She doesn't understand how this happened because they are the title masters in the entire city. The girl doesn't understand. Did they kneel to Su Ping? The system informs the owner that the rating of employee Joanna has increased by one point. Su Ping says that under the supervision of the system, she was not lazy behind his back and actually fulfilled the promise of training the new girl. One employee point exchange for a well-trained temporary worker is really cheap. He remembers the tree he took in another dimension. He asks in the system itself whether this tree grows in the ground as a living organism. The system says that this is a feeding instinct that develops due to the opening of the spirit. And unfortunately, the ability of the star cloud spiritual tree is very low. Su Ping asks what if the tree opened up completely, then would it be possible to use it as a celestial beast? They say that the spiritual tree from the star cloud bears fruit once every decade or even hundreds of years. Real commercialization is still a long way off. And if it can really transform into a heavenly beast like the system said, Combined with self-healing sections, it will be possible to get a wave of harvest every year. Su Ping realizes that after becoming a martial beastmaster, his next step is to become a nurturer. But Su Ping still knows very little about real cultivation. But now he doesn't have time to think about these things. He asks the system to open the panel because he needs to continue to increase his combat power and prestige. He does not want to be famous and can hide at home every day to develop due to the ability of the system at the speed of a snail on mother and sister must have the opportunity to do your own thing. Therefore, he will become so strong that no one in the city will dare to contact him. Tang Ruin notices that the power is back in action. She feels some familiar aura. Su Ping realizes that he is tired of fighting more than a hundred times and is revived, but finally kills the beast. Since the release of the free resurrection period for beginners, this is the coolest thing that has happened to him. After all, the income of the new store is really impressive. The guy decides to take a shower and then continue fighting. But Joanna comes to his room and brings him something to eat. She says that his aunt made soup for him and she pours it into his plate. Su Ping doesn't understand when the girl managed to become so caring. But this doesn't matter to him. After all, he won't be defeated in the store anyway. He won't even be able to be poisoned. The girl asks if the guy just used the power of the law of space to get to the divine border. The guy notices that the girl has good perception. Does she even know where he was? Su Ping says that if there are girls, then let her speak. But the girl replies that next time the guy takes the goddess with him, 
After all, she can use some of her power to help him improve his cultivation. Su Ping understands that the girl is definitely up to something. To which the goddess replies that the owner should not worry, and this time she does not need the employee's rating. But the owner understands that the girl is testing the boundaries of the store, trying out what is allowed and what is not. And in the girl's thoughts, she needs to be vigilant. And even if, if she had thoughts, under the pressure of the system and the contract, she would not be able to make a single outburst. Su Ping says that if the girl goes with him, then suddenly Tang Ruan will do something wrong in the store. But Joanna says that she has already taken care of this because Tang Ruan has been working honestly all day and is very tired. And also, the goddess cast a sleeping spell on her, and even if the apocalypse happens, then the girl will sleep until dawn. Su Ping calls it clean work. At this moment, he takes Joanna by the hand and pulls her with him into another dimension. But the girl didn't expect it to happen now. They arrive at the semi-divine border to the world tree. The goddess notices that this is a world tree, but before she thought that they would end up in a random place. After all, she didn't expect that Su Ping was able to activate such a powerful law of space with just a wave of his hand. But in any case, this person has a way of traveling between planes. But Su Ping tells the girl not to grin because she is not even close to being a good employee. The goddess replies that the guy doesn't even understand that the power of which he possesses means for her people, because purebred gods naturally mature and become real gods, which is approximately on the same level as those ants whose she recently trampled, in other words, the so-called pure-blooded gods. What are the equivalent bloodlines of about the tenth stage of their celestial beasts? And the kingdom is not as complex as human, but with the loss of the supreme divine realm, a long time has passed since no god could reach the supreme god realm. Now for Su Ping, it is not surprising that Joanna was willing to risk signing an employment contract when the top is empty and enemies are constantly invading. Suddenly, they came to meet the goddess. The deity asks who is with the girl, but Joanna replies that this is the dear guest of the goddess and he also needs to be taken away. The deity asks Su Ping and Joanna to hold his hand. The divine man brings the goddess Joanna and Su Ping to a very beautiful and large unknown castle. After they arrive there, Joanna releases the divine man. When they enter the castle, everyone greets her and calls her Your Highness. The goddess asks to prepare a divine source for her. Su Ping doesn't understand what it is. What Su Ping thinks is that the girl seriously wants to wash herself and change clothes before pumping. The girl tells the guy that this divine source can wash away all the impurities in the blood and improve understanding of the ability. Effect. Enhancements when promoted are hundreds of times better than the cultivation section in the store. The goddess says that only the best of them have the right to take the plunge once a year. She says consider the guy lucky. After all, when he finishes dipping, there is a special arena for his pets where they can train their strength. The girl invites Su Ping to make a deal every time he returns her. Then she will allow him to plunge into the divine source. And that's why the guy doesn't understand that the deities don't fight the star Zerg because they have the same goal. That's why Joanna wants to stop Su Ping. Joanna says it's because the goddess can feel the smell of divine wings on his body. But the guy is perplexed because there is nothing strange or surprising in the presence of the smell. But the girl asks the guy if he noticed the giant world tree that they passed. It turns out that this is the mother of divine beings. And when the gods die, their bodies turn into divine energy and return to the tree, and the mother mixes them and makes them even stronger and more powerful. And then he gives birth to each of them, separately. Joanna asks the guy that with his intelligence he should understand what she wants to say. But Su Ping responds by asking what will happen after that. How God was consumed by the star Zerg. After all, the divine power passes to the star Zerg and takes the form of a divine crystal, and as a result, it cannot return to the tree. The girl says that you can say it that way, and the higher the level of their cultivation, the more the amount of divine powers returns after death, and thus. With each cycle, the overall divine power of one's divine realm should increase, but with the invasion of the Zerg, they lost as much divine power as how many victims have they received in addition with the loss of the highest divine kingdom. Not a single god will be able to break through to the realm of the upper god. And their early glorious divine people are now in such a deplorable state. Su Ping hands over to the girl what he has collected all day. 
he tells her that he caught the girl's thought. To put it even more simply, by absorbing their divine crystals, he is no different from the star Zerg. Su Ping says that from now on, he will simply not touch the Zerg. But anyway, the guy's goal is to increase his strength so he can make do with this source. Su Ping summons his celestial beasts. He tells the girl to hurry up and bring them out to the arena to fight and not hold back and train them to death. He also wants Joanna to show them the methods of the gods. Now Su Ping is receiving energy. It's like it's reaching his bones. The girl thanks the guy for his understanding, and if that's all, she leaves first. She also says that the guy can call her into battle at the moment, but he stops her and asks, Does she know something about the fiery Shinya? After all, the blue star does not have this material. The girl says that she knows that this is the core of the divine flame beast Shinya. It is very rare, but if Su Ping wants to get it, then the goddess can send gods to hunt for it. The guy replies that this is all his fighting body needs to. Break through to the second level. He says that this spring water seems to activate the cells of his body by training. Here you can definitely get twice the result by applying half the effort. Joanna leads the animals into the battle arena. For a girl, it's unexpected how Su Ping was able to collect so many divine crystals in half a day. An ordinary true warrior of the gods. He could get that much in at least two or three days without sleep, and he gave it all to her without hesitation. Looks like Su Ping is potentially free labor for the sake of the revival. Their people need to establish good relations with him. Su Ping opens the vault. It seems to him that these divine crystals will have to be put in a more hidden place. They return to their normal world. Su Ping rejoices because the Golden Crow's demonic body has successfully overcome the second level, and his physical strength is now almost at the ninth level. The Demon God's stages and Suppressing Fist also completed the first level and was now equal to the ninth stage master. Su Ping can now quite lay claim to the title, Upper World Level. The owner remembers that Yuan Tianchen was seriously injured in the battle with Joanna. Now he is afraid that Yuan Tianchen has already fallen out of the realm of the vast sea. So the only one? The threat to him in this subcontinent is of a different class. Su Ping asks the goddess to hurry up and wake up Tang Ruan to get ready. After all, yesterday he spent a lot of money on advertising, so the store will be full today, and Su Ping will be busy all day. But when my sister came home from university, she saw her brother sitting at the door of the store, and it was incredibly empty. My sister asks if my brother took a day off today. Su Ping replies, it's clear that he's at work. He asks why Xiao Yu came back. But the girl replies that it doesn't look like work, and today they were simply released from classes early. This evening, they will have a lesson at home with the teacher, the King of Poisons. The couple shows their sister a store that guarantees a place in the top ten of an elite league tournament. It says that the top three purchase the most expenses. In all branches of the store will receive the right to guaranteed delivery. The sister attacks her brother because it is vile to use such tactics to attract clients. They have dozens of outlets around the world and they can attract customers this way. Even if they go bankrupt, they will still make a lot of money. Su Ping starts laughing. He just thought it was cute when his sister acted like a little boss. But the girl just thinks it's unfair. And Su Ping denies this. He thinks it's fair. But what they do is not so simple. The fact that the last winner of the tournament came to support them became the key to attracting customers. Moreover, the majority of clients follow the crowd and on the left believe the authorities. Probably all clients of the city will be swept away by them. But Xiao Yu says that we can't let this happen, to which Su Ping replies that they need a big stir, and they will prepare the tournament championship. Hot Search reports that Xiao Tao Qi guarantees the championship, and Fei Fei Pet Store guarantees a place in the top ten. People are happy because in any case, there are so many people here in the store, and there are only three recommended ones. Also. Many people understand that their turn will not come. To President Liu's office, they don't understand how you can guarantee first place. Should they offer more guaranteed seats to retain customers? The owner of a Feifei pet store named Liu Yuan says they don't need to jump around like clowns if they want to become famous. Then you need to use the manager and get the information about their owner and then make it public. He also says to turn this store and its owner into dust, the more people are offended by them and the greater the indignation, the better. The workers say that the president, like the president, doesn't need a single soldier for this as soon as the store owner loses the end of his shop. 
One of the workers says that the higher you rise, the harder you fall. He tells the president that he is trying to deprive the owner of that store of the opportunity to stay in the city. The elders of the Joe family are discussing that they read on the internet that the owner of the store is getting higher every day and has countless titles and he can crush legendary rank with one finger. At the same time, at the Liu family residence, they are discussing how a guy dares to say such things and who even owns this mischievous guy. The Liu family sergeant major reports that his name is Su Ping and he is a high-ranking teacher at Fengshan University. Otherwise, nothing special. One of the elders reports that he heard about how Yuan Tianchen went to him, and then he was returned back, and he never set foot outside the house. After all, part of the legendary rank was at stake, and all the witnesses got rid of. Mystery What if the King of Poisons had not personally said that she had returned the master? Yuan Tianchen, the foreman himself, would still be in the dark. The master says not to spread information about this and not to get involved with this mischievous person. After all, you need to get to the bottom of it right away. A few days later, the city is still talking about Xiao Tao Qi guaranteeing the championship. A third-year student, Xu Kuang, comes to Su Ping's store. He asks the master if he's joking, but Su Ping looks too serious. Xu Kuang asks who the master will choose then, but the sister begins to arise. Does Su Ping really want to promote one of the client's champions? But Petra replies that this is just a trick to attract traffic, because if there are too many uncertain facts to advertise, then this matter is closely related to the future of Xiao Tao Qi. And you can't miss it. Su Ping says that's why he should choose someone he trusts. Xu Kuang asks whether false advertising will cause backlash. Na Peter asks what if he decides to advertise Xu Kuang while the guy invests money in cultivation more than others. Wouldn't that be enough? to secure a place on the list. Xu Kuang replies that it is easy for him, but Xiao Yu tell her brother that she wants to take first place. She can also withstand any tough workout. She really asks her brother to pump her up, to which the brother replies so that the girl doesn't make him laugh. It's not a very good job to be a guaranteed champion. After all, with the moon dragon of the silver frost star, as long as the girl acts step by step, getting into the top 10 should not be a problem. But Xiao Yu replies that being in the top ten is not enough for her. She wants to become stronger as soon as possible. Xiao Yu says that when she wasn't looking, Su Ping must have gone through a lot of inhuman training to gain the strength he has today. That's why she thinks that. She can never become that strong. But the brother replies that in her first year, she has already become a master of martial beasts, and it is possible to enter the top ten in the elite league already very. Promising result. But the battle for the championship means that the entire city will be against her, not to mention the slithering snakes of the four main families. Also a guy. She says that everyone on the street, even her former friends, will look at Xiao Yu differently. Brother says that moreover, in this tournament she signs up for life or death. The sister replies that she had already thought about her brother's words a long time ago at the moment when she became a master of war beasts. Xiao Yu asks what happened to his brother that day, when he and his mother lost consciousness. After all, she felt the very strong aura of a martial beast master, and the brother silently defended them behind their backs without telling them. Xiao Yu says that she is no longer a child who needs to be spoon-fed, and she will not give this opportunity to anyone else. After all, she also wants to protect the people around her like her brother. Su Ping responds that then it's worth thinking about it. Suddenly they hear some screams. The system detected that someone had maliciously slandered the store, so the owner was given a temporary assignment. We need to restore the store's reputation and kill the criminal. Su Ping is shocked. Is it really the first time he sees such a strong reaction from the system? Some guy in the store shouts that this store ruined his pet. He says that the pet has not only become weaker, but will not live long. In the store, there was already talk among customers because the owner always upgraded his pets very quickly. Perhaps someone made a mistake due to the flow of customers. The guy who made the noise begins to rejoice because people are shouting for their money back. After all, you can't spoil other people's heavenly beasts. The goddess Joanna appears on the floor and demands silence. With her strength, she hits the floor with her foot, and all the people instantly fell off their feet. The guy who made the noise says that they are suppressing people in the store by force, so he will now call the police and their store will be closed. Su Ping comes out into the store lobby and tells Joanna to calm down. He says that he is the owner of this store. 
He asks again what this guy just said. The guy replies that Su Ping should look at it himself. He summons his celestial beast. His animal looks very sick. It is covered in spots and can barely breathe. Su Ping looks at the contract and says that the day before yesterday, a guy named Sul Chu handed over the heavenly beast to them. And yesterday they also took it and saved the guy's signature about accepting the heavenly beast. The owner asks if it is correct that this is his signature. The guy replies that it's him. He starts to get angry and says that they shouldn't try to pull the wool over his ears. Sul Chu says that his fox Aurora began to get sick after returning home. Su Ping tells the guy not to worry and let him check the celestial beast. Performs identification. The system says that the Aurora fox is docile by nature and very easily tamed. It is rare because it has the characteristics of loyalty and protection in the fox family. Su Ping noticed that indeed, according to the guy, combat power has dropped sharply. But the owner notices that the animal does not look sick. It's more like poisoning. Su Ping asks Joanna if she can heal. But the master fox attacks Su Ping. He says that they were in a hospital where there are celestial beasts in the area. And the doctor told him that the mutation was caused by indiscriminate cultivation and use of drugstore. But the goddess Joanna approaches the beast and tells the guy to move out of the way. Now the girl will start treating the beast. She uses all her magical power to help the animal. The girl's strength helped the beast get to its feet. Joanna cured her in just a second. The owner says that they not only cured the beast, but even raised its abilities to a higher level. The owner of the beast says that since they cured him, he will leave the store alone. He also apologizes for offending the store. He takes his beast and is about to leave, but suddenly Su Ping's hand falls on the guy's shoulder. The owner tells Sul Chu not to rush because their store also offers aftercare services, so he asks the guy to come upstairs with him. Su Ping throws this guy into a closed room. He says that the first reaction upon seeing his pet cured is not relaxation, but nervousness. It's obvious that this guy was worried for a reason. The owner, in a stern voice, asks who sent this guy. But the guy is at a loss. He doesn't understand what the owner is talking about. He screams that if they don't let him go immediately, he will call the police. Su Ping lifts the guy and his beast into the air with his strength. He says that it's probably worth adding some bias, and he also asks when the guy is going to loosen his tongue. Su Ping says that if he remembers correctly, it seems that the titular ranks have the right to kill criminals without charges. Su Ping asks in a sly voice, is there really no need to file charges? After all, he didn't try it. Scared guy says Liu family sent him. The owner understands that the Su family is the one behind the Fi Fi pet store. Now he demands an explanation from the guy. The guy says that his heavenly beast was accidentally injured yesterday during competing with others. It would take a huge amount of money to cure him before the elite tournament, and then someone from the Liu family turned to him, and they said they would treat him. Free if the guy puts the blame on Su Ping. The owner asks what the man's name is, but the frightened guy says that he doesn't know because he was wearing a mask and it's impossible. It was clear to see his face. Su Ping asks Joanna if she has a spell that can read thoughts. The girl replies that they gods never use such disgusting methods. Su Ping promises the girl two points. He is afraid that the guy lied to him because he spoke too easily and in detail in his explanations, as if he had thought of everything in advance. And if Fi Fi Pet Store really uses such low tactics, then when the situation changes, they will be the losers. The girl agrees to the owner's conditions. Sol Chu tries to defend himself and orders his beast to use the Aurora Beam, but the girl easily repels the blow and uses Soul Inspection. Nurturing effect. He's definitely great. Get a good rating in the competition. And the money that the guy owes to the Zhou family must be paid with interest. But the guy asks for another one, the month when he will receive prize money for the competition. They tell him to stop talking nonsense. He is given the poison of the ninth stage Black Hell Spider and ordered to lead it to his heavenly beast and frame the Liu family. Then the guy's debt will be canceled. The guy says that he heard that it makes the whole body fester and die from pain, and there is no cure for it. They ask him if this is not just a beast of the sixth stage. If the guy manages to set them up, the Lord will reward him with a pedigree of the eighth stage. Su Ping says that now the guy is no longer a tenant, but he replies that he had no choice, and he asks to let him go. But suddenly, Su Ping is attacked by the fox Aurora. She holds his hand. Xu Kuang at this time says to let the guy go for the sake of the beast. 
After all, from now on he will take good care of it, and without him the beast will die. Su Ping calls Joanna. He promises the girl two more points if she terminates the contract between Xu Kuang and the beast. The girl fulfills the task of her master. She uses her power to break the contract. And when the contract was terminated, Fox Aurora immediately released Su Ping. Now it's starting to go away. Xu Kuang says that Aurora the fox should come back because he is her owner. To which Su Ping replies that Xu Kuang, the fox is no longer worthy to be the owner because he is vile. Xu Kuang asks Su Ping's master not to kill him. But the owner replies that he will not kill him because he does not like to get his hands dirty. And they go to the Zhou family residence. Their guards notice that someone is flying in the sky. They don't believe their eyes. Is this really a title rank? They ask to know the name of the master and what brought him to the Zhou family. To which Su Ping I answer that they should call their clan. After all, the mischievous owner of the pet store came to visit. The security asks Su Ping to stay put. They have already informed the head, so they ask him to wait a little. That he doesn't have much patience. He tells his luminous beast purgatory. And they fly up. They want to fly over the highest fence to get inside the Joe family yard. But it turns out that the stranger will not get there. Because this is the elite army of Joe. And one of the four secret formations of the family codes that subjugate the tiger formation. Formed elite army with eighth stage combat strength. And it can block attacks of the middle ninth stage. But Su Ping is asked, do the guys have hearing problems because he needs their leader? Suddenly, the commander of the elite army Joe family comes out. He calls the guy arrogant and asks if he really wants to see the patriarch. He also says that entry is without. Pre-registration is prohibited, even if the guy is the owner of the title rank. Su Ping starts to get angry. And since the head doesn't want to come out, then the guy will have to knock on the door. He uses the demon god's second strength, suppressing fist. He hits with all his power the shield that is located above the Joe family estate. The army is in shock. They don't understand what kind of fighting style this is, because this is an unusual power of the title rank. The commander orders to use all his strength to fight off the guy, and now death awaits him. The captain says that Su Ping is just a title rank, and it is absolutely impossible to break the formation that subdues the tiger with one movement. They are holding the line, but suddenly the army is not doing well, and they are bleeding. The captain doesn't understand how. This is possible because the power does not weaken. Is this guy really planning to destroy their Joe family? Joe family arrive. These are gentlemen, vice-rectors. They say it's better to die standing than to live on your knees. Masters use the explosive Xuan Wu style, and their shield falls to pieces. But Su Ping's huge star power hand also gets damaged. The captain thanks the vice-rectors for their measures. One of the masters says that the elite army is Zhou, consisting of elite students of the Zhou family. And to join you must be at least at the seventh stage, he asks the army when they became so ineffective. This is the head of the Zhou clan named Zhou Tianlin. He says that the army can't even stop one title master. He had to use a protector close to him. The captain admits that he is to blame from his own weakness. He asks to be given the opportunity to correct his mistakes and catch the stranger. With his animals, he finds himself in the middle of the Zhou family yard. He sees Zhou Tianlin and asks if he is in charge here. Su Ping says that he will get straight to the point because Zhou Tianlin's people were planning to harm his store. One of the chapters is the left projector of the Zhou family. He says that Su Ping is impudent and how dare he even break into their house and speak slander and order their patriarch. The second of the chapters is Zhou Ji. This is the right projector of the Zhou family. He asks if the guy broke in alone and wants to take someone away. In this moment, Joji summons his beast into nightmarish chaos. He says that the guy is going to die, and the elite Zhou army is completely ready for battle. The chiefs order their army to crush Su Ping. But the guy doesn't understand what's the use of these stinking fish and rotten shrimp. Turns to his beast. He asks his frog at the bottom of the well to let him show the beast to use the formation. This is Zhou family's secret information and divine punishment Chin Long. He understands that he did not expect to see a dragon, but he asks the head of Zhou, who assured him that he wants to continue. Hide the criminal. The gap between the forces of the ninth stage is extremely large, comparable to the gap between the first and ninth stages. Zhou Tianlin doesn't understand. After all, the guy standing in the face of death is still so arrogant. He says that now it's too late for the guy to ask for mercy. After all, the lowest ninth degree versus the highest ninth degree. It's like fighting against the third stage. 
Zhou Tianlin says that the guy's strength is at the maximum of the highest ninth stage, and from the divine bark, Qin Long is at the limit of the ninth stage, half a step away from the legendary rank, and it is capable of rivaling Tao Zong. Su Ping orders his luminous serpent purgatory and dark dragon dog to get ready. He wants his animals to put their enemies on their backs and destroy them. The animals go into battle. At this time, the guy Xu Kuang asks for mercy and help. The master does not understand how to attack the maximum ninth stage. Was blocked. They don't understand what kind of abnormal defense this is. Su Ping says it's none of their business. And also the guy says that he is not here to reason with them. Little skeleton using his sword. Zhou Tianlin cannot understand what this skeleton armed with a rotten tooth wants to do, but he's going to slay the dragon. Zhou Tianlin doesn't understand. Is it really a dragon prince? It's bad that this is a rare technique against a dragon type. The master understands that it was in vain to underestimate this seemingly weak and pitiful skeleton. He uses armor melting, but Su Ping notices that the master only remembered about the armor. But it's too late to use this. In this moment, the small skeleton destroys Zhou Tianlin's defense with just one fell swoop and injures him. Zhou Tianguang says they just wanted to lure Xiao Tao Qi to stab the family in the back. But the master of his star power erased the key memories of the video links and so on of those people. He doesn't understand how Su Ping reached them. The guy asks again. He asks to show them people. He asks, are they going to cover them too? Now without power, Zhou Tianlin says that they will show him now. Su Ping waits for the master to bring these people. Zhou Tianlin considered the guy only a killer knife, but this knife is not a weapon, but a real god of death. Half of the elite army was killed, and the Zhou family's huge house was destroyed, and the four titular masters were injured. This loss far exceeded their expected growth. One of the guards reports to the head that they all want to see him here. These guys are asking for mercy, and not to be killed. Zhou Tianlin shows these guys, he calls them sinners and says that it was they who took the responsibility to insult this excellent master. Su Ping takes Xu Kuang. He drops it in front of the captured guys and orders him to check if everything is in place. But Xu Kuang says he doesn't know these guys. The prisoners also say that this is the first time they have seen him. Su Ping wonders, do they really not know each other? But it is obvious that these three appeared in Xu Kuang's memory. Their memories may be tampered with to complete this task. Zhou Ji distributed groups of actions according to task levels and erased the memory of the family person who gave them the task. And it seems their key memories were not restored. This guy was able to go to Zhou family. Therefore, Zhou Ji suggests that some secret treasure was used to inspect Xu Kuang's consciousness and discovering some residual memory fragments. But as far as Zhou Tianlin knows, this kind of secret treasure either consumes a lot of energy or has a strict limit on the number of times it can be used. With one move, Su Ping kill these three guys. The owner addresses the head of Zhou. He says that this is just the tip of the iceberg, and there is no need to try to fool him. He repeats one last time to be given out, to those who planned and carried out all this. The guy who insulted the reputation of the store should wash it away with blood. The master doesn't understand how this guy can be so sure. One of the guards says that in fact another group of people is approaching. They ask Su Ping to be calm. The people they brought are on their knees and crying, asking for mercy on them. After all, they made this terrible mistake and they admit it. Zhou Tianlin says that these are all the participants now. He is handing them over to Su Ping, but the guy understands that it's fair. Those who were not the main culprit do not deserve to die. But besides completing the task of the system, the guy has a more important goal. And this is, first of all, his authority. And so that nothing like this happens again in the future, he cannot be soft-hearted. That's why the guy kills everyone. Now Zhou Tianlin can calm down because after killing people for so many times, he can finally send this god of death away. The system tells the owner that all participants in the event were killed, but the criminal is still at large. Su Ping summons his little skeleton. Now the beast begins to destroy the Tang family estate. Master is perplexed after all. All the people involved in this matter have already been handed over to the guy. Why then Su Ping is still destroying their ancestral home? The master says that this is not justified. Su Ping gets angry and asks if he is acting unreasonably now. But besides the fact that the masters still haven't given the organizer to him, you will have to take your time and find out all the exceptions and details of the problem. 
The championship he will start will be Zhou Tianlin. But the master understands that if they lose the first vice-rector, then their family will lose only one family. But to save the right arm, the whole body will have to be paralyzed. Therefore, Master Zhou Tianlin tells Zhou Ji to go out. Su Ping asks Zhou Ji if he is the organizer. Su Ping also says maybe the master has something to say. Then let him speak, because he wants to hear the reason. Zhou Ji says that because of the insulted small store, the whole family is on the verge of extinction. And he worked for the Zhou family all his life and did everything he could. And if it weren't for Shu Kuang, then it, the perfect plan would never have been revealed. The master says that if he dies, then Shu Kuanga, they will be buried with him. And with one movement of his hand, he pierces the guy's body, piercing his stomach with his hand. But suddenly a small skeleton comes up behind him, and with his sword he cuts the master's body, thereby killing him. Su Ping orders the luminous serpent of purgatory to clean up here. After all, the guy doesn't leave a mess behind. Master Zhou Ji dies in the fire of death. The army sees this horror, and Zhou Qiangguang is glad that he did not take part in this. After all, now he too would die from the fiery knife of a small skeleton. Zhou Qianlin says that from now on the entire street where Xiao Tao Qi is located is prohibited for the Zhou family. And now he shouldn't. Contact this person more. The system notifies the owner that the criminal has been killed and the task is now completed. After hitting the little skeleton, Xu Kuang and Zhou Jia left only an empty space or footprints on the floor. Zhou Tianlin is called Su Ping Master and says that everyone who is involved, to the stain on his store's reputation, Su Ping is now loyal. But the guy says that this is not the end because he is only after the villains, but the negative impact that they did not have will still remain. He says that the Zhou family should publish a notice in the city admitting their actions and clearing his name. In addition, his lost wages for the entire morning should also to be compensated. Zhou Tianlin explodes with anger inside, but he says that the old man is doing a great job announcing the apology. And this gossip on the internet is rumored to be the owner. A pet store that holds the legendary rank and tramples title ranks is not a rumor but a fact. As for compensation, Zhou Tianlin wants to know what the Su Ping family is missing. The guy says that he only needs one set of heavenly treasures to train martial beast masters, a set of the master class they taught the young master. Zhou Tianlin is at a loss because the young master is the first legacy of the family, and to raise the young master to a level that will surpass the level of the previous patriarch is considered that these are the best resources available to their family. Zhou Tianlin starts to get angry. Is Su Ping planning to turn their family into pigs? After all, by transferring these resources, their family will never become stronger. Su Ping says that you can say so, but there is still one thing that Zhou Tianlin may have overlooked. This is that even if she is a pig, the guy is sure that he can raise her to the level of the head of the clan. The army begins to get angry, because they don't understand how the guy even dares to compare their patriarch to a pig. After all, a soldier can be killed, but you can't humiliate. And if Su Ping wants to fight, then they will fight. Zhou Tianlin orders his army to be silent. He says to the army, have they forgotten that this man's skeleton has a strange appearance and deadly power? After all, he was originally a celestial beast with a first stage bloodline and demonstrated the aura and power of the king of beasts. Another couple said that they could raise a pig to the ninth stage. Therefore, now the master is afraid that this may not be a metaphor. Su Ping says, Zhou Tianlin is really worthy. Be the head of the clan. And also, if Zhou Tianlin cooperates with him, he can raise super strong animals for him and provide him with rare pet food at a price much lower than the market price. The guy also says that in order to challenge the four other families in this war, a good armed army is needed, and Su Ping is just a merchant. Weapons that can arm them with a nuclear warhead. Zhou Tianlin doesn't believe what he hears. Is this guy targeting the four major families? But the guy suggests taking a broader look at the situation. After all, this entire base city will become his store. The next day, a crowd of visitors discusses that it turned out to be the work of the Zhou family. They also heard that Boss Su Ping, in a fit of rage, came to the Zhou family and divided. Their residence is divided into four parts. It turned out that this was the work of evil tongues. Visitors say that Boss Su Ping does not play games, but he plays for real. The store system notifies that the store's reputation has been restored. And one book. Legendary beast skills acquired. Su Ping wants to open this book. He opens it and cannot understand what is in front of him. 
This is the skill of the legendary Celestial Beast on the Beast's soul bed. It gives the Celestial Beast the ability to merge with its owner for a short time. And after the merger, the owner receives all the power of the pet with each merger, and the owner temporarily receives one of the pet's skills that is twice as effective as the original. Su Ping doesn't believe what he sees after all. An ability that can only be possessed by legendary martial beast masters can really be learned directly by celestial beasts. Su Ping realizes that this is a terrifying skill book. He thinks about which pet to give it to. He can give it to the tonic snake of purgatory, and then the owner will become a dragon warrior. He understands that breathing a tribe and flying with dragon wings is pretty cool. But the owner is already accustomed to using spirit control, and choosing a dragon would be too banal. He wonders what about the dark dragon dog. He would be pleased to be able to see. Souls a hundred miles away, but for him, a dog warrior sounds too crazy. And of course, those who are worthy of this book of skills. There must be a little skeleton, he summons his celestial beast. The little beast begins to look for enemies in Su Ping's room to protect its owner. To Su Ping, I answer that this time he did not call him to kill people, but for something very important. He gives the book to the heavenly beast. The joyful beast cannot believe this is really happening to him. The owner replies that this is not a mistake, and the beast, you need to eat quickly because it is very tasty. Little Skeleton used the skill book. The system says that the Little Skeleton is a divine emperor, and the master united, and now the blood of the king's bloodline is already flowing in the body, and all the dead will fall in obedience. The owner rejoices that the combat power of his heavenly beast increased by half, after the small skull was completely absorbed by the bloodstone, its appearance became like this, and the combat power jumped to ten. Since then, the little skeleton could not improve his combat power in normal battles, and the little skeleton with ten and points of combat power is comparable to the dragon beast. He eventually won by relying on constant resurrection, and his combat power increased to ten and a half. And after entering the semi-divine border after many battles, with star demons. And with Joanna's help, he made it to eleven. This is unexpected for the owner. After all, this skill can directly increase the combat power of the beast, which is so difficult to improve. The owner is happy that the turmoil in the store has finally come to an end. He says he wants to take two fifth-stage novices to the desert areas for training. After all, the time has come to solve the problems with the championship. The rack who talks to the boss. So suddenly there was a person who has perfectly mastered the art of the sword, killing countless ninth-stage beasts with just his own strength. The first person standing at the limit of the title rank since the legendary Tao Zong. The master turns to the owner of Su Ping. He says that he hasn't seen his store for several days and doesn't recognize him at all, and come out if Su Ping contacted him, which means he is ready to learn the art of the sword. Su Ping asks the master which location he prefers. Tao Zong says that his art is very dangerous. Therefore, it is better to have a wide space and preferably with mountains and seas. Tao Zong doesn't understand how this hologram can be so realistic, because he can even smell the sea and nature. The owner says that this is a little trick not worth mentioning. Also, Tao Zong can confidently use this test field, and even if it is, if damaged, it will be restored immediately. Tao Zong says that in the past, Many people wanted to learn his ball skills. Either the basics were missing, or the understanding was too low. Therefore, Su Ping's master should be able to handle it. The master asks the guy to find his sword. Su Ping says he's starting. He summons a small celestial beast, and the master doesn't understand. Is it really possible that the one he should teach the art of the sword is a small skeleton? Su Ping says that he will be away for a while, and will not be able to cultivate. It's so that Tao Zong will guide the beast during his absence. It's certainly not that simple. Su Ping takes out the spiritual tree fruit. It can directly increase the star power level of a martial beast master below the ninth stage by one level. Even though Tao Zong is a ninth stage, it will be difficult for him to break through to the legendary rank. But it is quite enough to reduce the training time by one or two years. Moreover, this thing is too expensive for a martial beast master. Therefore, it has already become priceless. And without the necessary, a person cannot buy this connection even for hundreds of millions. Tao Zong tells the owner that this is not a question of money. And if he doesn't have basic skills of at least the ninth level, then he can master his blade of stars. On Tao Zong, he is afraid that the beast will not even notice him. The little beast suddenly flies up and uses supreme sword art. 
asks what he thinks. Senior Tao Zong, does the little skeleton have enough base? Tao Zong says that above sword art is a seventh stage pet skill, and he can already add 60% of its own strength. To its basic attack, what is on the threshold of the sword art? A small skeleton with this one blade technique already has the power to destroy the world. The unique thing is that the Tao Zong technique can add 120% of the power to the base attack. He can imagine how strong this little skeleton will be if he... He can learn this. Tao Zong wants to do everything possible to teach this little beast how to use a sword. And if he can't teach him today, then don't eat. Su Ping says that it would be a pity not to preserve such rare promotional material. And he tells Tang Ruan to take a photo. Their heroic pose when they train with swords. Also for her to make a poster out of it and hang it in the store. Su Ping comes to see his sister and assistant. Now, he will take them to desert areas. After all, all the household chores were settled. They get into the war machine. The assistant says that his sister told her about such a car that ordinary people won't be able to buy. At least a silver rank holder has the right to buy it. On it through a deserted area. Su Ping says that he asked a friend to provide suitable terrain for them. But he didn't expect him to be so caring. What even prepared? Su Ping will take the car and all the IDs to the warehouse of the explorer's base to then pick up a set of combat armor. The sister says that she read on the internet that her brother has... There was some kind of skirmish. The brother replies that he is completely fine. It is the influence of the Zhou family in the city that incited him to attack another influential Liu family wanting to make a profit. But now, the guy has achieved justice by killing their senior management involved in this along with their subordinates. The assistant can't believe what he hears. After all, Zhou family, one of the most prestigious families in their city, sister asks. Is it really because of her championship? But the brother replies that for every strong person, there is an even stronger one. The growth of their family. It will inevitably lead to a clash with the old forces, so it's not my sister's fault, and let her not take it to heart. Just selfishly, Su Ping didn't want to involve his sister. The assistant asks, Did the master originally plan to take first place? Su Ping replies that he is the owner of the store, and he has no need to become a champion. That's why he chose them. Additionally, the biggest advantage of being a champion is that they can receive guidance from the legendary Beastmaster. A guy and a girl are watching a long-range devil hound. Combat power which is equal to the lowest seventh stage. Heavenly Beast Xiao Yu using Dark Flame to fight the huge, a dangerous beast. But this monster suddenly releases huge demonic games from your body. But when these needles hit the celestial beast, the monster realizes that this is not a beast. Just an illusion. Now the monster is grabbed by the leg from behind by a huge monster with a cross on his back. Xiao Yu commands the phantom fire beast to use fire whirlwind now. A huge beast begins to run towards the girl. Su Ping shouts for her sister to be careful because the beast is running towards her. The girl summons her celestial beast. She realizes that they have just seriously injured the monster, and they only have a little left. She commands her beast to block the monster's next attack. She summons the moon dragon using the enhancement of the powers of the fourth stage. The beast also uses moon claws. Heavenly beasts fight a huge monster in an instant using their moon claws. The moon dragon cuts off the enemy's head. The guy and the girl are rejoicing that the enemy is finally defeated. But unexpectedly, Xiao Yu doesn't notice that someone is approaching from behind. At the last moment, they use the star shield. It was a young-headed python and its supreme ninth stage combat power. It looks like the girl was wounded. The guy orders his soul eater to use the covering miasma. The girl thanks her friend. But it looks like this beast had poison. Anyway, the guy saved her life. And the master of restoration and the king of poisons taught her a high-level method of healing and detoxification. This is a small previously needed incentive. Then it can be easily cured. The guy says that little sister is incredibly cool. But Xiao Yu orders the guy not to call her sister anymore. The heroes notice that this beast called his relatives. The miasma has not yet dissipated, and the monsters have not yet found them, so the advantage is on their side. Su Ping tells them to hold their breath and let the swamp crawler team up with his phantom fire beast to crush the monsters. Before, the owner thought that her sister would beg in tears to return, but Video Brother underestimated her. At a closer distance, in terms of the nature of talent or ability to work in a team, Xiao Yu is not inferior to some so-called young masters. The owner understands 
that if the sister can really take advantage of the chance to win the elites and the tournament, she will not have to worry about her safety every day. Now all that remains is to wait until the heroes are trained for the title rank, and then Su Ping will be able to leave them to look after the house and quietly go about business. Su Ping says that's all for today and the heroes can rest, but they say that they feel how their energy is beating over the edge and they are not tired and want to kill several more animals. They had never enjoyed a battle so much. The sister says that she is saving money to upgrade her moon dragon and get on the list of best buyers. The head of an unknown animal was successfully entered into the database of explorers at the counting point. Passes from number nine and comes forward because his merits have been counted. He asks how many merits he got. The number of registered is one person and only 1,280 points. The guy doesn't understand why it's so few. He killed so many animals. I answer him that you evaluate merit for hunting. Animals of the first stage are worth 10 points of merit, and the second is 50 points. The third is 100 points, and the fourth 1,000 points. The fifth 10,000 points. The sixth and 100,000 points. And the seventh 500,000 points. The tallest animal he has ever hunted. A was identified as a fourth stage beast, but if you return alive from a solo expedition, then it goes better than many people. They tell him to keep it up. The next group of night wolves passes. The number of registered is 64. Their merits are counted. Just 1,500,000 points. The guy doesn't understand. Why do they have more than a million merits? Because this is the hunting volume of a group of explorers. Workers ask the group how they want to distribute merits. They answer that the first team, the second team receives 100,000 each, 20,000. And the interns cost 5,000 for each guy he doesn't understand. He hunted alone in desert areas, and he received a pitiful thousand of merit after such hard work. And what kind of trainees get five thousand each? He understands that he doesn't need a solo hunt now, and he... The following number of registered people must join the group. Three people. They deserve only two million two hundred thousand points. Everyone around them just shocked. Can they really earn more than two million merits divided between three people? That is... Each person can receive from 700,000 to 800,000. They are asked how they want to share the credit. Su Ping replies that they should divide between these two, but he won't take it. The team asks how they plan to distribute the points among the half. The assistant tells the master that let Xiao Yu take a little more. After all, she saved him several times. The girl replies that she was just doing her job, so divide. We need half for each person. A group of people who are being counted begin to get angry. They do not agree why they have so little merit. And this team compared to them, this hunt brought millions of merit. But why do they only get 5,000 points? They are answered that this is unfair. The girl is asked if she is ready to work several days in a row for a few thousands of merits. Because even if she uses this amount of merits to buy secret treasures and storage, she won't even be able to convert. They are in star currency to buy cultivation services. Suddenly, one guy shouts at everyone to shut up because these newbies don't understand the rules. He asks why they should be grateful that they are even paid for the internship. The girl replies that it's good that this tale at least kept up with the pause. But the interns are indignant because they are students and perhaps did not understand some things, thereby causing the team a little trouble. But none of them. Moreover, it was not fatal in the battle with the fire dragon elephant of the eighth stage if it were not for the thunder mouse of the eldest in the group. And Sister Su Ping did not leave other animals. They would have killed him and come out unharmed. The rest are starting to get outraged. After all, they also killed several beasts of the fifth and sixth stages and received only 5,000. They say they want to take credit that originally belonged to them. Brother says, Sister, don't rush to draw conclusions, and it's better to just listen, the senior team says so that newcomers do not think that killing several ferocious animals is a big deal. The point they ask is whether they will not naturally receive what they deserve. But the senior team replies that when it comes to killing wild animals was a very useful experience for them, and they were able to receive a lot of merit, but they must not forget that. How exactly did they return? After all, reconnaissance, treatment command, and logistics are something that the trainees did not take upon themselves. And since they decided to join the team, Naturally, they risk it for them, and they will even be an intern. Compensation is paid for any injury they suffer. But this also means that they are no longer left to their own devices for every profit they earn. Distributed among them accordingly, who contribute?
If trainees are dissatisfied with their current income, they can go and learn. The wasteland itself will tell them the value of each thing. Su Ping understands that his sister is a brave girl who hates injustice. This is not bad, but it is easy to fall before gaining strength, so now is a good time to wean her temper in empty areas. Su Ping starts to leave and asks why his sister froze, because the road she has to go through is a hundred times harder than theirs. He offers to exchange merit points for currency and return to the store to upgrade because there is a month left and every week. He will drag them into desert areas to earn some money. It is up to them whether they can reach the top of the buyer's team rankings. They return to the store. They take the necessary things to pump up their level and go to fight to increase their strength. Su Ping says that tomorrow is the opening day of the tournament, and today the buyer rating has suspended its work and is guaranteed. The winner is confirmed. The mischievous guy is finally ready to name the captain Fai Fai Pet Store rejoices. That the mischievous guy is finally ready to name his name. He wants the name of this person to spread throughout the base, the city during the day, and if the Flabby Joe family could not defeat him there, do not think that the four main families will be able to do it. Joe family see. That the person who is going to fight with them is just a young animal and defeating him is a piece of cake. Joe family assistants ask the head that if during the tournament they meet this person, then nothing will happen to him if he kills her right away. The long-awaited Longjiang Base City Elite Global Elite League tournament and preliminary rounds are declared open. Spectators rejoice. They can no longer wait that everything will begin soon. They came to see the rivers of blood in full. Many who have already felt the enthusiasm of this tournament without further ado. The host says that let the participants show themselves due to the large number of participants. The presented rounds will be divided into 30 arenas, which will be held simultaneously. The first participant is Martial Beastmaster Xiao Yu, and the number of participants in this tournament is 1,000 people. The gate is closed, and the arena's energy shield and force field are activated for this round's selection. The swarms round. The participants are scared of the insects. These are wild phantom bees of the fifth stage. The presenter says that the rules of the qualifying round are to survive the phantom bees. And the stings, which are enough to injure them, the entire time limit is six hours. But to last six hours against so many phantom bees is almost... It's unrealistic that most of the participants run away from the competition. They say that this is not a competition, but a knockout game. They don't want to compete. They are not surprised why they had to sign the individual responsibility agreement. The presenter asks all participants to call on their pets. The vice chancellor of Dunn University says that this tournament is much more difficult than the previous ones. But this level should be an easy game for the guy from Chen Shan and the vice rector of Chen Shan University. In the name of Zhou Yuncheng, he says that the Ye Hao member who was carefully prepared is not too far behind. The vice chancellor says that the younger sister of teacher Su Ping is the focus of today's competition. Vice rector Zhou Yunchang greets teacher Su Ping. He says that after the last exchange match, his heroic behavior haunts the hearts of all Chen Shan disciples, and their admiration for Su Ping is like a raging river, endless. The vice rector wants to ask the guy if he would like to become a gold rank teacher at their university. They will pay him five times more. Then Feng Shan vice chancellors begin to quarrel because the university vice chancellor Chen Shan is stealing people right in front of the vice chancellor Dun. To which vice rector Zhou Yunchang asks that isn't it useless for them to have a master of such a level that they cannot afford? Vice principal Dun tells them not to poach the guy because he was just about to propose to teacher Su Ping. At this time, Su Ping says that he has been a little busy lately, so he has not been teaching, and he also used his connections at the university. In order to get materials for training, probably his teacher rating is nowhere lower. Vice Rector Dunn replies that while he is here, no one will dare to lower the owner's rating. The Vice Chancellor says that he heard that Su Ping alone suppressed the entire Zhou family, and with his strength, even if he does not teach, it will still be a huge advantage for them in Feng Shan. In addition, many students who visited Su Ping's store reported that their heavenly beasts became much better, and thanks to his store, it became much easier for their teachers to achieve. The vice chancellor plans to appoint Su Ping as the director of their improvement department. Although this is a new department, half of the resources at the university will be its location. Dunn says that the guy can no longer teach, and he only needs to take on the job of raising celestial beasts for the entire university. The guy says that he doesn't want to listen to anything other than the tournament, so he agrees to talk later.
Vice Rector Zhou Yun Chang is angry after all. This damn old fox to win over. Su Ping did not hesitate to give up half of the university's rights and lack of teaching morals. If Zhou Yun Chang had known about this before, he would have offered it to Su Ping first. The host asks if the players are ready. After all, everyone who leaves the field or is unable to move will. Removed from the field by nice staff, and by the way, anyone who damages the grass flowers will also be disqualified from the tournament. When the tournament begins, the paralyzing twisted needle goes into battle. The host says that unexpectedly many drop out, because this tournament looks really exciting and another unlucky participant becomes Roy's target, but the girl jumps and dodges the blows. The presenter says that this nimble movement of the participant is too beautiful. These bees are not controlled by the martial beast master, but the girl does not understand that if this is a colony of wild bees, then why were the grass flowers not attacked? Perhaps it is a coincidence that the presenter comments that on the other side of the field a guy is fighting against bees, he crushes them with force. The guy is trying to kill all these phantom bees and then everything will be over. The presenter says that the participant still has not shown his celestial beast and is relying solely on, with his well-honed tactics, he was able to kill several phantom bees of the fifth stage. This is a way to hide his strength and a way to show it, but it turns out that this participant chose the wrong way to solve the problem and it has been eliminated because transparent butterflies reproduce very quickly and the leaders have a very large supply of these butterflies. Therefore, even if the participants are strong, they should not take them lightly. Xiao Yu understands that most of the participants are at the fourth stage and only some of them have reached the fifth stage and there are only a few people at the sixth stage. But even if there was a seventh stage master, he would not be able to Withstand such an intense attack for six hours, not to mention that the swarm cannot be reduced by force, the girl understands that the test of this round is not combat strength, but something else. The participants notice that this is a little girl who wants to compete for the championship with the young masters. They think that she is impudent and decide to show her who is stronger. This is the younger generation of the Tang family. The girl tries to lure the bees towards the grass flowers, and of course they were not perceived by the swarm as enemies, and were simply ignored such a precise identification of the girl's enemy, only two options come to mind. The first is that control of celestial beasts at a distance. The second thing is that on the body of the wood flower there is some kind of secret treasure that can repel insects. If this is the first option, then she should be able to feel the supreme being using his star power but so far she hasn't found anything, and if this is the second option, then this can be associated with the rule not to harm herbal flowers. But suddenly the guys release their blades towards the girl. These are unique hidden weapons, the scorpion silver needle sting and the twisty dragon heart wound. It is said that these three unique weapons are so poisonous that one of them is enough to kill a person below the sixth stage. The girl notices this, but she was taught a unique skill to give such attacks. She uses grafting and directs these hidden weapons towards the guys who attacked her. They don't understand how the girl could repel the attack. The judge comments that the three special contestants were stung by a swarm of bees. The presenter says that it's a pity that the guys lost in the preliminary round. Xiao Yu understands that somewhere in the arena there must be other treasures that repel insects, and if she finds them, she will be able to pass the arena. The guy orders his fire frog to use a firewall to protect himself from the outside. The wall of fire is too dangerous. Other participants ask the guy to let them inside. But the guy asks, are they really taking him for a fool? After all, this round is not elimination. And even if what saves them is that if they throw him out, the guys promise that they won't stab him in the back. They only ask for help. And after this round, they even promise to pay. The guy understands that fortunately he always stuck to the boss's training. Su Ping, otherwise, he would have ended up in the same situation as them. The girl notices that the entire arena was scanned, and no secret treasures from insects were found. She doesn't know if they could be hidden among the bees. She also thinks that if they are hidden inside the phantom bees, then with the help of star power, she will be able to sense them. It is she who uses star power and understands that one of them must be especially heavy. She found this bee. She uses the efforts of the forces and speed of the fifth stage. She catches her and tears off her wings. She understands that this is exactly what she needs. The presenter says that unexpectedly, in one hour, 
Someone was the first to find the correct way to complete the round. The rest of the participants do not understand how this even happened. The presenters congratulate the participant. With victory in the first round, the rest of the participants now understand what's going on. They killed so many insects and broke several hidden treasure rings, but nothing happened. Projector Dunn says that fortunately, there was no danger. But he began to think that Feng Shan was about to lose another star. Xiao Yu has such skillful technique that she was able to fight off those weapons. Teacher Zhou Yunchang asks Su Ping where Xiao Yu learned this from, but the guy replies that there is nothing special about it. He says that the elder of the Tang family who is in the step-level pair of the patriarch taught her. The host comments that several participants followed Xiao Yu's example, and they received promotion qualifications in this round. Tags were discovered, the rest of the participants should, continuing in the same spirit. The walker says that players who have already moved forward can leave the field to rest. He also warns them to be vaccinated for the next round in three days. Xiao Yu is glad that fortunately she discovered this earlier, otherwise the people on the field could simply die and everyone could lose their qualifications. The girl decides to return home and calm her mother down. The strange guy behind the girl says that when the trash family there got out of the way, it was his turn to act, use the demonic claw, and point it at the girl. Xiao Yu notices this and understands that the secret technique of the Mu family can infuriate the low-ranking beasts around them. This is a bloody mark due to which animals attack the marked target. This skill, so heavy that half the load has to be shared with the celestial beast. The guy asks how the girl knows this. The presenter comments that the role on the field seems to be controlled by one of the participants. They all immediately rushed to participant Xiao Yu. The audience shouts that this is not fair. It is very obvious that she intends to be attacked. They also say leaving a bad review in this guy's popularity rating. The presenter says that although there is no direct rule against attacking other areas of the participants, but they can only morally condemn him. But the participant asks which of this is dishonest, and who said that the noble cannot become food. The winner is the king. Now the guy doesn't believe that she can survive. The guy said that the champion of this tournament is none other than him. But member Xiao Yu finally opened the summoning rift. The Mu family member managed to push out the battle pet of the member Xiao Yu, but Xiao Yu was surrounded. The girl summons a fire exit. The presenter comments that it's unexpected. This turned out to be the strongest skill of the 8th stage fire type long range pet A. The heavenly beast that used this high ranking phantom fire beast. And the phantom fire beast has a 3rd stage pedigree. He is truly the best of the best in mastering such a powerful skill. A member from the Mu family says that she had such a powerful fighting beast up her sleeve that it is not surprising that nothing is known about it. But there are endless phantom bees on the field. He says that we'll see how long the girl can hold out with this extremely energy consuming. He used the demonic claw as an eighth stage skill, but the unexpected guy is confused by the snakes. He doesn't understand where they came from. The guy can't get them out of himself and he can't even move his body. The girl says that the blood brand has one drawback when the heavenly beast helps the owner to share mental stress, vigilance will decrease, and then it will be very easy to get close to him. But suddenly the girl gives a mark to this guy, and the entire swarm of bees flies towards him. She says that she will personally kill as her brother taught her. The younger generation of one family was eliminated. Viewers say that this is too cruel a method. The guy reads the reviews of the mischievous store. It seems to him that the shadows, Verified data on the internet, which is full of water, turned out to be true. The vice principals say that this is very great and congratulate Principal Su Ping and his sister on their successful promotion. But suddenly they notice that the guy disappears. After the competition, the girl goes to the base. Some strange things are happening there now. People broke in and killed many of the base employees. One of the killers asks how the girl dared to compete with the four main families for the championship in the elite tournament. He asks the boss what he will order to do with the girl. The captain replies that according to the buyer's plan, her arms and legs should be abolished. But judging by the photo, this girl is quite cute. Therefore, first they decide properly. Frolic with her. After all, it's been a long time since they came across such young girls. This is a squad of black dogs whose combat power is of the eighth stage, notorious for its fame in desert areas because they often did dirty work for four families. They were hidden and no one dared to arrest them. They decide that their older brother liked it, so when the older brother gets tired of playing, he will give it to the other brothers. They hear sounds. After a few steps, they decide to get ready and run up to the girl from behind and grab her. When the girl realizes that she is being followed and wants to grab her, 
She uses the power enhancement of the fifth stage, looking around. She sees Su Ping standing in front of her. He says that her sister has a good reaction. The sister asks her brother not to test her reaction anymore because someday he may not have time and will remain crippled. The brother replies that this is her talent and he came to take her home. But the guy, it goes in an unclear direction because the parking is in a completely different direction. But the guy says that he had just been there and it was very dirty. After a while, this dirty group comes out. From the room in which they were waiting for the girl, they see a small skeleton. Su Ping tells his sister that he asked someone to clean up there so they won't go there. The little skeleton killed all the enemies, and with a sword, when leaving the competition arena, they meet Tao Zong. The owner asks, does the master of the pet also need nurturing? But Tao Zong says that he came to find out if the little skeleton is free, but if he's busy, it's okay. Su Ping does not understand what happened between the little skeleton and Tao Zong during the month he was away. But the guy doesn't care, as long as his beast becomes stronger. So he entrusts Tao Zong and takes care of his pet. When Su Ping and her sister come to the store, they see three huge boxes. The owner asks Joanna what they are. She says that there were several ants who called themselves Joe Family sent this. She also says that more than a hundred orders for care services have been placed for high-end celestial beasts. And these people also left a message for Su Ping. There they ask to use these secret treasures that the young master trained. And they hope that Mr. Su Ping will turn a blind eye to their shortcomings and the Zhou family will, at his disposal in the future. Joanna says that she checked with her divine. There are no traps or poisons inside the eye and inside, but there is only rubbish in there, she says, that those ants who call themselves from the Zhou family dare to insult the owner by giving all kinds of garbage. The girl asks if the goddess needs to kill them, but when Su Ping opens the box, he almost goes blind. The sister notices that there are a lot of high-quality treasures there and asks her brother what he plans to do with it. Su Ping replies that, of course, this is for her training. He tells the girl to take advantage of the three-day rest and quickly absorb these secret treasures. But the girl says that she only saw these secret treasures once in a book and she doesn't know how to use them. Tang Ruin says that these treasures are too high level for the sister and if she forcibly absorbs them, her body will explode and she will die and there is no common sense in this. Su Ping understands that Tang Ruan is also the young mistress of one of the four major families, and these secret treasures must be very rare, so the owner calls Tang Ruan to his place and says that they need to talk. The girls begin training. Tang Ruan helps the owner's sister increase her strength. Tang Ruan says that since Xiao Yu is constantly moving so that she does not fall off on her own during cultivation, Tang Ruan will have to tie the girl's hands, so Xiao Yu must be patient. She tells the girl to focus on her body. Xiao Yu doesn't understand what's going on an hour ago. Have Tang Ruin tell you how to use these treasure data Well, Tang Ruin asks. What good is it to her? She asks if the owner will let her go. Su Ping replies that he may be let go, but he will still soon take Tang family under their wing and they won't have to wait long so there's no need to worry. He tells the girl to start quickly. Xiao Yu says that brother is becoming more and more like a villain. Tang Ruin asks Su Ping if the good-for-nothing title master is going to take over their family for his information. The family there is a large family spanning several base cities in one base city. Only one branch of their many branches keeps up. With the other three main families and since they are discussing the origin of her Tang family, then they should start with their long history in one of the days of the second year. The reign of the king in the house of their ancestors is an unlucky player. Su Ping asks the system when they recruited. Joanna, the system said that the contract is limited only to heavenly doors since it can be used on gods. Su Ping asks if it is effective. It's on ordinary people. The system says that, however, all creatures are pets and when using a temporary contract with its knowledge and power remain the same. But the ability to think is reduced to the level of a heavenly beast. The same rank the effect lasts until the end of cultivation application. It is recommended to use it against someone weaker than the owner. Otherwise, it may fail or be used on the owner as it was last time. The girl will not. Understands what Su Ping wants to do. The owner says that he wants to make a deal with Tang Ruan. He grabs her hands and says that they were able to agree. Therefore, you will have to resort to tricks. The girl says that the guy is behind her. If something happens to her, then the girl doesn't have time to finish when the guy touches her forehead with his finger and concludes a temporary contract, which is signed successfully. Tang Ruin doesn't understand what the owner did to her. The owner replies that a nothing like that, and now he asks what Tang Ruin feels for him. 
The girl doesn't understand what Su Ping is talking about. She understands that something is wrong because the man in front of her is clearly her enemy. But she wants to tear him into pieces and kill him. But for some reason she suddenly feels his breath, his words, and everything he, he does like heaven and you can't obey him. The girl falls to her knees from such force. She asks how you will now be given the owner's orders. Xiao Yu doesn't understand how Tang Ruan suddenly became different. As a man, Su Ping tells the girl to stand up because he still likes her non-submissive appearance. Tang Ruan says to quickly post it because the mistress doesn't have time to mess with him. Xiao Yu doesn't notice that Tang Ruan has changed again, asks the girl to explain how to use these secret treasures in these three days. He must prepare his sister. Tang Ruan replies that three days is very little. Although there are many secret treasures that can be roughly divided into three aspects that enhance herbs for the body and combat skills, for mastery and spiritual stones for star power, only the first stage of enhancing herbs requires at least three months. And if his body is not suitable, then the person dies from a ruptured liver, or his body ruptures during subsequent training. Su Ping understands that a three-person bath is needed. The guy understands that since the contract with the beast was signed, he will not be able to transfer it to the zone. Cultivation One day in the cultivation zone is equal to one hour in the real world, and in three days of the off-season you can train as many as 72 days in it. This is enough to complete the first stage. And the brother asks his sister to close her eyes. Xiao Yu doesn't understand what his brother is planning and tells the girls to be obedient. After all, brother won't harm her. He says that her brother will take her to a good place and tells her sister to be obedient and close her eyes. He signs a temporary agreement. Now the girl is dying because she is too ticklish. And although it is slower than expected, after each round there will be, after a few days of weekend collecting them together, she will be able to absorb all the secret treasures before the finale. Tang Ruan asks Xiao Yu to calm down because she is doing this to cleanse her meridians and improve her physique. Su Ping tell your sister not to be distracted. And during this period of time, you should obediently soak in the medicinal baths and do a good workout. He asks if this is not much more convenient than fighting in desert areas, because many people would like to be in her place. But the sister begs her brother to go. It's very ticklish for her to go to a deserted city. They report to the head that four dogs were attacked in the family. They ask what is the result of this. The guy answers that the whole group was destroyed. And Xiao Yu's goal is safe and sound. The head doesn't understand how the whole group was destroyed. He asks who killed the black dogs and it couldn't be the girl herself. The guy says that this cannot yet be somehow confirmed by the cameras and other data was destroyed by the black dogs. The head asks what happened to the bodies. After all, they can always determine from what weapons or equipment the enemy used earlier. The guy apologizes. After all, no corpses were found at the scene of the incident. People, black dogs, as if they were in the juicer. All that was left of them was a bloody place. Head. They don't believe their ears. How can you kill an entire squad of forces that are at the eighth stage and higher, leaving only a puddle of blood? They are afraid that all the titular masters, unable to help, and if it doesn't work out outside the field, there is talk of a girl on the field itself. The main thing is that they decide not to miss Xiao Yu in the finals because she only interferes with the young master. The army arrives to the leaders and elders. They ask what orders will be given to them. And the head gives them a fiery crystal serpent of purgatory in addition to two treasures of the seventh stage. This will help them win in the second round of the tournament. Crystal change the efforts that occupy the top 15. And the guys thank the head and promise that the task will be completed. The head asks to bow with life that the task will be completed. The Tang family says that the girl must be beheaded in the tournament and blood will become an indicator of the honor of their family. The presenter announces that the participants who have passed the preliminary round have already rested for three days and a close combat tournament for five players. The preliminary round will begin soon and the speed and observation skills of the participants will be tested. And this tournament will test the combat equipment of the participants' ability to assess the situation. A close combat tournament for five players is held in a limited ring and each participant is allowed to take up to two secret treasures. Those who give up will lose consciousness or fall from rank will be knocked out of the game and only one of the five participants passes on. It is worth adding that there is destruction, so participants are asked to think twice. Before using the technique of mass destruction, 
The list of fights for each arena was announced in advance. The presenter asks to go to the waiting area and line up in order. The close combat tournament is declared officially open, and the professor says that this year all the participants are very good, and it will be interesting to see what comes of it. They also say that people from the Starry Sky have come to their city. Vice Rector Dunn asks, is the Starry Sky organization really the most powerful organization in the subcontinent? The professor had heard that its original founder was the legendary War Beast Master. He asks why they are condescendingly coming to them. Vice Rector Zhou Yun Chang says that he doesn't know. But where you go, the starry sky, basically nothing good happens. And last month, he heard that there was a large family in another base city. And it was destroyed because of the secret treasure on which the starry sky was aimed. Even in the enclosing wall of the base city, a gaping hole was formed. The city was almost not attacked by wild animals. Su Ping doesn't understand. Have they all gone crazy and why is this happening? We can only hope that they don't have anything they need. The host asks to invite the fifth group of participants to the ring. He announces that the battle has begun. Participants notice that this is the girl who claimed victory in the tournament. Member Borya says that the girl will be unlucky if she runs into him. Member Ge Shui advises Xiao Yu to give up otherwise she will have a hard time. Yu Zijian approaches Xiao Yu and says that the other participants are looking at them strangely, to which the sister replies that they don't need the boy, he has nothing to be afraid of. She also says that they are rivals and she doesn't want the boy to call her sister. He says that if the members unite to defeat Xiao Yu, then he will be next. Who is unlucky enough to team up with Xiao Yu? The girl replies that she did not expect that the boy would be able to assess the situation so well, so she does not mind teaming up with him. Now the boy asks his sister to cover his back. The girl agrees and says that then let the guy cover her. This boy has already lost count of how many ignorant girls' hearts have been deceived by such a harmless face. Now Xiao Yu cannot escape. In the boy's hands is the secret treasure of the seventh stage, Mu family, devouring the star castle. He can block all the star power of those below the sixth stage, and it cannot be unlocked independently because the area of application is direct contact. He uses this when Xiao Yu shakes his hand. He says that the girl is caught, and he pulls this secret treasure towards her body. The guy says that if Xiao Yu loses her star power, she won't even be able to summon the celestial beast. And now an ordinary girl can be destroyed as much as she wants. But at that moment, an electric current pierces his body and he falls, exhausted. The host does not understand what happened in the ring because participant Yu Zijian suddenly fell. The guy doesn't understand. Is this paralyzing taxi really the work of this girl? To which she replies that the boy himself insisted on a handshake and she simply accepted it. Another participant asks Xiao Yu why she is so sure that this boy is an enemy. Also, if a girl poisons the wrong person, she has fewer allies. The girl replies that this guy is like Yu Zijian from Mu family, and these two, Zhang Shuo and Ge Shui, are from the Tang family. The participants do not understand how the girl knows everything, but she replies that since they entered the ring, their walking posture and the way they breathe have completely revealed their personality. After all, her brother said that no mercy should be shown to any of the four families. The participants decide to attack the girl with three because she is no match for them. They call their celestial beasts, and they point at Xiao Yu. They summon a sonic bee and a storm wolf. But one guy didn't summon his celestial beast. The guy says that only that his family had lost one person due to unexplained reasons, and Su Ping probably still had some aces up his sleeve, so he would not attack recklessly. The girl begins to get angry at the guy. How dare he use her as a springboard? If he doesn't have time to fight, then he should be more commanding. After all, their pets had already caught up with them, and obviously there were only a few attacks. The Sonic Bee and the Storm Wolf were squeezed during this time. Ge Shue understands what will have to be used. A secret treasure donated by the family, she orders him to hurry up and use his methods to deal with the girl, otherwise he will suffer. Both families, and for one family, it will cost less. This enhances the secret medicine of the sixth stage. It is a giant force. It increases the user's strength for ten minutes and it can shake the beast of the highest sixth stage. Zhang Shuo uses the secret treasure of the sixth stage puppet snake. It moves quickly and cannot be detected by star power and will attack the enemy autonomously, and its poison can kill the sixth stage celestial beast, the rival's order to surround the Xiao Yu beast. 
The owner notices that so many people are making fun of her snowball, so she uses a unique skill that she taught. Her beast emperor is the resonance of beast blood. She orders her beast to deal with opponents together. This legendary battle continues. The girl can't believe it. Is it really an illusion? How could Xiao Yu use the illusion above? They see animals. Geshui says, don't worry about this to your phantom fire beast and directly kill the Xiao Yu beast. At this time, the girl slowly uses her dark flame claws. Geshui notices what a strange method of fighting this is. Has Xiao Yu really become as agile and ferocious as a wild beast? Mazun sees what a terrifying form the girl has because she is not at all. She is not inferior even in a fight with a battle beast of the sixth stage. They say that she should not be too arrogant. She is no match for them in strength and they are trying to try new tactics. But Zhang Shuo notices that the tactics that Xiao Yu uses, if he understands correctly, then this is a secret art of beast masters that only high-ranking ones can learn. The children of their high families, Zhang Shuo, orders his sound bee to bypass its blind spot. Usually the masters of the martial beasts command the celestial beasts by giving orders and the level. Synchronization and interaction ranges from 40 to 60%. And some experienced masters and their celestial beasts over the years of cooperation can understand each other mentally or with a glance. At the moment, the level of synchronization and interaction is close to 90%, and Zhou Yunchang says that Sister Su Ping can easily fight against five, such a girl. She didn't even raise an eyebrow. But a team is a team, after all, and the maximum level of synchronization is theoretically 100%, but only the unique royal equipment of their family allows the consciousness of the heavenly beast and the master of the heavenly beast to penetrate each other. They can read each other's thoughts. The girl Xiao Yu constantly uses 200% synchronization. Xiao Yu attacks the guy and says that he is always like this on the sly, and it annoys her now. She first decides to deal with Zhang Shuo, but suddenly a huge dragon appears. Palm, watching all this, finally thought it was a fiery crystal snake purgatory top 15 dragon rank. Combat power lower ninth stage master, which is Zhang Shuo. He says that the speed is not bad flames, but the crystal serpent of purgatory, and activate the greatness of the dragon. Zhang Shuo notices that Xiao Yu's beast is not afraid. The greatness of the dragon, which means there is something in the pet store that raised him. Zhang Shuo says that they only need to be under the pressure of the dragon's greatness, since her mind is unstable, and she will not be able to maintain the beast's blood resonance state. And teacher Zhou Yunchang says that if it were not for the intervention of the families, Xiao Yu would be able to figure it out completely on her own. Vice Chancellor Dun says that Ma Zun actually used an eighth stage adult dragon beast, which is in the top 15, only his family won the last one. The championship has such financial opportunities. Ge Shui says that they will see how arrogant the girl is without her strange fighting techniques. Zhang Shuo says that since she has already, if she hurt him, He'll fix it for her now. The host comments that Ge Shui and Zhang Shuo have teamed up to get closer to Xiao Yu, who is overwhelmed by the dragon's attraction, and the host asks, Will Xiao Yu be the second participant eliminated? But the girl says that such a powerful beast is the dragon, but he pitifully hid at the end. It looks like the victory of this match is certain. Xiao Yu says that she is sorry that other families worked so hard for half a day, but their secret treasures were wasted in vain while the other one picked all the peaches. But Mazun doesn't understand. What is the girl talking about? She replies that in this round, most of her physical strength was used up. And if the three of them work together to defeat the family now, it will be reasonable, regardless of their enmity. Xiao Yu says that if they are still on Mu's side, then after she is defeated, even if they combine all their efforts, it will be impossible to defeat him. After all, he has a very strong, heavenly beast. And Zhang Shuo says that if this continues, it's like working for the Mu family in vain. So it's better to unite and weaken him first. But Ge Shui says that it's better not to rush. After all, Zhao Yu is in the best shape. And what about them? She may also have a trump card, so let her fight Mu alone for now. And they will wait and restore their strength until he finishes her off, and then fight him again. And let him also try what it's like to be used as a springboard. This makes Borya very angry, so he says that first he will get rid of the girl. But Ge Shui replies that he should come over. But then they, together with Xiao Yu, will destroy him. While Zhang Shuo and Ge Shui are using recovery, 
The girl advises the guy to be obedient and get rid of Xiao Yu first. Zhang Shuo says that this is good, because this way they can be sure that she will lose and they will have a chance to win. Everyone understands that if not for the attacking abilities of the fiery crystal, a snake of purgatory who could easily destroy the ring with his lava breath, and with a meteor shower he can kill all three of them in seconds. The longer the battle drags on, the more the players of other families will recover, the more unfavorable it will be for him. He chooses a quick battle, and the distance is small. But this is better than being under siege. Xiao Yu orders his snowball to use nightmare paralysis, but the dragon uses a shield, and the split dragon's claw sweeps Snowball out of its path. Now, Mazun decides on his own. To get rid of the girl, he attacks her and the battle begins. Joe does not understand that the dragon's greatness was dulled at once, and fortunately, the cultivated Snowball was not harmed. Mazun offers, Xiao Yu doesn't waste time and just give up because his flame on the crystal snake purgatory is invincible. Xiao Yu doesn't understand why the nightmare paralysis didn't work. If she can find the reason, she will have a chance of victory. Geshue and Jin use recovery. At this time, Mazun tells Xiao Yu not to waste time. If she surrenders voluntarily, then he will arrange a fitting end here. The girl understands that at least the snowball has the combat power of the highest seventh stage. But he is also capable of controlling the eighth stage niche beasts. But the opponent was able to resist snowball's illusions. The girl does not understand whether this could be so, but that Ma Zun used tactics or secret treasures to resist psychological attacks. Decides to send his beast to try again. Ma Zun says that the girl wiped her leg on his kindness. Now he orders his fiery crystal beast purgatory. Teach the phantom fire beast a lesson, and he will personally deal with the nasty girl. And Xiao Yu uses nightmare paralysis for his beast, to which Ma Zun responds that the girl's actions are useless. Since the girl thought the guy was using the secret treasure, and the secret treasure of the seventh stage is the sleeping dragon bone. After absorbing the star power, it can make the dragon beast immune to negative effect. Mazun asks the girl, Let's say she lost, what will she do now? Mazun uses his bones, which are like claws and pierces the name of the girl's stomach. Xiao Yu doesn't understand how it happened so quickly, but Mazun replies that being overwhelmed by the greatness of the dragon, she still took the initiative, and she left the Phantom Fire Beast's protection zone without her pet. This is a sixth stage secret tactic called the Shadow Butterfly Step. This technique is modeled after. The eighth stage Battle Beast is without a butterfly, which can blur its shape when moving and at high speed, as well as appear and disappear uselessly. And Xiao Yu is just a small child who is being led to slaughter. The presenter comments that this is strong power. Participant Xiao Yu is defenseless before the fierce pursuit of Ma Zun, as expected of a competitor who was trained by their family's previous champion. Ma Zun understands that the consumption of the butterfly's shadow step is quite large, but with such a volume of blood loss, she should faint. But suddenly the girl jumps up and stands on her feet. Opponents don't understand how a girl with such wounds can attack and resist. But at this moment he does not use the supreme art of recovery and once again enters the battle. Ma Zun is amazed. Is this really the highest art of restoration? It's annoying him because now he'll have to tear out the girl's heart. The host comments that member Mazun has resumed his longline attack. He suddenly attacks the girl from behind at the speed of light, but Xiao Yu suddenly exposes. He kicks his leg and tries to defend himself, but suddenly the guy pierces her body with his fangs. The hosts are perplexed. Was member Xiao Yu really injured? But in fact, Xiao Yu says that the guy just got caught because he didn't pierce her body with his fangs, but she jumped on his hand. And she placed on it the thing that Yu Ziqiang wanted to use against her, the striking star castle. The host says that member Xiao Yu pre pretended to show flaws and tricked Ma Zun to get closer, then sealed the star power with a devour lock. And now he won't be able to get out on his own. The presenter says that this is very deadly. Xiao Yu now says that without star power, now Ma Zun's power is like that of an ordinary person. And even if the greatness of the dragon suppresses her, she can easily cope with the guy. Now Ma Zun asks for help from the crystal flame of the snake purgatory. But the girl turns off the secret treasure of her beast and orders him to deal with the serpent of purgatory using nightmarish paralysis. Xiao Yu says that first we need to deal with one thing. And she throws it out of the field, but suddenly a huge bee picks it up. The host comments that it is the greatest members Gei Shui and Zhang Shuo who have joined the battle.
Now the three of them have united. Geishue says that the big picture is important, and they cannot allow Ma Zun to be killed by Xiao Yu. Zhang Shuo says that her strength should not be underestimated, and Ma Zun doesn't want his family to punish him for not completing the mission. Now Zhang Shuo suggests putting aside personal interests and dealing with Xiao Yu first. Ma Zun now orders the Purgatory Flame Crystal Serpent to use Dragon Majesty. The host comments that participant Xiao Yu was about to get a chance with the help of a minor injury. On victory, but the situation changed again as a result, the three parties decided to jointly deal with the participant. Suddenly Xiao Yu hears his brother's voice and says to use it. Vice Rector Dun says that he is sorry because both times it was so close. Vice Chancellor Zhou Yunchang says that such a good seedling will be destroyed here because it was targeted because the people of the four major families are too hateful. Xiao Yu word hears brother's voice. He says that there is no need to hide anymore and let the girl use her trump card. Opponents say the girl will regret not giving up, and he advises her to repent for being an enemy of their families. But unexpectedly, the girl summons a new beast and tells him to use Freeze for a thousand miles. Opponents can't believe their eyes. Is this a dragon ranked eighth in rank? This is the moon dragon of the Silver Frost Star, the combat power of the eighth stage limit. The presenter comments on how terrifying this is. With the appearance of member Xiao Yu's moon dragon, it began to snow in the arena. Member Xiao Yu, with just the skill of the ninth stage of thousand mile freezing, destroyed three. The presenter comments that they say that the moon dragon is a silver frost star. Once froze a thousand miles around himself with, with this technique, now seeing him live, you can definitely say that he deserves his reputation. The girl tells her pet to stop. The host comments that the other three participants lost consciousness, and Xiao Yu wins in the fifth round, and the audience is perplexed with such a powerful trump card in his hands. It's not surprising that she dares to win the championship, because just one move can decide the fight. This is the first time they have seen the skill of a ninth stage pet with their own eyes. The host congratulates participant Xiao Yu on successfully passing to the next round called the Nightmare Hunt, which will begin in three days. And Vice Rector Zhou Yunchang congratulates. Director Su Ping, because his sister showed herself excellently, Vice Rector Dun says that as expected from the director who chose the champion by default, in the future, the girl will definitely become a great support for their university. Xiao Yu comes to Tang Ruan's room. The girl replies that there is still an hour before today's training. What do they want from her? Xiao Yu enters Tang Ruan's room and asks for forgiveness. The girl replies that Xiao Yu should come in because standing at the door makes her even more annoying. Star power is also chaotic. Like mosquitoes in the rainforest, Tang Ruan says she can't even concentrate on training, so. Let her not say what she wanted and leave. But the girl brings pies to Tang Ruan and offers her a treat. She says that she wants to train with Tang Ruan every day. And that's why she asks. Apologies in advance for disturbing Tang Ruan says that the last time she trained her, Xiao Yu was against it. She asks why the girl is now striving. Is she really interested in Tang Ruan tactics? Xiao Yu says that after taking part in the tournament battles, she realized that she was still far from becoming a champion. Tang Ruan asks if the girl is amazed by the enemy's strength, but Xiao Yu replies that in the hands of her brother, her beast will notice that it has become very powerful, and she again and again found herself a disadvantage. And if she remains as she is, she is afraid that she will soon not be able to fight next to him, not to mention winning the championship, so Xiao Yu wants to become stronger. Tang Ruan understands that Xiao Yu is afraid that the pet will stop obeying her. So Tang Ruan asks Xiao Yu what she wants to learn besides the body. The girl replies that in the arena she was suppressed by the greatness of the dragon, the fiery crystal snake of purgatory, the eighth stage, her beast was vulnerable. Therefore, she wants to restore the lack of psychological strength. Tang Ruan replies that the girl wants a lot because mental strength is the most difficult characteristic for a martial beast master. But there are few tactics that can enhance mental power and they usually rely on auxiliary secret treasures to compensate for this, Tang Ruan says. For Xiao Yu to think why an eighth stage martial beast master can recruit a maximum of four or five battle pets, but their family has a secret technique that is passed down. Women but not men. Tang Ruan invites Xiao Yu to bring his pet and she will show you. Xiao Yu says that she won't bring her here because it's crowded here. Tang Ruan replies, 
That Zhao Yu is really stupid because her head alone is enough for the greatness of a dragon after the summoning space is opened. Tang Ruan tells Xiao Yu not to release her. Star power immediately Zhao Yu says that she will try it immediately. She summons her beast and uses dragon majesty. Tang Ruan is perplexed. Is this really the best dragon of the Silver Frost Star? She says that she has been locked in the store for a long time and she really misses the battle atmosphere. She even got the roar of the dragon. Nice to listen. Xiao Yu tells Tang Ruan to be careful because it looks like her beast is angry. Tang Ruan uses a stationary glass body. She says it's just a dragon, the eighth stage beast. She orders him to shut up. Xiao Yu says that this is amazing because Tang Ruan really repelled the beast's attack. Tang Ruan says that this is a secret skill. It can provide physical protection far beyond that of the same level of development, and it also provides the same mental protection. Tang Ruan says that all Xiao Yu needs, it's unlikely to satisfy, but at least she can fight dragons without getting caught in the crossfire. That's a factor of hundreds. Better than the useless body training technique her family taught her. Now Xiao Yu asks to be taught this too. But Tang Ruan replies that she likes to eat salty food. Therefore, Xiao Yu must understand what to do now. The sister says that from now on she will buy the girls delicious food every day as a sign of respect. But Tang Ruin understands that she will teach it for a reason. Only she can practice the motionless glazed body. And as soon as she uses it in the tournament, their family will immediately appear. Recognize this, and Tang Ruin won't have to worry about someone coming to save her. And with the addition of a little minion who will buy her delicious food, it really kills two birds with one stone. Su Ping overhears the two girls talking. He meets the masters and tells them to use star power for soundproofing and tells them to keep reporting. The Mu family servant says that their patriarch is very dissatisfied with the result of the tournament. He punished the two defeated participants, and now this is considered the fourth threat. And the top three threats are the young masters of the other three major families, the ancestor of the Qin family, understands that their patriarch does not seem to care too much about the elite tournament. But the young master hopes to fight. With other opponents, after all, the young master's battle pet, the bloody demon servant has the ninth stage of combat power, so it is recommended to avoid combat. The ancestor of the Tang family says that their patriarch's focus is still on the disappearance of the young madam, while the whereabouts of the madam are unknown. Therefore, the secret search village is sent to the city of the Dragon Ledge. The ancestor of the Liu family says that his patriarch deprived him of maintaining neutrality, and they refuse to provoke them. Everyone starts laughing. But Su Ping understands why they are all laughing. After all, the Liu family is the most discreet. The masters say that they informed the patriarch about the murder of Mr. Yuan Tianchen. And now their family is known for its poisonous heart, which is very dangerous against enemies. But not for them. So they intervened so that their family would not harm the guy. He asks what masters found there about the organization of the Starry Sky. They say that they discovered that the person sent by the Starry Sky is a woman named Yan Bing A. There are also several strong title masters, but the exact number of them is unknown. Su Ping says that as soon as the masters find out something, let them immediately inform him. And during the three-day off-season, you need to take care of the participant according to Xiao Shui. After all, Su Ping does not think that he will be free these days, so he tells the masters to take him with them. The owner also notifies that the meeting is over. Su Ping understands that Starry Sky is the most powerful organization. On the continent, he doesn't understand what they are trying to achieve in this tournament, because it's useless to think too much, and it's time to get up. Su Ping I understand that I need to take it once a week. Joanna calls the girl to the cultivation area. He invites her to go take a dip in the Divine Spring. The girl replies that it seems the owner has entered the field strong. The enemy and he is very worried. Joanna asks the owner, how about taking her supreme divine realm? After all, the speed of improvement is much higher than that of the source, and once, Su Ping will never forget this. The guy understands that the girl just heard everything. He understands that the girl wants to be in the highest divine realm ahead of time. But let him not try to pull the wool over his ears at the moment. Fortunately, the divine border has not yet been touched, and therefore there is no need to rush into opening new territories. Su Ping says that the girl is right but the conditions for passing the highest divine realm is that she will become an excellent employee. 
This is written in black and white, and he cannot break the contract. The owner asks the girl if she has a proposal for a quick increase in combat power. Joanna realizes that he didn't fall for it, but she knows that the path is still long, and she will always have an opportunity. The girl answers the owner that if he wants to get a huge increase in a short period of time, then she has a method that suits him. This is the hobble of Heaven's Trials. Since the level of cultivation continues to plant without all the controlling balance of all things, a destructive plague is turned on them. This disaster is called the Heavenly Trials. Heavenly tests depend on various conditions and can be divided into four types. Wind, fire, water, and thunder. If you pass these tests, your cultivation level will enter to the legendary kingdom. Shen Fen is the seventh big squad. He is a trainee. He is at the peak of the ninth stage. He says that if he manages to pass the test, he can become a full-fledged member of the seventh Shen Fen team. He uses the body of a divine bull and the semi-divine border test land peak of divine thunder. Joanna and Su Ping went there. Su Ping asks Joanna, is this a heavenly test? The guy feels destructive pressure from such a distance. Joanna says it's a pity that they were one step too late. People at the top of the peak had already begun to undergo tests. The guy says he's new here, so it's better to get used to it first. It took him a while to find someone to create an online store website. If most of their customers didn't switch to online ordering, mom would have a hard time keeping track of the store today. Joanna asks why the two ants didn't go with them. The ants she is talking about are Tang Ruan and Xiao Yu. Su Ping replies that they will not understand what it means to hobble the heavenly trials. After all, it's too early for them, and he left the girls to practice in her palace, and it's better not to worry about them. The pressure radius of a thundercloud is ten miles. As expected, from the seventh team, this guy is very gifted. Last year, Team Six also released a lot of favorites from the thunderclouds, and all of them, without exception, became excellent soldiers with great achievements in battle. It looks like Team 7 will definitely become famous this year. Su Ping doesn't understand, is the natural talent they are talking about really what the system calls properties. The ability level is related to the range of thunderclouds. Tamed beasts have approximately average properties. He wonders how many miles of thunder the clouds will be attracted by the heavenly beasts. Shen Fen asks the mother tree to witness his glory. The gods notice that the thunder clouds have dispersed, which means Shen Fen has failed. Even the anti-thunder treasure of the vast sea realm couldn't withstand it. After all, it was a ten-mile thunder cloud. Shen Fen barely survived, but his insides of a god were destroyed, and he became ordinary garbage. Shen Fen is afraid that it is impossible to reverse everything. Therefore, death now awaits him. Su Ping understands that this is cruel, and if he has no system protection. Then Su Ping is afraid that he too will dissipate like smoke and dust. He is obliged to use this power in the best possible way. The guy asks Joanna how unlikely it is to fail in this heavenly test. But the girl replies that probability is not the issue here. And talent. And in addition to the fact that talent influences the power of heavenly trials, it also represents potential, future strength. But whether Su Ping can survive the heavenly trials depends on his current combat power. The guy who died was on the ninth stage and his combat power was negligible. And it's normal that the kingdom of the vast sea could not stand it. The goddess notices that Su Ping is getting scared. She says that when the gods die, they pass through the arms of their mother and return to this world again. And Su Ping is just worried about himself. The guy understands that even though his strongest beast is a small skeleton, he has just reached the kingdom of the vast sea, but the energy of the store's income. It's not what it was before, and replaying life is too expensive a pleasure. Now it is the other deity's turn to be tested. Joanna decides to lend this guy a treasure. This is the shield of heaven. The deity says that his highness actually bestowed such a treasure, and for him it is an honor. He says that he has not been in the outside world for a long time. So, heaven is a secret treasure of the starry sky realm forged from the body of a strong member of the god race. It has extremely strong protection and can guarantee indestructibility. User rules. No one else should be present during the test because the intensity of the celestial test will vary. Depending on the natural talents of those present, this human warrior who wishes to hobble around heavenly trials in the future will bring many changes.
so the goddess is obliged to protect Su Ping from death. The deity is very grateful for Joanna's kindness. He says that even if he risks everything, he will still protect this warrior. At the peak of the divine thunder, the lightning ledge the deity tells the warrior that when the test begins, he just needs to hide behind him with this shield. The sky, even fifty miles of clouds, is not a problem. He asks Su Ping not to look down on him, because even a hundred miles is not a problem for him. Agrees and tells him to go run the tests. The test has begun. The deities don't understand. Why let the human race with a sixth-stage cultivation base interfere with their heavenly trials at the Thunder Trial? A total of nine levels with his mortal body. The first thunderstrike from a one-mile thundercloud would be enough to kill him. When the test began, even the weather changed. The deities can't believe it, because this is a heterochromic celestial test. Su Ping asks, is this really a difficult test? The deity says that the heterochromic test has appeared. Only a few times in the last hundred years, and this is very rare. And its power is three times greater than in ordinary thunder tests. The deities do not understand how the sixth and ninth steps could call for a heterochromic test. Is this really the protection of the goddess's sky? Then perhaps the one at the top of the peak violated. Heavenly rules in your past life. Seven miles is almost equivalent in strength to the normal celestial test of twenty-one miles. The deity asks Su Ping. Does he want him to help him with the guy's insignificant talent? After all, the results will be exactly the same as he calculated in the previous test. He is glad that the shield can easily protect him from this level. Su Ping doesn't understand how he can be so happy when his talent is so low. With a threat, he calls a warrior to him. Su Ping summons his celestial beast dragon dog. He says that he will try this test first. The growing thunderclouds did not end there. They get bigger and thicker. It's no longer eight or nine miles. And now it's already ten, and soon it will be eleven, and they don't continue to increase. Already a full twenty-seven miles. The deity says that they have finally reached the level of an average champion and need to continue in the same spirit. Otherwise, he will fall asleep. And the properties of this dragon dog have reached twenty miles. Su Ping summons the moon dragon forward. The thunderclouds continue to increase and have reached thirty miles. The deities are simply shocked, because it's already 40 miles and 50 miles. Su Ping doesn't understand. Is it really that the Silver Frost Star Moon Dragon has reached 23 miles, and obviously the combat power is one step lower than that of the Dark Dragon Dog? But it has good properties to motivate the Dark Dragon Dog. As expected from a dragon beast ranked in the top 10 Rating Ga Dragons. The deity doesn't understand where Su Ping got these animals from. The deity says that he, too, is beginning to feel that something is wrong. After all, it's already 70 miles, and it doesn't end. Other deities don't understand what's going on there for a hundred miles. They don't understand what kind of demonic talent this is. They are only interested in whether someone really attracted. Thunder clouds a hundred miles away. They turn to the goddess. The deities say that they need to retreat to the foot of the mountain. After all, if you stay here under a 100-mile thundercloud, then the goddess will also be involved. Joanna says that they can step, but the goddess has been tested more than once before. The goddess just wanted to take this opportunity to find out what the secret is. Stands behind Su Ping. She doesn't understand how he could arrange such a scene. In order to keep the lord of heavenly trials, the goddess will have to sacrifice her true divine artifact. She conveys this to the mountaintop. The deity who fights alongside Su Ping sees treasures from her highness. Su Ping understands that, of course, Joanna still has a trump card in this case. Now he doesn't have to worry anymore. They continue in the same spirit, and he summons a little skeleton. Deities who monitored the completion of tasks, they start to run away. They don't understand what's happening. It's the people on the mountain who should be tested, not them. The thunderstorm disaster zone has a radius of 200 miles, and the thunderclouds have moved beyond the divine thunder peak. The deity who fights cannot believe his eyes. This is a heterochromic test of such a complex level. He has never seen such a test in his life. He uses his shield. But the shield replies that, to be honest, this is also the first time he's seen something like this. He already thought that he wouldn't see anything glorious. The deity tells Su Ping to quickly get behind her. He also asks Lady Mother Tree to testify to his glory. But at the last moment, Su Ping uses a shield that resists lightning. 
The small skeleton activated the effect of the undead fruit, immunity to one mortal wound. The little skeleton was mortally wounded again, and his soul was completely destroyed. The souls of other animals were completely destroyed. The deity is frightened are all the heavenly beasts killed in the war and that these are just their souls, so he causes the resurrection in the same place. After all, when it comes to beatings, they are professionals. The guy says that the deity is only responsible for his own survival, so Su Ping will do the rest of the work. Amazing life and death mixed up in an instant. Most tell Su Ping not to take it lightly. After all, there are nine levels of thunder trials, and the thunder that just broke out is only the first level. The destructive power of each level is higher than that of the previous level. Now the second level begins in the heavenly tri trial. Ping orders his celestial beasts to use killing intent. The animals go into battle. The animals are wounded again, and they use the fruit to become immune to one mortal wound. Su Ping notices that after cutting down the ghost, things explode. He orders the beasts to maintain combat discipline. The deity says to, Su Ping took care of himself because the next level is approaching. Their speed will be faster and faster. Heterochromic Heavenly Thunder Test begins the third level. The Thunder Wolves attack Su Ping and he uses the Demon God's Suppressing Fist. The fourth level begins. The soul of the Moon Dragon was completely destroyed. But already the fourth level is approaching Su Ping chooses resurrection in the same place and now they will attack. Each time his celestial beasts were completely destroyed and were reborn with new powers. Heterochromic Heavenly Thunder Test Level 5 the host's soul was completely destroyed. Su Ping used the terrifying secret treasure thanks to this established star core. The golden crow guy's appearance and the demon god's suppressing fist were temporarily upgraded by one realm. He orders the small skeleton to use spirit beast cover. Now Su Ping is protected. But unexpectedly, he ends up in the system space. The system says that the owner can temporarily acquire a skill that the combined pet has this skill. Will be twice as powerful as the original. When they realize that he just walked on the edge of a knife because his understanding of combat was too limited, but the core of a prism star continuously feeds his stellar energy. If his appearance as a golden raven is combined with the combination of severed limbs, it can be called an invincible force. Su Ping says that in order to fully taste the baptism of the heavenly test, he wants to improve the quality of every life. He uses the recombination of severed limbs. The guy is reunited with the small skeleton using the covering of the spirit of the beast. He orders the light bringing serpent purgatory to use stone armor, vine armor, and hardening frost shell on Su Ping. And the dark dragon, not the dog, uses the wind keeper of the earth keeper on Su Ping, and Su Ping's thundercloak enters the battle and completes the task. He was finally able to withstand the attack, but he understands that this spiritual attack really hurts. Sky Shield sees that Su Ping really took the initiative and faced the heavenly test. Now his hands are getting too tight. The shield screams for the guy to stand still because now he is also in business. He flies to Su Ping and now the deity is left alone. The shield applies the skill of the patron of the sky on Su Ping and a huge defense force is obtained. He says that he will protect the owner and now Su Ping can calmly retreat. The guy understands that thanks to the shield, he is really not injured. Now the guy understands that he pushes off well. He tells the heavenly test to wait for him until the guy destroys him. They use the suppressing fist of the demon god, but even the suppressing fist did not work. But with the core of a recognized star, it is capable of delivering at least a hundred blows. Blow after blow he tries to fight, but every time his body parts fly off from the enemy's blows. But Su Ping sees that the attack bears fruit and the demon god's fist becomes stronger. The deities see that this human warrior is very brave. They do not recognize any talents as any combat power. But this is a very clear advantage in their divine world. Now it's no surprise to them that Her Highness favors him so much. Joanna sees something of the art of the fist, but she does not understand how it can be connected with the fist of the Golden Raven. And now the guy decides to destroy. He uses all his strength and the deity sees that the warrior succeeded. He passed the heavenly test. Su Ping returns to the bottom and goes to the goddess. Joanna asks how Su Ping is feeling right now after he hobbled through the heavenly trials for the first time. Su Ping replies that in the last battle, his body was destroyed and restored and obeyed and was replenished with energy. Now his body is lighter and stronger. His star power level has also been upgraded from the lowest sixth stage to the peak sixth stage. The deity thanks the warrior for his support. But Su Ping notices some kind of scale above the head of this god. 
The system says that this is an understanding bar, and every time the understanding scale is filled, you can understand the skill. But the guy doesn't understand why he sees this only now. Because in the past, the master's abilities were insufficient. But thanks to the baptism of the thunder trials, the master accidentally touched. Path of thunder, he can now cast path of thunder skills on people with a full understanding bar. Su Ping remembers could it be that the path of thunder is the thing that flashed before his eyes. Indeed, while he strains his thoughts, countless thunder-type skills pop up in his head that he has never seen before. Su Ping asks, how strong are thunder skills? The system says that the master has just touched the path of thunder, and his understanding of the path of thunder is still in the early stages. Su Ping understands that he can customize skills according to pet characteristics. After returning to the store, Su Ping tells his celestial beast that the rock understands. Moon Dragon, Silver Frost Star, and Dark Dragon Dog are simply filled out, and the dog's defense is very high and he needs to add some abilities and skills, which are more suitable for tank pets are engraving and Path of Thunder. Thunderous Killing Zone uses the power of the Thunder God to choke everyone who enters the skill zone. And the Moon Dragon has mostly long-range skills. The owner needs to finish off with some explosive abilities. Su Ping understands that in this way, combat power, his beasts increased significantly in the next round. You may have to meet young masters from other families. Xu Kuang can now borrow Dark Dragon Dog as support. A total of 1,000 participants. From the city past the previous round of the tournament, and these thousands of participants will take part in the hunt for nightmares, which will take place at the largest battle arena in the city of Longjiang. The spectators are happy that the competition will begin soon. The presenter asks to greet all participants. Now they will enter a state of deep sleep in the capsule. Then the beast of dreams of the abyss will bring their consciousness to the dream world dedicated to the tournament. In this round, a scoring system is used and players receive one point for killing those who do not have points. They kill others and take their points for themselves. G doesn't see that the beast dreams. Looks creepy, but Xu Kuang likes it. Killed participants awaken and are instantly eliminated. After time expires, the five players with the most points will pass. To the final round. The duration of this round is five hours. Each participant can use no more than one secret treasure that does not exceed his own combat power. And so that no one unexpectedly gets out of cover, those who scored more than a hundred points will be highlighted for everyone to see. The immersion into the world of dreams begins, Vice Rector Dunn says that all participants have already connected, and they will have to wear one thing to watch the game. Special glasses made using biotechnology allow you to see anywhere in the world of dreams. Vice Chancellor Dunn recalls that he spent a million to get a seat next to Su Ping. The hunt for nightmare has officially begun. Xiao Yu realizes that she needs to take a good look at the forest area first. She uses the snake heart which gave her secret technology. She tells the puppet owl to look around to see if there are any enemies nearby. After all, this secret treasure of the sixth stage is mortally immune. Twenty miles, the treasure begins to inspect and suddenly they find a fight and hear explosions. Two celestial beasts fight for their lives. One of the participants who uses biotechnology animal guns says these guys are making a big fuss. And this is like a living target for any hunter, but suddenly appears in front of him. Xiao Yu, she doesn't understand. Is this guy hunting people? She breaks the guy's neck, and now she has successfully eliminated three people. She jumps onto the tree again, and she doesn't understand how this guy was able to kill as many as five. After all, she added five points. She no longer understands that the fight of these guys will continue to attract people. She will simply continue to wait and reap the benefits of those who want to come and pick up the pieces. This is both safe and effective. She decides to wait until she has a hundred points and then uses the beast and her brothers carefully cultivated to take an unexpected lead. She sees five glares of light. These are the young owners of the families. They have already very quickly gained a standing position. And this is just half an hour after the start of the round. More than half of the participants in the arena dropped out. As expected of the famous families, the host comments that they are standing in a triangle. He asks if this is the old rule again. Su Ping asks what this old rule is. Vice Rector Dunn says that this is an agreement between young masters of great families. First, they meet in the center of the location. And then, separately, they go out. So none of them will eliminate each other before the finale. They will also be able to get rid of all the scattered people who are not part of the famous families. Su Ping asks, 
Isn't this tantamount to monopolization, and the top five come out just to prevent others from surviving? Dunn answers, that other than Su Ping, no one in the city would dare to compete with the major families. Speaking about the main families, the vice-rector says that this year the young mistress of the Tang family is not visible. The Liu family sword is very strong and no one can stand in his way with such speed. The round will soon end and the young master is amazing. The young master guarantees that the guys will live to reach the top ten simply because they bought tenth places in the Fi Fi Pet Store. The owner tells the guys to carefully remember that without the protection of their family, they are nothing. The guys say that they will definitely repay the kindness of their family. These guys are the first to be the son of a businessman and the second to be the son of a politician. Xiao Yu notices another golden light. The sixth participant has scored a hundred points. Xu Kuang says that this human is like pathetic trash. After all, he already has more than 100 points. He orders his dragon dark dog to crush everyone. Xiao Yu doesn't understand why Xu Kuang is acting like a villain. The owners of the family notice a new contender for victory. They say that they have never seen this man before. Now they want the guy to know the truth, that trees higher than the forest will be destroyed by the wind. Xiao Yu fights and kills two people. Now she has plus two points. She notices that two family owners are moving towards Xu Kuang. She understands that this is not good. She must rush to help the guy. This is Li Kifeng, the young owner of the family. He says that he has finally found the guy he was looking for. Xu Kuang sees that Li Kifeng can split a tree so large that it could be surrounded by two or three people with one blow. He admires this sharp sword. He says that he is a man who wants to be in the top five. Xu Kuang says that sooner or later he will fight with Li Kifeng anyway. So why should the guy run away then? Guys from the family of a businessman and politician advise Xu Kuang to give up quickly. Because otherwise, having a young master will allow him to see the gap in strength. They don't understand how the guy even knew to compete with a young master from the top five. Xu Kuang is starting to get angry. These two guys are minding their own business. He mocks and says that there is a possibility that he will show them the difference in strength. Those guys are furious and the young master takes out his sword. He uses the leaves of the autumn wind to blow away, and he tries to hit Xu Kuang. But Xu Kuang jumps off the dark dragon dog and instantly finds himself on the beast again. The owner has never met such a fellow. He doesn't understand how the sword didn't move the guy. The owner says that Li Kifeng is in front of him, and he also asks the guy to tell his name. Xu Kuang smiles, and as soon as he wants to say his name, suddenly Li Kifeng uses his sword to deliver defeat. He uses wild wind and rain to take Xu Kuang by surprise. The guys from ordinary families who serve Li Kifeng laugh with Xu Kuang, you see. He dared to provoke. Master. And now he is dead. But suddenly the guy comes out of the fog and says that his name is Xu Kuang. The young master and these two guys can't believe how Xu Kuang survived. Xu Kuang asks if Li Kifeng could stop distracting him when he speaks. After all, it's unpleasant for Xu Kuang that his opponent can only attack on the sly. Now Li Kifeng is at a loss. Spectators comment that the young master of the family, who killed hundreds of people with his sword, suddenly surrendered. They also wonder how a dragon dog can be two or even three meters tall. Projector Dunn doesn't understand why this guy named Xu Kuang seems familiar to him, but he remembers that he called Su Ping a master. He wonders if this guy is his follower. Li Kifeng says that now he will remember Xu Kuang as the first person to see his beast on the field who will also experience hellish torment. These two guys who stood with the owner are simply dumbfounded. They see what an overwhelming aura the beast has, and that the dark black dragon ranks fifth in the rank of dragons. Vice Rector Dunn notices that the dark black dragon was in the last exchange match with the university. The enemy also used the same dragon beast to kill their five prodigies. But if you compare the Li Chi Feng beast and that guy, this is quite a big difference. It is terribly different from the same species. Xu Kuang sees this dragon's strong, overwhelming majesty and asks how it feels for a guy to be suppressed by bloodline now. He says they will look. Will Xu Kuang be able to withstand his sword? But suddenly Xiao Yu bursts into the conversation and with one kick, she knocks down the standing Li Qi Feng. She jumps over him and the owner asks the girl if she is Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu says that it is she, and now the girl will be Li Kifeng's opponent. Two guys from ordinary families do not understand whether this is the girl who claims to be number one in the city, while the greatness of the dragon does not affect her at all. The owner Li Qifeng notices that the girl just used a fixed glass body. 
He doesn't understand where Xiao Yu got such skills. Surrendered, a young owner approaches them. Qin family, in the name of Qin Maoran, he says that after all, he fought against the young mistress of Tang Ruan, and of course he knows such skill. Li Kifang heard that this is a unique technique, which only the young Tang family can practice. The guy doesn't understand how Xiao Yu could learn this because in this year's tournament, the young mistress Tang Ruan was not visible. Now Li Kifeng is perplexed. He says that it is no wonder that his father is so wary of the Su Ping pet store, and it is not surprising that this store dared to go for first place. After all, he understands that the young mistress of the Tang family is actually in their hands and does not understand why Li Kifeng is laughing. But Li Kifeng says that nothing happened, and he also heard that brother Qin Maoran wants to test Xiao Yu. Li Kifeng asks if he should give the green light to Qin Maoran. The young master understands that now the Qin family will suffer greatly if will become hostile to the forces of Xiao Taoqia, and at this time their Liu family will be able to take the opportunity to trample them. Xu Kuang shouts to Li Qifeng that it just so happens that his grandfather would at least have a few more fights with him, but Xiao Yu asks for a fight with Qin Maoran and let him be careful. Now Qin Maoran says he will teach a lesson. Xiao Yu is such a strong person who truly aspires to the title of champion. Qin Maoran summons his celestial beasts. He tells them to come. This is the giant earth dragon and the fire thunder dragon. He wants them to fight and win this battle. The viewer notices that this is a giant earth dragon also known as an iron wall and also a fire thunder dragon, which ranks at the top of everyone in the ranking of dragons. These dragons cost money for the layout for ordinary people. Owning a dragon is almost as difficult as owning a private jet. And Qin Maran owns an airplane, a yacht, and also these celestial beasts that are very expensive and very incredibly strong. Qin Maran tells Zhao Yu that he heard that she owns a dragon, but now there is no need to hide and just let the girl call it to fight in battle. The girl understands that the phantom fire beast alone cannot, to cope with two dragon beasts, but she decides to summon him and send him into battle along with her celestial beast named Snowball. And guys from not rich families see four dragons in front of them. They don't believe their eyes because their dad couldn't buy them even one such dragon. Again, Shu Kuang uses the eighth stage pet skill breath of the underworld and asks Xiao Yu if she can cope with this. But Shu Kuang suddenly bursts into battle. He says that the girl is still capable, and he orders his dark dragon dog to attack this guy and destroy him on the spot. Li Qifeng understands that the breath of the underworld is known as a piercing bone and entrails terrifying skill again. He can't believe that he really could withstand. Xu Kuang understands to Li Qifeng that this level of attack cannot even hold a candle to the dark dragon dog. But the young master Li Qifeng orders the dark black dragon to detain the dark dragon dog. He says that the martial beast masters themselves are the main component of the watch. How can Xu Kuang cope when he is pressed by the greatness of the dragon? But Xu Kuang, looking straight at the sword with his eyes, asks why he needs to hide if he even blinks. With one eye, he will then be able to change his surname Li Qifeng to a coward. The owner already wants to pierce Xu Kuang's head completely with his sword, but suddenly his sword breaks into pieces because the guy uses protection. Also, the dark dragon dog uses the Wind God Refuge Guardian Gas Hard Shell Storm Thunder Armor and Dragon Blood Battle Armor on Xu Kuang. Xu Kuang, in an instant. After defending himself from the sword, his fist crashes into the face of the young master Li Qifeng. He asks the guy if he sees how grandfathers are easily. He manages to say that he wishes the guy to die. But now Xu Kuang uses his strength and spins the owner Li Qifeng in the air, and he flies away with all his strength. Xu Kuang says that this is a good compliment for him. If there are other techniques left, then let him use Li Qifeng says that because of the rules, he only brought a sixth stage sword. And if he had used another sword that was stronger, right now Xu Kuang's head would have fallen to the ground and he would have died. But at this time, he calls on the black dragon. He wants him to avenge him and suddenly he jumps. And Xu Kuang thinks that young master Li Qifeng wants to run away. But at the same moment, the heavenly beast picks up its owner and flies away after him. Li Qifeng only manages to shout so that Xu Kuang does not rejoice ahead of time because he uses death annihilation. Li Kifeng says that if Xu Kuang is crazy and has the courage, then he can repeat this trick again while Xiao Yu fights Qin Maoran. They see that young master Li Kifeng is using the 8th stage death annihilation, 
Suddenly, Xiao Yu freezes. Qin Maoran mockingly asks if the girl was scared. He says that his pet is able to block it. But the girl does not give in to the attack and continues the fight. Qin Maoran tells her to save herself because her two dragons are not even able to protect themselves, and they are about to turn into an ice sculpture. Qin Maoran says that he thinks about her pets, and first that he will make them into a tooth sharpener for his pets. Viewers comment that this is incredibly cool because Qin Maoran and Xiao Yu are still fighting to be on the same level as the young master of a famous family, considered to be in a certain degree outstanding, because most of the spectators would not have had time to take even two steps and would have been killed on the spot. They notice that the annihilation of death is about to fill a third of the island, will perspire and be killed. Xu Kuang orders his dark dragon dog to use the same trick zone expansion. At this time, young master Li Kifeng and his celestial beast use the loud killing zone. The battle begins. Two huge balls of protection collide with each other, and suddenly the annihilation of the owner Li Qifeng scatters in space. Spectators say that it looks too strange because as soon as she entered this field, she immediately turned into dust. This is the first time they have seen such a powerful spatial skill. Xu Kuang laughs. He says that's why he studied with the master and of course they couldn't see it. The young master Li Qifeng is simply horrified. He does not understand who the master of this strong rival Xu Kuang could be to which the guy responds so that the young owner listens to him carefully. He says that his young master is the owner of the famous Yao Tao Chi pet store, and at that moment he attacks the opponent, breaks his ball, the dragon dog of his strength tears off the opponent's head. At this time, Xu Kuang manages to say that the owner of the store is Su Ping. The young master is surprised again. Is it really that Su Ping's follower who has such power is only you? Combat unit of the Xiao Tao Chi pet store but the Tang family will still take action as soon as they recognize their motionless glass body, and it will be interesting to watch this year's tournament. The presenter announces that Li Qifeng has been eliminated. Xu Kuang turns to these two guys, and from not very rich families, he asks if both of them can also eliminate the knee and ask for forgiveness. They say not to kill them, and after the tournament they promise that their father will pay him, but they don't have time to finish. How Shu Kuang points his dragon dog at these two guys and crushes them. He says that these are two garbage with one point. He doesn't even believe that these weak guys can be champions of Fei Fei Pet Store. Viewers see what power and now they understand that Fei Fei Pet Store uneven. And Xiao Tao Chu. After all, even the young master of the family, the name Li Qifeng, was completely eclipsed. And after the tournament, they say that they will immediately go to the Xiao Tao Chi Pet Store. Also, someone says that right now, they will cancel their order at the Fei Fei Pet Store and will go to Xiao Tao Qi. Vice Rector Dun addresses Director Su Ping. He says that defeating the young master of the Liu family in such a loud way is tantamount to a public slap in the face to the four great families. But he doesn't know if it would be appropriate to say that he wants to make a big fuss, because before that, he told Xu Kuang that he would temporarily lend him his dragon dog. Xu Kuang didn't believe what the owner said. He doesn't understand whether he really has the opportunity to use the master's pet. He doesn't believe that this is not a dream. Su Ping says that of course this is not a dream, because the pet arena is a regular service of their pet store. Su Ping offers to sign a temporary contract for money. Xu Kuang says that money is not a problem, but what he is afraid of is that the pet is too strong and he will not be able to control it. But the owner told the guy not to worry because the restrictions on signing a temporary contract apply only to the level of both parties, although he has the combat power of the peak of the ninth stage. But his level has only reached the seventh stage, which is more than enough to sign up with the star power of the sixth stage. Xu Kuang, the young assistant, does not believe that the beast has already reached the peak of the ninth stage. He thanks the master and tells the elder dark dragon dog that he is counting on him. Su Ping reminds the guy not to call him senior and to treat him as your personal battle beast and boldly show your strength during the tournament. And don't hold back. The Elite Ice Tournament is such a rare opportunity without advertising, perfect to dispel all the public's doubts about his pet store at this time. Something strange is happening on the battlefield. Spectators are perplexed because it's time to shuffle the deck in Longjiang, which is under the control of four families. The Thunder Arrow of the Wind God is used. The presenter does not understand. Is there really another never-before-seen thunder skill that is aimed at Mr. Chin Maoran? 
It was Xiao Yu who used the ability of her moon dragon, and now she will continue to fight for her life with Qin Maoran. The guy feels incredibly strong pressure. He says that this is the very moment when his heavenly beasts need to come. He calls on the natural patron combat power, which is equal to the lowest ninth stage and the bloody demonic beast, the combat power which is equal to the middle ninth stage. The presenter comments on whether this is really. That same bloody demonic beast is said to be the most cruel and difficult to tame bloody beast of the ninth stage demonic beast. Although the combat power is extremely strong, it is not uncommon for them to harm their own owners. Just like the luminous snakes of purgatory, he was almost included in the ranks of the wild beasts. Xiao Yu launches offensive. Qin Maoran summons all three of his beasts and sends them into battle. The presenter comments that these three defensive skills of the ninth stage appear in an instant and are powerful. Qin Maoran's member cannot be underestimated, but Xiao Yu says that all Qin Maoran's efforts are useless. She uses a moon ray that hits the Qin Maoran celestial beasts. The guy doesn't understand how this could even happen because his defensive skills were enough to defeat the girl, but the only one who repels the attack is this bloody demonic beast. He not only repels the attack, but he begins to fight with the girl. He repels the attack and the attack flies to the side. Suddenly an explosion occurs. And about Xiao Yu, it comes out that she eliminated 36 people. Xu Kuang sees that this power really intoxicates him. The host says that this is a terrifying skill. It came through two defenses of the ninth stage as a ghost against, which is impossible to defend. And fortunately, the bloody demonic beast has one of the best physical abilities of the ninth stage. So he was able to parry the blow but only brought benefits. Xiao Yu in that she has added points and is getting closer to scoring 100 points. After all, she already has 95. Qin Maoran asks if this was Xiao Yu's best blow. He says that he shouldn't have underestimated her skills. But everything has already been decided and the bloody demonic beast is now using the flash and destroying it. The host comments that the heavenly beast on both sides is going straight to the martial beast master. He has no intention of showing mercy. But as soon as the beast wants to grab Xiao Yu, she turns into a large rock of ice. And after a moment, this ice breaks into pieces and turns into a weapon. Chin Maoran can't believe what he sees. Is it really a defensive skill of the ice? Type of the ninth stage, the patronage of the ice goddess. Xiao Yu says that the Chin Maoran bloody demonic beast is certainly fast. But it's time for the beast to catch up with it beyond the moon dragon bites through the Qin Maoran celestial beast and it hurts him very badly. The girl says that the arrow of her beast, the moon dragon, was just bait. Xiao Yu asks how Qin Maoran will now react to the next one. Now the guy admits his mistake because such a powerful arrow and there is not just one of them, but several of them. There are a lot of them. The presenter announces that the second player has appeared after Xu Kuang and scored 200 points. He asks, will no one stop them from killing four families? The other owners of the families don't believe that Qin Maoran and Li Kifeng really lost. Perhaps they simply underestimated the player. They say it's their turn now. At this time, Xiao Yu and Xu Kuang are eliminating more and more people, gaining points for themselves. Xiao Yu tells Xu Kuang that she will bomb from the air and let him burn from the ground to get rid of the others. Xu Kuang says that this is easy for him, and they will watch his dragon dog chariot kill everyone. The host comments that Xiao Yu and Xu Kuang are approaching the masters of the other two families. With crushing speed, they will soon be near Mu Chan and Ye Long Chan, but the presenter does not understand. How will the young owners react to this? But they are already waiting for them. For some reason, they take a very long time to get there. The young owner does not understand if they are really coming from the other end of the island. He says that due to the tournament restrictions, he cannot use his highest secret treasures. And Xiao Yu and Xu Kuang were simply lucky that they found themselves in equal conditions. The other owner of the family says that he too would not leave a wet spot on them. The presenter notices that they are running away and they may not have the strength to fight. He also announces that the surviving participants on the field are five out of a thousand. He says that finally only the last five players remain on the field. The hunt for nightmares is over. There are five participants left who will reach the finals of the elite tournament in the base city of Longjiang now. We can congratulate them. And the final result of participant Mu Chan is 112 points, and Ye Long Chan's final score is 118 points.
Participant Igor's final result is 149 points. These are the very young masters of strong families. Xu Kuang's total is 327 points, and Xiao Yu's total is 284 points. The presenter is right now asking everyone to leave the capsules and stretch their bodies and immediately report any discomfort to the staff. Xu Kuang is happy that now he and Xiao Yu are in the finals, but the girl replies that Xu Kuang should not take this lightly because the final round still awaits them. Xu Kuang says that the girl is too worried about this. He asks, how are these? Three weaklings can defeat them. After all, Xiao Yu will deal with one and he will deal with the other. And in the end, Xu Kuang will give in to Xiao Yu and she will remain the champion. Xiao Yu tells Xu Kuang not to raise the white flag ahead of time. The guy replies that his sister should cheer up. He invites her to relax somewhere in the city tonight. Xiao Yu responds that suddenly she felt a lot of pressure. She'd better go home and exercise more. Qin Maoran approaches the girl and says that he did not expect that this year he would fall by her hand. Qin Maoran and Li Kifeng approach Xiao Yu and Xu Kuang. Qin Maoran says so that young people do not misunderstand him. He is here to congratulate them on completing the level and at the same time get to know them. The guy says that the wind god's thunder arrow impressed him very much, and he lost to Xiao Yu. The guy says that he hopes that in the future, they will have the opportunity to learn from each other. The girl asks if the guy really wants revenge. Qin Maoran replies that the girl need not worry. He is not going to win the tournament, and after all, the academy is his goal. The girl is perplexed, because the academy the guy is talking about is the number one educational institution in all of Asia. Xu Kuang turns to Li Kifeng and says to fight him. It was unrealistically cool. He invites the guy to repeat it sometime, but Li Qifeng is very angry. He is perplexed and does not understand who will fight such a monster as Xu Kuang is not only strong, but his skin is thick. Li Kifeng gets angry and leaves. He says that he has things to do. The director of Fei Fei Pet Store approaches Li Kifeng in the name of Liu Yuan. He asks the young master not to be angry, and this time the Xiao Tao Qi store was lucky to get the better of him, but the director has a new plan. Suddenly, Li Kifeng punches him in the face with all his might. To the director of his family business and tells him to get lost, he is very angry and asks why he still hasn't realized how strong the Xiao Tao Qi Pet Store is. And how is this one? The director dared to involve their family. This is all. Li Kifeng says that he will hold the director accountable for such actions. Tang family teachers say that Xiao Yu technique is a mistake. After all, it cannot be that this is a stationary glazed body. They urgently say that the family needs to be informed about this. Vice Rector Dunn says that Xiao Yu is among the top five in the city. This is the best result in the history of their Fengshan University. Dunn turns to Su Ping. He says that if he is free later, but before he has time to finish, Su Ping replies that he is busy because the snake heart sent him something. He says that someone in their family tried to secretly send a report on the use of the fixed glass enclosure. The earthly heart is afraid that this will cause problems, so it asks the owner what to do about it. Su Ping replies that the earthly heart can forever hush up this matter, so let him publish this news in a few days, and Su Ping already has countermeasures. Zhou family resident Su Ping comes there. He sees that training is going on there now. The captain tells his subordinates to train harder or not to be lazy. Suddenly, the captain notices Su Ping. He orders the army to stop because the patriarch ordered them to greet Su Ping when they see him. The guys greet Su Ping. The guy understands that, despite the fact that the patriarch swore allegiance to him because of his interests, others are still unhappy and their loyalty is low. Therefore, you will have to teach them a lesson again later. And the owner says that if they don't want to say hello, then he wants to see the patriarch. The captain orders one of his subordinates to take the master to the patriarch. Mr. Su Ping has a lot to do, but today he decided to visit the humble abode of the Zhou family. Su Ping says that some time ago, they placed over a hundred orders to cultivate high-level celestial beasts. Therefore, the guys are interested in what effect this will have. The master replies that the results of cultivation are excellent. They can say that everyone is a pet which were sent to his pet store, got rid of all the shortcomings. Su Ping says that since this is the case, why didn't he notice any changes among the members of the Zhou elite army? The master answers that these orders provide high-ranking personnel of their Zhou family.
He asks how ordinary servants can deserve such a good thing. Su Ping thinks about it. He understands what this means. After he eliminated the thrashing of low-ranking employees, nothing changed now for the guy. It is not surprising that the elite army of the Zhou family behaved this way. The guy asks if the master saw, Yesterday was an elite league tournament. The master replies that of course he saw the performance of the master's sister and the follower. They immediately caught his eye and if he doesn't even talk about victory over two. As young owners, they were incredibly cool. Especially those two thunder techniques that he had never heard of before. The master was so excited to see there were many of them. The disciples of the Joe Elite Army recorded this and watched every day, hoping to one day learn the divine art of Su Ping. The gentleman says that this is all very good. Then let the Joe family army will summon all major celestial beasts. The master does not understand why Mr. Su Ping is doing this because the Elite Army is currently training, but Su Ping says it's time for him to increase his strength. Su Ping begins training test treasure medium combat power uses flame cut this test field. Zhou family beast uses shields and evades attacks. The guy is happy that the seven levels of green light flaming bat has finally reached the combat power of the average seventh stage. The guy standing next to him says that the seventh stage is quite low. He uses a thunderclap that attacks a huge treasure eight levels of orange combat power above the eighth stage. The target almost exploded. These are not repeated relatives. Last month, this guy possessed a power below the eighth stage. He is a high-ranking son of the Zhou family. The captain says that at this age, having a heavenly beast, with combat power above the eighth stage, nothing prevents him from rising to the level of the right protector in a few years. But the son asks the captain whether the elders, there are no more opportunities, and the one-time captain doesn't want to try it. The captain says that he doesn't dare. He's no longer young and is probably stuck in this kingdom for the rest of his life. And with the speed of the high-ranking son of this family, the captain believes that the guy will surpass him in the near future. Xiao Tao Chia's cultivation services are truly amazing. And if you go there regularly and essentially do nothing, you can become a master of fighting beasts. The son of the Zhou family says that the captain knows the truth and it's time for him to retire. But the son's pet of the Zhou family was not only raised once in the Su Ping store, but in a month he rose only a few kingdoms. The family master orders the elite army to equal. He says to summon his celestial beasts because the owner of Su Ping is going to check them all. The army lined up and began to summon their celestial beasts one by one. Su Ping sees their levels. The captain asks Su Ping how their elite army has good dynamics. Su Ping replies that his beast is wild in five minutes. But the guy doesn't understand. Why is it bad luck or low understanding because he will be able to transfer the skill? Su Ping found the one he needs. This is the ancient vine combat power, which is the lowest seventh stage. He tells the guy to come forward. The owner begins to analyze because the ancient vine belongs to the type of plants with the seventh stage pedigree and belongs to the class of healers. He asks if the beast is not enough. Up to the main force. But the guy replies that he plans to train his beast so that it becomes a multifunctional fighting beast that can fight and heal, after all. And the son of the venerable Joe family, he says that the guy talks well. But the fact is that his beast is completely zero in attack and attraction. He says that such garbage should be kicked out of the squad altogether. He asks why Mr. Su Ping doesn't go to him because pay attention to his thundercloud beast. At this time, the owner of Su Ping asks if this is whose style. He combines healing and attack in the sky because he sees such an interesting combination. Su Ping commands the beast to use thunderous dragon waves straight. Engraving pet skills. Even a ninth stage cultivator can only dream of such a skill. Su Ping says that he gave him a new pet skill based on the guy's idea. The owner asks why the guy doesn't try out the healing and attack abilities. But the guy who serves in the Zhou family army is very surprised that the pet has new skills. But he says that there are no wounded here who need healing. But Su Ping points to the son of the family and says that this guy needs help. He uses the demon god's suppressive fist first powers and injures the guy. He now commands the little celestial beast to use healing. The army warrior tells his beast to use thunderous dragon wave. But the son of the Zhou family sees what is flying at him, and he says that this thing will kill him. She completely pierces the guy, and the severed part of his body grows back. But this turns out to be an unsuccessful attempt. After all, they used the regeneration of a severed hand. The captain can't believe his eyes. 
because it was only the healing technique that betrayed the eighth stage as being capable of something like that. Suddenly, the target was destroyed. The destructive force even reached ninth stage peak. This means that in this world, there really is a pet skill that can attack and heal at the same time. The beast itself was so easy to control with one wave of the hand. He climbed several small kingdoms. The owner of this beast, a warrior from the army, is surprised just as much by his beast because his ancient vine can demonstrate such terrifying power. He does not believe in what he sees. Su Ping realizes that the severed limb has not healed completely. He says that thanks to his teachings, the guy will be able to unleash the full potential of his beast. Therefore, he needs more training. The Zhou family army does not believe what they are hearing. Can Su Ping really teach them such complex skills? This is incredible generosity. The guys who were rude before regret it, that they were grimacing with dissatisfaction in front of him. He wonders if it's too late for him to make friends with Su Ping, or perhaps he still remembered everything. But if you miss this opportunity, this will be very bad, so you need to try your luck with all your might. Now the elite Zhou army swears that it will watch Mr. Su Ping until his death. The owner understands that this is very good, but a loyal army is by no means enough. He says that they will all come to him day and night for pumping, and while the off-season lasts, this way you can strengthen them in a short time. The master understands that Su Ping. This boy plans to uproot him in order to directly control the elite army. Therefore, he asks Mr. Su Ping why there is such a rush. But Su Ping asks Mr. Has he still not noticed that something is changing in Longjiang? Su Ping receives a message from the snake heart. It says that the master should take care of himself. After all, the purpose of the trip is to the starry sky. This is a victory for great families in the tournament. The presenter announces that the final of the Elite League tournament has finally arrived. And today, the candidates representing the base city of Longjiang will determine the champion. Today, spectators will compete. They notice people in the towers. They are all people with noble names. But there is one free place there. No one understands who it is for. The heads of Seime sit there. Tang Longjian is the head of the Tang family. He says that Xiao Tao Qi should be cursed for dragging him into this damn game. Mu Bei Hai is the head of the Mu family. He replies that Brother Tang family should not worry. After all, if the finale is spoiled, the Lord will not sit idly by. Qin Du Juan, the head of the Qin family, asks, Did this girl really defeat his son? Liu Tianzong, the head of the Liu family, says that he wants to see for himself how strong this Xiao Tao Qi is. Ye Wuming, head of Ye family, say that it looks like something unimaginable will happen today. Another person sitting next to him is Zhou Qianlin, the head of the Zhou family. An unknown girl suddenly comes in and thanks everyone for waiting. This is the Star Guard. She says that the corrector tournament can begin, and Su Ping doesn't understand who this girl is leading and announces that this is a grand appearance. She actually sits on equal terms with the patriarchs of large families. The presenter says that Yan Bin Yue sits in the center. Miss Yan Bin Yue will directly participate in their finals as a member of the Starry Sky organization. The audience is discussing that an outsider immediately qualified for the finals. This is completely unfair and the Starry Sky is the most powerful organization on the continent. People understand that staying here is a little dangerous. They would rather watch the live broadcast at home. The presenter says that today, six participants will compete for the championship, and it is a great honor for the city of Longjiang to attract attention starry sky, and due to the change in the number of participants, the final rule has also been adjusted to the appropriate sizes of six participants will be divided. In two groups, A and B, using a draw, each participant must defeat the other two in order to go further. Two winners will fight for the champion title and the remaining four will be in the first. Six Xiao Yu and Xu Kuang do not understand what kind of draw this is. The players are divided into two teams of three, so they will fight even before they reach the real final. The first to start the match in the group is Yan Binyue opposite Mu Chan. Suddenly, Mu Bei Hai raises his hand and says that the Mu family is giving up. The audience doesn't understand what's going on. After all, the Mu family from which the previous champion came voluntarily gave up the chance to become a champion. Perhaps this is a matter in the starry sky. Alas, even large families do not dare. Challenge the starry sky and strangers want to appropriate the highest and only title of their people. Su Ping doesn't understand what's going on. Vice Rector Dunn says that although the government would never be happy about this, 
Su Ping should have known about this rule. Elite tournament, royal tournament. Various talent selection mechanisms are large and small for individuals. It is an opportunity to rise in class. But for the city as a whole, it is a bargaining chip to receive the resources that the Blue Star Federation pours into it. Base cities that cannot raise strong people do not value the Federation, and if membership in the elite tournament is appropriated by outsiders, the development of the city becomes several years. Otherwise, it will go completely backwards. The vice-rector says that these large families usually demonstrate their power, but as soon as they collide with the stars, they become similar. For dogs with broken spines, the vice-rector asks Su Ping to win this championship. The host announces the second round. It is Yan Binyue versus Ye Lutnian. Ye Wu Ming realized that the old fox from the Mu family. They are trying to get rid of Xiao Tao Kia by the beckoning of the hand of the starry sky in this siege. The Ye family also wants to get a share. Although the price is high, it is acceptable as long as they avoid pointless losses. Until the subsequent royal tournament, and now announces that the family is also giving up. The host comments that suddenly the two main families, one after another, admitted defeat and madame. Yan Binyue directly advances to the finals. Ye Wu Ming addresses Zhou Tianlin. He decides to advise him that if he wants to continue living in Longjiang, then he should just allow it. For your young master to sacrifice himself. Xiao Yu was left with a few runs in the first match in Group B Xiao Yu against Zhou Wen. But old Zhou Tianlin says that now you need to listen to him. After all, he is afraid that Starry Sky and the others will not be able to protect themselves this time. And if they still want to have a place in Longjiang, then let them be flies that get confused before your eyes. Ye Wu Ming is very angry. Did this master really call him a fly? But Zhou family announces that it is also for rent. Viewers understand that the Zhou family on Xiao Tao Chia's side. They are happy that now the chances are even higher. Other masters don't understand. Did he really choose Xiao Tao Chia? They say that with old age, Zhou Tianlin has come with weakness, and now their family can only expect destruction in the second match in Group B, Xiao Yu against Xu Kuang. Xu Kuang says that the master said that Yan Binyue never showed her strength to others, so Xiao Yu should be careful. Xu Kuang announces that he is surrendering. He screams for Xiao Yu to get up and jerk her ass. He wants the girl to show this champion title thief where the crayfish spend the winter. Everyone wishes Xiao Yu good luck and they believe in her. The host announces that the long-awaited final match of the Elite League tournament of Xiao Yu against Yan Binyue has begun. Yan Binyue was walking one day when she saw a small cat and went up to him to look. A little girl runs up to her and says that the kitten is very cute. She asks the lady if she wants to pick him up. If so, the girl will now bring the carrier. The girl replies that it is not necessary and at the moment the kitten is killed. Yan Binyue says that he hates cute things. Both participants are already in place and the ninth stage protective barrier is installed. They must win in two out of three rounds. Surrender or loss of consciousness is considered a loss and no one will be able to carry. More than one seventh stage secret treasure everyone wishes Xiao Yu good luck. But unexpectedly, a blow comes from the battlefield into the spectator's seat and it turns out that a man has been killed. This is the Star Master Zhou Wuji titular demon weapon combat power above the ninth stage. He says that anyone who dares to speak ill of his celestial beast will end up like them. Starry Sky Master 4 Star member Yin Feng Xiao. This is the titular Dragon Knight combat power above the ninth stage. He says that it seems that the people in Longjiang need to be re-educated. Everyone sits still and the tournament will continue. The host announces that the judges should continue to read the rules. Healing is not provided during the tournament, so participants must monitor the duration of their pets. Xiao Yu asks Yan Binyue for some reason immediately reach the finals. It's not because they don't have the confidence and strength to first win this champion of their city. The battle begins. The girls use all their strength and call upon the heavenly beasts to fight. But Xiao Yu did not have time to summon her beast. How Yan Binyue's lightning strike damages Xiao Yu, the presenter comments that, a sudden blow, this power is far beyond the sixth stage. He wonders if Xiao Yu can withstand it. But the girl, member Xiao Yu, successfully took the blow safely. Tang Longzhan understands that of course it was a movable glass body. He understands that this is a matter of the pet store and its owner. After the tournament, he wants to publicly destroy them. Vice Rector Dunn says that as soon as the round began, Yan Binyue immediately attacked. 
he says that this is very low. Su Ping replies that the star patterns on Yan Binyue's body are not simple. With the protection of the motionless glass body, Xiao Yu flew so far, meaning the power added by her star patterns could far exceed the seventh stage. The vice rector wonders how this is the seventh level, why then the judges pretend that they don't see anything. The owner of Su Ping replies that at first he doubted when they were divided into groups A and B. Among the organizers, including among the judges, there should be many people subordinate to the star. A warning for a premature start, and even if the starry sky violated the rule, they will not do anything about it. The vice rector asks if there is any point in fighting further if everyone is bribed. But Su Ping replies that this makes sense because this is what makes them better than them. Xiao Yu summons his dragon. She orders her celestial beast to use, met notice, that the shape of this beast is different from what it was last time. Perhaps it has evolved. After all, the holiness of Yan Bin Yue is felt in the golden radiance. In bewilderment, a blow from the dragon flies at her. Zhou Wuji and Yin Feng Xiao, how this dragon was able to suppress the lady with the star threats of the eighth stage peak, with just his body that this heavenly beast is not easy. Suddenly the lady is given a sword, the radiance of this sword is very bright and incredibly beautiful. The audience does not understand what it is. Xiao Yu orders his dragon to attack Yan Bin Yue. But suddenly, the sword pierces the protective dome that is located above the arena and falls right into the hands of Yan Bin Yue at the time when the beast begins to attack. Yan Bin Yue uses his sword and wounds the moon beast by giving it a scratch. The presenter says that the lady's sword not only easily cut the protective barrier of the ninth stage, it also damaged the moon dragon's silver frost star. It looks terrifying. The vice rector doesn't believe what's happening now, because this is a ninth stage secret weapon, because they say that it can cut through iron like dirt and kill beasts of the same rank, that's why. The vice principal is afraid that even the silver moon dragon will not be able to cope with it, and he asks Su Ping if this sword is not a family heirloom. From another base city, he doesn't understand how he ended up with the girl. Yin Feng Xiao says that Xiao Yu was able to move the lady, which is quite good, but that's where it all ends. The spectators begin to be indignant. They cannot tolerate this anymore, because in the tournament, it is forbidden to use secret treasures above the seventh stage. In the elite tournament, fighting animals fight. Instead of using magic weapons, Zhou Wuji believes that the audience is noisy again, and he uses a spear of star power. He points it at the audience and says that they have no right to point to the starry sky, but at this time, Su Ping's demonic fist repels Lutnian's blow. He doesn't understand that this is happening, and who did it. Su Ping says that if they want to show the difference, then let them do it correctly without going beyond the limits. The judges of the tournament, combat power of the lower ninth degree, understand whether an explosion is threatening. After all, this guy was able to withstand the attack of a master in the highest ninth stage. After all, even they are not capable of this. They decide to ask the starry sky for instructions. Zhou Wuji says that how dare they demand help when they themselves are good for nothing. Yin Feng Xiao Yu answer so that the guy doesn't worry. But they are here to help the lady win the championship. And when they're done, they can do what he likes. Zhou Wuji requests Shu Ju, who is the sword bearer of the former ninth stage combat power. She explained to the judges that the sword is considered a star beast since the mistress signed a contract for its use. That is, he is the caretaker of the pet. Geshue remembers that there was indeed a case when a cultivator at the peak opened the spirit of an object and endowed it with the mind of Madame Yanbinue's copper, meets the requirements of a star pet, and is unlimited by rank. Therefore, the round continues. We can only say that this is truly the strongest organization on the Asian continent. They have a wide range of contacts. And this organization even works better all over the world. The spectators don't understand the coaches. In what place is the sword a pet because this is clearly a deception? With the support of such a strong organization, it will be very difficult to win this match. Yan Binyue uses sword spirit mastery. The lady's star power level began to rise higher and stronger. She summons her beasts at a time. She brought three war beasts. This is the sad worm, the middle ninth stage of strength. The wrathful devil has the middle ninth stage and the Asura dragon has the highest ninth stage. The presenter does not understand whether all these animals are at the ninth level of strength. One of them takes second place in Drowning Dragons. The presenter announces that they are ready to begin because Yan Binyue will not leave the slightest trace on the Jin. At this time, 
Xiao Yu orders his beast that it is time for them to engage in battle because they must win. The girl uses the resonance of the beast's blood. The girls begin to fight. The beast that belongs to Yan Binyue uses Asura flame, and the beast that belongs to Xiao Yu uses Thousand Mile freezing. These two powerful magical blows collide with each other. Xiao Yu does not understand that there are many disadvantages here, and she orders her celestial beast to use the Moon Claw. The presenter comments that as expected from the unique Mu family technique, unity of spirit is the first to strike after the other. Xiao Yu uses the Wind God's Thunder Arrow, and the presenter continues to comment that it is better to injure five fingers than to break only one. Member Xiao Yu decided to use her unique attack. The presenter doesn't understand what happened, and for some reason it didn't work for participant Xiao Yu. Yan Binyue says that Xiao Yu's Thunder Arrow completely ignores defensive skills the more star power is used for defense. She becomes even weaker if Xiao Yu had not shown this in the previous match. Then Yan Binyue would not have immediately realized that for protection, it is necessary to destroy the arrows themselves. And a surprise attack is, after all, a surprise attack. It's stupid to assume that this will work all the time. Mrs. Yan Bingy launched a frontal attack and begins to attack. The girls begin hand-to-hand -hand combat. But member Xiao Yu was able to fight against Miss Yan Bing. The war beasts of both sides are also equal. Yan Bin Yue wounds Jin with his sword and makes a cut on her leg while the head-to-head -head fight continues. Member Xiao Yu constantly pushes away from the blade of the sword. Moving away from her battle beast as a result, the combined effect of the beast's blood resonance will not be fully utilized by the participant. Xiao Yu loses her grip under the onslaught of Miss Yan Bin Yue. She has no other choice but to simply dodge. But on the other hand, the Moon Dragon is a very strong opponent on all sides. The situation is even more complicated. Xiao Yu understands that now is the time to catch everyone at once. She orders her beast to use the eighth stage divine skill cutting with a divine wing. This is another skill of a martial beast that no one has seen before, and in one breath, it seriously injured three ninth stage martial beasts. The judge doesn't understand. Will the winner be determined soon? Zhou Wuji says that the fighting beasts are mistresses. This is not the kind of garbage they have encountered before. It used murderous intent. This is an incredibly dangerous move. After all, this complete disregard for the life of a battle beast is the same as an oath to crush the moon dragon silver frost stars at any cost. Xiao Yu doesn't understand is this Yan Bin Yue's plan to win in the first round. It turns out that Xiao Yu is forced to resort to summoning her another celestial beast. Xiao Yu understands that Yan Bin Yue's fighting beasts are at the limit of their strength, and if they and the snowball hold out, victory will be in their hands. She orders her celestial beast to use the fire exit. Yan Binyue understands that she already knows what Zhao Yu wants to do because the fire escape of her phantom fire beast is an illusion, and this does not harm her, and Yan Binyue understands that the real beast must have walked around her from behind. To attack on the sly, if Xiao Yu resorted to such actions, then now she would receive a retaliatory strike from Yan Binyue. With her giant, shiny, deadly knife, she strikes a small, celestial beast right in the air. Yan Binyue is happy that she finally saw the true expression on Xiao Yu's face. She asks who will save the girl now. In an instant, Yan Binyue wants to kill Xiao Yu with his knife. Her speed is so lightning fast and the flash is fast. The host comments that he doesn't know if member Xiao Yu will be able to dodge such an incredibly strong blow. But unexpectedly, the patronage of the ice goddess was used, who blocked the fatal blow of the bloody demonic ball. Xiao Yu managed to fight off the attack, and no longer understands that it's bad that she and the beast are moving further and further away from each other. After all, Yan Bin Yue's strength is much greater than hers, and now only the moon dragon beast can compete with her. The beast breaks through the celestial beasts that belong to Yan Bin Yue and attacks her. Xiao Yu orders his celestial beast to use attack now. Yan Bin Yue says that the protection of the ice goddess Xiao Yu is impregnable, but the thunder arrow of the wind God cannot ignore the protection, Yan Binyue says, that what Zhao Yu fought for and ran into. And now the Silver Frost Star Moon Dragon is wavering. After all, the War Beast is the mistress. Yan Binyue took the chance to bite the Moon Dragon, but unexpectedly, the Moon Dragon uses 1,000 Mile Freeze. Yan Binyue uses the Rock Cutting Divine Sword and hits the Moon Silver Dragon and injures it very badly. Now he attacks the genie, the celestial beast that belongs to Yan Binyue. They tie her hands. 
prevent her from making a movement and cover her mouth with tentacles. The host comments that Xiao Yu's two celestial beasts were seriously injured, and she herself is completely connected. He asks the court if they are ready to make a verdict, and they say that Xiao Yu has not given up yet and is still able to resist. Then the round continues. The spectators are angry because it is obvious that the girl wanted to give up until they shut her mouth. They call her swindlers and say that this is a mockery. Zhou Wuji says that there is nothing wrong with bullying and the strong should bully the weak. Otherwise, there will always be fools who want to break the rules. Zhou Wuji wants mistress to teach a lesson. Xiao Yu, at this time, the animals tied Xiao Yu's hands and lifted her up. The girl wanted to give up, but they did not give her the opportunity to do so now in her hands. Yan Binyue, she holds a sword and can kill Xiao Yu at any moment. The audience doesn't understand that this is happening. In broad daylight, they can't look at it anymore. The masters understand that the starry sky is really overdoing it. But if they dared to claim first place, then let them get it in the teeth at once. Yan Binyue is about to kill Xiao Yu with his sharp fire sword, but suddenly the sword is right in front of the girl's face. Suddenly her brother Su Ping, he says that Xiao Yu said that she gave up. Then the first round is over. And the family of sister Yan Binyue does not understand when this guy was able to make it in time, because he grabbed this sword with his own hand and nothing happens to him. The presenter says that in the ninth protective barrier, a huge hole appeared on the steps. He asks, hasn't the court made a decision yet? They announce that in the first round, Yan Binyue held the victory for Yan Binyue. She doesn't understand how this man was able to. His appearance doesn't match his immune strength. But for some reason, she feels something not humanly frightening. Su Ping gains enormous strength and uses all his star power to stand against Yan Binyue. Zhou Wuji notices that this is the person behind Xiao Tao Chiu under the name Su Ping. Yin Feng Xiao says that it was a good blow, but the arena is a place for the participants, and he injured the lady's pet and interfered with the judges. Yin Feng Xiao is furious. He asks, is this an attempt to mock the weak? The host says that this is a terrifying star power, and the entire arena is oppressed and trembling. Xiao Yu, without strength, she cannot even get up from her knees. Su Ping says not to be misunderstood because he is an ordinary pet store owner and just accidentally provided services to his client. Su Ping summons his little skeleton and gives it to Xiao Yu. Now Xiao Yu will fight him. Zhou Wuji says that they will forget that Su Ping interfered with the judge's decision. He asks why the guy was going to let his pet participate. He tells Su Ping not to think that they will just sit and watch. Su Ping says that his pet store has always had a celestial beast rental service even though this little skeleton belongs to him. And Mrs. Zhao Yu rented it in advance, and he is just fulfilling his duties. Their sword, which belongs to Yan Bin Yue, also has a personal caretaker. Yin Feng Xiao understands that this is said strongly, but Zhou Wuji is angry. The little skeleton asks what if he seriously injures the lady's pets, but Su Ping replies that everything just happened that way, that the war beasts of their ladies do not have much combat power. It's better to call them off. And in return for this, they will receive their animals. The number does not matter. The main thing is that they admit their defeat. The masters say that this is too rude because Su Ping doesn't know who he's talking to. Fighting the monsters of the starry sky, the number of which is not limited one several times and already forgot his place. It looks like this guy will be executed without them. Yin Feng Xiao and Zhou Wu Ji say that this is too big a loud statement. Zhou Wu Ji asks if the guy really dared to challenge the starry sky. They say that it would be better if the guy really had trump cards. Viewers notice a very terrible aura. They understand that this match is becoming more and more dangerous. Suddenly, the dome is pierced by five huge celestial beasts. They very easily broke the protective barrier. No one understands whether each of them has combat power close to the limits of the ninth stage, because it feels like the nature of the game has sharply changed to a demonstration of strength. Yan Binyue thanks her uncles for their help because they provided her with the heavenly beasts. The girl says that she will not live up to their expectations and will make these insolent people lose their breath. They don't understand that these five celestial beasts are even stronger than the last dragon. Su Ping says that the girl will have the opportunity to fight. She just needs to sign a temporary contract with the little skeleton and then he will be hers. But Xiao Yu is in a panic, because she has a big difference in strength with a small skeleton. And if she is forced to sign a contract, she is afraid that she will have problems, but Su Ping tells her to trust him.
The hand of the little skeleton is quite small, but it is full of battle marks. After touching the hand of the celestial beast, the girl does not feel either heat or cold. A temporary contract has been concluded. The girl is absorbed into the consciousness of her two heavenly beasts and is glad that even though they are weak, they are alive, and then she will definitely cure them. Strange. But she cannot find the consciousness of a small skeleton. Suddenly she notices a huge monster that is behind her. This is a huge skeleton. This is the consciousness of a small beast. Xiao Yu does not understand that the battle beast that accompanied her brother in his adventures is very strong. The host announces that the second round of the finals, and if contestant Xiao Yu fails again, then Miss Yan Bin Yue will receive the elite tournament championship. Xiao Yu understands that each of the martial beasts on Yan Bin Yue's side are also incredibly strong. She doesn't know if it's possible for her to defeat them. Su Ping flies away from his sister and tells her not to worry and just give the order and the little skeleton will figure it out on his own. The judge announces that the round has begun, and the host orders the beast to tear Xiao Yu and the little skeleton together. Xiao Yu tells her beast that she hopes for him, and he enters the battle. He uses the flash of the undead, and with one of his sword kills one of the celestial beasts that belongs to Yan Bin Yue. He cuts it into several pieces. She understands that it is so fast she can't even keep up with his movements. Yin Feng Xiao says that the martial beast close to the limit of the ninth stage has been beheaded by the rest of the celestial beasts that belong. Yan Bin Yue tries to attack the little skeleton, but he suddenly points his sword in their direction, and he cuts off their hands along with their weapons that were in their hands. He uses the infinity cutting of chaos stars. The enemy is using the ninth stage illusory art illusory eternal prison, but unexpectedly, a small skeleton uses a corpse roar and destroys that beast, tearing his flesh into pieces and leaving only a skeleton and bones. No one would believe that the ninth stage martial beast was killed by the roar. This is how divine this little skeleton is. Now the heavenly beast gets to the lady herself, and Zhou Wuji asks to stop and not do anything with the mistress. But when the little skeleton attacks her, the mistress puts out her knife. To fend off the blow, her magnificently powerful knife breaks into pieces, and at that moment the small skeleton gets hit with the knife, and her blood flies to the sides. The lady sees her sword cracking into pieces. The girl's whole life passes before her eyes. Indeed, in nature, dangerous things are usually divided into two categories. The first is those wearing bright colors that scare away others. And the second is one that hides its existence by becoming one with the environment. But the little skeleton in front of her does not fit these categories as pure blackness, chilling disharmony. The lady flies away from a strong blow from the small skeleton. He cuts her body and the girl is incredibly badly injured. But Xiao Yu notices that her rival has treasures to protect her body. This is very cool because a person is only that having exposed the moon dragon to a hopeless situation, he is now defenseless. The masters do not believe what they see because the people of the starry sky are dealt with like meat on a cutting board. They don't understand whether they underestimated their strength or whether Su Ping's true power is actually beyond imagination. This is exactly what the King of Poison said, and it seems that he was not exaggerating. The masters are simply shocked by what is happening. The masters ask the foreman Zhou. He knew from the very beginning about the true power of this so-called Xiao Tao Chia. They ask how he could have known, to which Zhou Wen replies that he found out when he almost died. The small skeleton takes the wounded lady by the hair and drags her into the distance. But then they suddenly fly up. Zhou Wuji and Yin Feng Xiao, they extort the little skeleton to put down the sword. After all, they give up when they fly up to the small celestial beast. They say that they want to give up the presenter comments that this is an incredible turn of events. He can't even believe his eyes because in an instant, this little skeleton killed five celestial beasts with no less than the ninth stage of combat power, and Lady Yan Bin Yue's side admitted defeat. Then Su Ping suddenly flies up. He asks why they give up, and where did their stellar doubt go then? Su Ping asks if they are ready to give up the championship right now. The five masters are simply shocked and furious because this is a crazy kid. Now they don't care about this championship. After all, if Yan Bin Yue had really been killed, then the starry sky would have crushed everything and everyone into powder. Yin Feng Xiao says that they are giving up the championship, and as long as Su Ping does not harm Miss, they are ready to leave everything in the past but the little skeleton still does not remove his sword from the mistress's chest. 
Yin Feng Xiao sees that the early mistress is still festering, and there is an incredibly strong, dense, dark energy. Is this really cadaveric poison? Su Ping asks again if he understands correctly that Yin Feng Xiao just said to leave everything in the past. But do they really mean that if you run into them, you must immediately make a mistake? Su Ping Ah says that once they were on the verge of death, they decided to be generous and forgive him. Zhou Wuji tells Su Ping to quickly neutralize the poison if it causes their star to fall. Then the base city will be buried with them. Yin Feng Xiao says that it is only they who give mercy because the starry sky is beyond anyone's strength. Su Ping reminds Ye Lutnian of how he said that the strong, we must mock the weak. The guy asks if Zhou Wuji will be able to stop him in honor of the death grip he will find himself in. And of the two, only one side will suffer. But unexpectedly, a small skeleton cuts off Zhou Wuji's hand with his sword. The hand flies to the side, and the guy himself is simply furious. He asks how Su Ping dared to do this. Yin Feng Xiao says that anyone who dares to take a swing at them is a corpse. Suddenly, ten ninth stage masters rushed into the arena and asked whether the master was the target of the regicide's order. They say it's that guy. Zhou Wuji asks, does Su Ping still want to fight? They say that then they will watch him die. The owner does not understand what the regicide means and who they even are. The masters cannot believe their eyes. Did they really call for the order of the regicides? One of the masters says that this is an order that will be issued only when a threat of the king of beasts level arises in the base city. Having issued an order, the subordinates of the starry sky, 30 high-ranking ninth stage masters are dispatched, and 10 ninth stage peak masters are dispatched to suppress the threat. They have the strength that can cope with the king of beasts. This is the greatest dependence on the existence of the Starry Sky Organization. A master with six stars in the name of the gypsies is the titular king of the soldiers. His combat power had reached the peak of the ninth stage. He orders the others to leave the territory and find shelter. Because if it comes to battle, he estimates the small city of Longjiang. It will turn into ruins, and then it will be useless to run, that's all. People are just scared. They don't want to die. Xiao Yu doesn't believe what he hears. Is the whole city really crazy? She has to tell her mom to leave town, but Su Ping tells her sister not to worry because their mom is already in the safest place in the world. Mom notices that the broadcast of this year's tournament was suddenly interrupted and asks Joanna if her children are in danger, to which the girl replies that all these ants are equally worthless. She asks if Auntie wants some more tea. Su Ping asks again, which means he has been ordered to kill the king. He says they chose an unattainable goal. Zhou Wuji begins to get angry. How dare this guy consider himself a king? This is the highest degree of arrogance. Suddenly, there is an announcement for the families of Longjiang City to listen to the order. Those who help the starry sky destroy the enemy will be generously rewarded, and those who obey this order will be considered a traitor. Tang Longjian is absolutely furious. He doesn't need words because the guy dismantled his beloved daughter Tang family, has long wanted to drink his blood and bite his flesh. He calls the flying army and tells it to go forward. The presenter does not understand what is happening in the sky, because thousands of purple thunder have appeared. Ninth stage peak birds. Tang. Long John orders them to help the starry sky and give it Su Ping. All high-ranking masters and the flying army enter the battle. They fire archery fire arrows, and attacking everything that moves, the roof of the dome, the building where the competition was held, collapses. People ask for help. Pieces of stone from which this building was built fall on them from above. Guys from the greatest families like what is happening, they say. That the Tang family's Thousand Wings army is really strong. But one of the guys says that the Tang family has gone too far. He jumps out of his place under protection. Where he was and calls his heavenly beast, the vice-rector sees in front of him a natural patron who catches stones right above his head. He sees that the young master of the Qin family did this. Qin Maoran orders the immediate withdrawal of civilians Vice Chancellor Dun. Thanks the guy he can't believe that the Tang family. Indeed, it has taken such high-profile actions, it is destructive power. One of the masters, Tang Longjian, says that Su Ping is within range of his flying army, so he can fall without resisting. Everything that happens is like a tidal wave. Yin Feng Xiao asks what the other patriarchs will say. Zhou Wuji says to, they did not even try to pass themselves off as neutrality, because neutrality would also be regarded as disobedience to the will of the starry sky. 
Zhou Wen says that he naturally belongs to Su Ping's side, so he tells the others to take their time and think carefully. All the masters don't know who to help the starry sky or Su Ping knights, no matter which side they are on. They still can't joke with anyone, and if they are unlucky and find themselves on the losing side, then after that they will be crossed out by the winning side, and these will no longer be minor grievances. And related to the survival of the entire family, the current strength of Su Ping is capable of easily crushing five battle beasts of the ninth stage peak, although this is incomprehensible. But the enemy starry sky, which has already been destroyed more than once by the crisis of the king of beasts in the base cities, is reinforced in the form of a warrant order of regicides at least twenty times stronger. Than ordinary masters, this is an undeniable strength obtained through military merit. In addition, the masters have tripped up the mischievous man before, and he is still their enemy, and even if they help Su Ping, there will be no benefit from this. On the other hand, the starry sky promised a great reward. It seems that the question of which side to choose for the masters is clear at first glance. Qin Maoran sees his father, Qin Dujuan, joining the side of the starry sky. The father sends a mental message to his son. He says that it is too dangerous here. They must unite with the starry sky. To fight Su Ping now, the son must take cover. But Qin Maoran begs his father to change his mind. His father asks how he can change it. Qin Maoran says that the starry sky does not care about their lives and the lives of everyone living in this city, and even if they win, what will happen to them? The father asks if the son really wants to take the side of Su Ping, because this is no longer a joke, and the son is too serious and asks the father to open his eyes, because the starry sky demands more and more every year, and today they will cut out more resources from five cities and will not blink an eye. Pleasing the starry sky is like putting out a fire. After all, the fire will not go out while the coal is burning. The father says that no one can stop the king's order to kill and now is not the time to be a hero. You need to save your life and choose the right side. Chin Maoran says that the power of a mischievous person can only be known by fighting with him. And they are not opponents. Chin Maoran asks the father to trust his child's judgment. After all, Su Ping can really overthrow the king of the starry sky. Chin Dujuan does not believe what he hears. How is it possible to overthrow the starry sky? This is something incomprehensible. But suddenly the masters notice that the Zhou family is not with them. Zhou Wuji says that children always say stupid things because of the wind in their heads. But as the head of the clan, he should not listen to his son. Chin Du Juan asks if his son has gone crazy, but the guy still stands his ground. Tang Longzhan says that with age the guy has become more impulsive. He asks not to spoil his fun and orders his army to shoot. Chin Du Juan agrees with his son. He says that his son is right, and he is getting old. He also confirms that he was exhausted by the worries of the whole family. All this time, Qin Du Yuan was silent, because everything that the starry sky created was their life. But Qin Du Yuan's main title is God of Wrath, and he will never sink to the level of mediocrity. The master tears off his cloak and shows all his strength. Personal arrows fly out of him and hit the head of the army of the Tang family. The masters notice some incredibly powerful roar, they did not suspect that the god of wrath is the Qin family. After so many years of silence, he did not weaken, but became even stronger. Tang Longzhan orders his flying army to regroup. He says that the Tang family has never had to answer to anyone. He says that this also applies to the god of wrath. Now the guy wants Su Ping dead. Qin Dujuan says that he will be happy to help the guy. Su Ping says that chief god of wrath shouldn't dirty his hands with these fry. He summons the elite Zhou army. Tang Longzhan can't believe his eyes. A huge powerful army comes out in front of him. Along with his war beasts, Xu Kuang rides with them on a dark dragon dog. He orders the army to surround the arena and prevent them from leaving. Xu Kuang says that it's finally their turn. Xu Kuang turns to the master. He says that those people in the sky, he can leave it to them. Tang Longzhan does not believe that the elite Zhou army is standing in front of him. He doesn't understand. Isn't this a group of seventh or eighth stage scum from the Joe Garbage family? He asks how they are going to defeat the flying army of the peak eighth stage Tang family. Su Ping asks what his store is for then according to Tang Longjian. The owner orders Xu Kuang not to leave anyone behind. He remembers how he refined the Zhou army's celestial beasts by using the engraved paths of thunder. Xu Kuang orders the heavenly ones. Zhou army beasts prepare anti-aircraft guns. He uses a destructive chain of ferocious thunder. 
This destructive chain occupies the thousandth place in the path of thunder. During an attack, it automatically hooks nearby opponents, causing them equal damage, and is capable of hooking Yi Wuming up to 12 people. Masters don't understand how this is possible. After all, this goes beyond any boundaries of the Tang family, which controls several base cities, really deflated in the hands of the Zhou family, which was recently conquered by Su Ping. People are in a panic. There is a very large crowd of people and there is nowhere to hide. They do not know what to do and where to go because terrible battles are taking place around them. Archers are shooting at enemies. The Zhou elite army uses cheats to protect themselves from arrows. Xu Kuang orders the troops in the front ranks to defend. The anti-aircraft troops should continue to attack the human targets in the sky. Tang Longzhan notes that the flying army is known for its stealth and agility. The thunder technique of using code army can auto-attack the enemy. He doesn't understand how it could be a coincidence that they are unable to defend themselves. Now, the only thing that comes to Tang Longzhan's mind is that Su Ping really knew about the ambush in advance. The master understands that if this continues, the entire army will be destroyed even before Su Ping suffers, because before the flying army of the entire Tang family has never suffered such heavy losses. But at this moment, Tang Longzhan orders the flying army to retreat. Xu Kuang does not understand if they are already leaving. He says that the morale of the enemy troops has fallen. He orders the army to finish off the enemies. He says that not a single feather should be left on these birds. He says to fight them until the yolk of their eggs thickens. Suddenly, one of the army men makes a call to the tracer. He gives the coordinates. This is the low earth orbit of a blue star, the main city of the starry sky. Su Ping does not understand what is happening. But in the sky, a fiery ray breaks through the clouds and strikes the Zhou army and their animals. Xu Kuang can't believe what the shield sees at all, and they, together with the beast, find themselves in defense. No one understands what is happening at all. But Qin Dujuan says that this is a weapon of mass destruction of the Starry Sky Organization. This is a 10,000th space gun tracer. The masters ask, do they really think that they can escape simply by running far away? Ye Wu Ming says that staying on the side of the Starry Sky was the right decision. Tang Longzhan is waiting for the Starry Sky to defeat the elite Zhou army. But unexpectedly, the luminous serpent of purgatory takes with him the entire blow of the master. They don't believe in what they see. They are simply dumbfounded. After all, the beast, covering the elite Zhou army, uses the iron wall of the gods using the deified skill of the ninth stage. He takes the entire arena into a dome, protecting everyone from the blow. Su Ping doesn't understand how this could make the snake purgatory so afraid that he even used his trump card. Su Ping realizes that their guns are too good. Zhou Wuji and Yin Feng Xiao understand that they should have said this in the past, no matter how strong the beasts of the ninth were. Every single stage was destroyed by the tracer's cannon. They don't believe how a battle beast capable of resisting it can still exist. The warrior sees that this is a test. Not finished, he says that the beast satisfied him. He thought that this was an ordinary son of luck. He did not expect that his strength is much greater than it seems. He orders his entire army to summon war beasts at this time. The entire army and even the masters summon their war beasts. Xiao Yu sees that there are hundreds of ninth stage beast summoning rifts. Qin Mao Ran says it's an incredible feeling of pressure. The starry sky is giving it its all. These are an incredible number of celestial beasts with enormous power, and they all want to kill them. Captain of the Zhou Elite Army. See what a crazy and terrifying scene this is, because this is the power that the starry sky has always been proud of. The captain asks Supin to let him experience all his true strength. He orders the entire army to join the battle and kill the guy. Su Ping says that he returns in advance. The rights to use the small skeleton. He orders the beast to take care of the genie. And he himself says that he will quickly deal with the army. But Xiao Yu doesn't understand. How can this be done quickly? She tells her elder brother to be careful. Qin Du Huan says that their opponent Starry Sky, capable of killing animals, is not something that can be dealt with easily. Su Ping selects the Chaos Star Infinity Chopping Skill. High-ranking starry sky masters see that the guy is using a combination of they. They don't believe that such a young master of legendary rank exists, but Ji Gang says that in terms of combat power, they all together surpass the legendary rank. Now is the time to get rid of this annoying guy. 
Su Ping uses the dexterous type beast soul overlay he says that then he will let them all see the difference between the prepackaged legendary rank and the real thing. Su Ping goes into battle to defend himself and all those loyal to him, but he is attacked by a huge flock of thousands of heavenly beasts, to the highest degree, but when grouped with a small skeleton, Su Ping takes out a deadly lightning sword that he can kill in one blow. And this is so, because with one swing the guy kills everything that stands in front of him on the way, he cuts these heavenly beasts in half. High-ranking masters do not believe what is happening. Can this guy kill so many animals with just one blow? One of the commanders orders the soldiers in the front row to go into battle, and he orders those behind to quickly take their places. They use the ninth stage defense enhancement. But Su Ping does not stop and goes forward. He kills the heavenly beast one by one. Su Ping understands that if the owner of the war beast dies first, then his beast begins to get out of control. He orders to get rid of those war beasts, which attack indiscriminately. But suddenly Su Ping attacks a group of these masters and kills them all with one swing of his sword. They only have time to be surprised at how fast. The guy broke through the front line. This strong guy deliberately provoked them to shoot at their cunning mortals. He orders someone to kill this guy. After all, ownerless war animals bring misunderstanding to the entrance of battles, and this guy has disappeared without a trace. Chin Du Juan understands that after all there must be, after all, the biggest difference between the legendary martial beast master and the king of beasts is strategy. After all, the king of beasts could get tired due to the exaggerated number of people of the starry sky. But with a person this does not work as soon as the owner of the war beast dies. The war beasts summoned by him will lose. Control the contract and go wild so their numerical advantage becomes a disadvantage. And most importantly, Su Ping is a legendary master, an incredibly smart guy and a good warrior. Chin Du Juan praises his son for doing a good job. The high-ranking masters understand that this guy, Su Ping, is a tough nut to crack, so they decide to get to his team first. Xiao Yu see that they want to kill the master of the ninth stage. The beast that belongs to Qin Mao Ran is very wounded. Qin Du Juan says that the army should first go through the nickname. After all, they cannot let their brother down. Su Ping, there are too many of these animals, and they attack Su Ping's team. Zhou Tianlin orders Qin Mao Ran to watch the flank, but Qin Mao Ran replies that there are too many of these creatures. They will be very difficult to deal with. They are trying to defend against two beasts. Zhou Tianlin uses a shield, but suddenly the snake of purgatory crushes them with one of its paws. What physical strength does this beast have? After all, its defense is not only strong enough to withstand a cruiser, but its attack power can easily crush an enemy of the same class. Xu Kuang tells his scary dark dragon not to be a dog and go forward and make a fuss. He tells the beast to use the loud killing border. This is an incredibly deadly scary battle of survival. They fight for their lives, and in the end, it will be decided who will win the Heavenly Sky or Su Ping. None of them wants to lose, so they fight until blood and sweat, walking on the bones of their own people. The masters understand that quantity does not equal quality, and they are no longer rivals to Su Ping. Lucy says that it doesn't matter that this guy is of a legendary level, but the people who stand under him are also outrageous. They understand that it was in vain that they did not join the enemy. Ji Gang tells his bloodsucker demon that this field is his sacrifice. He tells the beast to absorb them and grow. The commander orders his beast to trample the enemies of everyone under his feet. He sees that this beast has become more than the luminous serpent of purgatory. He draws energy from nearby corpses, and there are so many corpses of ninth stage masters here that this is no longer a joke, Su Ping says. What is surprising is that they allowed their troops to die so easily. After all, this G gang was originally preparing for this move, but the captain tells the guy that he realized it too late. But Su Ping says that he is never afraid when it comes to size. He uses the demon god suppressing fist. The second style is what the technique looks like. Dozens of times larger than the terrible beast itself. What kind of military equipment is this? After all, with just one blow, the overwhelming fist of the demon god smashes the beast's hand. Xiao Zhu is now near Miss Yan Bin Yue. You see that this demon bloodsucker that the King of Soldiers is proud of follows Su Ping's suppressive fist and strikes the enemy. But at this time, Lady Yan Bin Yue orders Xiao Zhu to quickly take her away from there. She understands that the eldest soldier king is no match for this guy. The lady says that they must be patient and all they can do is wait. She says that they will return with revenge when they gain strength. 
Xiao Zhu says that they will make Su Ping pay a hundredfold. The girls want to go out, but they understand that the barrier does not open. They don't understand why this is happening. But Xiao Zhu tells the lady that maybe this pet's defensive skill is like a cage that you can't get out of, and now maybe they're just locked inside. Su Ping says that this is exactly so because the iron wall of the gods cuts off everything and it is impossible to convey the message and the outside world will not be able to observe the situation inside now. The owner says that now none of them will ever be saved and he strikes, cutting off the head of a huge enemy monster. Suddenly Zhou Wu Ji calls the lady and once turns his head. She sees how their heavenly beast, which fought for the starry sky, falls. Blue Star Earth Orbit the main city of the Starry Sky is the Supreme Conference Hall of the Starry Sky. They address the representative, saying, That, except for the King of Soldiers, Ji Gang, all the members of the Starry Sky are here. The Starry Sky Senator asks if the reason for the urgent meeting is that the business seal has weakened again. The representative says that this is not the case, and it is not that serious, because the Dragon Knight and the Weapon Demon are accompanying the Star to Longjiang for practice but someone much more powerful than themselves is trying to kill them. After all, a signal for help has been received. The senator asks if this is the very outback of Longjiang. He doesn't understand if someone has appeared there who is too tough for them. The representative says that this is so. That's why he approved the order of the regicide king of the soldiers. He was sent there to solve problems, even to cultivate this star, and a lot of resources were spent. But they don't understand whether it's so important to collect. The senator says to all council members that the king's strength is the soldiers plus 39 other masters. The strength of the ninth stage and the powers to summon a cruiser are unknown. What kind of enemy this is, but he can always be easily suppressed with such force. But the representative says no matter how it is, the senators still won't understand until they see it with their own eyes. The representative comments on the photographs of the killed masters because there are pools of blood around them and you can also see captured masters of famous families and the captain of the G Gang, an incredibly large mountain of killed celestial beasts from all those who fought there. And on the top of that mountain sits that same guy. The senators can't believe it all. Was G Gang really taken alive and their entire squad destroyed? They don't understand whose hands this was. But the representative zooms in on the picture and says that the person responsible for this is named Su Ping. He shows that sitting on the heap of the dead, is the very young man they need. And information on it was sent to the senator's communicators. They read, Information that this is Su Ping. He is 18 years old and recently awakened. The guy has demonstrated title-level strength in the secret kingdom of urban areas and other places he owns a pet store. But the senator does not believe what this young guy is reading is of title level. The representative says that he is also interested in this and would like to see, What is this guy capable of? It includes rewinding the video that was filmed during the battle, but the representatives were prevented from seeing this by a secret technique of protection from prying eyes. And now it is impossible to get information from the arena. The senators ask if the representative wants to say that this guy is deliberately hiding his power. But the commander-in-chief says that he will be able to suspect that behind this guy, there is a legendary rank. But senators say that this is very unlikely to be possible, not counting the resources. This remote town could not attract a legendary patron. They say that even if they paid a lot of money, they wouldn't go there in their life. The representative says that according to data, his intelligence force, one of Yuan Tianchen's subordinates, is Tao Zong, and he is very close to Su Ping because the guy even has a photo of this master hanging in his store. Senators ask that this man is known as one of the legendary marksmen. The senator answers that it is true and if a person does not have certain connections and origins, but if he dared to use the Swordmaster's name to make money without permission, he would be dead on the street the next day. They understand that it makes sense. And so they need to conclude that the relationship between Yuan Tianchen and Su Ping is also not bad. They continue to find out information about the guy they assume. What exactly is Yuan Tianchen hired Su Ping? The senator asks the representative how they will respond and whether it is worth mobilizing troops because the king of soldiers is now in the hands of Su Ping. The representative says this is not necessary. Although the legendary rank of the starry sky has fallen, but with connections to power and the ability to kill the kings of beasts, the organization, just like Yuan Tianchen others, battles between legendary ranks will only benefit organizations in other continents 
and this is a taboo representative is confident that Yuan Tianchen. He also knows this, so he will not kill the king's soldiers, leaving the opportunity for negotiations. In addition, it was their star who first caused trouble. And if it goes like this, and then this will lead to official repression, it seems to the representative that he will not be able to save his face, so there is no need to jeopardize the public image. Starry sky for the sake of the younger generation. Therefore they need this news and, as always, declare that a wave of beasts attacked the arena and their starry sky came to the rescue in time. But several of their agents and civilians were still killed. The senators agree with the representative, but they ask whether they should apologize to Yuan Tianchen or Su Ping and ask for the freedom of the king of soldiers. But the representative goes into a rage. Why should he apologize? After all, the murder of one of the main detachments was excessive in any case, and this reduction is useless. The representative says that he will personally deal with this issue, and they are the Starry Sky Organization number one on the Asian continent. Not to mention a simple guy. Su Ping is even Yuan Tianchen gotta show a little respect. Xu Kuang looks at the pile of dead celestial beast people and the stones that fell from the arena. He says that they brutally trampled their enemies into the mud. The guy notifies the master that there is no one else left. But Su Ping says that they have guests and they need to be greeted with honor. The elite army of the Zhou family is surrounded by these ships of unknown origin. A representative comes out and tells all of them ignorant children to back off. The army sees that this is a master of title rank. This is the master of the starry sky, the supreme chairman he came to negotiate. The G gang captain sees that a representative has arrived. Masters, you see that reinforcements have arrived from the starry sky. They are asking for help. But Qin Du Juan and Zhou Tianlin say that masters talk a lot, so Qin Du Juan uses the star seal of the larynx covers the mouth of these prisoners. But the representative says that this is clearly overkill. He asks Su Ping what his demands are. After all, the people are under his command, ignorant and offended. The representative asks the young man to do him a favor. Hearing all this, Xu Kuang becomes furious. Did this old man call this legendary master a youth? He says that if the representative came to beg for mercy, then let him not pretend to be tough. Xu Kuang says that he will throw all his dentures to hell. One of the senators gets very angry and asks how the little guy dares to talk to the representative like that. But the representative tells the senator that he should stop arguing and should not swear. With the younger generation, the representative realizes that he did not notice the presence of Yuan Tianchen and Tao Zong. Are his patrons already gone? Representative believes. That Su Ping is not able to create a storm alone. Therefore, he tells the guy that they killed a detachment of ninth-level masters. The representative also says that Su Ping should hand over the king to the soldiers, and then he will give him life. But Su Ping asks what will happen if he refuses. The senator gets angry and tells the guy not to let his legendary status get the better of him. Even Yuan Tianchen himself trembles at the sight of Star Master. The representative agrees with the senator's words and says that he also advises the guy to stop pretending to be a tiger. But Su Ping asks that they are really very confident in their abilities. So the guy suggests to them how about arguing with him. Senator addresses the king of soldiers. He tells him not to worry and he will seek justice for Ji Gang. The representative asks what Su Ping wants to supply, but the guy replies that the conditions are very simple. And if the representative survives three seconds of his attack, then he will be able to take his people. And if not, then they all must obediently obey him. That this is all very funny because the guy simply relies on his young title. He doesn't understand. Is the guy really going to defeat him in three seconds? It's not possible to see this even in dreams. Therefore, the representative asks what will happen if he agrees. The king of soldiers tries to warn the representative not to agree. This asshole is the owner of the legendary rank. But alas, Ji Gang cannot say anything. The chairman asks the arrogant boy if he really says that he only needs to hold out for three seconds. He is also interested in how the guy is going to act if he defends himself with all his strength. But Su Ping, seeing the chairman's celestial beasts. But the chairman is at a loss. These five dragon beasts are with the bloodline of the peak of the ninth stage, and each head is hardened to the limit and can shake the mountains and seas. But he doesn't understand why this guy is not only not afraid of him, 
but the chairman also feels like Su Ping is somehow contemptuous of him. The chairman flies into a rage. He doesn't understand how this stupid boy dares to look down on him. Angry and perplexed, he guides his celestial beasts. He tears things on himself and turns into a strong and pumped-up guy. He tells Su Ping that he will now show him what form he had 70 years ago, and if Su Ping dares to play word games with him, then he will suffer the wrath of the ruler of the starry sky. The senators rejoice because their chairman is using a forbidden technique that crushes life expectancy to increase physical strength. They see that the chairman seems to be serious. Su Ping replies that there is no problem at all, and he promises to convince the senator of how strong he is, along with his celestial. As a small skeleton beast, he uses beast soul imposition. He recalls how the system made it possible to temporarily acquire a skill that the united pet in this skill will be twice as powerful as the original one. And that's when he chose to cast the beast's soul. This means that the guy will be able to merge with one more beast at the same time. And the effect of the selected skill will be twice as large as the outgoing one. That is, after the guy has merged, in addition to temporarily gaining the powers of a small skeleton, he can also receive double, the fighting power of another beast. The owner understands that this is a good test package. And now he will be invincible with it because it would be rude not to use this skill. Now Su Ping summons another celestial beast. This is the light-bringing serpent purgatory. Now applying the soul of a special type of beast turns an invincible and unkillable enemy into Su Ping. The senators do not understand how it is possible to use double fusion at all. But two who have reached the legendary rank are not capable of such a thing. His team is at a loss whether Su Ping has already reached the void cave realm of the second stage of the legendary rank. Now the guy enters the fight and tells the chairman to mark the time. He is about to attack, but the chairman uses the protection of the ninth stage giant dragon. Now the chairman understands that it is possible that this guy has nothing to do with the Yuan, and it seems that Su Ping is himself a legendary master and has also mastered the void cave realm. The guy uses his dragon fist to gather his strength and strikes. At this time, the chairman is simply perplexed because he is being defeated with incredible force. He understands that this is impossible, but he has no other choice, and he turns to the legendary Su Ping and says that he gives up and asks for mercy to be shown to him. But Su Ping asks again whether the chairman is really giving up, and not a moment passes before Su Ping hits the ground with a giant dragon fist, making a huge hole. The masters who took the side of the starry sky are simply at a loss. They don't know what will happen to them now. But Su Ping comes up to the chairman and says that he didn't last even two seconds. But the guy mockingly says that it seems the chairman simply hasn't fully opened up, and he offers him another round. But this legendary master understands that if, if he hadn't given up, there wouldn't have been a speck of dust left from him, and only demons could hold out for three seconds against the master of the Cave of Emptiness. That's why he says it's not worth it. Start all over again and admit defeat. But Su Ping turns back into his appearance and says that now the most powerful organization on the Asian continent Starry Sky, but now they have a new owner. Xu Kuang is happy for his master. He says that he is simply incredibly cool, and he also welcomes the new Star Lord. Now all the masters who were on the side of the Starry Sky must bow to the new ruler. And the flow of customers in the Su Ping store is increasing and increasing. The newspapers write that Xiao Yu became the champion of the elite tournament, and during the tournament a wave of beasts struck, resulting in the death of many people, including participant Yan Bing. And now the Su Ping Pet Store has successfully produced champions and become famous by becoming the most popular store in the city. Joanna and Tang Ruan still work in the pet store and serve customers. Those who come to buy food or leave the animal to be raised Tang Ruin notices that today there are a lot of customers, but looking away. She sees the owner walking and behind him all the greatest masters of the city. She sees her father. With all her appearance, she is trying to make him pay attention to her, and she begins to rejoice that in the end, her father came to save her. Well, the father didn't even look in her direction. The girl was perplexed whether her father had simply turned around and left. But she notices that her father's expression is very serious and she suspects that something might have happened. She also doesn't understand why the patriarchs of other families are there. But Tang Ruin comes up with a brilliant idea because this is most likely just a joint crusade, and her father must have called other families to besiege Su Ping. Now she is happy that Su Ping will finally die, and the time is coming when he will have the power of her family's flying army. While Tang Ruin is serving clients, 
The next guy comes up, and Tang Ruin asks what kind of service the guy needs. I answer that he needs to raise three pets. Of the second stage, he also says that he is a fan of the girl and can he hold her hand. The girl agrees and says that she will satisfy the client's request. The guy is undoubtedly happy now he has decided that he will not wash his hand until the end of this month. Joanna notices that her employee is in a good mood today. She asks what's the matter. To which Tang Ruan replies that in truth, her father joined forces with all the big families to talk to Su Ping, and soon the girl will be free. She also says that out of solidarity with the same prisoner of this bastard, when she manages to run in, she will lend a helping hand to Joanna. But Tang Ruan is worried about that, that for some reason they are very slowly dealing with Su Ping, and there is no reaction for a very long time. The girl decides to look into the room and understand what they are chatting about, because soon she should be free. There is a crowd of masters and in front of them stands her father, who bows to the owner and asks if he is satisfied. At this time, the owner tries on the cloak. He says that this is not bad, because the black thread armor is a secret treasure of the ninth stage. The materials and techniques used for its manufacture were lost. But when wearing it, you can automatically evade star power and spiritual attacks below and above the ninth stage, including the skills of both detection and blocking, which will also bounce back. She asks whether this armor will work all the time while she wears it, because it is much more convenient than his spiritual lamp. Seeing all this behind the doors of Tang Ruan, I just can't believe my eyes. She's confused because she sees black thread armor in front of her. This is the further secret treasure of her family and she doesn't understand why her father gave it to someone else. She also sees what's on the table, full of treasures of legendary families. But the chairman notices that someone is behind the door. He pulls the girl out with his force and tells her to explain how she dares to eavesdrop. But Tang Ruan asks what is happening here. She is interested in the fact that these masters are not Su Ping's enemies. The chairman asks how the girl dared to interrupt their master. Now Su Ping says that Tang Ruan is just in time. He says that he wants to sing and let the girl bring tea. The owner also says that everyone present there is also guests, and therefore they also need to remember to pour it. Tang Ruin tells the old gentleman to drink tea, but the chairman is at a loss because this girl overheard their conversation about Su Ping and is not going to take action. These secret treasures that cannot even be seen in the eyes. Why does the owner not want to hide even the eyes of others? But the chairman thinks that this girl might be Su Ping's most trusted servant. If it's the former, then everything is fine. And if not, the gentleman is afraid that he will get into trouble if he offends her. Tang Ruin asks the elderly gentleman why he suddenly began to sweat. But he abruptly begins to ask for forgiveness from the young lady. He did not want to bother her, and because of old age, his eyes became completely cloudy. He asks Tang Ruin not to inform to the owner of Su Ping and he will definitely settle accounts with her. But Tang Ruin doesn't understand what this means. Shouldn't this old man help her father's beard without Su Ping? After all, the star power he radiates is probably at the peak of the ninth stage, but for some reason he became too modest. One of the masters asks Tang Ruan's father, everyone's ears are buzzing that the young mistress has disappeared, and the master is bewildered if this maid doesn't look like his precious daughter. It turned out that he just sent her here to study. But the master replies that his daughter was kidnapped by Su Ping, and other masters understand that he got off cheaply because that the girl has clearly become stronger than before, and the young mistress clearly has a holy aura. After all, in their entire lives they had never heard of kidnappers improving their hostages. But Tang Longzhang gets furious. Why did he look for it everywhere if he gave it here himself? But other masters answer that maybe it was just a trick to hide this fact from them. Tang Ruan approaches his father and asks when the flying army will be on its way and when they can start. Well, the father doesn't understand what his daughter is talking about. But Tang Ruan replies that of course we need to save her, because her father came specifically for this. But Tang Longjiang replies that from now on the daughter must follow the owner Su Ping and work hard for him to have a good contact. The father also says that something happened to their family and now the daughter is absorbed into the Zhou families, and they are subordinate to the owner of Su Ping. Whether their family will be able to regain their authority or not depends only on Tang Ruan. But one of the masters asks the owner Su Ping, how can he let this dirty girl from the Tang family serve under him? 
then the master offers to invite his son as well. Other families begin to say that they are also ready for their children to serve the owner of Su Ping, because their children will be very diligent in sweeping the floor and massaging their backs, under the guidance of the titular master himself. But Su Ping says that it's enough to listen to these scandals, and he has enough people now. Masters of getting upset. This is an incredibly powerful but missed opportunity, and if only they could have thought about it earlier, they wouldn't have wasted a second. But the owner continues because he said that only in the main office of the store there are enough people. He also continues to say that their families have quite a lot of property. And if it were not for wastefulness on his part to use them, then it would be time to open a branch. And young masters from each family will be appointed administrators of branches in their regions. And those who show satisfactory results will receive a promotion to temporary staff positions. But unsatisfactory work or collusion with others will lead to irreversible consequences. Therefore, the life of each member of their families is in their own hands. The owner says that if he explains himself clearly, then let the masters clap their hands. It calls the system and updates the store. New opportunities for the fourth level store. The number of sections for cultivation will not be limited, and while in the store, the owner can spend 10,000 energy points to teleport to any of his stores. He understands that with the help of teleportation of a fourth-level store, it will not be a problem for him to open a branch, even on Mars. The owner receives a message from Tao Zong. It says that in the secret kingdom of the Dragon Ledge Mountains, there is progress. And Su Ping understands that the legacy of the Dragon King will soon begin. The allocated areas will be converted into new shops. Su Ping asks to allocate space for this. Branch employees do not yet have access to the cultivation function, and in this case, the owner needs to place a larger section for cultivation. And if the client needs to raise a pet, then it will simply be transferred to the main store where they will do it. And the dormitory conference room's reception facilities will soon remain the same. But there is still something that Su Ping needs to deal with before heading to the secret realm. Xu Kuang and Xiao Yu come to Su Ping. The sister says that Joanna said that Su Ping was looking for them. Su Ping says that he is going on a trip, and he asks Chu Kuang and Xiao Yu if they still want to go to the wasteland. If so, he can take them with him. Chu Kuang happily agrees because since the last time he went with the master to the wasteland, he has read a lot of materials from the academy's combat course, and they turned out to be both old-fashioned and superficial. The owner says what it means. The guy's horizons have become wider. The tournament was not in vain. The owner asks what the sister thinks about this to which Xiao Yu replies that she wants it too, because in this tournament she failed miserably. And if it weren't for the little skeleton of her older brother, it is unknown what would have happened to her. But Su Ping tells her sister not to be so strict with herself and Starry Sky to use many forbidden techniques. And everyone thought that it was a fight between a girl and Yan Bing. But in reality, the forces behind the two sides were competing. The girl doesn't understand. Does the brother really think what if? Then there was someone else there. She would have won. The brother replies that of course the sister won. He is absolutely confident in her. Suddenly, two treasures appear in the hands of Su Ping, which he gives to Xiao Yu and Xu Kuang. He gives his sister water armor that is constantly torn. It will develop as its level increases and combines well with a fixed glazed body. And Xu Kuang, since his mental defense is weak, Su Ping gives a spiritual lamp, who can compensate for the guy's shortcomings. Xu Kuang thanks the master. The guy says that now he no longer has to worry about making the dragon bigger. But the owner says that secret treasures are always foreign objects, so the guy shouldn't relax. Now the owner turns to the girl. He says that he will be gone for several days. He reminds the girl not to forget to raise her pets every day and return them back to the branches. He also asks the girl to check how the guys from large families work. He wants Joanna to punish those who cast, and for this there is an extension to the use of new store functions. Su Ping is sent to Explorer Base Number 7. There lies a huge dead heavenly beast. They ask someone to raise their paw up. They don't know whether to leave the beast's fur and decides to saw off its bones. The new captain of the Polar Star Group is gold-ranked Chen Shan. He tells the passage itself to take another drill that lies further, because with this, they will not break through anything. This ninth-stage wild beast is of good quality, and there is no need to spoil it. Xiao Yu says that this is a professional team. A Shu Kuang replies that they have never encountered such a big beast. Su Ping greets Chen Shan. The new group captain is happy when he sees Su Ping. Chen Shan asks if Su Ping told about these two, 
pointing to Xiao Yu and Xu Kuang. Su Ping introduces Chen Shan to his sister and assistants. He says that this is the current captain of the North Star Squad, Chen Shan, and in the future, Xiao Yu and Xu Kuang will train in his team. Xiao Yu says that at the university, she heard that they mainly recruit new people only from the best places in the upper part of the city. And Xu Kuang says that this is big for him. Well, Chen Shan says that everything is too exaggerated, and if it weren't for the owner of Su Ping, he would already be dead. The guy says that he will organize Xu Kuang and Xiao Yu to join the team, and from now on, they will work in a group. Chen Shan takes the guests around the base and invites them to familiarize themselves with the environment and asks the Xiao Yu and Xu Kuang team to take care of them. Su Ping asks how the daughter of the captain who died is doing. Chen Shan says that thanks to the blessing of the owner of Su Ping on the same day after taking the fruit of the spiritual tree, she has regained normal vital signs, but she needs time to come to terms with the loss of a loved one. Thank you very much that the owner did not forget about the request of Captain Ni Cheng Kong. But Su Ping says that he had to, because they have been through a lot. The owner says that he still has things to do, so he leaves his sister and assistant at Chen Shan. The captain asks how urgently the owner needs to leave because he can stay for lunch. But Su Ping says that if only next time. Captain Chen Shan says that he will do everything possible to raise the people of Su Ping's master. Su Ping understands that if only he were stronger, then he could have prevented that tragedy. He understands that he must obtain the Dragon Legacy. The guy enters the secret realm of Dragon Ledge Mountain, the gate to Dragon Ledge. There, the masters raised into the sky, floating in the air, say that at such a moment, the guards must carefully monitor everything that happens and not let a single fly pass by. Security guards drive people away. After all, no unauthorized person should enter. People don't understand why this portal was closed so quickly. People say what they hear is that they want to cleanse the continent of dragon scales. They are interested in who will receive the inheritance in this secret kingdom. They are not even surprised that there are titular rank guards standing here. The chairman says that talk is unnecessary and that anyone who should be the pride and favorite of the Lord, and this is Yuan Ling Lu. Suddenly, the young titular master appears in front of them. People notice that this is the person who entered the secret realm alone in front of the legendary family last time. But suddenly the title master is asked not to approach because this secret kingdom is closed to the public and the guy should leave. But Su Ping is perplexed. Is it closed? And isn't the star rift open? The guy says that he thinks that someone is trying to take over the legacy of the secret kingdom. But the masters tell Su Ping to watch his language. After all, the Lord has already decided on the candidate to receive the inheritance and the barren wasteland. A legendary rank martial beast master is equal to the heavens. They ask if Su Ping can challenge the will of heaven. But people don't understand. Are they all going crazy because he's a ninth level student and last time he got involved with the legendary family and now he wants to contact the Lord? The audience is waiting for the show. They say it will be fun. But Su Ping asks, are they really talking about this will of heaven? And he sends them the coordinates. And the target is being calibrated. And Su Ping aims directly at these masters. They see in front of them, but to be able to mobilize this gun. Without the order of the regicides, then only the one who is at the head of the starry sky and is capable of such a thing will be needed. They are perplexed. Is this guy really controlling her? Now a guy with great strength and power asks whether they no longer had the desire to stop him. But the masters fell to their knees in front of the guy and began to beg him. The Lord's closest relative attacks the dragon ledge column. They ask not to harm her. But Su Ping replies that as long as people don't touch him, he doesn't touch them either. The masters did not know that the culprit of all this commotion in the city lately was this guy. They understand that they urgently need to contact the Lord. Someone turns to Master Yuan Linglu and says that the guard of the secret kingdom of the Dragon Ledge Mountain is calling him. The Lord says that from day to day he was tormented by the remnants of the divine tribe from a wound in his chest, and it is too difficult to suppress this flame. He asks who dared to interrupt him in the spiritual direction. He sees a girl in front of him and asks if she is immortal. But the girl says that her subordinate would not dare. The Lord replies that the girl should tell him who did it. If it's a small thing, he will make her feel pain. But the girl sends a video message to the master who addresses the Lord. He says that this man, Su Ping, has entered the secret kingdom. The Lord is perplexed. He doesn't understand what's going on. Is this the same guy? 
The girl asks if her lord is okay, but he only asks in response what happened to the advanced detachment that was on the last section of the dragon scales. What is their situation? The master replies to the lord that the information has just been confirmed, and there are no deviations in the advance party. And as soon as Mrs. Yuan Linglu passes the ninth floor of the column, then they will not clear the last part as quickly as possible, thereby giving the mistress a chance to pass the test of inheritance. But the Lord begins to get angry. Is it really a coincidence that the guy wants to travel at the expense of the Lord? But the master answers the Lord that if this is so, then he needs to order an ordinary detachment, do nothing, and just stand still. But the Lord understands that the dragon bone pillar has no connection with the outside world, so there is no way to tell Yuan Linglu to leave. And if the Lord leaves the vanguard and does not protect the last area, then there is no guarantee. Lord, I understand that he is incredibly angry, even though the message was delivered on time. But the old wounds put earlier in the mischief have not yet healed. And until now, his cultivation has not recovered, even before the legendary realm, the Lord can bully others. But not a supina. The Lord understands that everything is as usual and he is a man being bullied by a dog. He orders people to gather because he will come soon. Su Ping approaches the gate and notices that the door opened automatically. The applicant is told that the mortal has already passed through the ninth floor and there is no need to waste time, they say to go to the top floor. Su Ping understands that this is reasonable. The guy notices that the ninth floor is already on fire, which means the girl is already upstairs. He remembers that in order to go through the entire column, you need to hold out for ten minutes in front of the golden-scaled bearded dragon, with superior ninth-stage combat power. But basically only the heads of famous families have such power. Su Ping wonders what methods Yuan Linglu used to get there. The dragon tells the girl that time has passed, and she has passed the test. It is legendary rank martial beast master Yuan Linglu, who accepts victory from the elder dragon king. She did everything as her grandfather taught her, so she passed the test the first time. He notices that she passed purely on her own without the help of a battle beast. He feels that her real level is set with his both at about the seventh stage. The owner regrets that he could not watch the battle, but he was suddenly struck by a good idea. He wants to test the girl's strength. Yuan Linglu notices that someone is walking towards her. She says that this secret kingdom was blocked by her grandfather. She asks how this guy was able to get here. But the guy says that this is the president who has passed a thousand of his tests. The girl does not understand this person in front of her, or... He just looks like a human. Is it really the elder Dragon King's body? But the girl says that the guy should not dare to lie to her because his grandfather told him that there is another person who cleared the Dragon Bone Tower, and it was him. But suddenly it is heard that he has been waiting for tens of thousands of years for an heir like her. The girl notices that the guys are using three dragons. Grandfather told her that there once existed highly intelligent legendary creatures that imitated the human form. And there was also this human-like creature living among people, and she couldn't determine its level of power at all. Perhaps this is true. He says that if the girl does not want his legacy, he will wait for others. But Yuan Linglu kneels down and asks the elder dragon king not to be angry, because this is all her ignorance, and she begs him to pass on the legacy. But Su Ping is already starting to smile and understands that today he will teach her a lesson about what real danger is. The guy further says that for her sincerity, he will show leniency. And he also says that this is not the place of his true death, but just a false mound. The girl asks the elder dragon king if this means that his legacy is hidden elsewhere. Su Ping replies that this is absolutely true. He says that the girl is very smart. And the real dragon's resting place is hidden under a mountain 72 miles south of the dragon bone pillar. The girl says that she understood him and should go there immediately. But Su Ping tells her not to rush because his tomb has restrictions, and those who enter it with weapons will be killed if they try to do something. Therefore, Yuan Linglu should discard all of her secret treasures and equipment at this time. He will take care of them. Yuan Linglu happily gives everything she has and thanks him for his guidance. The army tells the Lord that the last area of the dragon scale continent has been destroyed. This means that Miss Yuan Linglu has successfully passed the ninth floor, that he is counting on this legacy for her future success or failure. The dragon says that their king's soul has finally been fully restored, and the challenger, whom he has been waiting here for tens of thousands of years, 
But when he sees the girl, he does not understand what she is doing here without her special form. Yuan Ling Lu starts to get angry at Su Ping how he could lie to her. But the guy told her to shut up. She starts to get angry, is this guy trying to shut her mouth? But Patrick replies that the girls heard it, which makes her even more angry because again the guy is deceiving her because he just said it. The dragon sees that it looks like one person has never faced real competition and is a loser too straightforward for her. Yuan Ling Lu tells the guy to look at her when talking, but the guy says that suddenly his girlfriend will hypnotize, and about the second person, the dragon still doesn't know what he went through, and maybe he's very cunning because he's so easy, deceived the girl, and deprived her of her equipment. It doesn't matter who he gives it to, he has a feeling that the power will be used for other purposes, but he doesn't understand. Is there really no better applicant? Su Ping says that they should start because the kingdom that belongs to the dragon was captured by the forces behind the Yuan Ling Lu family, and there will be no other candidates. And even if the dragon doesn't want, he still has to choose one of them. The dragon sees that the guy is talking to him as if they already know each other. He understands that this applicant is a real thorn. And is this guy not afraid of his supreme power as the head of 50 dragons? But it is worth noting that if he did not have the courage, you would be worthy to accept. Legacy of the dragon. The dragon says that they both passed the initial test, and now the final test will begin. The dragon sends them to the new dimension. There is a huge skeleton and a very tall dragon says that it doesn't matter how, but they must climb up the ridge. The girl notices how big he is and asks if this is the last test. Su Ping understands that the star power in this space seems to be suppressed by enormous power, making it difficult to gather on a large scale. He decides to try to fly with the help of the spirit, but it will not be possible to open the summoning rift and summon flying animals. Yuan Ling Lu decides that she will simply rise higher than Su Ping. She says goodbye to the cunning one. She says that the guy can take his time doing his tricks behind. Su Ping understands that it looks like he will have to climb the group when he steps on this ridge and small skeletal hands come out of him, who are trying to grab him by the leg and behind these hands a huge pile of human-looking skeleton crawls out. Su Ping realizes that he is faced with a stream of skeletons, but he does not understand why his black armor does not work on them. Su Ping gathers all his power and uses the dragon's roar thanks, to whom all the illusions have dissipated, but their realism in large numbers exceeds the illusion created in the dragon bone tower. Su Ping understands that, moreover, these illusions are so real that every time they appear, a protective instinct is triggered, a subconscious attack, but... He understands that attacking illusions is a waste of energy, and it takes a lot of spiritual energy to suppress the instinct of defense. After all, this test tests the limits of spiritual and physical strength. Su Ping decides to compare something. At this time, Yuan Ling Lu climbs the dragon bone steps to the ninth floor, where she meets a huge beast. The girl sees that compared to her grandfather's special training, these illusions are nothing after all. For ten years she fought with ferocious beasts. She will defeat any enemy that her grandfather wants to defeat and without further thinking you just need to do. Then what her grandfather taught her and everything will work out. Yuan Ling Lu understands what it was then and what it is now. Grandfather is always right and so she will receive the dragon inheritance. Yuan Ling Lu sees a grandfather in front of him who says that his granddaughter did a good job. But when the Lord turns to face her, she sees that black blood is coming from his eyes, mouth and nose. He looks furious and asks, does Yuan Linglu think that this is enough? He attacks the girl and says that the creature that grew up without a father should die. He grabs her by the neck, but the girl understands that this is a fake, because Grandpa would never say that. It turns out that this is an ordinary illusion that can actually cause real damage. Yuan Linglu is already climbing to the 10th floor of the Dragonbone stage. She is interested in how many floors that guy has already climbed, but suddenly she notices how past her. Su Ping slips by. Yuan Linglu starts to get angry. She doesn't understand how this guy could even overtake her. Su Ping is attacked from all sides by heavenly beasts. But he drives away these illusions with one wave of his hand. Su Ping understands that after getting used to it, the reality of these illusions seems trivial compared to the stress that he experienced during endless rebirths in cultivation zones, a with spiritual powers obtained as a result of many resurrections, and the experience of heterochronic celestial thunder test. He is confident that he will succeed. He's even a little curious about how far he can go. He's moving up to the 30th floor, 50th. The 90th floor and the final test is over. 
The dragon says that the challenger can stop. He also announces that another challenger passed out on the 33rd floor. He sees that the legendary master has reached the 33rd floor, but the guy does not understand which floor he is on now. He says that the guy reached the 143rd floor. The dragon says that he healed the wounds of this mortal girl, or they understand that she lost consciousness. The dragon says that Su Ping was the first to reach the top, and the one who should win, will become his final challenger. Yuan Linglu realizes that this guy stole her opportunities and she really lost to this bad man. The dragon says that it's too early to talk about the result and the participants must be patient because with every 10th level of the bone ladder, the load increased and those who climbed to the 10th floor. With human capital already has the right to inheritance. Even after losing all knowledge, the girl reached the 33rd floor. This is talent meeting for the first time in a hundred years. Regardless of the final result, he will reward her. So he asks her to work hard. Su Ping asks what he needs, to which the dragon replies that the guy doesn't need it. Yuan Linglu is perplexed that this gift is only for her. She thinks that maybe the elder dragon king is more optimistic about her, and this is a good opportunity for her. The girl turns to the king of dragons. She asks to quickly begin the next tests for the dragon. She understands that he feels sorry for this good child. He does not want her to lose heart. Therefore, he gives her a consolation prize, and a perverted genius like Su Ping is born once every 10,000 years. He can be swallowed up by a catastrophe at any moment. Therefore, you should always have a tail. The second test is a battle of forces, and the winner is the one who defeats the opponent. Yuan Linglu summons his celestial beasts. She says that now they will all show together how strong they are. Su Ping notices among the celestial beasts a violet phoenix who has the bloodline of the King of Beasts. It looks like the stone sculpture at the university gate was carved from this view. Now it's no surprise to the guy that it looks familiar to him. A martial beast with the bloodline of the King of Beasts will have the combat power of the ninth stage when it becomes an adult, but her phoenix has not yet become a symbolic beast. So he asked the girl, is she really just a non-adult purple-winged phoenix? But the girl replies that everything is true because the Purple Phoenix was her partner since childhood, and although he is not yet an adult, he has already defeated countless ninth-level masters, and even the elder Tao Zong, once defeated thanks to their joint efforts. But the guy starts laughing with the girl. He doesn't believe that Tao Zong could lose to her. The guy says that most likely her grandfather simply forced him to succumb. Su Ping summons a black dragon dog. The dragon sees that although dragon dogs contain several thousands of dragon blood, but it's still an ordinary dog. However, the dark dragon dog Su Ping does not have the aggression and mania that are inherent in animals, and the aura is extremely restrained and refined. Perhaps he has already passed the heavenly trials. At this time, Yuan Linglu uses a wind spirit enhancer on his phoenix. Phoenix also begins to attack and use Phoenix's divine flame. With this blow, the beast hits the target and hits Su Ping and his dragon dog, but the girl sees that after the smoke cleared from the beast, Nothing happened. She doesn't understand why there isn't a scratch on the beast, because the purple phoenix got there. But the girl understands that this is an illusion, and she decides to fight the beast herself, hitting him with a knife. But before she has time to get to him, he pushes her away with one paw, and she flies into the distance with this. She understands that this is not an illusion Yuan Ling Lu does not understand. Is it possible that the physical defense of this beast exceeds the strength of her phoenix? Su Ping asks, is this all the girl is capable of? At this moment, Yuan Linglu uses the inherited technique to his beast called Dazzling World. But the Su Ping heavenly beast did not move from its place, so the guy asks, is this flame stronger than before? Yuan Linglu sees that at least the beast has not yet reached the ideal. But in order to defeat you will have to use this, and the girl at one moment uses her sword art combining skills inherited from the bloodline of the King of Beasts, this cutting of the dazzling phoenix. Su Ping says that this is quite a beautiful technique, but he says that he will not further humiliate it in honor of respect and will let the dark dragon dog you. He uses all the possible skills of the celestial beast and sends it to attack. A strong battle begins. The aura emanating from the tower is insanely strong. The army sees that this is too creepy as expected from the granddaughter of the Lord. Her combat power is not much inferior to the real titular dragon. 
the Lord understands that he has received the inheritance of the Dragon King Yuan Linglu will be able to directly break into the legendary realm. The girl uses all her strength to strike the dragon dog, but at one moment her sword shatters into pieces, and she understands that apparently this is beyond her strength. The second challenge is over and Su Ping wins. The dragon says that Su Ping won two victories and stands up now as his successor. He asks the girl if she admits she was right. The girl begins to cry. She says that in the end, she lost to this man and could not even touch him. The girl puts the sword against her neck and says that she could not live up to her grandfather's hopes. Su Ping sees that she couldn't accept her defeat, but it remains the same. And at the last moment, Su Ping flies his foot into the girl and does not allow her to cut herself with a sword. The girl, in bewilderment, holds on to the side where Su Ping hit her. She asks what he is doing, but the dragon is at a loss because he only cured her. Na Su Ping says that nothing is happening. You just vowed to use his power correctly. But Yuan Linglu didn't understand anything. Su Ping says he has a pet store, and the girl was going to abandon her pet, which he can't come to terms with. He doesn't care whether she dies or not. But he is afraid that the purple-winged one will go crazy and turn into a monster and attack the base city. The girl does not understand what the guy means. Su Ping replies that if she is unhappy, then she should resume training and improve her level. He says that his pet store has an excellent nurturing service so she can come at any time. But Yuan Ling Lu is incredibly evil. She says that the guy was just daydreaming and only all kinds of insects need his help. But the dragon gets furious and orders them to stop fighting and gives three drops which are dragon blood crystals. He gives this to the girl. He says that this dragon's blood has three uses. The first is to distract the king of beasts so that she can escape. The second is dragon blood can be taken to improve physical condition, and the third can be replaced with it. Some rare cultivation materials. The girl says that she understood the elder dragon king. She thanks him. And he says that she will never let him down and will become stronger. The dragon declares that now the time has come for the true inheritance, and he tells the mortal to leave. But at the last moment, she tells Su Ping to wait for her in five years. More precisely, in three years, she will surpass him. Su Ping replies that he will accept her call at any time, and at this time, the girl dissolves in space. The dragon tells Su Ping to prepare to receive his legacy. The guy understands that the Dragon King's little gifts have decent effects, but how amazing. There will be a true legacy. The dragon shows the guy the original world of his dragon soul. There is a chain with a large chest. Su Ping understands that dragons love treasures, but there are so many of them that it is truly worthy of the legacy of the Dragon King. These secret treasures exude the power of the Eighth Stage or even the Beast King level. There are weapons for frontal attack, sneak defense attacks, as well as items for cultivation and riding equipment. There are a lot of things to use here, which are unknown to Su Ping. These secret treasures are not worth mentioning, and if the guy likes them, then he can take them. But in any case, after the legacy ends, it is useless to stay here. Su Ping sees that there are a huge amount of treasures, and there is not a single real heritage. Su Ping says that then he will not be modest, and calls a scroll that appears in front of him, in which he organizes all the treasures. But when he gets to the chest, he doesn't understand why he can't fold it. Su Ping reaches the spring. He asks if the elder dragon needs this water anymore. If not, then he will take it. But the dragon says that the heir will take it a little later, and now he asks the guy to clear his mind and accept his legacy. The dragon says that he is the true king of the dragon in the great Russian he fought all his life, but one day he knew defeat. And now the coffin of the dragon guarding his immortality is broken. His life force is fleeting, and Su Ping must go out to meet it and become the flow of a true dragon. But Su Ping understands that by accepting the inheritance, he will receive a real dragon bloodline. But the dragon is perplexed whether the guy has something against his bloodline. Su Ping summons a striking fist, the Golden Crow Star Powers, and grabs the dragon's spirit. The dragon asks how Su Ping could be the descendant of the demon god Golden Crow. The dragon attacks the dragon dog and tells him not to move because the dog has some dragon blood. And he has been tasked with the important task of reviving the clan of true dragons of the Great Dispersion. And the dragon wants the beast to accept his original legacy. The spirit breaks into the body of the beast. Su Ping does not understand that this is happening. He understands that the legacy was passed on to the dog. 
Yuan Linglu returns to the lord of his army, and his grandfather asks if his granddaughter has received the inheritance. But the girl is scared, and in despair, the lord used the star barrier so that they would not be heard. He asks his granddaughter what happened, but Yuan Linglu begins to ask for forgiveness from his grandfather. She says that Su Ping appropriated the dragon inheritance. She asks for punishment. But the grandfather tells his granddaughter to get up, and he asks if this guy did any harm. Yuan Linglu says that she was not harmed, but she was useless. And no matter how hard she tried, she could not break through the protection of the pet Su Ping. That although it was officially reported, that it was because of the attack of the wave of beasts that the people of the starry sky died. But according to subordinates, Su Ping was in the elite league arena in the absence of a dangerous blonde. He set great families against each other and became the actual language of the starry sky. His strength should really already far exceed the ninth stage title rank. The girl once again asks for an apology from the Lord and says that the eldest king, dragons gave her three treasures. She asks the Lord to look at this extremely rare blood crystal of the dragon king. She invites grandfather to return home and continue. Her training because Yuan Linglu will definitely defeat this evil villain. Lord recalls that in the past, his baby Yuan Linglu constantly exploded when something went wrong. But this time after meeting the monster Su Ping, she learned to remain calm. Perhaps she really grew up, plus a secret treasure donated by the Dragon King. This huge legacy experience was worth it. The Lord says that his granddaughter should go home, and he also says that the power of Su Ping has always been great, and if he receives another inheritance, his power will be immeasurable. The Lord says that he will not let him get it. Lars orders his army to enter the tower. He wants them to be careful. But Su Ping notices that something is happening. He hears an incredible noise, and his dark dragon dog has been packed into a huge egg with this thing for half a day, and his consciousness is completely asleep. He does not react to anything. He's only interested in whether the legacy will pass without incident, but one way or another he remains here until the beast comes out. And it doesn't matter whether it's a dog or a dragon, he will still wait for him until the last. The owner sees that grass has grown near this huge cocoon. He does not understand at what moment. Weeds have grown here. He realizes that something is feeding them. He suggests that it could be the rich energy of the dragon inside the cocoon that is released through star power. He suggests that near this source one can achieve great success in cultivation. He also wants to plunge into this energy. Seven days later, two are simply furious. They see a dragon asking for help and so that the huge dragon does not bite them. This is the Lord's army. One of the warriors says that the dragon bone tower houses an overly powerful spiritual dragon, and even the spiritual strength of a ninth stage master would not be able to withstand it. The Lord then orders the use of more spiritual protection artifacts. The Lord is told that seven days have already passed, and not a single fly has flown out of the dragon bone tower. They don't understand whether this Su Ping could have already slipped away somewhere unnoticed. But the Lord says that this is impossible because the top of the tower still radiates strong star power. He orders the army to find a way to climb there. After all, the Lord doesn't think that this guy can do anything else. Between us, he notices that a very bright beam of light comes out from a huge tower and hits the sky. They see him flying out of there. This Su Ping, together with the huge fire dragon, is the great scattering dragon. The Lord sees this incredibly overwhelming aura. The army does not understand how this is even possible. After all, this dragon is similar to the five-headed golden dragon which ranks first in the top. Five blossoms to the bottom, he heard someone say that he couldn't do anything. The Lord says that it is very difficult. He understands that this is no longer a joke after all. An ordinary golden dragon is at the peak of the ninth stage. He asks Su Ping to be merciful. This giant dragon is definitely on the beast level. Su Ping doesn't understand why he should be merciful. After all, he hasn't done anything yet. He asks the legendary Lord what exactly bothered him. Lord, I understand that obviously this guy said this on purpose, and if only he had the strength, he wouldn't tolerate it. So he simply asks what Su Ping wants from him. To which the guy replies that he should ask what the Lord wants from him, judging by their gatherings. They wanted to kill him before he consumed the legacy. The Lord replies that it's all just a mistake. The owner replies that he did not harm his family, so he did nothing to Yuan Ling Lu. Long Jiang. This is now the territory of Su Ping, and in the future the water from the well will not disturb the river water. 
the guy hopes that the Lord will not do anything that will lead to unforeseen situations. And Su Ping flies away on his dragon from this place. It cancels the legendary dragon form art technique. Now his celestial beasts are the great dispersion dragon dog. His rank was upgraded and so were all his powers and skills. But to prevent the dragon dog's village from getting out of control, he scooped up 90% with three seals. A tenth of the power has the power of the peak of the ninth stage, so the beasts directly broke into the middle realm of the vast sea after the first seal was broken level. And the fighting power of the dragon dog will reach the void cave realm after the second seal will reach the realm of fate. And then, when the last seal is broken, it will surpass the legendary realm. He will go to the kingdom of the starry sky. Su Ping doesn't understand. Is this kingdom higher than the legendary one? Now it's no surprise to the guy that he was sealed. Now these seals will only be broken when Su Ping becomes strong enough to control them. The dragon tells Su Ping to go already. He doesn't have much time. The guy thanks him. The owner returns to his dimension to the pet store. Tang Ruan is happy that he has finally returned, and she also presents him with a letter from another continent, which he recently received this invitation from the Shengguang Base City Nurturing Association. Su Ping realizes that he knows very little about the city of Shengguang, except that there is a thriving animal breeding industry. He decides to ask the old scoundrel. He writes to the chairman to see if he is free because today he needs to discuss something with him right next to the Su Ping store. A spaceship is landing. People are confused. A death capsule appears in front of them. The owner sees that the chairman immediately appeared. He asks what can he do for the greatest master Su Ping asks knows. Li is the chairman of something in the base city of Shangguang and the nurturers in it. Su Ping needs to know everything in detail. The chairman says that the base cities are divided into levels. Depending on the scale and safety factor among them, the first tier base cities are the smallest and have the lowest safety factor they can defend, only from hordes of beasts with the combat power of the ninth stage, and there are not so many of them at the base. They are located on the yard and serve as outposts. The base cities of the second level are in the middle in size, but the largest in number are Longjiang, where are the Master Su Ping belongs to the second level because he can hold back the wave of the king of beasts and base cities. The third level is ahead of other base cities in all respects, and even the king of beasts cannot break through there. There are only seven of them on each continent, and Shengguang City is one of them. In P raised and mastered various methods of strengthening and feeding their battle pets, the beasts are a warrior who kills enemies with his sword. The base city of Shengguang is the place where they were first born. Cultivating technologies from all over the world is collected. During their best times, holy masters of fighting beasts of legendary rank lived there. Belonging to the legendary rank and having the ability to enlighten all existences and cultivate beasts themselves, this directly increased the number and quality of the legendary martial beast masters of this time. However, with the fall of these saints, now the number of legendary ranks has dropped to a level where there are only a few of them on each continent. The Shengguang Cultivation Association sent an invitation for Su Ping. Chairman believes that they heard about his war beasts that made a splash in the elite tournament and want to join the ranks of talent. Su Ping understands that, although its combat power has reached the legendary rank, but the cultivation of heavenly beasts is still entirely dependent on the power of the system and in case the system fights one day and the store will stop working, then you need to take advantage of this opportunity to gain strength. Su Ping asks the chairman how to get there, to which he replies, That organizes a landing for the owner in near-Earth orbit and you can get there in an hour, asks five times if it's too loud. The chairman replies that now, the owner has a legendary status and of course he will be greeted at the highest level at this time, people will come from all over the city. Su Ping understands that he is not a panda, so that all people look at him and he goes, Go there and gain strength. Therefore, he asks the chairman if there is something more restrained, to which Thoth replies that there are inconspicuous underground trains and are usually used by commoners, which get there in two days and two nights. The chairman can also order a ticket for Su Ping if he wishes. The owner says that you need to order, but Su Ping gets there and realizes that it is not restrained at all. Sees a celestial beast in a first-class underground railway carriage, who seems to be angry. People are asking for help because the animal is behaving too strangely. The owner of the celestial beast begins to shout at the girl in a rude voice and asks why she fed his dog. 
Su Ping heard that the ghost dog becomes more aggressive when he eats sugar. He doesn't understand why call on a beast that is so easy to anger. Besides, this beast is poisonous. He attacks one of the visitors to the carriage. But at the last moment, Su Ping grabs the beast by the neck and hooks it. Suddenly a girl runs up to Su Ping and says that the ghost dog should not be strangled when he is angry because this will only kill him. She says that she is a nurturer and asks Su Ping to calm the beast. She asks the guy to let him go. The girl puts on a glove, brings her head to the head of the beast, and uses means that hook the beast. Su Ping is surprised that this girl calmed the aggressive beast so easily. This girl is an adult of the Dragon Academy. Her name is Itong Lintong. She asks Su Ping, is it surprising that this is star? Gloves for adults help to more accurately control star power to enhance the hypnotic effect. The girl thanks Su Ping for helping her cope with the beast. But suddenly the enraged owner of this dog runs up and asks what they did with the beast, to which Yi Tong Lin Tong replies that she just made him fall asleep using the taming technique and he will wake up in half a day. So the owner has nothing to worry about. But this guy just goes berserk. He says that his dog lost consciousness and he doesn't understand why he should be calm. He asks, what if suddenly the animal is injured? How will the girl pay him for it? Itong Lintong tries to calm the guy down. She says that his ghost dog ate a lot of sugar, and at the moment he can't. But she doesn't have time to agree when the guy interrupts her that he doesn't care and don't let them wake up the beast. He reaches out with his hand to the girl, but Su Ping intercepts his hand and tells the guy to silently take his beast, and he also tells the guy to apologize to Itong Lintong, and then he can fail. The guy notices Su Ping's scary look and asks for forgiveness to which Su Ping replies that it is unethical to leave your own pet alone in a public place. A notification sounds on the train that the train is speeding up, so visitors are asked to return to their rooms. Su Ping returns to his room after confirming his identity and wishes him to have a good time. The girl brings the gentleman strawberry cheesecake, but the guy is at a loss because he didn't order anything. But the waitress says that it was Mrs. Itong Lin Tong who ordered it for him. The girl waves her hand to the guy and says that this is a sign of gratitude. Su Ping says that he just wanted to eat. Suddenly a blow is heard. Raising his head, everyone sees that there is a crack in the ceiling, and the whole ceiling is warped. It is possible that there is something outside the carriage. All visitors to this carriage begin to go to their rooms. They don't understand whether there are wild animals here. After all, they were attacked. The train worker asks everyone to remain calm because the train is equipped with a team of 8th stage martial beast masters as armed guards, and they will definitely figure out what's going on. Su Ping starts to get angry because he can't even eat properly. At this moment, he feels star power. Stone-shelled animals attack the train. They are tearing it apart and tearing it apart from all sides. The masters guarding the train are trying to fight them, but they are already very wounded. Su Ping, with the help of star power to see that these claw dragons with the bloodline strength of the ninth stage, are also poisonous, and the guards do not understand. Where could the ninth stage beasts come from here? It will be difficult, but the captain decides against these beasts and orders the soldiers to help the wounded and continue to protect the carriage unexpectedly. Su Ping jumps out of his window and jumps onto the roof. The captain sees that there is danger in front of him. He says that these creatures are incredibly fast. But suddenly Su Ping appears who tears the beast apart with his strength. The guards can't believe their eyes that this guy killed the beast. After seeing that one of them was killed, the monsters all fled in different directions. The captain thanks Su Ping on behalf of the whole team for the fact that the guy resolved the whole situation so easily and quickly. But Su Ping replies that he didn't bother. The guy asks whether their high-speed railway has always been so dangerous. But the captain replies that usually during the road everything is quite safe only when some stone-shelled beasts of the sixth, seventh stage, like clawed dragons, are usually found deep underground, the deeper you go underground. The fewer poisonous creatures you come across, the clawed dragon has the combat power of the ninth stage, which is enough to live on the surface of the earth. And even if they came down, it means something much more dangerous may have come down. Su Ping, Su Ping decides to contact the government and directly enter into a contract to raise their military pets. This could not only improve the city's security, but also expand his business. But in the end, the city may be attacked by something that would make even the ferocious beasts of the ninth stage tremble. 
Longjiang should at least become a base city of the first level. Again, a notification that the train has arrived at the station of the base city of Shenguang asks passengers not to forget their luggage at the carriage. It turns out that Su Ping is coming out together. With Yitong Lin Tong, the girl says that this is an incredible coincidence, and she asks if Su Ping is also from the base city of Shenguang. But Su Ping replies that he is only here on business. He asks if Aitong Lin Tong by any chance knows where the Nurture Association is located. The girls become funny because it's very funny that the teacher, which I don't know where the Association of Nurturers is located, the girl is now going to show him the way. At the entrance, security asks to show your student card or teacher ID. Aitong Lin Tong shows her ID and says that she is an academy tutor. But initially they didn't want to let Su Ping in. They asked for his ID. But the guy replies that he doesn't have an ID, but maybe an invitation will suit them. The security guard is simply shocked. Is this really an invitation from the Association of Parents? He says to let their dear guest pass. Itong Lintong is perplexed. After all, everyone who receives an invitation from the Cultivation Association is a big name in the cultivation industry. She asks if Su Ping is actually a strong master, an experienced grandfather who was hiding in the crowd. In response, she asks how many short stories the girl has read. The guy says that he cannot say that he knows everything about nurturing. He can only say that he knows nothing about it. Otherwise, he would have had an ID. On Aitong Lintong says that she doesn't believe the guys because the association doesn't send invitations to just anyone. I remember that a friendly match is currently taking place, she asks. Does the guy want to watch it? But Su Ping immediately agrees because he just wanted to find out more. The forest monkey fights against the wind bird. Su Ping is surprised. Is it possible that their enhancers also bring a war beast onto the field? It's very similar to a match of war beast masters. But Itong Lin Tong says that this is not a battle pet. This is a wild beast. For those who have not signed a contract, the first thing that is tested at breeding competitions is the ability to control the animal. Well, who can be the first to make their animal hold food in its mouth? Without swallowing it for five minutes, the second competition for the conditions of the ability for the specified time, they use special materials to enhance and temporarily strengthen any part of the pet's body and then fight. They notice how fast the speed is because the forest monkey cannot keep up with the attack of the wind bird. And strengthening the wings of the wind bird is really a wise choice of the owner. But the forest monkey found himself in a passive and losing situation. This blow is approaching a vital point. Perhaps this will all end amazing. But the fortified part of the forest monkey turned out to be his back. There were stone-type teeth growing on the back of the forest monkey. And with just one blow, he pierced the bird's guts. This is the kind of match between plants that at first glance looks like a battle between pets. But in reality, we are talking about who can unlock the potential of the heavenly beast. And it is better to analyze the pros and cons of the situation and make the most appropriate strengthening. The teacher notices that Itong Lintong has already returned. The girl replies that she just arrived. The teacher's answer is for Itong Lintong to watch more matches and expand her horizons. But if she doesn't pass her thesis, her graduation seems in jeopardy. The guys who stood behind the teacher laugh at the girl because she watches matches and gets nothing out of it. After all, in the last match, she was a soft-footed shrimp who could not control her beast. The guys began to chase the girl away so that she would not irritate their eyes. They laugh at how obedient she is. Suddenly, Su Ping approaches them. He says that he saw the Itong Lintong taming technique and did not notice any problem with it. But on the contrary, they were cackling here and making it difficult to follow the match. The guys start getting angry they don't understand. What kind of incomprehensible guy is standing in front of them? They don't understand how this guy dares to point his fingers at them in the eyes of sixth stage growers. But Su Ping laughs that they only have the sixth stage because the difference is not as if it is at the ninth stage. The guy goes berserk because he sees that Su Ping is underestimating him. He offers to arrange a match if the guy wasn't scared, but this is a match between nurturers. Su Ping replies that this is no problem at all, but it's just not interesting. The guy offers to play for something. The guy understands that Su Ping wants to argue, so he asks what exactly they want to argue with him about. But Su Ping replies that the guy is covered in sweat for life, and he stands in bewilderment. Has this guy really gone crazy? Su Ping starts laughing because he was joking, 
He replies that the loser is just asking for forgiveness and that's all. The guy's friend starts laughing at him. He says that he is shocked with Feng Yiliang. And in general, he is a coward. Were the guys really scared by some words? But the guy is furious. He doesn't understand how this guy dares. In general, to tease him now, Feng Yiliang says that the loser will kneel down and ask for forgiveness. He says that now Su Ping will have to take a swing at himself. Feng Yiliang says that he will now show the guy what happens to those who underestimate him. Itong Lintong asks the guys to calm down. She tells teacher to explain everything to them. But in response, the teacher says that there is no problem, and now he will prepare the arena and also asks permission to be a referee at this match. He says that in the end, as a nurturer, how can he be afraid to tame others? The teacher says that yes, he determines the outcome. For the sake of fairness, this time you can use the rules of the next selection. The teacher also asks both parties to enter the number through the console to choose an animal. Su Ping understand that the animals presented here have a pedigree below the third stage. And as a rule, they only have one skill. Investigation of these beasts a bit like the five elements, metals wood, water, fire, and earth. Su Ping understands what he can do. This is where the key to victory lies. The teacher says that the participants on both sides have already chosen. Your pets. Su Ping himself chose a thunder beetle with the metal shell skill, and Feng Yiliang chose a flaming dog with the flaming bite skill. Itong Lin Tong, you see, both sides are fierce, difficult to tame beasts on the metal shell of a thunder beetle in general. Can't resist the flaming bite. Feng Yiliang asks Su Ping what the guy thinks about repentance before it's too late, but Su Ping only asks to announce the start of the round. The teacher announces that the first stage is control. He says that their favorite food is placed in front of their animals, and the winner is the one whose pet keeps the food for his paste for five minutes. Without eating it, Itong Lin Tong understands that this stage has two methods. The first is reward and punishment for mistakes, so that the animal learns to carry them out. And if the animal does not eat the food, it receives more food in the second method you can skip this part and use star power directly to give the command just food. This command goes into beast awareness. But Itong Lin Tong sees that Su Ping is not doing anything. Perhaps the guy is thinking which method to choose. Feng Yiliang says that after working on it for a long time, he is quite good at controlling the animals, and he thinks that Su Ping has already given up. The guy says that after his precise control of star power, the immersion in consciousness will soon end. The teacher says that the thunder beetle took the food and the mother begins. Su Ping uses his magical power to simply scare the animal. Feng Yiliang sees that the thunder beetle doesn't eat anything because it's afraid of Su Ping. Feng Yiliang begins to complain to the teacher that Su Ping is not playing fair, but the teacher replies that there is no explicit provision in the match rules about how not to suppress a pet. It's just that no one has done this before. The teacher says that time has passed and the thunder beetle is in the taming stage. He also turns to Feng Yiliang. He says that he only needs to lose again in the battle stage with the beast in order to be considered defeated. But Feng Yiliang is furious. Has his high-class tamer really been surpassed by this madman who used a strange and incomprehensible method of taming? Feng Yiliang firmly decided that in the next stage, he would definitely win. The teacher announces that in the next stage of the match, the participant on both sides will present. Selecting materials to enhance your pets takes three hours. Feng Yiliang chooses Dragon's Breath Firewood. He wants to maximize the Flame Dog's fire attribute, although the Thunderbug can metalize itself to enhance defense. But no matter how hard the metal of this celestial beast is, it will still simply melt in the face of the flame. Su Ping still stands his ground. He understands that this guy will never defeat him. Itong Lintong understands that if Su Ping really a simpleton in nurturing, then everything is lost. After all, his training methods were among the best in the class and he also received the attribute of restraint. And how can a guy win? The teacher announces that the time has come and the stage of the Battle of Beasts begins. The fiery dog uses flaming bite. A friend turns to Feng Yiliang. He says that his star power sorting ability had improved again. The fire dog's claws only took three hours to create a light fiery. The effect was quite easy. Feng Yiliang says that he is different from that amateur who only knows how to bluff. He decides to hurry up to see the disappointed expressions. Su Ping faces. 
But the teacher says that unfortunately Feng Yiliang should be practiced more diligently. After all, the thunder beetle prevails over the fiery dog, he used ice armor. And the metal shell of the thunder beetle became an ice attribute and pretended to be a frosty shell. Feng Yiliang see that the frosty shell, initially restrained by the attribute of fire, but the dog approached the enemy at close range. All the melted ice completely covered his body, and, as a result, it was the fire dog who became the one being restrained. And Lei can't believe that in just three hours, Su Ping changed his attribute. The owner understands that there must be an understanding of the flow of star power too deeply, and the level of star power must reach the seventh stage. This man is a great nurturer, who simply did not show himself. Su Ping says that Feng Yiliang lost. He asks what about fulfilling the terms of the bet now. Feng Yiliang understands that Su Ping is too creepy. If his strength is clearly at the seventh stage, but Feng Yiliang still does not feel any fluctuations in the star power in his body. Feng Yiliang starts to run away, and he shouts that he will never play with this guy again. But suddenly, Su Ping uses the Golden Crow's fist and grabs the guy's leg, after which he falls to the floor, flying straight down on his face, and he hits his forehead. He says that it was very painful, and he did not understand how it even happened. His friend is running towards him. He doesn't understand. Is it possible that Feng Yiliang can't even just stand still? In the next, Su Ping says that good riddance to this guy. And Itong Lintong just laughs. Itong Lintong sees that after the battle with the fiery dog, the melted, the armor was quickly restored again. This is not a superficial improvement of the element. To completely transform the frosty shell. It only took three hours. The girl asks how Su Ping did it. The guy replies that he gave the thunder beetle a special crystal. He drank it and changed. The girl does not understand whether it is possible that the fear of death has revealed the full potential of the thunder beetle. As stated in the works of a cultivator in the ninth stage of the oldest masters, that the research into the cultivation method of fusion of fire and thunder and the creation of a system of divine forging of dragon meridians corresponding to the pressure of the star system and harsh conditions can have a positive effect on cultivation. Itong Lintong understands that these conditions are very difficult to quantify, and the slightest deviation from, they may be counterproductive. That is why almost no one devotes time to studying them. Itong Lintong didn't expect that someone had already implemented this. She urgently needed to record the information. After all, this is such exciting news for her. The girl asks what is the name of the method of cultivating it. Su Ping says that if she insists, then we can call. This is a deadly cultivation. Itong Lin Tong says that this name sounds like the guy has experienced countless deaths and rebirths. Teacher says, friend Itong Lin Tong, difficult. He wants the girl to introduce them. But she noticed that she didn't really talk about herself. Itong Lin Tong says that she is a third year student at Dragon Nurture Academy. He is in sixth form and will graduate this year. The teacher asks Su Ping for forgiveness that his clueless students took up the guy's time. The teacher also says that his name is Dean. He is the teacher of the 8th group of the Dragon Academy. Now he wants to hear the guy's name. Su Ping introduces himself as Xu Kuang. The teacher thinks about what is nurturing in the world. We have never heard of such a name. Master suggests that Mr. Xu Kuang's cultivation method is so unique that he must not be from this city. So he asks which big city Xu Kuang is from. The guy replies that he is not from a very big company and he owns a small store in a small city on the Asian continent. The teacher asks what is the purpose of Mr. Ban's trip to Shenguang. The guy replies that he heard that the Nurture Association here in Shenguang is holding an exchange conference, which is quite famous, and that's why he came to look at it. The teacher says that it is an incredible coincidence that this year the Conference of Educators will be held. On the territory of the Dragon Academy, the teacher wants to treat Mr. Xu Kuang Two of his students caused inconvenience to the guy, and as a teacher, he should apologize. Su Ping says that there is no need to worry about him, and he will just take a walk. The teacher says that if Mr. Xu Kuang is so reserved, then he will not force him, but he still insists on expressing his gratitude to Vanya. He presents the guy with his teacher card. She provides food, accommodation, and some additional privileges. Su Ping doesn't understand. Does the teacher really want to express gratitude, or is Su Ping just paranoid? Su Ping agrees to take the card for a while. The teacher has turned on the location functions of his map. 
The teacher asks how far Aitong Lintong has progressed in her project. The girl replies that she has completed the most difficult part of her research, and on the development of high-level hereditary skills by low-level species, she only has to compare the data obtained and draw conclusions. But the teacher says to dwell on this topic for a minute. The girl doesn't understand what the teacher means either. But he says that the girl has a problem with the direction of its topic. And also, Itong Lintong will not be able to pass the graduation defense, and he advises her to immediately start researching the just-mentioned theory of death cultivation. Itong Lintong is just disappointed. Does the teacher mean that her research for the past year is wrong? The teacher replies that Itong Lintong is a smart child, and therefore, he advises starting to correct its direction right now, and there is still time next year. After all, many of its teachers had to go through a lot to become full-fledged educators. After all, the girl does not want to be the last in her group. Itong Lintong says that she understands everything. The teacher thinks about Xu Kuang. He realizes that the way his star power operates is clearly reminiscent of a martial beast master. But in the area of cultivation, the guy also has a lot of achievements. He is a genius in two areas at once, and unfortunately the teacher did not receive any useful information from this. The teacher decides to call someone. He has a project that is almost ready. He asks if the student would like to take it. The teacher says that if there is no intruder in the garden, he asks the student to get information about him. At this time, he sends the guy's location. This is the Dragon Academy Library, borrowed from Su Ping Library. 67 books on cultivating the seventh stage, 14 books on cultivating the eighth stage, and five books on cultivating the ninth stage. As a result, 340,000 teacher points were spent, and 580,000 teacher points remained. Libraries ask if this card belongs to Su Ping. But the guy replies that he will take her then and let them keep her with them. The library workers can't figure out who this guy is because he took a huge pile of materials that most teachers wouldn't take. And he took so many books at one time. The girls see that this is the student card of the 8th group of teacher Dean. These are the best classes in the entire academy. Girls are shocked if a guy spends points so willingly. Then he should be treated like the boss's son. Su Ping understands that the chairman was right because the base city of Shangguang is really a holy place where the efforts of cultivators from all over the world are collected, a collection of books of the gods. There are many rare books on cultivation that are impossible to find on sale. Possible books on cultivation of beasts, dragons, elemental, and demonic update. Improving the encyclopedia transformation is all you need, although the guy can also cultivate celestial beasts, thanks to his experience in cultivation zones. Ultimately, this experience is acquired by trial and error. Understanding things through experience always remains on the surface and is not deep enough. But these secrets and rules were previously understood by all great powerful people. Su Ping has already accumulated too much practical experience. But these little known books, they don't look boring to him. They are even very interesting to him. After reading the books, the guy himself doesn't understand how he was able to read it all. He says that the card, issued by the teacher, also allows him to use a specific reading room so that he can read as much as he wants without being distracted now. The guy decides to go give away the books. He realizes that he spent an incredible amount of points and wonders if he can convert them into star coins to return to him. But when he was walking through the library, he runs into a girl. All the books fall to the floor. The girl tries to help the guy. But she asks how it is possible to carry so many books. She insists on telling where he got them. Su Ping returned the books, and the workers told him that the number of books taken was confirmed. The girl doesn't believe what she sees. She doesn't understand. Could it be that this guy himself read this copy of the ninth stage of the cultivation method? She asks what level of nurturer her classmate is. She can't believe that reading such difficult books. Su Ping replies that the girl simply thinks too much, and the teacher lent him his ID. He also says that he is not sure what level he is. He is not a professional nurturer. The girl was just about to give an exam for the qualifications of a seventh stage educator. She invites him to go with her. The guy runs away from the giant beast, but they shout after him that the testing hall is not a place for running to raise, or the guy doesn't pass the test. The instructor tells the guy to get out of here and let him turn around only when he has recovered. He hits him on the back with a stick. He says that he doesn't hear. Then the guy answers him. 
He orders him to speak louder if he wants to tame the pet. Three guys left the test hall, and all three had cuts on their backs from the stick. The instructor is angry. He doesn't understand. Did the guys really think that after a few lessons they would be able to give an exam? This doesn't work here. He tells the boys to come for the next exam, but students are perplexed as to why this particular examiner is taking exams this month. After all, this instructor is known as the fiend, and not only that, that the assessment standards are extremely strict, and he hits you every time if you fail the exam. So the guy says that he'd better wait until next month. One of the students says that he once failed the fifth level exam, and now if he fails the task twice more, he will be demoted in rank. Su Ping doesn't understand. How can you be demoted in rank? And the student says that the rank of their nurturers is different from the rank of martial beast masters, for which a pedigree is required. It is based on the evaluation mechanism. Every time you pass one of the first six tests, you can move up one level. But if you fail the same test three times, your rank goes down. At one level, and only by passing the seventh rank exam and presenting the qualifications of the dissertation, you can consider yourself to have come ashore and become a qualified seventh rank nurturer. Steps. Su Ping asks what about the seventh stage. The student answers that if a guy can become an eighth stage educator, then he will be hired at universities. As a teacher and above a ninth stage nurturer, this is an existence that can only be achieved by various senior professors. And the girl can't even dream about becoming a tenth stage grower. Therefore, he asks how many tests can be passed in one day. But the girl replies that you can take the exams as long as the instructor won't finish his shift. The instructor notices them and asks what they are waiting for at the door. He tells the students to come over. Su Ping says that anyway. He's starting from the first step so he doesn't have to worry about going down. But they tell him that this instructor is very scary. The instructor sees a beginner in front of him on the first test. The guys are happy for them. It's a real holiday that those three children came in first. They understand that these three were unlucky in the draw. The girl understands that they shouldn't tell her. But the information included in the license is raised, or they are lies, and now the guy will not be able to hide even if he wants to. The student uses vision enhancement, but unexpectedly, she realizes that she is blind. Star Force Turbulence Barrier is an advanced method of manipulating Star Force that can distort surrounding light to create a blocking effect. Su Ping finished registration. Test assignment is using star power. Dye the hair of experimental mice black, and the time for this passage is limited to 30 minutes. Su Ping says that this is to be expected from the holy land of all cultivators, because even the mice are big here. The guys begin to take tests, but suddenly an instructor approaches one of them. He asks the student what he is trying to prophesy with his hand. He goes berserk. Is the student really afraid of some kind of bite? The guy stops entering the mouse's consciousness out of fright, and she loses the color she received. Therefore, the instructor hits the guy on the back and says that he failed the test. He announces to the remaining candidates that half the time has passed and they need to speed up, but unexpectedly do something scary with star power. The students notice that this is not raising battle beasts, and something is wrong here. But one guy says that he read in an advanced book that the key to coloring with star power, it's precision control of the force to stimulate pigment cells, be it heating or stimulation. All this is possible. It's just a matter of time and complexity. In a few minutes, the mouse belonging to Su Ping transformed. The students are simply shocked, because the guy only took a few minutes, and not only did he paint it, so he also grew his hair. The inspector sees that the whole body is an animal and shiny and without traces of fur. He does not understand how the guy was able to paint it so carefully. He notices that there is something else going on in these dyed hairs, he says, to notice that instead of stimulating the pigment cells in the surface dye, the guy used elemental fixation to change the properties of the mouse, affecting the color of the surface hair. These are still words but she has acquired elemental abilities. Students do not believe what they see because it was done even without the help of materials. They understand that this is not first stage content. It goes beyond its scope. The inspector understands that he has not seen this guy before, whether it is possible that some old master was secretly taking care of him. After all, he hasn't seen such a student for a long time, which could make him happy. He says that the student did well in the tests, completed all the points up to the sixth stage, so the inspector decided to make an exception 
and he will allow the guy to immediately pass the test at the seventh stage. The students are shocked. The stern instructor with a face full of meat smiled. They understand that if a guy, now he will pass the test, and he will immediately graduate from the academy. The instructor says that the content of the next test is to tame the beast and strengthen it in one go. Blood Mist Ghost Heavenly Beast. From the seventh stage pedigree, half a day is given for the task. Everyone can see that the Blood Mist Ghost is an extreme, unpredictable seventh stage beast at the same time demonic, of the spiritual type, and knows how to return people's hearts. And if you don't tame the beast, you can get brain damage or go crazy. Su Ping says that he doesn't need half a day and only five hours is enough for him. This beast is incredibly dangerous and evil. The students smell a strong smell of blood from this beast. They say that he is just a monster. The psychic attacks of the blood mist ghost are terrifying, and the skills of his bloodline. Spirit possession allows him to directly invade living beings. Thus, he devours the soul of his prey, ignoring all his physical attacks after the possession. Without a secret treasure of the divine or thunder type, not a single plant who had just advanced to the seventh stage dared, would be associated with such a monster. The girl doesn't understand what Su Ping is planning to do with the beast. But Su Ping tells them to release the beast. The beast starts to attack him. The guy dodges and then he starts to float in the air. He rises all the way to his head and asks the beast if he is familiar with the way of thunder. Su Ping calls out the path of thunder and what he sees. The animal gets scared, runs back to the cage and wants to climb into it. Su Ping says that he is done with taming. Now he can be given a boost. Void Practice describes the methods for raising the level of demon-type pets of even the ninth stage bloodline. This is the perfect opportunity to try a newly learned cultivation method at the same time. He decides to prepare a small skeleton for future improvement. He understands that since the bloody mist ghost is afraid of thunder, then he decides to strengthen its weakness by first refining the soul-harvesting grass and thunder orchid. With the help of star power, he uses fusion and launches this substance at the celestial beast. But the girl doesn't understand. Could this glow be a sign of evolution? The inspector sees the guy's very calm appearance and the way he works. He gets the feeling that the guy is in the middle of the river. It's extraordinary to watch the master with his eyes. Su Ping turns the beast into a giant storm ghost. The students see that the blood mist ghost's appearance has changed. They don't understand what kind of evolutionary technique this is, because the original disgusting appearance now has more majesty. Su Ping says it is in the process of destruction. He began to understand thunder type better. And thus, the Blood Mist Ghost's bloodline has been suppressed and is now resistant to divine and thunder attacks. But Su Ping says that there is one drawback because the beast has become more irritable than before. He also became stronger. The students notice that he is hitting the cage and it is already creaking. The inspector sees that the Water Mist Ghost has evolved, increasing its level and increasing its combat power. He understands that something needs to be done before this thing breaks free but he doesn't have time to get out. How the heavenly beast breaks the bars that make up the cage and breaks out. But Su Ping sees that the heavenly beast has become insolent, and he decides that the beast wants to taste the way of thunder again, and he begins to control the beast. Su Ping calms him down and asks the instructor if he passed the test. The instructor sees that the test only required strengthening the beast, but this man went further and directly promoted the ghost of the bloody flax Adam to perfection, and both taming went very well, and this is more than just a passage. Therefore, he tells the guy that he believes that the abilities he has demonstrated can compete with the best nurturers of the ninth stage. The students hearing this were simply furious because the instructor said that the guy could compete with the ninth level educators. This is the first time they have seen someone pass the exam from level one to level nine in one day. The vice president of the Association of Educators watched what was happening. He said that it was a feast for his eyes. The inspector greets the vice president, but he came to take Su Ping with him. The inspector is perplexed. He doesn't understand. Could this person be a student of the vice president? The vice president asks the dear guest from Long Jiang to remove his mask. He also says that the guy should not be surprised because there are few young people with such data, and they are very easy to recognize. After all, the guy is the nurturer of the small skeleton of the dark dragon dog and the moon dragon silver frost star. He is also the owner of the mischievous pet store Su Ping. The vice president asks if Su Ping has heard anything about the four kings. He begins to tell that there are four kings. These are the four kings of beasts. 
These are the most powerful beasts that have ever existed on the Blue Star. They know the language of people, and they are also treacherous, and have destroyed countless cities. The walls are hundreds of meters high, and the blood they spilled is enough to drown the mountains. They are the number one enemy for the people of the Blue Star. After all, each of the four kings has a power no less than that of the King of Fate. Su Ping is perplexed. Has he really heard about the King of Fate? After all, this is the highest kingdom. Among the three legendary kingdoms, the guy understands that on the bluest star, there are such powerful creatures. Even with his full strength, he is only in the realm of the vast sea of the legendary rank. And if these guys are so dangerous, then Su Ping doesn't understand why. He's never heard of them attacking human territory, but the vice president says that this is because in the distant past, the four kings were seriously wounded by a great human warrior, and the great one sealed them under a cave without the cost of his life. Now they are guarded by young masters of legendary rank from all four regions to prevent them from invading human territory. And since then they have never invaded these lands. He asks if there was a seal of the cave of the abyss. But the president replies that if the seal is broken, then all the base cities will be put on full alert. But the problem is that in the cave of the abyss, everything is fine, but an anomalous migration of ferocious animals was discovered in the desert area. Su Ping says that he also encountered the anomalous phenomenon that the president mentioned on the way to this city, and the entire train was practically destroyed. The vice president is perplexed. Has this begun to threaten the safety of nervous people? It seems to him that the security level of some base cities needs to be strengthened. He simply suspects that there is something complicated behind this phenomenon. He will definitely use this conference to gather all the strong warriors to prepare for taking measures. The president says that the nurturer is more interested in the master of taming than the master of war beasts, for whom the main thing is to kill with one movement. That is, making decisions. And the use of force. After all, it is the nurturers who give power. Su Ping asks why not just send someone to the wasteland to investigate, but the president replies that since then, as they learned about the situation, he ordered all the base cities to send groups of explorers there. The wasteland is too vast and full of ferocious beasts to achieve results so quickly. Su Ping says that at the moment there is not much, so there is no point in going, and instead of trying to figure it out, he would like to spend time gaining strength. The guy says that he would like to master the skill of opening the spirit of nurturers, but for some reason he did not find a single skill in the dragon's library. The president says the guy is smart beyond his years. He says that opening the spirit is a secret art that can only be studied by those who are at the peak of the ninth stage of nurturers at the headquarters of their association. And such a book, of course, is not in the library of the Dragon Academy. He also says that in terms of strength, the guy is definitely suitable for the ninth stage and would probably become the second person in history to touch the legendary and holy spirit level as a martial beast master. Su Ping is confused. He doesn't understand who was the first then, but the director goes on to say that he is the only person in history who reached the peak of the levels of legend and the holy spirit at the same time. This is the great warrior of humanity who single-handedly fought against the four kings. Su Ping is proud of the man who fought the four kings alone. Now the guy wants so that he is allowed to learn to open her spirit before it is too late. But the president says that the guy can't do this now because he's only a sixth stage educator and according to rules, if he wants to reach the seventh level. Yes, in addition to the exam, he needs to write a dissertation of 50,000 words. But the president says that the more critical the situation, the more. They must follow the rules, and if all the wise men only respected the strong, then there would be no room left for the weak and the world would plunge into chaos. Su Ping starts to get angry. This old man is very principled. Because the guy fights well enough, he doesn't need to write anything. After all, it would take him forever to write seven dissertations. Su Ping remembers that Itong Lintong is good at writing a dissertation. He decides to go see the girl. Now the girl is writing her dissertation. She is simply disappointed. After all, she doesn't get what she needs. She has too few real-life examples and she won't be able to complete the project based on her experience alone. The teacher says that he received wine from a student. It's amazing that it spent 20 years in the cellar. Therefore, he is already considering the possibility of giving it priority when allocating a quota. The same girl who went with Su Ping came to the teacher for testing. Her name is Shuo Yu. The teacher is already waiting for the student's good news. 
that she is very sorry, but the guy is very strong and hides so well that she could not discern his information. The teacher says that the student is just trash if she is not capable of even such a small thing. He asks, what good is it then? But the student says that the guy started with the first stage test and easily passed the seventh stage. The teacher says that he already knows about this. Well, Shuo Yu goes on to say that the guy then left with the senior vice president. Teacher Dean is surprised, is this old man really? And the association also had its eye on this golden egg. Now he realizes that it seems he was too patient. The teacher says that the girl can leave. The teacher calls Longshan, he floats in space and flies up to the teacher. Dean says there is a golden egg that will hatch soon. So now Longshan must take good care of this guy by any means necessary. This guy's title rank is King Left, and his combat strength is equal to the average ninth stage. Su Ping understands that although it is still unknown what will happen in the future, in any case, it would be right to first stock up on traps sold in the system. Su Ping wants to find the address of the group where Aitong Lintong studies. Her teacher ID card says group number eight. A guy comes up to him and puts his hand on his shoulder. He asks what Su Ping was talking about with the foreman. But Su Ping starts to get angry. After all, they don't know this guy. He tells him to remove his hand. The guards see. These two guys also notice a strong fluctuation in star power. Therefore, the guy should contact the title rank. This big guy's behavior angers Su Ping and he throws him over his back and he falls to the ground. The guards don't believe what happened because this title master was abandoned by a weak guy. Longshan says he didn't sense this guy's star power. He asks if credit techniques were used here to hide star power.